The Life of Team 7 from Naruto Team 7 was a Konohagakure team formed under the leadership of Kakashi Harake. It originally consisted of Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke Uchiha, and Sakura Haruno. Welcome to the Amagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of every member of Team 7. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, double check that you are still subscribed. For whatever reason, YouTube seems to be unsubscribing people from channels lately. So if you want to see all of our videos, make sure you're still subscribed. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Before we get into every member's life, let's briefly go over the group as a whole. Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura were put on the same team after they graduated from the academy to make sure that their skills and strengths balanced out. Naruto was the worst student in the class and therefore would benefit from Sakura's intelligence and Sasuke's skills. Sakura would gain something from her more battle-ready teammates, and Sasuke would benefit from being forced to work with other people. All of this under Kakashi's leadership led to plenty of iconic moments that I'm sure you're all very familiar with. But don't you worry, if you're not super familiar, all of their classic hijinks will be covered in this video. Kakashi Harake Kakashi Harake is a shinobi of Konohagakure's Harake clan. Famed as Kakashi of the Sharingan, he is one of Konoha's most talented ninja, regularly looked to for advice and leadership despite his personal dislike of responsibility. To his students on Team 7, Kakashi teaches the importance of teamwork, a lesson he received along with the Sharingan from his childhood friend Obito Uchiha. After the Fourth Shinobi World War, Kakashi becomes Konoha's sixth Hokage. Early Life because his mother died when he was very young, Kakashi was raised during his early years by his father Sakumo. Sakumo was famed throughout the shinobi world, having saved Konoha on at least one occasion. Kakashi, in particular, revered his father. During one of Sakumo's missions, after Kakashi was enrolled in Konoha's ninja academy, Sakumo made the decision to save the lives of his teammates rather than complete the assignment. The mission's failure had disastrous consequences for the Land of Fire, causing many in Konoha, including the teammates he saved, to vilify him for abandoning his duties. Disgraced, Sakumo committed suicide. Seeing what his father went through and determined not to make the same mistakes, Kakashi decided that following the shinobi rules must always take priority. In the academy, Kakashi earned top grades, earning him recognition as a prodigy and the best of his generation. Ultimately, he became very popular amongst his peers. With his talent soon being recognized, at age 5, Kakashi graduated from the academy at the top of his class in a single year. Upon becoming a genin, he and his classmates Rin, Nohara, and Obito were teamed together under the leadership of Minato Namakaze. In the anime, Minato gave the team a bell test at its formation, assigning the three to take the two bells he kept on his person. Minato often held back less against the prodigious Kakashi than with Rin and Obito, so they couldn't obtain any bells without teamwork. However, Kakashi realized this, only using Obito and Rin as means to an end to obtain the bells. Nonetheless, Minato passed them because they accomplished the goal of the test by working as a team. Minato did encourage them to improve their teamwork afterwards, a message that Obito and Rin took to heart but fell upon deaf ears with Kakashi. Team Minato would go on many missions during its career, but Kakashi's devotion to the rules often made him difficult to work with. Obito, already jealous of Kakashi's natural talent and popularity, was frequently at odds with him and this behavior. At age 6, Konoha officials allowed Kakashi to compete in the Chunin exams with his team, which he passed by defeating Might Guy and became a Chunin. Third Shinobi World War Konoha eventually became embroiled in the Third Shinobi World War. As part of the war effort, Team Minato was assigned to destroy the Kanabi Bridge and Kusagakure in order to cut off Iwagakure's supply line. Minato was needed on the front lines at the time, leaving Kakashi, recently promoted to Jonin at age 12, in charge. Before embarking on the mission, Minato and Rin gave him presents to celebrate his promotion. Obito forgot to get him anything. Shortly after entering Kusa, they encountered an Iwa scout, Mahiru. Kakashi tried to eliminate him with his new jutsu, Chidori, but the attack speed left him vulnerable to counterattack, forcing Minato to step in, save Kakashi, and kill Mahiru himself. Before leaving them, Minato advised Kakashi to not use the Chidori again. Kakashi, Rin, and Obito continued further into Kusa. 
They were eventually found by Mahiru's teammates Kako and Taiseki, who kidnapped Rin in order to find out about what their mission was. Obito immediately suggested that they rescue her, but Kakashi elected to abandon Rin, believing that it was more important to finish the mission before concerning themselves with her safety. Obito refused to go along with this and went off to save Rin by himself. Before he left, he told Kakashi that Sakumo had been a hero and that although it was bad to abandon one's mission, it was worse to abandon one's teammates. Kakashi began carrying out the mission alone, but ultimately decided that Obito was right and went to join him. He arrived in time to save Obito from Taiseki with his white light chakra saber, which he inherited from his father. Taiseki turned invisible and tried launching a sneak attack on Obito. Kakashi protected him, but his left eye was badly damaged in the process. In that moment, Obito awakened his Sharingan and used it to kill Taiseki. They then entered the cave where Rin was being held, drove off Kako, and released Rin from the Genjutsu he had placed her under. Kako retaliated by forcing a cave in, and Kakashi, due to his damaged eye, was struck in his blind spot and had difficulty avoiding the fallen rocks. Before he could be crushed by a large boulder, Obito pushed him out of the way, becoming trapped himself. Unable to get free and knowing his injuries were too serious to survive, Obito decided to make his last act giving Kakashi the present he forgot to give him earlier, his Sharingan, to replace the eye Kakashi lost. After Rin transplanted Obito's Sharingan into him, Kakashi confronted Kako. His white light chakra saber was destroyed during the ensuing fight, but he succeeded in killing him with Chidori due to the Sharingan's heightened vision. Kakashi was finally able to handle its speed. He went back to where Obito and Rin were, but Iwa reinforcements soon arrived and started constricting the rubble. Obito asked Kakashi to take Rin away and keep her safe, which he did, leaving Obito behind. As the Iwa Nin started surrounding them, Kakashi attacked them for as long as he could, holding them off until Minato eventually tracked them down and finished off the rest. Minato assisted them with destroying the Kanabi Bridge, and then returned with them to Konoha to mourn Obito's death. Despite many from the Uchiha clan being against Kakashi wielding a Sharingan as he had no blood ties to them, Fugaku Uchiha, the Uchiha head, chose to honor Obito's dying actions and let Kakashi keep his gift. During a later mission, Rin was kidnapped by Kirigakure. Kakashi was eventually able to rescue her and started taking her back to Konoha. Along the way, Rin revealed that Kiri had sealed the Three Tails into her body with the intention to, once she inevitably lost control of it, have it unleashed on Konoha and destroy the village from within. In order to prevent this from happening, Rin begged Kakashi to kill her, but he refused, unwilling to break his promise to Obito to protect her and hoping to find some other solution. When Kiri Nin caught up with them and made false efforts to retrieve her, Kakashi fought them off with his renamed Chidori, the Lightning Cutter. During one of these attacks, Rin jumped in front of Kakashi's attack, dying by his hand so Konoha would be safe. The trauma of this caused his Sharingan to evolve into a Mangekyo Sharingan shortly before Kakashi passed out. He was later found by Konoha reinforcements, but none could explain the slaughter of all the Kiri forces. Anbu Career Because he'd lost two teammates in such a short time span, his role in Rin's death, and his failure to honor Obito's last request by protecting her, Kakashi began dropping into a depression. In the anime, many believe he killed Rin on purpose to prevent her from leaking information, earning him the nickname Friend Killer Kakashi. Many, especially those in Anbu, believed he would kill a comrade without hesitation if it was for the sake of completing the mission. He would also spend his days avoiding friends and former classmates, and at night he would be haunted by dreams of himself killing Rin again. Minato, the new Hokage, tried to help Kakashi emerge from the darkness he'd fallen into after Obito and Rin's deaths by assigning him to the Anbu. Kakashi did well in the Anbu, eventually becoming a captain and the leader of Team Ro. However, his successes were owed to his cold behavior and his ruthlessness in combat, signs that he was still upset by Rin's death. Minato therefore tried a different tactic, assigning Kakashi to protect his wife, Kushina Uzumaki, during her pregnancy. Kakashi carried out his duties faithfully, monitoring Kushina from the shadows whenever she left her home. During his time off, he would visit Rin's grave and Obito's engraving to tell him his regrets and how life was going without them. During the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, Kakashi and many of Konoha's other young ninja were prevented from helping defend the village, instead being confined within a barrier to keep them safe. Minato eventually saved the village from the Nine-Tails, but at the cost of his and Kushina's lives. After which, Danzo Shimura approached a grieving young Kakashi Hatake, noting that it was Hiruzen Sarutobi's orders for the children, even high-ranking ninja like Kakashi, to not help battle the Nine-Tails, ultimately preventing Kakashi from possibly saving his sensei and his wife. Convincing an emotional Kakashi that the third was not the best for the future of the village, Kakashi agreed to join Danzo's root division and spy on the Hokage for him. During a mission, Kakashi encountered another root member codenamed Kinoe, who was able to use wood release. 
Knowing that Wood Release was unique to the first Hokage, Kakashi broke into the Hokage residence to see what he could learn about this anomaly. The third caught him, but freely gave him the information he wanted. Konoha had tried to recreate the Wood Release powers in the past, but abandoned the project for killing too many test subjects. The third then mused that the Ninetales might have been defeated, and Minato saved had the research been successful. From this meeting with the third, it became clear to Kakashi that the third was not the ineffectual, passionless leader Danzo had made him out to be. Moreover, Danzo had not used Kinoe to try and stop the Ninetales attack. Realizing he had picked the wrong side, Kakashi told the third about Danzo's plans to assassinate him and the following day personally lured out the assassins, of whom Kinoe was with. Kakashi easily defeated him but chose to spare his life in the belief that he would become a valuable ally in the future. Kakashi attempted to resign from the Anbu afterwards for working against the Hokage, but the third insisted his service was invaluable and made Kakashi his right-hand man. From investigating a series of disappearances, Kakashi provided a lead and it was discovered that Orochimaru was behind the wood release research that produced Kinoe. In the anime, Kakashi attacked Orochimaru when the third Hokage failed to apprehend him, but he was paralyzed by Orochimaru's killing intent and Orochimaru escaped. Kakashi followed him once he regained his composure, but he was captured by the Iburi clan, who were loyal to Orochimaru. Kinoe, their ally, convinced them to let him interrogate Kakashi. Once alone, he confided that Danza was making his own plans against Orochimaru, and with help from Yukimi, helped Kakashi get free. Kakashi later planned to use Yukimi to capture Orochimaru, since she was of great importance to him. Later, Kakashi explained that Yukimi's blood could temporarily bestow Orochimaru with the Iburi clan's smoke transformation, allowing him to slip across the border. Overhearing that, Yukimi slipped away and returned to the cave. Orochimaru ultimately killed most of the Iburi clan before escaping yet again, but Kakashi, recognizing that Kinoe's relationship with Yukimi is much like his relationship with Rin was, helped keep her safe. Kakashi decided to leave and not report anything about the Iburi or Root's involvement. Kakashi continued to investigate Orochimaru over the following years, eventually locating one of his secret labs three years after the latter's defection. While there, he was attacked by Kinoe, who Danzo had sent to take his Sharingan. Kakashi tried to reason with him by stating that friendship should take higher priority than the mission. When Kinoe accused Kakashi of violating that creed by killing Rin, Kakashi, enraged, overpowered him in order to bring him before the third Hokage. Before they could leave, one of Orochimaru's snake experiments escaped its test tube and attacked the duo. As Kinoe was taken captive, Kakashi managed to slay the creature. While saving Kinoe, the creature's corpse began emitting a poisonous vapor which quickly infected Kakashi. Kinoe got Kakashi out safely and, having accepted Kakashi's words, gave Kakashi an antidote and chose to abandon his Mishu whilst leaving Kakashi a message about it. When Kakashi woke up, he knew Danza would punish Kinoe for insubordination and asked the third for help. With the third's permission, Kakashi forced his way into Root headquarters and stopped Danzo from applying a cursed seal to Kinoe. As Root forces started to surround them, the third showed up to personally authorize Kakashi's actions, and further negotiated Kinoe's release from Root. Kakashi added Kinoe, now with the new codename Tenzo, to Team Ro. Two years later, Itachi Uchiha was added to Team Ro. Kakashi and Itachi were at one point assigned to observe a meeting between Konoha and the Land of Woods. When the Land of Woods Pranja group tried to betray the Konoha forces, Kakashi and Itachi moved in and defeated them. Although Kakashi was impressed by Itachi's abilities, he warned him against his merciless approach and encouraged him on the importance of friends. Some time later, Itachi asked Kakashi if dead friends' requests should be honored, which Kakashi said they should. Itachi was eventually promoted out of Team Ro and replaced by Yuga Uzuki. Shortly afterwards, Team Ro was sent to the Uchiha clan's compound with orders to pacify a brewing rebellion, only to find the entire clan dead. When news emerged that Itachi was responsible and that he had killed his best friend, Shisui Uchiha, in pursuit of power, Kakashi lamented his failure to have a better influence on Itachi. Because of what happened with Itachi, the third Hokage felt that individuals with kind hearts did not belong in the Anbu. He therefore thanked Kakashi for his years of service and relieved him of his duty, returning him to the standard forces. Over the years, he was placed in charge of several teams of Academy graduates, but none ever demonstrated the teamwork he considered to be so important. In the anime, he started worrying that his own methods were too harsh, but from seeing how his former underlings that he had previously failed prospered due to his teaching, his faith was reaffirmed. Prologue, Land of Waves Kakashi is assigned as the leader of Team 7, comprised of Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke Uchiha, and Sakura Harano. The third Hokage explains that he is selected for the team in order to keep an eye on Naruto, the Ninetales Jinchuriki, and in the anime to help Sasuke cope with life after the Uchiha clan downfall. 
During his first meeting with Team 7, Kakashi is unimpressed by them, finding them all to be too self-interested. He nevertheless gives them a bell test as he has for all the previous teams he's been assigned and tells them to take one of the two bells on his person. Naruto launches a first attack before the test officially begins. Kakashi stops him easily, but is nevertheless amused. Kakashi reads Icha Icha Paradise during the test, convinced that he won't need his full attention or both of his hands. Naruto and his shadow clones fail to take a bell, and Sakura, who focuses on looking for Sasuke, is defeated by one of Kakashi's genjutsu. Kakashi then goes and finds Sasuke, expecting the same outcome as Naruto and Sakura, but finds Sasuke was waiting for him. Kakashi is forced to go on the defense, and when Sasuke uses the Great Fireball technique, he must close his copy of Icha Icha, but still manages to defeat Sasuke. Kakashi gathers them together afterwards and tells them they've failed, explaining that had they worked together rather than individually, they might have succeeded in acquiring a bell. They convince him to give them another chance after lunch, but Kakashi demands that Naruto not be fed. He secretly watches them as they eat and sees Sasuke and Sakura give Naruto food against his instructions, needing Naruto in top form if they're going to get a bell. Kakashi feigns anger when he approaches them, but tells them that they passed the test for placing the team's well-being above the mission parameters. Team 7 completes a number of D-rank missions, which Naruto believes they're overqualified for. He complains to the third Hokage about this and is able to secure a C-rank mission, escorting Tazuna to the Land of Waves. Shortly after leaving Konoha, Kakashi notices that they're being pursued by the Demon Brothers. He pretends to be killed by one of the Demon Brothers' attacks so he can observe them, stepping in to neutralize them once Team 7 can't hold them off anymore. After restraining them, Kakashi confronts Tozuna on why the Demon Brothers were trying to kill him. Tozuna confesses that assassins have been hired to kill him so he can't build a bridge that will free the Land of Waves from the tyranny of Gato. Although this is an A-rank assignment that Team 7, being only Genin, are unqualified for, they decide to help Tezuna anyway because Tezuna confessed his country is too poor to afford an A-rank assignment. When they arrive in the Land of Waves, they are met by Zabuza Momochi, a former Kirinin. Recognizing how formidable Zabuza is, Kakashi uncovers his Sharingan and engages him, leaving his students in charge of protecting Tezuna. Kakashi initially does well against Zabuza, defeating Zabuza's water clones with his own. When Zabuza succeeds in trapping him in a water prison, Kakashi instructs Team 7 to leave him behind and escape with Tezuna. Naruto ignores him and with the help of Sasuke is able to release him. Kakashi thanks them and resumes his fight with Zabuza, copying his ninjutsu and using them against him. Just as he is about to finish off Zabuza, Zabuza is seemingly killed by a young hunter nin and his body is taken away. Team 7 continues on to Tezuna's home but Kakashi must be carried, having exhausted himself due to overuse of the Sharingan. While recuperating, Kakashi starts to find Zabuza's death suspicious and worries that he might still be alive. In case this is true, he shows Team 7 the tree climbing practice in order to improve their chakra control, which will be useful if Zabuza does indeed return. After a week of rest, Kakashi has recovered and all of Team 7 has mastered the exercise. Naruto is tired from the training and is allowed to keep sleeping as they resume their bodyguarding of Tezuna. When they arrive at the bridge Tezuna's working on, they find Zabuza and Haku, the hunter nin from before, waiting for them. Haku traps Sasuke in his demonic mirroring ice crystals, which Zabuza blocks Kakashi from helping him escape from. Once Naruto arrives to lend Sasuke assistance, Kakashi engages Zabuza in combat. Having learned from his previous encounter, Zabuza coats the area in a thick mist so Kakashi can't use his Sharingan. Because of this, Kakashi sticks close to Tezuna, knowing Zabuza will come for him eventually. Zabuza does indeed attack, and Kakashi is badly injured by Zabuza's Kubikiri Bocho while defending Tezuna. While reeling from his wound, Kakashi senses Naruto using Ninetales Chakra. Fearing that the seal containing the beast is weakening, Kakashi decides to finish the battle quickly. He summons his Ninken and has them track down his blood which is still on Zabuza's Kubikiri Bocho. Once they locate him, they pin him down while Kakashi attacks with his lightning cutter. Just before he hits Zabuza, Haku steps in in front of him and takes the attack instead. As his last act, Haku grabs Kakashi so he can't get away, allowing Zabuza, freed from the Ninken, to try and slice through him in order to get Kakashi. Kakashi pulls away, sets down Haku's body, and, angered by what's happened, proceeds to debilitate both of Zabuza's arms. Gato then arrives to kill them all, Zabuza included, with a horde of mercenaries. Zabuza kills Gato first, and Kakashi scares off the horde with his multiple shadow clone technique. Zabuza, dying from his injuries, asks Kakashi to place him next to Haku. Kakashi complies, and after he passes, buries them both. Their mission complete, Team 7 returns to Konoha, traveling by way of the Great Naruto Bridge that Tezuna finished building. Chunin Exams 
Team 7 resumes its series of uninteresting missions, but Kakashi is nevertheless pleased by their development. Despite their only recent graduation from the academy, he recommends that they enter the Chunin exams. He neglects to tell them that they must enter as a team, not wanting any of them, especially Sakura, to feel pressured to participate. He is therefore glad when they all independently decide to take the exams and wishes them luck. Several days after the exams start, Kakashi arrives to watch Team 7 in the preliminary fights. There, he is informed that Sasuke was attacked by Orochimaru during the exams and branded with a cursed seal of heaven. Kakashi warns Sasuke that he will be disqualified if he uses the cursed seal during his match. Sasuke avoids doing so, and Kakashi takes him away afterwards, applying the evil sealing method to prevent the cursed seal's use. After Sasuke passes out from the procedure, Orochimaru confronts Kakashi, explaining his plans to acquire Sasuke's Sharingan for himself. Kakashi readies his lightning cutter to defend Sasuke, but Orochimaru decides to leave, confident Sasuke will come to him willingly someday. Kakashi afterwards realizes he would have been killed had they fought. Kakashi takes Sasuke to the hospital to rest, places him under the guard of Anbu, and returns to watch the remaining preliminary matches, having promised Sasuke that he'd tell him all about the other combatants' abilities. After the preliminaries end, Kakashi returns to Sasuke to find all the Anbu dead, killed by Kabuto Yakashi. He tries to capture Kabuto in order to learn more about Orochimaru's plans for Sasuke, but Kabuto escapes. Kakashi is afterwards tracked down by Naruto, who asks Kakashi to help him train for the exam's final matches in a month. Having already decided to train Sasuke, Kakashi refers Naruto to Ebisu instead. In order to give Sasuke an alternative to the Cursed Seal's power, Kakashi spends a month teaching him the Chidori. Training runs long, and they end up arriving late for Sasuke's match against Gara of Tsunagakure. When Naruto tries to warn him about Gara, Kakashi instructs him just to watch Sasuke's performance and is amused by how quickly Naruto's concern for Sasuke becomes jealousy of his abilities. Konoha Crush The Chunin exams are interrupted by an invasion of Konoha, and most of those watching the finals are rendered unconscious by a genjutsu. Kakashi is among those who dispel it, and he starts fending off invading Otogakure forces. When he notices Sasuke going off on his own to fight Gara, Kakashi locates Sakura and sends her, Naruto, and Shikamaru Nara after him to provide assistance. He summons Pakun to help them follow Sasuke. The fighting rages on until Kakashi and his fellow defenders eliminate all invaders in the area except for Gabuto and Baki, who opt to flee rather than continue fighting. Kakashi and the others then converge on the site where the third Hokage fought Orochimaru, but discover that he's died in battle. Kakashi attends the third's funeral a few days later. He arrives late, having visited the memorial stone beforehand to reflect on those he's lost. Search for Tsunade Shortly after the funeral, Kakashi notices cloaked individuals traveling around Konoha. Suspicious, he follows them, but keeps up appearances that he is only meeting Sasuke for lunch. While waiting for Sasuke, he strikes up a conversation with Asuma Sarutobi and Kurana Yuhi, quietly alerting them to the men in cloaks. When Sasuke arrives and the cloaked men leave, Kakashi sends Asuma and Kuranai after them. However, Kakashi starts to become concerned, so he cancels lunch with Sasuke, not explaining the real reason, and joins Asuma and Kuranai. He arrives in time to save them from Kisame Hoshigaki and Itachi Uchiha, respectively. Itachi advises Kisame to keep his distance from Kakashi, stating that his fight with Kakashi would take too long. He also states that his own fight with Kakashi wouldn't take any time at all. He immediately attacks, which Kakashi only barely blocks with a water formation wall. He then gets Kuranai away from Itachi's clone great explosion, and when he looks back at Itachi, catches a glimpse of his Mangekyo Sharingan. He orders Asuma and Kuranai to shut their eyes while he is attacked with Tsukiyomi, subjecting him to three days of torture in a matter of seconds. He is able to remain conscious to Kisame's surprise, and using information earlier provided to him by Jiraiya, guesses their purpose for being in Konoha. They are members of the Akatsuki after the Nine Tails within Naruto. Itachi orders Kisame to capture Kakashi to see what else he knows and to kill Asuma and Kuranai. Kisame is stopped by Might Guy and they retreat, at which point Kakashi passes out. Guy takes Kakashi back to his home and puts him to bed, where he remains comatose until Tsunade, the new Hokage, comes to Konoha and heals the damage to his mind. Sasuke Recovery Mission Kakashi is not done recovering when he is given a mission assignment, a consequence of Konoha's lack of manpower following the failed invasion. Before leaving, he stops by the hospital where Sasuke has been staying after his own encounter with Itachi and finds Sasuke in the middle of combat with Naruto. As Sasuke is about to clash his Chidori with Naruto's Rasengan, Kakashi catches them both and flings them apart. Kakashi starts questioning Sasuke about his apparent intentions to kill Naruto, but Sasuke leaves rather than be lectured. Kakashi also notices Jiraiya nearby and, assuming Naruto learned the Rasengan from him, asks if that was a good idea. Jiraiya asks the same about teaching Sasuke the Chidori. 
Kakashi asks Jiraiya to speak with Naruto while he speaks with Sasuke. Before he goes, he assures Sakura that he'll set things right. Kakashi locates Sasuke and ties him to a tree in order to force him to listen to what he has to say. He starts by trying to discourage Sasuke from avenging the Uchiha clan, insisting that even if he's successful, it won't bring back those who are already dead. Sasuke retorts that Kakashi doesn't understand what he's going through and offers to kill the people most precious to Kakashi, only for Kakashi to reply that those very people are already dead. Sasuke is surprised and puts up less resistance, so Kakashi tells him that taking revenge for those that he's lost is not worth also losing those he still has, namely Naruto and Sakura. To that end, he encourages Sasuke to start using Chidori for its intended purpose, protecting friends rather than attacking them. He unties Sasuke and leaves for his mission, intending for what he said to sink in. When he returns, Tsunade informs him that Sasuke has defected to Orochimaru and that Naruto and a team of Genin were sent after him. Upset with himself for not spending more time defusing Sasuke's angst, Kakashi goes after him, fearful that he and Naruto may kill each other. He summons his Ninken to help him track Sasuke and Naruto, eventually finding the latter unconscious at the Valley of the End. Because it's raining, he can't find Sasuke's trail, and besides, Naruto needs medical attention. He takes him back to Konoha and releases him into the care of the Medic Corps. With Sasuke gone to Orochimaru, Naruto decides to start training with Jiraiya, and Sakura trains with Tsunade. Having no students to lead anymore, Kakashi resumes his prior mission schedule. Mizuki Tracking Mission In the anime, Kakashi returns from mission in time to help round up escapees from the Konoha Strict Correctional Facility. Cursed Warrior Extermination Mission In the anime, Kakashi is sent to the Land of Birds as backup for Naruto, Tenten, and Neji Hyuga as they investigate the Cursed Warrior. He takes command of the team and eventually defeats Nagare and Hokushin with relative ease. Tsunagakure Support Mission In the anime, Kakashi is sent to spy on the Takami village in order to investigate rumors of an uprising. There, he finds the entire village abandoned. He is later part of the reinforcements sent to Tsunagakure to help deal with the four celestial symbols men, only to discover that Naruto's team already successfully completed the mission. In Naruto's Footsteps, The Friends' Paths in the anime, about two years after Naruto leaves Konoha to train with Jiraiya, another tuning exam is held. Kakashi is sent to Amegakure to invite its ninja to participate, a mere pretext for him to investigate rumors surrounding the village. He is stopped at the village's entrance, but is able to arrange a meeting with Hanzo, who is actually Conan in disguise, and delivers the invitation. Although he appears to leave Ame afterwards, Kakashi sneaks back in to see what he can find out. It immediately becomes apparent to him that, although Ame's ninja don't know the identity of the intruder, they are aware that someone has infiltrated the village. Kakashi decides to go back to Konoha rather than risk causing an incident. Kazakage Rescue Mission Kakashi is the first person to greet Naruto when he returns from his two and a half years of training with Jiraiya. Naruto gives him a copy of Icha Icha Tactics as a present, which Kakashi wastes no time starting to read. As Naruto goes off to see Sakura, Jiraiya warns Kakashi that Akatsuki will be making a move in the near future. After Naruto and Sakura have had a chance to catch up, Kakashi reforms Team 7 and gives them another bell test. Unlike last time, taking the bells from him is the real objective. Kakashi also decides to take the test seriously by uncovering his Sharingan and closing his copy of Icha Icha Tactics. As with last time, Naruto launches a first attack before the test officially begins, but this time it nearly succeeds. Kakashi is impressed by this and other signs of their improvement, but by nightfall they still haven't taken a bell. Tired of this, Naruto tries spoiling the ending of Icha Icha Tactics, forcing Kakashi to cover his ears so as to not hear it and shuts his eyes so as to not read Naruto's lips. This allows Naruto and Sakura to each take a bell. While Team 7 tries without success to find a mission to go on that Naruto won't complain about, word reaches Konoha that Akatsuki has kidnapped Gara, the 5th Kazakage, and the Jinshuriki of the One Tail. Team 7 is sent to Tsunagakure to lend assistance in rescuing Gara. When they arrive in Suna, Kakashi is attacked by Chiyo who mistook him for his father, but her brother Ebizo cleared up the confusion before the attack could connect, to Kakashi's great relief at the close call. Team 7 gathers what intel they can on Gara's kidnappers and leave to go after them. Chiyo volunteers to escort them since they aren't familiar with the country around Suna. While en route to an Akatsuki lair, they are confronted by Itachi Uchiha. While they fight him, Kakashi notices that something is off about Itachi, noticeably his lack of use of the Mangekyo Sharingan. The reason for this is discovered after Naruto seemingly kills him with a big ball Rasengan. They were only fighting a doppelganger. Team 7 arrives at the Akatsuki lair shortly after Team Guy does, who are sent as backup by Tsunade. 
After Team Guy takes down the barrier over the entrance, Team 7 moves in and finds Gara's body with his kidnappers, Deidara and Sasori. Deidara takes Gara's body and flies off, which Naruto and Kakashi go after, leaving Sasori to Sakura and Shio. Naruto makes repeated failed attempts to rescue Gara, prompting Kakashi to encourage patience while he prepares a new ability. Once he's ready, Kakashi uses Kamui on Deidara, but his aim is off and he succeeds only in removing one of Deidara's arms. This creates an opening for Naruto to take Gara back, which Deidara responds to by creating a suicide bombing clone to cover his escape. Kakashi uses Kamui again to warp the explosion away. After they regroup with Chio and Sakura, Chio gives her life to revive Gara. Team 7 and Guy attend her funeral in Sunagakure before returning home. Kakashi is unable to walk due to overusing his Mangekyo Sharingan, forcing Mike Guy to carry him. Guy's choice of carrying Kakashi by piggyback deeply disturbs their students. Tenchi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission During her fight with Sasori, Sakura learned of an opportunity to possibly meet with Sasuke in a few days' time. Kakashi must remain in bed while he recovers and therefore cannot go. In his place, Team 7 is led by an Anbu codenamed Yamato, who Kakashi once knew as Tenzo. Before Team 7 sets out, Yamato, Tsunade, and Jiraiya meet with Kakashi to discuss Naruto's deteriorating control of the Ninetales' power. Akatsuki Suppression Mission Although Team 7 was able to meet Sasuke, he was too strong for them to capture and bring back to Konoha. Once Kakashi's done recuperating, he calls them before him and is introduced to Sai, who is effectively Sasuke's replacement on the team. They speak only briefly, but both approve of each other. Kakashi believes the best way to match Sasuke would be for Naruto to create a new jutsu. Before he can elaborate further, they are interrupted by the arrival of Asuma Saratobi and the rest of Team 10. When their students leave to have dinner, Asuma lingers behind to discuss something with Kakashi, only to change his mind when Kuranai Yuhi comes looking for him. To help Naruto create a new jutsu, Kakashi first establishes what his nature is, wind. With that settled, Kakashi trains Naruto on how to learn to use the wind nature. Ordinarily, such training would take months or years, but Naruto, by training alongside hundreds of shadow clones, can do the same training in a mere fraction of the time. With Kakashi's instructions and training grounds created by Yamato, Naruto quickly masters how to use the wind nature. The next step is more difficult for him, combining that nature with the Rasengan. Because Kakashi and Minato Namikaze both failed to combine their natures with the Rasengan, Kakashi can't offer Naruto any tips and can only watch as he tries to develop something. When they receive news that Asuma died in battle with members of Akatsuki, they take a break to attend Asuma's funeral. Because he can be of no further assistance to Naruto, Kakashi leaves Yamato in charge of watching over him. Kakashi, meanwhile, volunteers to help Team 10 avenge Asuma. Shikamaru Nara, having previously come up with a plan, modifies it to take Kakashi's presence into consideration. Once they locate the Akatsuki members, Hidan and Kakazu, Kakashi hides until Kakazu is driven to use his Earth Spear, at which point Kakashi pierces him through the heart with his Lightning Cutter. Kakazu, who has more than one heart, fends Kakashi off and uses the elemental masks of his Earth Grudge Fear to put Team 10 on the defensive. Needing to separate Hidan and Kakazu if they're to have any chance of victory, Shikamaru takes a vial of Kakazu's blood that Kakashi secretly collected and leads Hidan away. Shikamaru is able to trick Hidan into using the blood to curse Kakazu, destroying the second of his hearts in time to stop him from stealing Kakashi's. Angered by the loss of two hearts, Kakazu prepares to kill Kakashi and Team 10. His attack is blocked by the combined efforts of Naruto and Yamato who arrive with Sakura and Sai to lend assistance. Kakashi summons Pakun to lead Sakura and Sai to Shikamaru in case he needs help while everyone else prepares to attack Kakazu. Naruto, having finished his jutsu, volunteers to face Kakazu alone. His new wind release Rasen Shuriken is temperamental however, forcing Kakashi and Yamato to rescue him when it fails on its first use. It succeeds on the second time, destroying two of Kakazu's hearts and putting the last one on the brink of failure. Kakashi is deeply impressed by the Rasen Shuriken and tells Kakazu that the previous generation being surpassed by the next was perfectly natural. Kakashi then finished him off with a lightning cutter. Three Tails Appearance In the anime, Kakashi leads Team 8 on a mission to investigate one of Orochimaru's recently discovered bases. During their investigation, they're attacked by Guren, one of Orochimaru's subordinates, who traps them in her Jade Crystal Labyrinth technique. Team 7 eventually arrives to lend assistance and helps them escape. But while going after Guren, they come across the Three Tails. Kakashi requests additional assistance from Konoha, and once it arrives, they attempt to seal the Three Tails. Guren and her team interrupt them, and the Three Tails gets away, but Guren's team is defeated. They are then recalled to Konoha, with Anbu sent to seal the Three Tails in their place. Itachi Pursuit Mission News reaches Konoha that Sasuke has killed the Rochimaru. 
Realizing that this is a good opportunity to try once again to reunite with Sasuke, Kakashi combines Team 7 and 8 into an 8-man squad with their mission to either find Sasuke or his assumed target, Itachi. They split up and look for leads on either Uchiha, with Kakashi providing one or more of his Ninken to those without any particular tracking ability. None find anything until witnessing CO. They converge at its epicenter and can detect Sasuke's trail. Fated Battle Between Brothers As they near Sasuke's location, they are intercepted by Akatsuki member Tobi. They make repeated attempts to kill or capture him, but every attack passes through him without sign of damage. Zetsu eventually appears and reports to Tobi that Itachi has died in battle with Sasuke. No longer needing to distract the 8-man squad, Tobi disappears. Before he goes, Kakashi notices that he has a Sharingan. Kakashi scouts the area and notices Itachi's Amaterasu in the distance. They rush there, hoping to reach Sasuke before Tobi does, but they are too late and cannot rediscover his trail. Six Tails Unleashed In the anime, Katsuyu meets with them as they return to Konoha to give them a new mission helping the Tsuchigumo clan protect its forbidden technique. Kakashi sends Yamada with Team 7 to complete the mission while he returns to the village with Team 8. Pain's Assault Back in Konoha, Kakashi is informed that Jiraiya has died while investigating the Akatsuki leader, Pain. He is present when the news is shared with Naruto, who was too distraught to be of assistance and needed some time alone. Before he died, Jiraiya sent a number of things to Konoha that would help them against Pain, including an encrypted message. Shikamaru is able to properly console and get Naruto to help him decode it, who realizes that the key to its decryption must be Icha Icha tactics. Kakashi, having the only copy, is asked to read specific passages aloud, which makes him extremely uncomfortable. Nevertheless, the message is deciphered. Pain attacks Konoha soon afterwards. While some of the six paths of Pain draw attention to themselves, others avoid conflict and try to learn the whereabouts of Naruto, who had gone to Mount Myobuku to train. Kakashi guesses this tactic and goes searching for one of the latter group. In doing so, he finds the diva path, and by confronting it, he is able to save Iruka Umino. Kakashi tries to corner the diva path so he can destroy it with his lightning cutter, but it repels him with Shinra Tensei. Pain, recognizing that Kakashi is a dangerous opponent, sends the Asura path to help the diva path. Kakashi struggles against both due to the shared vision of their Rinnegan, but their clashing jutsu at least attracts reinforcements attentions. Choza and Choji Akamichi cripple the Asura path while they arrive. From careful observation of the diva path's abilities, Kakashi notices a brief cooldown period between its jutsu. To take advantage of this, Kakashi plants chains under it and has Choza and Choji attack it from opposite sides. When they are deflected by Shinra Tensei, they grab the chains and restrain him, giving Kakashi an opportunity to attack with his lightning cutter. Before he can land the blow, the Asura path uses itself as a shield, giving the diva path time to counter. It defeats all of Kakashi's reinforcements and binds Kakashi in the rubble. Anticipating that Kakashi will interfere if allowed to live, the diva path propels a nail at his head to kill him and leaves. Kakashi, however, only pretends to be dead, warping away the nail at the last moment with Kamui. When Choji wakes up, Kakashi sends him to Tsunade to tell her everything they've learned about the diva path abilities. The still-functioning Asura path fires a missile at Choji in an attempt to stop him, forcing Kakashi to use Kamui again to warp away the missile. This depletes his chakra reserves and causes his death. After dying, Kakashi finds his father, Sakumo, waiting for him. He entreats Kakashi to tell him about his life, with which Kakashi complies. He concludes his story by saying that he understands the choices Sakumo made when he was alive and he is proud to be his son. Just then, a light envelops Kakashi, a sign of his revival. Before Kakashi returns to the living plane, Sakumo thanks him for putting him at peace at long last, allowing him to continue to the afterlife. Kakashi wakes up, surprising those nearby. He is informed of what happened while he was dead, such as that Pain destroyed the village and that Naruto, upon returning, defeated Pain. As Naruto returns to Konoha, Kakashi goes to meet him and carries him back, where his victory is celebrated by all the villagers. Past Arc, the Locus of Konoha in the anime, a traveling musician visits Konoha as it starts rebuilding. Seeing the musician reminds Kakashi of Team 7's encounter with Hanare of the Jomei village. 5 Kage Summit Naruto reflects on Sasuke with Kakashi and Sakura. While he does so, word reaches them that Danzo Shimura has become the new Hokage and that Danzo's first degree has been to allow Sasuke's disposal as a missing nin, something Tsunade had never permitted. Naruto insists on trying to reason with Danzo, which Kakashi warns him will not work. When this indeed fails, Naruto decides to talk with the fourth Raikage instead, who has made it his goal to personally kill Sasuke. Despite the travel limitations in place due to the approaching Five Kage summit, Kakashi and Yamato agree to accompany him. 
Kakashi neutralizes the Anbu assigned to keep an eye on Naruto, and Yamato plants his transmission wood on Team Samui in order to follow them to the Raikage. When they find the Raikage in the Land of Iron, Kakashi, the only one amongst them that the Raikage recognizes, asks that Naruto be allowed to speak with him. The Raikage permits it, but even with his and Yamato's support, he refuses Naruto's request to forgive Sasuke's recent work with Akatsuki and leaves them. They stay in an inn nearby while deciding what to do, where Naruto is confronted by Tobi. Having expected him, Kakashi and Yamato attack and restrain him, though he points out that he can escape whenever he wants. Rather than do that, he tells him about Sasuke's motivations, to take vengeance on Konoha for forcing Itachi to kill the Uchiha clan. They doubt what he's said regarding the Uchiha clan downfall, but Tobi is unconcerned, leaving once he's finished saying to Naruto what he wanted to. Afterwards, Kakashi encourages that the three of them keep what Tobi said between them, until they knew more and if what Tobi said was true. Naruto decides that the only course of action left is to speak with Sasuke himself. His attempt to locate Sasuke is interrupted by the arrival of Sai and Sakura, the latter of whom tells Naruto she loves him. Kakashi doubts that this is the real reason for coming all the way to the Land of Iron, which one of Sai's ink clones confirms after Sakura and her entourage leave. The rest of the Konoha 11 have decided that it's their responsibility as Sasuke's former friends to kill him before he sparks a war, a burden Sakura has taken for herself. Before they can go after her, they are met by Gara and his bodyguards, who tell them about Sasuke's attack on the summit and Tobi's declaration of the Fourth Shinobi World War. Gara also shares the Five Kage's request that Kakashi represent Konoha going forward, owing to Danzo's behavior during the Kage summit. Naruto is overwhelmed by all the developments going on and passes out. Kakashi leaves Naruto with Yamato and has Sai's ink clone guide him to Sakura so he can stop her. The clone dissolves along the way, which it explains to be because Sakura knocked out the original Sai. Kakashi catches up with her in time to stop Sasuke from killing her with Chidori. Kakashi tells Sakura that she doesn't need to take responsibility for Sasuke, since he, as Sasuke's former teacher, is much more to blame for the team's growing rift and current dire situation. He asks Sasuke one more time to let go of his thirst for vengeance, but Sasuke laughs in his face, having been too corrupted by Tobi to be reasoned with any longer. As he prepares for battle, Kakashi remarks that he finally understands what the third Hokage went through with Orochimaru. Sasuke uses his Susano to fire an arrow at Kakashi, which he warps away with Kamui. Sasuke is enraged by this use of an Uchiha ability and threatens to make Kakashi suffer. When he does so, Sakura approaches from behind to kill him, but ultimately cannot, and Kakashi, tired from using Kamui, can't reach her in time to save her from Sasuke's retaliation. Sakura is saved by Naruto. Kakashi tells Naruto to take Sakura away. Naruto thinks that Kakashi is going to kill Sasuke. Naruto instead restrains Kakashi and fights Sasuke himself. From the clash of their Chidori and Rasengan, as well as the following conversation, Naruto and Sasuke decide to temporarily suspend hostilities until later when they, and only they, will face each other in battle. Kakashi agrees to these terms, but insists on being allowed to eliminate Tobi with Kamui when he comes to fetch Sasuke. Tobi stops him, telling him it won't work, and leaves with Sasuke. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown when they get back to Konoha, Kakashi meets with the Konoha Council and tells them all what had happened, including Danzo's death at Sasuke's hand. Because Konoha now needs another Hokage, Kakashi reluctantly agrees to be the appointment. He is brought before the Fire Daimyo, but before anything can be made official, they receive news that Tsunade has woken up from her coma, therefore rendering the proceedings unnecessary. He meets with Tsunade later and thanks her for waking up before he got stuck with any real responsibility. Power In the anime, Kakashi is part of a force sent to Hacho village to help the rest of Team 7. Kakashi confronts Kabuto Yakashi who gets away by distracting him with reincarnated ninja. Later, Kakashi meets with the village leader, Disonasu, who Kakashi recognizes as an old partner of Orochimaru. He trails Disonasu to a meeting with Kabuto who is trying to resurrect the Ama no Hoko. A fight breaks out when Kabuto notices them, and at the conclusion of which Naruto defeats the nine-tailed Naruto clone. They are afterwards able to deactivate the Ama no Hoko, though Kabuto himself escapes once again. Paradise Life on a Boat In the anime, as Konoha starts preparing for the looming war, Kiba Inuzuka asks Kakashi to train him. Kakashi provides his ninken to Kiba in his place, believing that they'll be more useful to him. Later, Kakashi receives an apparent distress signal from Mike Guy, who is escorting Naruto to the Island Turtle. Kakashi rushes off to lend assistance, only to be told on arrival that the SOS was sent accidentally when Guy was struggling with seasickness. Unneeded, Kakashi returns to the village. Fourth Shinobi World War, Confrontation Kakashi is appointed as commander of the Allied Shinobi Forces 3rd Division. 
In the anime, he requests that Guy be his second in command. The third division is mobilized ahead of the other divisions in order to be on hand for any eventuality. While seeking out Nakatsuki Force, they notice and head towards one of the surprise attack division's distress flares. The third division arrives in time to save them from the reincarnated Gari, Pakura, Haku, and Zabaza Momochi. Haku and Zabaza recognize Kakashi and Sakura, who is also in the third division, and ask how Naruto is doing. Kabuto, their summoner, ends their conversation short by suppressing their personalities, so Haku and Zabaza use their last moments to beg Kakashi to defeat them. Zabaza uses the hiding and mist technique to hide his and the other's movements, putting the third division on the defensive. Kakashi is able to analyze their attack strategy and formulate a response, but the other reincarnated members of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist appear on the battlefield before Kakashi has a chance to put his plan into action. Despite mounting casualties, Kakashi sticks to his original plan. He sneaks up on Zabaza and attacks him with Lightning Cutter, intending to dispel the Heavy Mist. Like the last time they fought, Haku shields the attack and Zabaza cuts at Kakashi through Haku with his Kubikiri Bocho. Kakashi avoids injury and attacks with another lightning cutter, this time hitting Zabaza and also connecting Enzuinara's shadow to his. With Zabaza immobilized and Haku damaged, both are bound by the sealing team. Kakashi, upset by how Zabaza and Haku were used for Akatsuki's purposes, takes up the Kubikiri Bocho and promises to live up to his reputation as the copier of a thousand jutsu. With the mist gone, the swordsmen seemingly retreat. Kakashi takes this opportunity to allow his team to rest and recuperate. The next day, in the anime, Kakashi defeats Jinin Akebino, and later teams up with Guy to keep Jinpachi Munashi and Kushimaru Kuririrai busy until they are also sealed. By the time he helps Sai seal Fuguki Suikazan, only three reincarnated shinobi remain. Part of the White Zetsu army then arrive to fight the 3rd Division, but they are met by one of Naruto's shadow clones, sent to lend assistance with defeating the remnants of Akatsuki's forces. 4th Shinobi World War Climax. Kakashi and Guy eventually leave the 3rd Division to join the original Naruto and Killer B in their fight with Tobi, arriving in time to stop Tobi from capturing Naruto. Seeing that Tobi has 6 reincarnated Jinjuriki, Kakashi theorizes that they each possess one of the 6 paths techniques, just as the 6 paths of pain did. From fighting them, however, none of them use any of the 6 paths techniques, leading Kakashi to believe that Tobi doesn't have the energy for it. Tobi can at least still use their Tailed Beast's powers, so he forces the Four Tails and Six Tails to enter Tailed Beast modes. Unable to do anything against such large opponents, Kakashi and Guy leave them to Naruto and B. After Naruto is able to free the Four Tails from Tobi's control, Tobi forces the other Jinchuriki to enter Tailed Beast modes as well. As five Tailed Beast balls bear down on them, Kakashi considers trying to use Kamui. It ends up not being necessary as Naruto, by entering his own tailed beast mode, deflects their attacks and subsequently frees them from Tobi. Tobi is forced to recall the tailed beasts into the demonic statue of the Outer Path, which he uses against Naruto, B, Kakashi, and Guy. Fighting continues on into the night, with neither side emerging victorious. When a light descends on the reincarnated Jinchuriki, a sign that the impure world reincarnation has been cancelled, Tobi takes drastic actions and prematurely initiates the Ten Tails revival. When they realize what Tobi's doing, Kakashi and the others focus on destroying the demonic statue before it can complete its metamorphosis into the Ten Tails. Tobi defends the demonic statue from all their attacks, and as ever, is himself seemingly impervious to damage, with everything passing through him. After an exchange of attacks, of which Kakashi blocks Tobi's with Kamui, Kakashi notices some slight damage to Tobi's mask. Having a theory about this, he has Guy and Naruto help him test it and is ultimately able to confirm. Attacks warped away with Kamui at the same moment that Tobi is impervious will damage Tobi, thereby suggesting a link between their abilities. Kakashi asks where Tobi acquired his Sharingan, to which he replies it was on the same mission to the Kanabi Bridge that Kakashi got his own. Kakashi is troubled by what this might mean, but doesn't overlook the important fact that they now have a way of fighting Tobi. Kakashi secretly uses Kamui on Naruto's shadow clones to send it to Kamui's dimension, which, when Tobi retreats there to escape the real Naruto's attack, attacks Tobi and destroys his mask. When they see his face, Guy and Kakashi recognize Tobi as Obito Uchiha. Kakashi is devastated to discover that the friend whose death he's mourned for over a decade is actually alive. Kakashi asks Obito why he never returned to Konoha, to which Obito replies it's because Kakashi allowed Rin Nohara to die. Obito assures Kakashi that he doesn't blame him for the world's flaws before attacking him with Fire Release Blast Wave Wild Dance. Obito is soon joined by a reincarnated Madara Uchiha, who decides to take Naruto's Nine Tails and Killer B's Eight Tails before the Ten Tails is revived. 
Kakashi, meanwhile, tries to question Obito more, who ignores him and instead uses his own Kamui on Kakashi. Kakashi figures out how to use Kamui to return, prompting Obito to try and kill him. Naruto blocks the attack and vows not to let his teammates die. Naruto's words remind Kakashi of the Obito he used to know, inspiring him to join the offensive again. After the Ninetales replenishes his chakra, Kakashi lets Obito send him to Kamui's dimension, where he attacks Obito's body parts whenever they transport there to avoid Naruto's attacks. He then uses Kamui to return, only to witness the Tentails complete its revival. Obito and Madara attach themselves to the Tentails, focusing its destructive power against Kakashi and the others. Just as they are about to be killed, the combined allied shinobi forces arrive to help, deflecting the Tentails tailed Beast Ball. Sakura heals Kakashi before they join the allies' coordinated effort to restrain the Tentails, but it breaks free by transforming. Many die in the Tentails counterattack, but another coordinated assault successfully removes the Tentails from Madara and Obito's control. Now free to act on its own, the Tentails prepares to use Tenpenshi. Kakashi attempts to stop it with Kamui, but Obito intercepts him and takes him to Kamui's dimension. When they get there, Kakashi lunges at Obito with the lightning cutter, but stops short of actually killing him with it. When Obito accuses him of having a guilty conscience, Kakashi tries to explain the circumstances of Rin's death, but Obito is already aware that she chose to die. That fact alone convinces Obito that the world as is is not worth protecting. Accepting that Obito's mind can't be changed, Kakashi attacks in order to protect the world that the Obito he used to know cared about. After a prolonged exchange, Kakashi pierces Obito's heart with a lightning-infused kunai. Obito escapes and Kakashi, similarly badly damaged, collapses. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinjuriki As Kakashi treats his wounds, he catches brief glimpses of what Obito sees due to their common Sharingan, his fight with Naruto and Sasuke. Kakashi ponders Obito's persistence in trying to convince Naruto that his actions are justified, and concludes that Obito himself is not actually convinced that they are. He returns to the battle just after Obito's defeat, prepared to personally finish him off, but is stopped by a reincarnated Minato Namikaze. Having sensed the same misgivings on Obito that Kakashi did, Minato convinces Kakashi to try yet again to speak with him. Kakashi acknowledges that Rin's death is proof of a flawed system that may not be possible to fix, but he believes that Naruto should be at least given a chance to try since he still has friends to empower him. Obito decides to put the same faith in Naruto that Kakashi has, and in order to make up for all that he's done, prepares to use the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to revive everyone that has died. Because this will cost Obito his life, Kakashi tries to convince him to find another way to make amends. But Obito replies that he doesn't deserve such an easy solution. As he's performing the technique, however, Obito's body is taken over by Black Zetsu. Kakashi and Minato are confused by what's happened, so Obito explains that he's been forced to revive Madara instead. Black Zetsu then attempts to take Obito's Rinnegan, but the presence of Kakashi and Minato prevents it from safely doing so. It decides instead to fully take control of Obito's body so they can't attack it without damaging Obito too. As they wait, the demonic statue of the Outer Path is summoned by Madara from Obito's body. Kakashi tries to use Kamui on it, but succeeds only in removing its right arm. Obito briefly regains control for long enough to implore Kakashi to destroy his Rinnegan so Madara can't acquire that too. Just as Kakashi and Minato psych themselves up to do so, they are met by Gara and Sakura, who are working to keep Naruto alive after Madara removed the Nine Tails from his body. Gara asks Minato to seal his half of the Nine Tails chakra into Naruto in order to save his life. Black Zetsu intercepts the transfer and takes the Nine Tails for itself. Madara, now the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, soon arrives to see what's taking Black Zetsu so long. Black Zetsu attempts to go to him, but Obito reasserts control over his body and forces it to stay. Obito decides that he will help save Naruto. He first steals fragments of Madara's chakra and then instructs Kakashi to send Naruto and Sakura to Kamui's dimension. He plans to go there to join Naruto, but his own Kamui is slow enough for Madara to stop him. Kakashi, by using Kamui on Obito at the same time that he uses it on himself, is able to accelerate the teleportation and allow him to get away. The attack that misses Obito nearly kills Kakashi, but he's saved by Gai. Aware of how few options they have, Gai decides to use the Eight Gates released formation over Kakashi's protests. Because Gai's time is limited, Kakashi, Minato, Gara, and Rock Lee combine efforts to neutralize as many of Madara's truth-seeking balls as they can. Kakashi, carried by Gara, warps away a part of a defensive wall Madara erects around himself. In the end, Gai badly injures Madara before he collapses, but fails to defeat him. Madara is stopped from finishing Gai off by Naruto's return, who Obito successfully saved. Naruto and Sasuke team up against Madara, putting him on the defensive and making him desperate for the Rinnegan in Obito's possession. 
Having no other options, Madara takes Kakashi's Sharingan and, upon implanting it in himself, uses Kamui to go after Obito. Sakura is teleported back shortly afterwards, Obito's attempt to save her. She prepares to treat Kakashi's eye, but Naruto steps in and uses his Six Paths Chakra to restore Kakashi's original eye. As they wait for Madara's inevitable return, Kakashi reminds them of their first lesson as Team 7, the importance of teamwork. Madara eventually returns, Black Zetsu using his control over Obito's body to teleport them back. Kakashi watches as his students attack Madara, but aren't able to stop him from casting the infinite Tsukiyomi. Kaguya Otsotsuki strikes. While the world around them falls to the infinite Tsukiyomi, Sasuke uses his own Rinnegan to shield Naruto, Sakura, and Kakashi from its effects. When they emerge, they find Madara has bound the world's population with God, nativity of a world of trees, and trapped them all within perpetual dreams. Madara confronts them and insists that he has ended all conflicts, and that only Team 7, as the only remaining opposition, would seek to renew the cycle of death that plagued the world for centuries. As he's talking, Madara is stabbed from behind by Black Zetsu, who transfers to him from Obito's body to convert him into Kaguya Otsutsuki, Black Zetsu's true master. Kaguya, the origin of Chakra, now has access to the Chakra supplies of everyone trapped in the infinite Tsukiyomi. She wants Team 7's Chakra as well, so she transports them to one of Kaguya's dimensions, a sea of lava. Sasuke saves Naruto from falling in the lava, Kakashi grabs Sakura, ties himself to an unconscious Obito with a scroll, and pins Obito to a wall in order to do the same. The heat causes the scroll to burn up, but Naruto sends a shadow clone to catch them. Unable to continue, Kakashi only watches as Naruto and Sasuke fight Kaguya. Sakura and Obito, once he wakes up, lend support, but Kaguya keeps shifting dimensions in her attempt to defeat them. Kaguya eventually moves them into a dimension with powerful gravity, limiting Naruto and Sasuke's movements while she attacks them with all killing ash bones. Prepared to give his life to lend what little assistance he can, Kakashi stands in front of Sasuke to take the attack while Obito does the same for Naruto. Although they are unified in their willingness to die, Obito decides it's too soon for Kakashi and uses Kamui on the attack bound for him, leaving Obito unable to save himself. Obito's body dissolves, but his spirit returns shortly afterwards and inhabits Kakashi. Obito feels that Kakashi will become the next Hokage and wishes to reward him by letting Kakashi use his two Mangekyo Sharingan. With his Mangekyo, Kakashi is able to manifest Susano. He first uses it to save Sakura from Kaguya, and then uses Kamui Shuriken to save Naruto and Sasuke. When Kaguya creates an expansive truth-seeking ball to finally kill them all, Kakashi, realizing that this is their last opportunity, forms a plan of attack. Kakashi pierces through her with Kamui Lightning Cutter. Naruto uses Shadow Clones to exhaust some of her countermeasures, and Kakashi uses Kamui on the rest. Sasuke moves closer to her in order to place a seal on her. Sakura punches her when she tries to escape. Kaguya is defeated, the tailed beasts are removed from her bodies, and she is trapped alongside Black Zetsu with Six Paths, Chibaku Tensei. The Sage of Six Paths summons them all back from Kaguya's dimensions and congratulates them for their victory. As his spirit leaves Kakashi's body, Obito apologizes for everything he did when he was alive, but Kakashi states that he's glad they rekindled their friendship before the end. The Sage of Six Paths explains how Naruto and Sasuke can end the infinite Tsukiyomi, but Sasuke has one intention before that, killing the tailed beasts and the five Kage. Kakashi is dismayed, assuming Sasuke is still after revenge. Sasuke replies that he only wants to change the world for the better, making hard decisions like this so the world won't get embroiled in another war. Too exhausted to do anything himself, Kakashi stays behind with Sakura while Naruto and Sasuke leave to fight. The Sage of Six Paths uses his last moments to talk with Kakashi, remarking that the centuries of hate may be on the verge of ending due to the love Naruto displays for everyone. The following day, Kakashi and Sakura locate Naruto and Sasuke at the Valley of the End, where the Sage's words have proven true. Naruto has convinced Sasuke to give up his intention. Sakura heals their injuries, and they proceed to end the Infinite Tsukiyomi, and in the end, the Fourth Shinobi World War. Upon returning to the village, Kakashi attends the mass funeral for the casualties of the war. In the wake of the village recovering from the war, Kakashi succeeds Tsunade and becomes the sixth Hokage, although he is dismayed with the amount of paperwork. Soon after, in the anime, he offers Naruto the chance to become a Jonin at the cost of him spending two years studying. Blank Period in the anime, Kakashi and Tsunade stopped by the Konoha military police force from exposing the identities of everyone connected to Root in the aftermath of the group disbanding, in order to avoid suspicion among villagers thinking each other were former members. Kakashi Hiden, Lightning in the Icy Sky Nearly a year after the war, Kakashi has yet to officially take on the duties of being Hokage, feeling he's unqualified, leaving Tsunade to continue managing Konoha's affairs. 
Kakashi later leaves for a mission in the Land of Waves. There, Kakashi oversees security for the Tobi Shachimaru's maiden voyage. As the ship prepares to take off, Kakashi spots someone sneaking aboard, discovering it to be Might Guy, who has always wanted to fly. Kakashi finds somewhere out of the way for them to ride out the trip. During the voyage, the Tobi Shachimaru is hijacked by the Ryuha Armament Alliance, who demand that Konoha release their leader, Gario, from the Blood Prison, vowing to kill the hostages and destroy the Tobi Shachimaru if their demands aren't met. Kakashi summons his Ninken to seek out the explosives planted around the ship and confronts the hijackers. Kayo remotely kills two hostages with ice, forcing Kakashi to surrender to prevent more from being killed. Guy soon appears to fight the leader of the hijackers, Ryo, keeping him busy so that Kakashi can free himself from his restraints without being noticed. Kakashi is prevented from helping Guy by the appearance of Kayo. Aware that the Armament Alliance was originally motivated by the death of Kayo's innocent son, Kakashi tries to point out that the Armament Alliance's actions now threaten the innocent passengers. Kayo is upset by Kakashi's observation and attacks with ice release, earthen consecutive chains of ice, creating a hole in the ship that starts sucking out Kakashi, Guy, and the passengers. Before he falls from the ship, Kakashi notices Kayo's mask has come off, who he recognizes as the woman he helped before. Kakashi, Guy, and the passengers are saved by Sai, who takes the others to safety, and Kakashi back to the Tobi Shachimaru. When Kakashi returns, Ryo is threatening to allow a sick child to die, believing it's a fair trade for the death of Kayo's son. Kakashi attempts to stop him, but is immediately bound by chains of ice that Kayo planted on him earlier. Kakashi reasons with Kayo and convinces her to let Sai take the child to a doctor. Kakashi is afterwards locked away. While breaking out, he concludes that the hijackers plan to turn the passengers into human bombs. Kakashi confronts Ryo about this, and Kayo, unaware that this was intended, is aghast. Kayo attacks Kakashi and removes the chains of ice so he can fight back, but he stops short of killing her when he realizes that's what she wants out of regret for her actions. The damaged Tobi Shachimaru starts rocking violently, flinging Ryo from the ship, and then rises into the air uncontrollably, threatening to suffocate everyone aboard. Kakashi and Kayo puncture the helium sacks, keeping the ship afloat, and Kayo attempts to control its descent with her ice. When she runs out of moisture with which to make ice, Kakashi leaps from the ship into a storm cloud, using purple electricity to produce rain. He is saved by the third Tsujikage, who delivers him to the ground. Kakashi watches as the Konoha Eleven recapture prisoners escaping during the Armament Alliance's breakout and feels that the generation will someday replace his own. Kakashi feels that he, as Hokage, would like to watch over things until they're ready. Konoha's ninjas search the crashed Tobi Shachimaru, treating the passengers and taking Kayo into custody. Tsunade threatens to have her executed since she is the highest ranking conspirator to survive the failed jailbreak, but Kakashi requests that he be allowed to pass sentence instead, what would be his first act as Hokage. Kaya will stay at the blood prison for the rest of her life, acting as warden by using her chains of ice on the prisoners. Both Tsunade and Kayo agree to these terms. With his status as Hokage and Naruto's testimony, Kakashi pardons Sasuke and releases him from prison. He and Sakura see Sasuke off as he leaves Konoha to wander the world, with Kakashi requesting him not to cause too much trouble. Shikamaru he then, a cloud drifting in silent darkness. The shinobi union that emerged after the end of the fourth shinobi world war created an unprecedented peace between the ninja villages. Two years after the end of the war, that peace is threatened by the emergence of the land of silence. Kakashi sent Sai and a team of Anbu to the land of silence to investigate, but all go missing. The last communique suggests the Land of Silence's leader, Gengo, must be behind it all. In order to protect the Shinobi Union's interests, Gengo must be assassinated, a task Shikamaru Nara volunteers for. Kakashi assigns two Anbu, Ro, and Soku to assist Shikamaru on what is otherwise to be a top-secret mission. Naruto becomes concerned when Shikamaru fails to return from his mission and barges into Kakashi's office demanding an explanation. Kakashi attempts to maintain the mission's secrecy, but eventually relents even allowing other Konoha personnel to go to the Land of Silence. Shikamaru is rescued, and when he returns to Konoha, Kakashi gives him a week off. The Last, Naruto the Movie Two years after the Fourth Shinobi World War, Kakashi attends a Five Kage Summit to discuss the imminent crashing of the moon. Shortly after he returns to Konoha, Hanabi Hyuga is kidnapped by Toneri Otsutsuki. Kakashi sends the Hanabi rescue team to save her. He also gives them a special clock that counts down to the moon's collision, asking that they stop it if Toneri is in any way connected. In the following days, meteors increasingly rain down on the world and the Kage decide that the moon must be destroyed. When Sasuke returns an injured Hizashi Hyuga to Konoha, Hizashi reports that Hanabi, and by extension her rescuers, are on the moon. 
Kakashi reports this to the other Kage, who decide to delay the moon's destruction in order to give Naruto and the others a chance to save them. Naruto ultimately succeeds, using the Nine Tails to carve a mission-complete message into the moon's surface. Sakura Hiden, Thoughts of Love Riding Upon a Spring Breeze After separate attacks are made on Homura Mitokado and the Land of Fire's Daimyo, Kakashi assigns Sai to intervene. Kakashi believes that Kido Sumiki might be somehow involved, so recommends that Sai focus on him. A few days later, Sakura returns from a visit to Sunagakure with rumors that Sasuke had been plotting against Konoha. Neither he nor Sakura believe it's really Sasuke, so he assigns Sakura and Ino Yamanaka to look into the lookalike. As the rumors start spreading, Kakashi attempts to contact Sasuke to ask if he knows anything, but his inquiries are not answered. Kakashi informs Sakura that the Raikage is contemplating a Kage summit on the rumors and the possibility of hunting down Sasuke. Sai eventually reports that his investigation is apparently the same as Sakura's, so Kakashi combines them into the Ino Saku Sai. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. Kakashi is invited to Naruto's marriage to Hinata Hyuga. He plans to go, but worries that Naruto and Hinata's friends might not be able to attend due to their mission assignments. He therefore gives everyone an assignment to bring a gift to the wedding, thereby ensuring that they will all be available. On the day of the wedding, Kakashi greets foreign guests such as Killer B and the 5th Kazukage. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise Kakashi informs Naruto, Sakura, and Sai that more than a hundred Kumo and Kiri shinobi have gone missing and learns from Sakura that a few Konoha shinobi are missing as well. Sai informs Kakashi that he had been in contact with Sasuke, whom Kakashi had previously asked to lead the investigation into the disappearances due to that only his ocular powers can cancel Genjutsu, and Kumo Gakure and Kiri Gakure had agreed to cooperate in the investigation. Kakashi surmises that a Genjutsu user captured the missing shinobi and is using Genjutsu on them to attack the hidden villages. The village is then attacked by intruders, and Kakashi orders his former students to join with Shikamaru, Choji, and Ino in order to help stop the intruders, whom he later learns are some of the missing shinobi. Once the shinobi are defeated and captured, Kakashi sends a message of the incident to Sasuke, who is traveling to the Land of Lightning and stops at a village in the Land of Hot Water. Sasuke, in turn, sends a letter about his suspicions about the Dark Thunder group being involved. Kakashi has Yamato meet with Sasuke to exchange intel on the situation. Kakashi receives a message from Sasuke that he captured the true culprits, Chino and Nawaki, in Yugakure. After Sasuke drops him off at another village, Kakashi arrives to meet with the two, but explains he received a good word from Sasuke about them. Rather than putting them in prison, he is offering them a chance to atone by working for Kumagakure and Kirigakure, which they accept. New Era on the day of Naruto's Hokage inauguration, he fails to show up, having been knocked out earlier. With no time left to wait, Kakashi has Konohamaru Sarutobi impersonate Naruto so that the festivities can proceed as planned. Retired from active duty, Kakashi continued to assist in village matters and advise his successor. Academy Entrance Arc In the anime, when learning about the mysterious attacks in the village, Kakashi begins investigating the incident and learns that it involves a root project. Upon reporting his findings to Naruto at the Hokage office, the two discuss the investigation with Shikamaru. Realizing the culprit planned to unleash Nue on the village now that it was nearing completion, Kakashi went in search of the rogue student. Arriving at Senju Park, Kakashi immediately severed the creature's tails, resulting in the spontaneous emergence of dozens of smaller tails, which it used to steal chakra from Sai's men. After saving them, Kakashi organized the team to hold off the creature. As Naruto arrives, Kakashi stops him from fighting, explaining that the creature's intention was to gather enough chakra to produce a powerful explosion to destroy the village. As the shinobi attempt to subdue the beast, it teleports away, much to Kakashi's surprise. Kakashi deduced that while this creature was a summoning, it uniquely existed normally in a separate dimension, leaving others unable to follow it. Konoha Shinden, Steam Ninja Scrolls on the day of the Kage summit in Konoha, Kakashi leaves for the land of hot water with Gai and Mirai Sarutobi. Later, the group arrived in the land of hot water. There they found annual festival slash competition where a town was split between two beliefs on its origins, some believing that there is a cat spirit and others believed it to be a dog spirit. Mirai stopped the chaos by producing a fire release in unison with the Genjutsu to form a cat dog spirit, which told the townspeople to stop the feuding. When Gai believed the Genjutsu to be a demon and attacked it, he accidentally knocked down the main wall that split the town, thereby convincing the villagers that it was a sign for them to truly come together. Afterwards, Kakashi applauded Mirai on combining the signature skills of her parents. During a stop at an inn, they met a young orphan named Tatsumi, who, despite having no money, was determined to visit all the hot springs in the land in memory of her late mother. 
At Mirai's request, it was agreed that the little girl could join them on their trip. Later, during the trip, Tatsumi and Mirai snuck off in the hopes of a nearby hot spring rumored to let people talk with loved ones from the past. Kakashi and Guy soon found them, learning that the rumored hot spring was a ruse conceived by remnants of the near-forgotten Jashin cult to restore their former glory and power. Kakashi, along with Guy and Mirai, swiftly defeated the fanatics. Later, it was revealed that Kakashi and Guy's vacation was in fact a cover for their working with the Land of Hot Water to uncover the truth behind the missing girls. Graduation Exams Arc Offering his services as a proctor for the upcoming graduation exams, Kakashi disguised himself as Sukiya, a freelance reporter who interviewed various students to better understand their respective nature. After classes, Kakashi met up with Boruto, who helped him meet with the students. As Boruto was amazed that his classmates all had plans for the future, some as ninja and some decided to pursue goals outside ninja work, Kakashi noted that while the world had become in less need of ninja, ninja skills can prove valuable in other fields. He also noted that regardless, one must always decide on goals if they wish to grow as individuals. Later, talking to Iruka in his office, Iruka suggested that Kakashi not be too hard on the students come the final exams. Kakashi clarifies that even in peaceful times, they can't allow students with contemptuous attitudes to become shinobi, and as such will be as challenging as ever. During the practical test of the exams, the students were left awe-stricken that the 6th Hokage was to be their head proctor. It was explained that while Shino Aburame, Anko Mitarashi, and Konohamaru Sarutobi would be evaluating the students' respective performances in a 24-hour field combat, ultimately only one student could pass. That student would be the one who takes a single bell from Kakashi's hip. While others were annoyed by this, Kakashi insisted that they had already had enough shinobi in this era of peace. As the test began, many of the students began to scramble. Boruto soon found Kakashi and attacked hard, but the legendary ninja easily saw through his tactics. While admitting that Boruto was truly a genius well above the rest of his generation, he still lacked a very crucial aspect to deserve being a ninja, quickly pinning the Uzumaki down. Kakashi explained that a ninja with no resolve will only doom themselves, and that Boruto is solely responsible for his classmates becoming so lazy and carefree. To prove his point, he revealed himself as Sukiya from earlier, showing how well he knows Boruto. As Boruto continued to struggle free from the sixth hold, his fellow classmates provided enough distraction for him to escape. Later, having listened to the nature of Kakashi's words, but also to the encouragement of his friends, Boruto conceived a plan to save the captured classmates and pass the test, realizing the true nature behind it. Boruto designed a group assault on Kakashi, but he quickly saw through the facade, easily repelling the entire class's group assault on him. However, this was a trick that drew Kakashi into a group string light formation. Deeply impressed, Kakashi attempted to repel them with a lightning burst, but the students refused to let the technique be broken, even when knocked to the ground. Ultimately, time ran out before anyone could get the bell. Despite Boruto's plan failing, Kakashi passed everyone, cheerfully noting while they actually had zero chance of taking the bell, they succeeded in the true goal of the test, teamwork and loyalty. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day When Konohagakure began a new holiday, Parent and Child Day, Kakashi discovered that the constantly traveling Sasuke had returned to the village and was struggling to connect with his daughter. Realizing that Sasuke hardly knew anything about his daughter since he had been away for most of her life, Kakashi decided to help out using ideas from his Icha Icha series. Soon realizing that these ideas were better suited for a romantic couple, as they only succeeded in further estranging Sasuke from his daughter and even making Sasuke more furious at Kakashi, the retired Hokage suggested asking Sakura for advice since she knows her family better. Versus Momoshiki Arc as investigations on Kaguya continued, it was discovered that her creation of the White Zetsu army was an extra precaution for a looming threat. Sometime after attending a village meeting with Naruto, Kakashi attends the finals for the Chunin exams in Konoha alongside Gai and Iruka. When the stadium is attacked by Kinshiki and Momoshiki Otsutsuki, Kakashi helps rescue spectators in the arena. Mitsuki's Disappearance Arc in the anime, after the defeat of the attackers and Konohagakure's recovery from the attack, a Kage summit was held. Kakashi and the other retired Kage were in attendance to discuss the still looming threat of the Otsutsuki. The next morning, when two Chunin gate guards were attacked by unknown assailants, the village was put on lockdown. Kakashi joined Naruto and his advisors when overseeing Ino probe one of the guards' minds for answers, learning that Mitsuki had left willingly with the attackers. When Naruto revealed to the others Mitsuki was in fact Orochimaru's son, much outrage followed from learning that Naruto would permit an offspring of the man who killed the third Hokage live in Konohagakure, let alone keep it a secret. Naruto rationalized this on the grounds that Orochimaru's conduct had changed from before and for his aid in investigating the Otsutsuki. 
Despite this, noting the unpredictable nature of Orochimaru, the meeting ended and deemed the Oto-born boy as a threat. As the council and Hokage continue to talk about how to best deal with this, Kakashi voices overall approval of Naruto's actions, noting that Naruto would never do anything he thought would bring danger to the village, and that the elders wouldn't even consider letting the boy in the village had they known the full story to begin with. Kara Actuation Arc in the anime, Kakashi felt a bad air about him, worrying that things were going to get difficult for him. Kakashi's fears were soon realized when Boruto approached him for help. He got Ibiki Morino to transfer Shojoji from prison to a police facility to face off against Boruto. While Ibiki was concerned by this, Kakashi promised to take full responsibility. As Shojoji reminded Kakashi of the terms of their agreement, Kakashi swore to keep his word to reduce Shojoji's sentence, but that also meant that Shojoji would have to actually defeat Boruto. During the match, Shoujoji's wind release, Shield of the Wind Count, proved to be as powerful against Boruto's attacks as previously. This prompted Boruto to use his new compression Rasengan. It was able to overpower Shoujoji's defenses and swiftly defeat him. As Kakashi commended Boruto for coming up with the alternate plan to condense his Rasengan rather than expand it, Boruto collapsed as his long hours of training caught up to him, still impressing Kakashi with Boruto's capacities. Kakashi brought Boruto back to the hospital to recover. Upon his awakening, Kakashi applauded Boruto's accomplishments, but warned him of the dangers of his new technique. Noting that the compression Rasengan comes with great recoil that can cause great strain on his arm, it is not a technique that Boruto should use often. Later, Victor, president of the Land of Valley's premier medical and research company, was defeated and revealed as a member of Kara. While Kakashi voiced his horror at Victor's attempt to recreate the God Tree, it was also revealed from an investigation that Victor's laboratory had scriptures relating to Shojoji's intel, vague information of a vessel, and secret knowledge that should only be known by the Five Kage. Realizing that Kara had spies throughout the world, the question of whether or not to close the gates to the village came up. Kakashi voiced his opinion that closing off from the outside world would stunt growth. Ao Arc In the anime, Kakashi attended the memorial service for the fallen people of the Fourth Shinobi World War. Kawaki Arc In the anime, following Jigen's attack on the village, the archives were soon broken into and data was stolen. Kakashi began his own investigation. He soon found Team Ten's Genin trying to find the culprit as well. Impressed by how quickly they had found the culprit's hideout, he decided to work with them. Soon they found the culprit, Koji Kashin, who had made an escape. As he snuck into the crowd, Kakashi realized that he went underground into the sewer. He decided to go alone after determining the foe was too dangerous for the Genin. Along the way, Shikadai informed Kakashi that the sewers have an opening at the Thunder Rail. Kakashi realized that the sewer and train were both a diversion for Koji's true objective. He arrived before Koji at another archive site which housed physical data on a scroll not yet digitized from before the Fourth Shinobi World War. Kakashi fought Koji, who retreated. Later, Shikadai voiced his theory that the reason why Koji was able to slip past the sensing barrier unnoticed was because he was a former Konoha Nin. Kakashi agreed that it would also explain why he was after the scroll. Later, Kakashi aided Shikamaru's coordination efforts in preparation for Ishiki's invasion. Naruto Uzumaki Naruto Uzumaki is a shinobi of Konohagakure's Uzumaki clan. He became the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails on the day of his birth, a fate that caused him to be shunned by most of Konoha throughout his childhood. After joining Team Kakashi, Naruto worked hard to gain the village's acknowledgement, all while chasing his dream to become Hokage. In the following years, through many hardships and ordeals, he became a capable ninja regarded as a hero both by the villagers and soon after the rest of the world, becoming known as the Hero of the Hidden Leaf. He soon proved to be one of the main factors in winning the Fourth Shinobi World War, leading him to achieve his dream and become the village's seventh Hokage. Background Naruto was born on the night of October 10th to Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage, and Kushina Uzumaki, the second Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. He was named after Naruto Musasabi, the protagonist of Jiraiya's first book, which made the Sanin his godfather. The third Hokage made special arrangements for Minato to preserve Kushina's seal containing the Nine Tails when she gave birth to Naruto in a remote location, escorted by midwives and Anbu. A masked man, Tobi, tracked down their location, however, and killed the midwives and Anbu, and captured Naruto, forcing Minato to quickly rescue him and teleport him to a safe house. With Minato gone, Tobi captured Kushina and released the Ninetales from her, using it to devastate Konoha. Minato saved Kushina and left Naruto in her care before he went to protect the village, eventually defeating Tobi and freeing the Ninetales from Tobi's control. Returning to Naruto and Kushina's location, Minato realized the only way to stop the Ninetales was to seal it within Naruto, believing that his son would someday need the fox's power to defeat Tobi when he returned. 
Since the Ninetales chakra was too immense to be sealed into an infant, Minato sacrificed his soul to split the fox's chakra in half, sealing the yin half within himself and the yang half within Naruto. After telling Naruto how much they loved him, Minato and Kushina succumbed to their wounds from protecting their son from the Ninetales and passed away. Orphaned, not having any parents or anyone else to provide for him, Naruto received monthly income from the village in order to afford daily necessities. He grew up not knowing who his parents were, receiving only his mother's surname, as Hiruzen wanted to protect Naruto from his father's enemies. Minato's dying wish that Naruto be regarded as a hero was honored by very few who could put aside their pain and losses caused by the disaster. While the majority of Konoha, having no knowledge of the circumstances surrounding his birth, openly ostracized and resented Naruto for containing the beast that devastated the village and took so many lives. Some even viewed Naruto as the Ninetales himself. Soon, the third Hokage forbade anyone from mentioning the Ninetales, hoping that the younger generation would not blindly hate Naruto as their parents did. However, Naruto's peers emulated their parents' hatred of him, despite not knowing why. This social isolation caused Naruto to crave acknowledgement, which he would gain by pulling pranks. On the day of his enrollment in the Ninja Academy, Naruto first met Hinata Hyuga, who was being picked on by three bullies. Despite not knowing her, Naruto immediately came to her defense, but was outnumbered and knocked unconscious, and the bullies damaged his red scarf. When Naruto awoke, Hinata thanked him for helping her and returned his scarf to him, but he let her keep it. He was unaware that the girl's growing affections for him began from that moment onwards. In the academy, Naruto became a student of Iruka Umino, who acted as a surrogate older brother to keep him in line and help him work harder. Naruto also met his classmate Sasuke Uchiha and tried to befriend him since he was alone as well. Jealous of Sasuke's skills and popularity, however, he developed a one-sided rivalry in his pursuit to prove himself just as good as, if not better than, Sasuke, wishing that someday Sasuke would accept him as an equal. Naruto also grew close with the owner of Ramen Ichiraku, Teuchi, and his daughter, Ayame being welcomed as their favorite customer. Prologue, Land of Waves. Failing once again to graduate from the academy, a disappointed Naruto is advised by one of his instructors, Mizuki, to steal the Scroll of Seals and learn a technique from it in order to graduate. As Naruto struggled to learn the Shadow Clone technique, Iruka Umino tracked him down and realized that Naruto was tricked by Mizuki into stealing the scroll. Mizuki attacked them and told Naruto about the nine tails sealed within him, claiming that Iruka hated him because of it. When Iruka risked his life to protect Naruto, however, he saw through Mizuki's lies and used the multiple Shadow Clone technique to defeat him, prompting Iruka to happily grant Naruto his graduation from the academy. Naruto would also later befriend Konohamaru Sarutobi, grandson of the third Hokage, and teach him several perverted or useful techniques. Naruto was eventually assigned to Team 7, partnered with Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Harano under the leadership of Kakashi Harake. During their first meeting, Naruto shared his love of ramen, his hobbies, and his dream to become Hokage. To test their qualifications, Kakashi gave the team a bell test, stating that whichever of the three takes one of the two bells on his person will officially become Genin. Instead of hiding like Sakura and Sasuke, Naruto tried to take the bells from Kakashi by force, only to be easily defeated, hung upside down from a tree, and tied to a wooden post in an attempt to steal lunch. After Sakura and Sasuke fail as well, Kakashi explains that the goal of the test was to use teamwork to do together what none of them could do by themselves. He is persuaded to allow them to try again after lunch, but instructs Sasuke and Sakura not to feed Naruto. They feed him anyway, needing him in top form if they're to work together. Kakashi sees this and, because they care more about the team than listening to his instructions, allows them all to pass. After a series of uneventful D-rank missions, Naruto is able to secure a C-rank mission for Team 7, escorting Tazuna to the Land of Waves. Soon after leaving Konoha, they are attacked by the Demon Brothers. Naruto is paralyzed with fear, forcing Sasuke to step in to disarm them and protect Tazuna until Kakashi can capture them. Tazuna confesses that assassins have been hired to kill him, but he couldn't afford the bodyguard detail he needs. Although the mission is now A rank in nature, far beyond the skill of Genin, Team 7 decides to continue with it. Angered by Sasuke's taunting of him, Naruto cuts his hand to bleed out the poison he received earlier, vowing to never waver again. When they arrive in the Land of Waves and are confronted by Zabuza Momochi, Naruto is overwhelmed by the battle between Kakashi and Zabuza before he's knocked aside by Zabuza's water clone. Remembering his vow, Naruto regained his confidence and teamed up with Sasuke to free Kakashi from Zabuza's water prison. In the end, Zabuza is seemingly killed by Haku, allowing Team 7 to escort Tazuna back to his house. Kakashi finds Zabuza's death suspicious and decides to train the team in case he returns. He has them perform the tree climbing practice in order to improve their chakra control 
which will help them against Zabuza. Naruto becomes frustrated after several failures and asks for advice from Sakura, who herself mastered it from the start. Now rapidly improving, Naruto competes with Sasuke to finish the training, each determined to outdo the other. One day, Naruto encounters Haku, albeit unaware of his true identity, and they each discuss their dreams and desire to protect those precious to them. After Haku leaves, Naruto finishes the training with Sasuke, but is left exhausted, so Team 7 leaves him behind the next morning as they resume their escort duties. Naruto awakens and arrives to assist Team 7 in fighting Zabuza and Haku, but unaware of how Haku's demonic mirroring ice crystals work, he joins Sasuke within the prison. Naruto cannot break free with his shadow clones, and Sasuke cannot melt the ice with his fire. As Haku moves in to kill Naruto, Sasuke uses his body as a shield to protect Naruto and seemingly dies. Enraged by Sasuke's apparent death, Naruto unwittingly accesses the Ninetales chakra for the first time, allowing him to destroy the ice mirrors and defeat Haku, breaking his mask. Realizing his opponent was the boy he met before, Naruto calms himself. He's asked by Haku to kill him, since he feels of no further use to Zabuza. Before Naruto can do so, Haku immediately stops him and goes off to save Zabuza from being killed by Kakashi, sacrificing his own life. When Zabuza refuses to appreciate this, Naruto angrily scolds him, stating that Haku gave up his life to save someone precious to him. Touched by his words, Zabuza, using Naruto's kunai, killed Gato and many of his henchmen before he himself dies. Sasuke soon awakens, and when their injuries heal, Team 7 leaves for home via Tazuna's newly constructed Great Naruto Bridge. Chunin Exams Team 7 resumes its series of unremarkable missions. For their performance in the Land of Waves, however, Kakashi decides to enter them in the Chunin exams taking place in Konoha, which greatly excites Naruto. Because they've only recently graduated from the academy, the three feel they must give strong showings to prove themselves. When they enter the exam hall, the team is met by Rock Lee, who challenges Sasuke to a fight. Naruto tries to attack Lee in jealousy, but is easily swept aside. The fight is interrupted by Might Guy, after which Naruto notes that the bandages around Lee's arms signify his arduous taijutsu training. During the exam's first stage, the participating genin are given a written test, the goal of which is to cheat without getting caught. Unaware of this, Naruto struggles to answer the questions, so Hinata Hyuga, who's seated beside him, offers to let him copy off her paper. Despite the temptation, Naruto declined Hinata's offer claiming that he isn't the type to cheat, and they might be disqualified if they're caught. Before the 10th question can be given, the Genin are presented with the opportunity to forfeit. Naruto refuses to do so, declaring his refusal to give up and his goal to still become Hokage. His determination to face the 10th question despite the potential consequence inspires the rest of the Genin to do the same, so they pass the first stage. It is later noted that he was the only one to hand in a blank sheet, though this did not prevent him from passing. For the second phase, teams enter the Forest of Death, with the objective of obtaining a set of two scrolls, one of which they're given at the start. Naruto becomes separated from his team and is attacked and swallowed by a giant snake. He manages to kill it and regroups with his frightened teammates against Orochimaru. Angered by Sasuke's sudden cowardice and resignation, Naruto engages Orochimaru using the Ninetales Chakra, defeats his giant snake, and taunts Sasuke before Orochimaru suppresses the Ninetales Chakra, rendering Naruto unconscious. After he awakens, Team 7 continues its search for the second scroll, which they eventually gain by defeating Team Obero, allowing them to pass the second stage. In the preliminary matches of the exam, Naruto is pitted against Kiba Inuzuka and his dog, Akamaru. Believing the match to be an easy victory, Kiba and Akamaru overwhelm Naruto with many high-speed attacks. So Naruto tricks Kiba into knocking Akamaru out of the fight by using the transformation technique, shocking all spectators. Naruto then disorients Kiba by farting in his face and defeats him with the Naruto Uzumaki combo, which he invented from watching Sasuke's lion combo. When Neji and Hinata's match begins, Naruto is enraged by Neji's ruthless tirade against Hinata and cheers Hinata on to defeat Neji. Although Hinata is defeated, Naruto wipes up her blood and vows to defeat Neji in the finals. During the month of training, Naruto first meets Jiraiya, who knocked out Ebisu, Naruto's original teacher, and trains under the Sanin to improve his chakra control. Recognizing Naruto as the Ninetales Jinchuriki, Jiraiya removes the seal Orochimaru had placed on Naruto to ease his control and begins teaching him how to use the Ninetales power by summoning toads. To accelerate Naruto's slow progress, Jiraiya pushes him off a cliff causing Naruto to enter his subconscious and meet the Ninetales. Working past his fear, he bravely demands chakra from it as rent for living in his body. The Ninetales complies, and Naruto summons Gamabunta, although he exhausts himself and ends up in the hospital, where he's visited by Shikamaru Nara. After talking, he and Naruto stop Gara from killing Rock Lee in the next room and listen to Gara's story of his childhood, which Naruto finds very similar to his own. Gara prepares to kill them, but Might Guy intervenes and forces Gara to retreat. 
On the day of the finals, Naruto meets Hinata at the third training ground and expresses his doubts about his upcoming match against Neji. Hinata reassures Naruto that he never gave up because he always had the strength to overcome his own failures, admiring him for it. Reinvigorated, Naruto thanks Hinata and tells her even though he first thought she was weird, he likes her now. Facing Neji in the first match of the finals, Naruto began by creating shadow clones to overwhelm Neji's with sheer numbers. Deeming Naruto a failure who could never defeat a genius like himself, Neji easily defeats Naruto's clones and seals his chakra with 8 trigrams 64 palms. Determined to prove Neji's ideals about fate wrong, Naruto tapped into the Ninetales chakra and revitalized Clash with Neji. When the smoke cleared, Neji emerges and Naruto lies defeated. This, however, was only a shadow clone, and the real Naruto burst from the ground beneath Neji, defeating him with an uppercut. Before he's declared the winner, Naruto tells Neji that creating clones was once his shortcoming, and that Neji needs to stop believing in inescapable fate. When Sasuke finally arrives for his match with Gara, Naruto is envious of Sasuke's improvements, but is later put to sleep along with most of the audience, commencing the Konoha Crush. Konoha Crush. Sakura wakes up Naruto so they can pursue Sasuke, who is pursuing Gara himself. They arrive in time for Naruto to kick Gara away before he can kill Sasuke. Partially transformed into Shukaku, Gara knocks Sakura unconscious and binds her to a tree, forcing Naruto to battle him with little success. Naruto relates to Gara's painful life as a Junchuriki, but he's not willing to let anything happen to Sakura and Sasuke. Determined to protect his friends, Naruto creates an army of shadow clones to relentlessly batter Gara, forcing him to fully transform into Shukaku, to which Naruto responds by summoning Gamabunta. Gara puts himself to sleep to give control of his body to Shukaku, forcing Naruto and Gamabunta to figure out a way to end the jutsu. They do so by transforming into a giant fox, the nine tails in the anime, to restrain Shukaku, allowing Naruto to awaken Gara with a solid punch to the face. Shukaku's influence disappears, but Gara regains control and traps Naruto with his sand. Naruto escapes by tapping into the nine tails chakra and headbutts Gara when he's close enough, destroying Shukaku's form. Exhausted from the fight, the two leap at each other for one final exchange, and Naruto punches Gara, claiming victory. Naruto and Gara fall to the ground, unable to move. Slowly crawling towards Gara, Naruto explained that he also suffered a painful and lonely life, but was later saved by having friends. To that end, he will do anything to protect them, even if it means killing Gara. Understanding Naruto's true strength, Gara retreated with Konkuro and Tamari, with a new outlook on life, while Naruto passes out from exhaustion and is returned to Konoha with Sasuke and a rescued Sakura. A few days later, Team 7 attends the third Hokage's funeral. Search for Tsunade Jiraiya is tasked with finding Tsunade, a candidate for 5th Hokage, and convinces Naruto to accompany him by promising to teach him a technique stronger than Sasuke's Chidori. Stopping at an inn in Shukuba town, Naruto was approached by Kisame Hoshigaki and Itachi Uchiha of Akatsuki, who intend to capture the Ninetales. When Sasuke shows up and furiously attacks Itachi, Naruto gathers the Ninetales chakra to help Sasuke, but it's absorbed by Kisame's Samehara. Jiraiya soon arrives and drives off Itachi and Kisame, but Sasuke is left mentally and physically damaged by Itachi. Might Guy appears and takes Sasuke back to Konoha, but not before giving Naruto a spare green jumpsuit. To prepare for the next encounter with Akatsuki, Naruto begins learning the Rasengan, completing two of its three learning steps. Taking a break from training, Naruto and Jiraiya eventually found Tsunade and her assistant Shizune at a restaurant. When Tsunade refuses the offer to become Hokage and insults all who held the title, an angry Naruto challenged her to a fight and attacked her with an incomplete Rasengan, only to be easily defeated. Impressed by his progress, however, Tsunade makes a bet with Naruto. If he can master the Rasengan in a week, he gets the first Hokage's necklace. If not, she gets his wallet. Naruto agreed and spent the week trying to perfect the Rasengan, but has no success and collapses from exhaustion. Once he recovers, Naruto heads out with Jiraiya and Shizune to stop Tsunade from a meeting with Orochimaru. They arrive to see Tsunade, who never intended to aid Orochimaru, in the midst of battle with Kabuto Yakushi. When Tsunade is incapacitated, Naruto fights Kabuto in her place and eventually defeats him with a perfected Rasengan, which he formed by using a Shadow Clone. Naruto collapses almost immediately afterwards, his heart muscles torn by Kabuto, but Tsunade successfully manages to heal him, gives him the necklace he wins, and accepts the position of Hokage. After Orochimaru and Kabuto are defeated, Naruto and the others return to Konoha, Tsunade confidently believing Naruto would someday become a great Hokage. Naruto the Movie, Ninja Clash in the Land of Snow The movie begins with a heroine previously unknown in the Naruto continuity, Princess Fun, Princess Gale in the US version. Foon's nemesis, Mao, challenged her group with an army of undead soldiers. His dark intentions seemed to prevail, that is, until Princess Foon and her cohorts, Shishimaru, Brit, and Sukoyaku, unleashed the power of the Seven Colored Chakra upon him. They saved the day, and Naruto, watching from afar, couldn't have been more elated. 
As it turned out, Naruto was actually watching the scene in a movie, as was the rest of Team 7. However, the audience of the movie began to throw objects at the team for making so much noise whilst arguing with the cinema manager. As the team is forced to leave the theater without being able to see the ending, suddenly the actress who played Princess Foon, Yuki Fujikaze, passes by on horse, being chased by armored men on horses as well. As Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke manage to easily defeat the attackers, it turns out that they were actually stuntmen disguised as bodyguards, led by Yuki's manager, Sandayu Asama. As Kakashi comes to inform them of this misunderstanding, he reveals that he had sent them to watch it as preparation for the next mission, to escort Yuki while the crew made the next movie in the Land of Snow. As it turned out, Yuki was actually the princess of the Land of Snow, Koyuki Kazahana. The land had been taken over by her uncle, Doto Kazahana, and his three-man team of rogue ninja when she was a child. Doto wanted Yuki's crystal necklace in order to unlock the Land of Snow's treasure, which Yuki's father, the daimyo, had hidden before being assassinated. As many citizens doubted she had survived, apparently Kakashi was responsible for her rescue during the day of the revolt. Sandayu would eventually find her on stage one day and considered himself lucky to have become her manager. After the discussion, the director would decide that the filming would continue, intrigued by the idea of having a real princess play the princess in the movie. Eventually, Doto would arrive with his team and some ninja subordinates by train after melting the ice that covered the tracks to an old railway system. As Sandayu, who leads a group of 50 samurai, attempt to charge after them, the mortar-mounted compartments release huge waves of kunai, massacring the entire brigade. Sandayu, clinging onto life, passes away after telling Yuki not to cry for him. Suddenly, Doto's blimp manages to capture Yuki and flies away, but not before Naruto manages to cling on with the kunai attached to a rope. As the two are taken to his mansion, Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura eventually regroup with them. After various battles between Team 7 and the Rogue Ninja, resulting in the death of all of the latter and Narare, Doto succeeded in obtaining Yuki's crystal necklace, only to discover that the treasure of the Land of Snow is a generator designed to melt the snow and thus bring spring to the snow country. After a confrontation with Sasuke and Naruto, Doto was then killed by Naruto with his Rasengan in a manner reminiscent of Princess Foon's defeat of Mao involving Rainbow Chakra. With the rogue ninja all gone, Yuki decided to resume her position as the princess of the Land of Snow, which would eventually become the Land of Spring after the technology behind the generator was perfected. Despite being a princess, Yuki intended to continue her role as an actress. At the very end of the movie, Naruto, who had desperately wanted an autograph from the actress, was given an envelope from Sasuke afterwards, who received shocked looks from the other members of Team 7, including Naruto himself. Inside the envelope was a signed photograph from Yuki. The picture was of a bandaged up and apparently unconscious Naruto in the hospital, who was receiving a tender kiss on the cheek from the actress. At the end of the credits, the crew that had made the Princess Foon movie said cut and all cheered in unison. Land of Tea Escort Mission With Konoha having a shortage of Jonin due to Orochimaru's failed invasion, Tsunade was forced to use Genin for more dangerous missions than normally allowed. Team 7, minus Kakashi who was assigned to another mission, was given the assignment of escorting a member of the Wasabi family through a dangerous annual race. Along the way, they met an arrogant teenager named Idate who openly showed his hatred towards Ninja. Upon arriving in the Land of Tea and meeting the Wasabi family's leader, Jirocho, Team 7 was shocked to see Idate again, and learn he was the man they were assigned to escort. They encountered Aoi Rokosho, who betrayed Konoha to join Amegakure. After barely surviving Aoi's attack, Idate explained how after he was failed by Ibiki himself for the Chunin exams, Aoi tricked Idate into stealing a special scroll and the Sword of the Thunder God from the village. Being able to relate with Idate in both being taken advantage of and the need to have others recognize him, Naruto helped Idate regain his self-worth and continue the race. While managing to catch up in the race, Aoi appeared again and used the Thunder Sword to initially overpower Team 7. But thanks to Sasuke fighting Aoi and weakening his sword with his Chidori, Naruto was able to break it when they clashed and defeat Aoi with his Rasengan. With the danger overcome, Idate was free to continue and win the race for the Wasabi family. While returning to the village, Team 7 was escorted by Ibiki himself. Sasuke Recovery Mission Naruto visits a recovering Sasuke at the hospital, but he is immediately challenged to a fight, to which Naruto eventually agrees. The fight escalates quickly, culminating with Naruto using Rasengan and Sasuke using Chidori. Kakashi arrives and deflects their attacks into opposing water towers before they can clash, Naruto unknowingly doing more damage than Sasuke. Distressed by Sasuke's behavior, Sakura informs Naruto of the cursed seal Sasuke received from Orochimaru, though Naruto assures Sakura that Sasuke would never abandon Konoha for power. Unfortunately, Sasuke does just that, and Naruto joins the Sasuke recovery team in order to bring him back. He promises a tearful Sakura to do so before he leaves. 
En route to Sasuke, the team encounters members of the Sound Four, each of which battles with a member of the recovery team, while Naruto engages Kimimaro. Overwhelmed by Kimimaro's taijutsu skills, Naruto is saved at the last minute by Rock Lee, who volunteers to fight Kimimaro while Naruto heads after Sasuke. Naruto finally meets Sasuke at the Valley of the End. His pleas for Sasuke to come back to Konoha and warnings that Orochimaru will take his body fall on deaf ears. Naruto starts attacking him, ready to take him back to Konoha by force if necessary. Undeterred, Sasuke responds by tapping into his cursed seal and landing a series of heavy blows on Naruto. It becomes painfully clear to Naruto that Sasuke is fighting with an intent to kill, so Naruto utilizes the Ninetales Chakra to overpower Sasuke. Naruto says that Sasuke is like a brother to him and that he'll do anything to protect that bond. Sasuke vows to sever that bond, but acknowledges Naruto as an equal by putting on his forehead protector. They continued trading blows, with Naruto eventually manifesting a fox-shaped cloak and Sasuke entering his cursed seal's second level. Naruto clashes his Rasengan with Sasuke's Chidori, and within the dome of resulting energy they trade final blows. Sasuke punches Naruto, and Naruto scratches Sasuke's forehead protector. When the energy dissipates, Naruto lies defeated, but Sasuke spares him and continues his way to Orochimaru, leaving his scratched forehead protector behind. Kakashi and Pakun arrive late, and failing to retrieve Sasuke, leave with Naruto. In the hospital, Naruto once again promises Sakura to bring Sasuke back one day. Soon after, Jiraiya arrived with an offer to train Naruto for preparation against Orochimaru and Akatsuki in three years, and to give up on Sasuke as he's no different from Orochimaru. Naruto accepts Jiraiya's training, but refuses to give up on Sasuke, satisfying Jiraiya. As in the manga, Naruto later departs with Jiraiya to begin his two and a half years of training, after making a determined gesture at the fourth Hokage statue. Naruto the Movie, Legend of the Stone of Gelel. The movie revolves mostly around a special mineral called the Gelel Stone, which has a strong and mysterious power. There was once a clan that could control the stone's powers, but they were destroyed because of the wars for the stone. A battle was taking place at night on a desolate seaside beach between Sunagakure ninja and soldiers wearing bulky suits of armor. Despite their best efforts, the sand ninja are slowly overwhelmed by the sheer strength of their mysterious opponents. The timely arrival of reinforcements, led by Konkuro and Gara, turned the tide of battle, with Konkuro slicing apart a suit of armor with his puppet and Gara dispatching a large number of enemies with his signature sand waterfall imperial funeral. However, when Gara orders the Sand Nin to shine a flare at the retreating enemies, a large warship is revealed, with its own arsenal of heavy weapons, much to the Sand Shinobi's shock and curiosity of its appearance. The ship then opens fire with its guns, and Gara's sand armor barely manages to protect his comrades as its artillery shells relentlessly pounded the beach. Naruto Uzumaki, Shikamaru Nara, and Sakura Haruno are in a mission to capture a lost pet ferret and deliver it to its village. Naruto comically refers to the creature as a cat for the remainder of the movie. But while on their way to return the animal, they're attacked by a mysterious man clothed in knight armor. He too is accompanied by these strange armored soldiers from before. The three fight him, but get separated when Naruto, the knight, and the pet ferret all fall off a cliff. Shikamaru and Sakura only realize afterwards what has happened and immediately go to look for them. Before they can, what appears to be an earthquake stops them in their tracks until they realize that it isn't an earthquake at all, but the movement of a giant mechanical moving structure. Sakura and Shikamaru split up to search for Naruto. Naruto wakes up to find himself bandaged, as well as right next to an equally wounded unknown man. They have been taken in by a very peaceful caravan of nomads that own a number of foreign animals, including ostriches and rhino. An old man goes on to inform Naruto that they are in fact the village that hired the leaf ninja to return their pet ferret, named Nerugui. The ferret also seems to have a great interest in the unknown man, much to the despair of the elder. While healing, the man seems to have a flashback dream that depicts what happened to him as a child. His home was invaded and destroyed while he hid, seemingly the only one left alive. He is almost found, but in the last moment he is spared and manages to live. Kahiko and his granddaughter Emina go on to explain to Naruto how their clan once originally had a country, but it was destroyed a very long time ago by some kind of disaster, and that Nerugui is proof of it. They also tell him how Nerugui is in fact older than the clan elder, having been looked after by the clan for generations. As Naruto looks for an explanation from Temujin, the knight only asks Naruto about his strange power that is actually his chakra. Temujin appears to not know what chakra is, even if he can wield a similar power. Temujin simply tells him that he's there to build a utopia, and then goes on to invite Naruto to join him. Naruto promptly refuses, only for the ostrich he's riding to run away on its own. Still looking for an explanation from Temujin, Naruto follows him as he sneaks away from the caravan. After risking his injuries to save one of the caravan's children from falling from a tree, Temujin claims that his debt has been repaid and continues to leave. Meanwhile, Shikamaru infiltrates the mechanical structure and finds what appears to be a lab with children in capsules. They're overlooked by a pair of women, Kamida and Ranka, with similar armor to what Temujin had been wearing, whom operate a machine that makes bulky soldiers from before. The two discuss the Gelel Stone, something that Shikamaru has never heard of. 
He's almost caught, but manages to flee at the last moment. Naruto discovers that Temujin has gone missing and goes to head after him when Kahiko comes to him, saying how Nerugoi has disappeared again. As his mission was to deliver the pet to the village the group was headed to, he still has to complete it. The clan elder even goes as far as saying that he should have hired Sand Ninja instead. Even though he returned the ferret to its owners, Naruto still must go and find it again. Meanwhile, Sakura comes across an abandoned campfire and finds the caravan's trail. Naruto goes on to find Temujin again, who has Nerugui with him. He comically tells him to hand over the cat. Temujin finally reveals his name, and they find themselves in front of the large vessel from before. They go inside, revealing the structure to be very advanced in technology, and a sort of European-like cathedral on the inside. There, Temujin introduces Naruto to his master, Haido. Dressed in what appears to be a bishop's robe, Haido goes on into detail about their goals, and again extends the invitation to join them. Naruto claims that he can't join them because he's going to be Hokage, but offers to spread the peace that they wish for. Nerugui appears on Temujin's shoulder, instantly showing a dislike for Haido. Haido starts thinking when they mention a caravan. They move out when an overheard announcement tells them that the fleet that was sent to the Land of Wind has been annihilated. Temujin and Naruto head on to find the ship that had attacked the Sand Ninja, beached with all kinds of metal parts in the sand. Once they investigate the vessel, Naruto discovers Konkuro among a room filled with unconscious children amidst the rubble. Konkuro immediately attacks Temujin, explaining how the ship had been wiping out Land of Wind villages. Naruto demands an explanation, but all Temujin can reply is noble sacrifices for the greater good. Before they battle, they're interrupted by Kamira and Ranka, who Konkuro and Gara take on. Kamira uses a kind of mind control that seems to be Genjutsu. Meanwhile, Ranka transforms herself, causing her to have several gorilla-like traits, as well as large lightning attacks. After a hefty battle, Gara manages to distinguish Ranka's lightning and kill her, but Kamira manages to flee by growing bat-like features, wings included. During the commotion, Naruto is separated from Temujin. The movie shifts to the caravan being attacked by one of Haido's followers known as Fugai. After destroying most of the wagons and killing most of the livestock, she questions Kahiko about where the Gelel stone is. Thankfully, who should step in but Shikamaru and Sakura, who claim to have seen her flare? They already managed to take out the soldiers. Fugai goes on to take on wolf-like traits and manages to escape. Shikamaru questions the elder about the Gelel stones, but he doesn't want to talk. They start to leave, saying that they need to find a friend. When Kahiko asks if their friend is Naruto, they find out that Naruto is with him. The elder goes on to ask the two for help. Through a series of flashbacks, we discover how Temujin met Haido after his village was destroyed. We also discover that Temujin actually has a Gelel stone inside of him, causing his eyes to appear the red color they are. After getting word that the caravan from before has information, Temujin returns to what is left of it only to be captured by Shikamaru. Naruto has managed to find Shikamaru and Sakura, and the three stay with the caravan people, who have managed to escape and are currently hiding in a cave. There, they question Temujin to find out what Haido wants with the Gelel stone. Kahiko claims that the stones only cause harm, but Temujin reveals that he has a stone inside of him. The elder goes on to question Temujin about a book and about their clan, confusing Temujin. He tells them that only members of the royal family of their clan could bind the stones with their bodies, Temujin being one of them. He then tells them that the royal family left and crossed the ocean, taking the book of Gelel with them. Temujin hasn't come to a new land, in fact he has returned home. Kahiko tells them that he doesn't know of the stone's origin, but they do know it was a mineral that their clan was able to refine and use as they pleased. It was very powerful, so much so that an entire civilization was wiped out in a battle over it. Afterward, the few remaining clan members sealed it away in an attempt to keep it from happening again. The only reason they didn't destroy it was because the only ones who could were those of royal blood. Determined after the tale, Temujin tells them that he only wants to achieve his dream of a utopia. He manages to escape, he was free the whole time, and kidnaps Kahiko to make him lead him to the Galel Mines. They don't know where the mines are, but Nerugui manages to lead them to it. Temujin and the Elder find the ruins and journey deep into them to find the entrance into the mines. The Leaf Ninja try to save Kahiko, only for Haido and his entourage to appear. Shikamaru tries to stop Haido to question him, only for Haido to claim he only wants peace, and that he's going to create a utopia. Shikamaru ironically states that they are doing the exact opposite. Naruto angrily asks him if he even cares about his fallen comrades, whom Haido only claims are noble sacrifices. Temujin grimly agrees. After Naruto tells him that dreams without friends are nothing, the Elder finally triggers a mechanism that seals him and Temujin into a passageway in the mines. Haido reveals that he possesses the Book of Gelel before smashing Naruto into a wall like it was nothing and follows them. Kamida and Fugai attack, but Shikamaru and Sakura hold them off to allow Naruto to follow Haido. Temujin and Kahiko find themselves in the Chamber of Sealing and find a picture that appears to be one of despair. The Elder tries to reason with Temujin, but Temujin doesn't wish to hear it. Kahiko then reveals a knife. Meanwhile, Kamida toys with Shikamaru as she flies around. He is unable to get a lock on her shadow, but then he suddenly spots Konkuro on the far side of the ruins. As Fugai chases after Sakura, she is unable to lose her even after Sakura blinds her. 
Finding a crystal structure that creates echoes, Sakura uses herself as bait so Fugai will howl and triggers the crystals to collapse on top of her. Shikamaru fills the whole area with lines with explosives. Most of them are fake, just pieces of paper, so Kamida cannot fly about. Just as Kamida thinks she knows what he has in store, Kankuro suddenly launches one of his puppets to automatically trap and kill her. After wounding Temujin, the Elder has his blood on a dagger and he tries to pierce a seal on the door only for Haido to interrupt. Just as Haido finds the Mayan's key, Nerugui tries to stop him. The ferret is killed by a barrier around him and a Gelel stone falls out of his mouth. Temujin stands in front of the Elder as Haido is about to kill him, Temujin claiming that there is no reason to kill him. Temujin suddenly has a bit of deja vu just as Naruto appears. Haido tells Temujin to kill the both of them, but Temujin has had enough and refuses. Haido then claims that he is useless, no different from his parents. Deja vu happens again, and Temujin finally realizes that Haido was the one who murdered his parents. Haido goes on to turn into his own kind of creature, then captures Temujin and extracts the Galel stone from him. The Elder begs Naruto to stop Haido. Naruto encourages Temujin to get up as he fights, even going so far as to use Rasengan. But Haido has managed to tap into the mine and heals all of his twisted limbs. Naruto still wishes for Temujin to help him, and just as Haido goes to finish them, the fake soldiers go and protect both of them. The souls of the children emerge as the soldiers are destroyed, and Temujin finally realizes his wrongdoings. Combining both Rasengan and the Gelel Stone, Temujin and Naruto manage to kill Haido, but in the process they accidentally destroy the key to the mine. The walls start to crumble around them as the mine spirals out of control. Shikamaru, Sakura, and Konkuro all manage to retrieve the children from the machines, only for the ruins to start collapsing. They cannot control it, but there is a way to destroy it. If Temujin puts his hand on the seal from before, he can summon a time-space continuum. Only royal blood can do it, and the one who does will end up sacrificing himself. Naruto tries to stop Temujin from doing it, for Temujin to knock him out. He says doing it is the only way to atone for what he's done. Temujin goes into the collapsing mine to the seal and activates it. All is quiet as Shikamaru, Sakura, Konkuro, and Gara can only watch as everything in the void's way begins to be devoured. Naruto remembers Sasuke as he's faced with Temujin's death. As Temujin waits for his fate, suddenly he finds himself floating as a line of Naruto clones have clutched onto him. Sakura almost goes into the void herself to see where Naruto is. Only at the last moment, a burst of the Gelel escapes, causing the landmass to start moving. When it finally stops, they find Kahiko, who claims that he feels even better than ever thanks to the Gelel. He is even joyously reunited with a still alive Nerugui. The wastelands have now turned into an oasis, as all the children awaken. Temujin awakens, realizing that he's still alive, with Naruto still clutching his arm. They find the picture of despair from before, and it wasn't one after all, in fact, it was one of hope. Later, they all gather at the ocean, where Temujin and the others all gather and prepare themselves to leave, back to the land that they came from. They're aware that it's one with lots of conflict, but Temujin wishes to help where he can. Temujin's eyes have now turned back to their original bright green, and much to the Elder's disappointment again, Nerugui has chosen to go with them as well. As they leave, Naruto stands on a cliff and shares a sign with Temujin, promising each other to never give up. Naruto the Movie, Guardians of the Crescent Moon Kingdom Naruto Uzumaki, Kakashi Hadake, Sakura Harno, and Rock Lee were assigned to a B-rank mission to protect the Prince of the Land of the Moon, Michiru, during his world trip. Other escorts had been hired, but had quit due to being treated poorly. The Land of the Moon is a very wealthy nation, so Michiru tended to buy whatever he wanted and had a very materialistic worldview. His son, Hikaru Suki, also acted much in the same manner, which irritated Naruto. On the dock of the ship, Naruto was eating a few bowls of ramen while Hikaru was playing on his Game Boy. Sakura leaves to do something, as Hikaru approaches Naruto, he snaps his chopsticks in half in Hikaru's presence. Hikaru carelessly proposes Naruto being his vassal. Naruto gets bewildered and cautious by this. Hikaru explains to Naruto that he'll give him anything he desires. Naruto refuses his offer because of enslavement. Hikaru keeps insisting that Naruto accepts, but Naruto gets annoyed and tells him to stop looking down on people and grow up. Hikaru gets disappointed in this and shoots a toy arrow at the back of his headband, causing Naruto to turn red and become terrifyingly enraged, nearly becoming one-tailed chakra in the process. Naruto, in a rage, snaps his suction cup arrow in half. Hikaru becomes frightened and attempts to flee, but Naruto grabs him, being fed up with his attitude, and explains that he doesn't care if he injures him, claims it'll be worth it, and punches Hikaru in the head, causing him to cry. Naruto informs him that he can't do things as freely as he thinks. Sakura then runs into Naruto for a kid. Naruto is punched into the water. During the trip, the caravan stopped at a circus. When Hikaru took a liking to a rare saber-toothed tiger, Chamu, which was featured there, Michiru ended up purchasing not only it, but the rest of the circus as well, placing it under the team's protection. Hikaru attempted to befriend the tiger, but found that it disliked humans. He lost interest in the circus, and during the sea voyage, when a storm hit, he appeared unconcerned about the animal's well-being, causing Naruto to become disgusted at his lack of value. Upset by Naruto's view of him, Hikaru went up to help Chamu get to safety, and Naruto saved both of them after they were washed overboard. The next day, Naruto, Sakura, and Lee became friends with Hikaru. 
After returning to the land of the moon, the team found that their country had been taken over by Shabadaba, one of the nobles and a former friend of Michiru. Having hired three powerful ninja to assist him, Shabadaba had disposed of the king and planned to do the same with Michiru and Hikaru, remaining heirs to the throne. He ordered the military forces to kill them all, but the team was able to escape with the help of some soldiers still loyal to the king. Escaping to a hidden cave, Michiru found that his father was still alive, but Sakura, although able to heal his petrified arm, was only able to keep him alive for a little while. The king revealed that he had suspected that something like this would happen, and that he'd arranged for the journey to keep Michiru out of harm's way. Before dying, the king told Michiru and Hikaru that people are truly important in life, not material goods. During an attempt to escape the country by boat, the three ninja hired by Shabadaba attacked, disabling Naruto, Kakashi, Sakura, and Lee with reaction dealing poison that slowed their reactions. The prince was captured, but the emergence of Naruto's fox chakra allowed him to repel the attacking ninja before the prince's son could be taken. At the castle, Shabadaba's reasons for taking over the country were revealed to be purely material, the same things Michiru had considered important, as he intended to use the nation's wealth for himself rather than the people. Michiru was disgusted by Shabadaba's attitude and realized the truth of what his father had said. Shabadaba decided to put him to death by a drawn-out hanging. He had Michiru balance on a board of wood not strong enough to support his weight while wearing a noose, ensuring that sooner or later he would fall and be hanged. With the help of the circus Michiru had purchased earlier, Kakashi's team made a rescue attempt with Hikaru and the rogue soldiers, infiltrating the palace by disguising themselves as members of the circus. One by one, Kakashi and his team fought individual battles. Kakashi fought the many soldiers in the courtyard, while each of the genin fought one of the ninja. Lee wielded a pair of nunchaku that had the ability to connect to other staves hidden in his leg weights, creating weapons such as a long staff and a chain whip. After being defeated briefly, Naruto unleashed his fox chakra once again and blew Ishidate away. He killed his opponent, Kongo, using Reverse Lotus. Sakura was able to dispatch her poison and genjutsu using opponent, Karambana, by shattering a chandelier to locate her by watching where she moved, which subsequently killed her with one punch. It turned out Karambana had worn too much perfume, which helped Sakura locate her opponent while in a genjutsu for smelling the perfume. Naruto fought against Ishidate, the leader of the three ninja, while helping Hikaru reach his father. Hikaru shot an arrow, severing the rope around Michiru's neck, and Naruto's shadow clones caught the prince and his father. Ishidate was enraged and attempted to kill Naruto, but Shabadaba ordered him to deal with Michiru. Ishidate powers up his petrification glove to the fullest as Shabadaba continues to tell him which target to pick. Enraged by his constant bickering, Ishidate accidentally petrifies Shabadaba. In the penultimate scene, Naruto, his leg disabled by his opponent's strange petrification technique, rode on Michiru's shoulders to attack with his Rasengan, which then reflected the light of the moon in such a manner that it grew and took on a crescent shape, creating the Crescent Moon Rasengan. He hit Ishidate with this attack, sending him flying and destroying Shabadaba's stone remains, killing them both. After Ishidate's death, Michiru took the throne of the country and promised to rule as his father had done while starting on a diet, beginning weight training, and once the country settles down, he was going to pick Hikaru's mama, Amayo. As Kakashi was immobilized due to overuse of the Sharingan, his team decided to take a vacation in the land of the moon while he recovered. Two weeks later, Kakashi had regained his strength and the team departs as the saviors of the Crescent Moon Kingdom. King Michiru decides once again to try reconnecting with his wife, now knowing what he shouldn't do. Gutsy Master and Student, The Training In the anime, shortly after leaving Konoha, Jiraiya and Naruto discuss the fact that Naruto will need to learn how to counter Genjutsu if he hopes to be a match against Sasuke the next time they meet. Naruto practices with Gamariki to dispel Genjutsu, but he struggles with it and his chakra keeps hitting Gamariki, who doesn't appreciate it. Naruto follows Jiraiya to the Genjutsu Tree Village to try a different approach, but they discover the village has been taken over by Kandachi. They free the villagers and then attack Kandachi, who Naruto eventually defeats with his newly created Big Ball Rasengan. As they leave afterwards, Jiraiya is pleased by how similar Naruto is to Minato Namikaze and hugs him, which Naruto is bothered by. In Naruto's Footsteps, The Friends Paths Two years into their training, Naruto's control of the Ninetales Chakra has improved significantly. Jiraiya tries to give him more access to the Ninetales' power and uses Gerotora to weaken Naruto's 8 trigram ceiling style. Seizing the opportunity, the Ninetales mocked Naruto for his inability to save Sasuke, using Naruto's negative emotions to force him to enter a version 2 form with 4 tails. Not in control of his body, Naruto attacks Jiraiya and nearly kills him before he manages to suppress the Ninetales. Naruto has no memory of what happened, and Jiraiya doesn't tell him, instead shifting Naruto's training to other pursuits, including keeping his anger in check so that the Nine Tails won't flare up again. Kazakage Rescue Mission Naruto and Jiraiya return to Konoha after two and a half years of training, where Naruto becomes surprised by Tsunade's newly formed statue on Hokage Rock. He greets his old friends afterwards. He gives Kakashi a copy of Icha Icha Tactics as a gift, he catches up with Sakura, whom he's become taller than, he gets back into a competition of sexy techniques with Konohamaru Sarutobi, 
only to be violently reprimanded by Sakura. Kakashi reforms Team 7 with them and gives them another bell test, but unlike last time, taking the bells from him is the real objective. As with last time, Naruto launches a first attack before the test officially begins, but this time it nearly succeeds. Despite their improved abilities, Naruto and Sakura were still unable to get a bell through conventional means. And it was only by Naruto's threat to spoil the latest Icha Icha novel that they distracted Kakashi long enough to take the bells. While Team 7 tries without success to find a mission to go on that Naruto won't complain about, word reaches Konoha that Akatsuki has kidnapped Gara, the Kazakage. Team 7 is sent to Sunagakure to assist in rescuing Gara. On their way to Suna, Naruto explains that Gara was kidnapped because he's a Jinchuriki of the One Tail, just as Naruto is the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. Upon arrival in Suna, Naruto defends Kakashi from Chiyo's assault when she mistakes him for his father. Team 7 gathers what intel they can on Gara's kidnappers and leave to go after them. Chiyo volunteers to escort them since they aren't familiar with the country around Suna. Naruto promises a recovering Konkuro to rescue Gara before they leave. While en route to an Akatsuki lair, they're confronted by Itachi Uchiha, who traps Naruto in a genjutsu. Sakura and Chiyo release him, allowing Naruto to team up with Kakashi and defeat Itachi with a big ball Rasengan. The Itachi is discovered to be an imposter, so they continue on to the Akatsuki lair, meeting up with Team Guy, who takes down the barrier over the entrance so that Team 7 can get in. They find Gara's body with his kidnappers, Deidara and Sasori. Deidara flies off with Gara's body with Naruto and Kakashi in pursuit, leaving Sasori to Chiyo and Sakura. Naruto, enraged, makes repeated failed attempts to rescue Gara before he's calmed by Kakashi, who uses his new Mangekyo Sharingan to distract Deidara with Kamui. Naruto retrieves Gara's body, but seeing it drives him over the edge. He furiously attacks Deidara and beats him mercilessly into the ground. Discovering that it was a clay clone, Naruto slips into his two-tailed form in rage, but is returned to normal by Kakashi via the chakra suppressing seal. Deidara escapes, while Naruto and Kakashi regroup with Sakura, Chiyo, and Team Guy. Sakura attempts to revive Gara, but the removal of Shukaku has caused him to die. Naruto breaks down in tears and angrily lashes out at Chiyo, saying she had no right to make Gara not only a Jinchuriki, but also lose his life because of it. As atonement, and with Naruto's aid, Chiyo sacrifices her life to revive Gara. As the jutsu nears completion, Chiyo voices her faith in Naruto's ability to save Gara and to become Hokage. Naruto greets Gara when he awakens, and a few days later, Team 7 and Gai attend Chiyo's funeral in Suna. Before returning home, Naruto and Gara shake hands, Gara using his sand as a sign of their close relationship. Naruto Shippuden, the movie. The opening scene of the movie shows Naruto fighting a monster only to be killed by it. The setting then went back to a few days prior, where a man named Yomi attacked a shrine to retrieve the spirit of Morio, a demon who attempted to destroy the world to create his thousand year kingdom. Since he was lacking a body, Yomi offered his as a temporary substitute until they could retrieve Morio's original one sealed in a different shrine. The only threat to Morio's plan was a priestess known as Shihoin, who could steal his spirit away once more. He raised a stone army from their slumber to attack the rest of the world while his four subordinates went to murder Shihoin. They were given special chakra creatures to enhance their strength. To deal with the threat, Konohagakure sent out many advanced teams to stall the stone army. Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno, Neji Hyuga, and Rock Lee were sent to guard Shihoin, and deliver her to the shrine where Morio's body was sealed. They fended off her four would-be assassins who exhausted themselves in a failed attempt to kill Naruto. Shihoin told Naruto of his upcoming death. While initially skeptical, her assistant Taruho explained that Shihoin could see the future, and that all the events happening in her visions are 100% true. As they headed for the shrine, the group was ambushed once again by Yomi's four subordinates, and split into two teams. Lee killed his opponent by eating an alcoholic candy to get him into drunken fist, while Naruto was kept busy by his. Neji told Sakura to escape with Shihoin, unaware that his two opponents were actually just one man and a puppet to distract him and let the remaining ninja catch up with Sakura and Shihoin. Sarato was then shot with an anesthetic jutsu by the remaining ninja and Shihoin was killed. This turned out to be a ruse. The dead Shihoin was actually Taruho, who transformed himself into a copy of her to trick them into thinking that they had killed the real one. Shihoin explained that her power worked by allowing her spirit to jump back in time at the moment of her death thereby allowing her to avoid it by having someone die in her place. Naruto insisted that he would not die and would likewise keep Shihoin safe. Thanks to Lee, Neji realized that the remaining three ninja must keep replenishing their chakra to battle effectively. Naruto was sent on ahead with Shihoin, while Sakura and Lee tricked their opponents into wasting their chakra on futile attacks. When they ran out of chakra and had to replenish it, Neji disabled the final ninja who was providing the chakra, leaving the other two powerless against Lee and Sakura. At the mountain temple where Morio's body was kept, Naruto and Shihoin found the stone army waiting. On the first attempt to get past the army, both Naruto and Shihoin fell off a cliff. Afterwards, Naruto came up with a plan and promised Shihoin that he would protect her. Naruto then held the army back using shadow clones while Shihoin headed inside the temple to begin the sealing ritual. 
Yomi was already inside. He had terracotta soldiers attack her before the light slashed and killed her. Yomi tricked Shihoin into beginning the technique with him inside the barrier, allowing Morio's spirit to reunite with his body. Eventually, Kakashi, Tamari, and others came to the fight and destroyed the remaining army. After Naruto came to rescue her, she broke into tears saying that all the people who sacrificed their lives were a waste. Morio then burst free from Yomi's body to the air and Naruto started fighting him. Yomi died and his body fell into the lava. Swallowing down Morio's words about her mother's actions and Shihoin's power not letting him fuse into her, and about to see her prediction of his death come true, she used her power to shield Naruto from being stabbed, changing Naruto's fate. Intending to kill herself and Morio in order to protect him, Naruto stopped her seconds before her death, reminding her that he promised to protect her. After he inspired her to live, they let their chakras and emotions go, and used Naruto and Shihoin's super chakra Rasengan to finally destroy Morio, creating a volcano where the shrine used to be in the process. With Morio gone, Naruto asked Shihoin what she intended to do now. She replied that because Morio was a demon caused by the evil thoughts of men, it was possible that there could be another Morio someday. Because of this, she would pass her power on to other living priestesses that would suppress demons like Morio. Indirectly asking Naruto to father her child, she asked if Naruto would help her, much to everyone's shock. Misunderstanding what she said, Naruto happily agreed. Tenchi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission During her fight with Sasori, Sakura learned of an opportunity to meet with a spy in Orochimaru's ranks in a few days' time, hoping it will lead them to Sasuke. Kakashi is left bedridden from his fight with Deidara, so Yamato leads Team 7 as his replacement. Replacing Sasuke on the team is Sai, whom Naruto already encounters earlier and dislikes, declaring him an inferior version of Sasuke. Sai is happy for this distinction and proceeds to degrade Sasuke for defecting from Konoha, forcing Yamato to use his wood release to break up their fight. Naruto is constantly exasperated by Sai's lack of empathy and his ridicule of Sasuke, but resolves to work with Sai if it means saving Sasuke. Yamato disguises himself as Sasori and goes to the Tenchi Bridge to meet the spy while Naruto, Sakura, and Sai hide nearby. The spy, Kabuto Yakushi, begins telling Yamato about Orochimaru's organization, but they're interrupted by the arrival of Orochimaru, who teams up with Kabuto to fight Yamato, having intended to kill Sasori. Team 7 comes to his aid, and Orochimaru, recognizing them, taunts Naruto about Sasuke. Naruto is enraged and strikes him, using his version 1 form to make his attacks more devastating. Naruto's rage intensifies as he submits to the Ninetales' influence. He destroys the Tenchi Bridge and eventually advances to his version 2 form while fighting Orochimaru. Naruto is soon forced back to the destroyed bridge, where, unable to tell friend from foe, he unknowingly attacks Sakura when she approaches him. Yamato restrains Naruto with his wood release and suppresses the Ninetales' influence, but its chakra leaves Naruto's body badly damaged. After Sakura heals him, Naruto wakes up unable to remember what happened, but is surprised by the devastated landscape. When they realize that Sai is missing, Yamato reports that he's joined with Orochimaru and Kabuto. On the way, Yamato secretly takes Naruto aside and tells him that he is the one who attacked Sakura. He encourages Naruto to use his own strength instead of the Ninetales in order to protect his loved ones. The team locates Sai, whom Yamato has placed a trace on at Orochimaru's lair and capture him. Restrained, Sai asks why Naruto is determined to save him. Naruto replies that his bond with Sasuke is too precious to be broken and that he'll do anything to protect it. Intrigued, Sai switches sides, helping them capture Kabuto and then searching the base for Sasuke on Naruto's behalf. While he's gone, Yamato goes through his belongings and finds evidence that Sai has been assigned to assassinate Sasuke. When they find Sai, he explains that he truly does want to help retrieve Sasuke and in fact has already found him. Naruto and Sakura are speechless to see Sasuke again. Sasuke reacts with indifference to them, but Naruto remarks that he can't become Hokage without saving his friend. To demonstrate that they mean nothing to him, Sasuke quickly neutralizes them all. As Naruto struggles to avoid the temptation of using the Ninetales, Sasuke suddenly appears in Naruto's subconscious using his Sharingan and suppresses the Ninetales. He then prepares to kill them, but is persuaded not to by Orochimaru and leaves without further comment. Naruto is upset at having failed once more to bring Sasuke home, but is reminded by Sakura that they need to become stronger and Team 7 returns to Konoha. Naruto Shippuden the movie, Bonds. A mysterious group of ninja from the land of the sky made a surprise attack on Konoha. This was because Konoha nearly destroyed the Land of the Sky during the Second Shinobi World War. The group began attacking Konoha and causing mass mayhem, with Sora Nin flying using a winged mechanical device and bombarding the village. A boy had come from a very long way to inform Konoha that his village had been attacked, and that he was looking for his sensei who was currently in Konoha, so that he could go back with him to heal the injured at the village. A three-man team consisting of Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata were sent to accompany the boy, Amaru, and Shino, his sensei, to help Amaru's village. The team traveled through a forest full of eerie beasts and poisonous animals via small rowing boats down a river. A Sora Nin scout suddenly appeared in the sky. 
Sakura, Hinata, and Shino hid by the riverside with Naruto and Amaru hiding underwater until the Sora Nin had passed. While underwater, Amaru dropped his scalpel, a present from his beloved sensei, and swam down to get it. As he tried to resurface, he became caught in the reeds. After freeing Amaru from the reeds and helping him back under the boat, Naruto noticed that Amaru was in fact a she due to her breasts and corset. Naruto blushed before a poisonous piranha-like fish bit him and he fainted. Later on, Naruto woke up still blushing, partly because Amaru was sucking the poisonous blood out of a wound on his thigh, thus saving Naruto. Naruto asked if she was a she and suggested that Amaru had feelings for her sensei, which he was slapped for. Meanwhile, at Konoha, the Sora Nin retreated because they were out of chakra to continue flying, so Konoha sent another special team to search for their base. Sai approached the ships they were using as a base near a beach on one of his ink birds to attract their attention and to gauge their abilities, while Shikamaru and Kakashi hid behind some rocks near the shore, waiting for the fourth man of their team, Shino, to infiltrate and damage their base. At Orochimaru's lair, Orochimaru had become even more ill because the body transfer technique he used was close to its expiration. Kabuto was attending to him and told Sasuke that the Sora Nin were attacking Konoha, to which Sasuke replied that he didn't care. Orochimaru ordered Sasuke to capture and bring back to him a man who would be able to help him perfect his reincarnation technique. Naruto and company finally reached Amaru's village and found that the village had been badly attacked, with some parts now in ruins and with the inhabitants nowhere to be seen. Amaru ran around trying to find some villagers before she unknowingly triggered a trap, which sent a volley of kunai flying towards her. Her sensei Shino rushed to block the attack to protect her, but was hit in the process. Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata hurried to the scene, but it was too late, and Shino died of his fatal injuries. After Amaru came to her senses, they continued to look for villagers, with Sasuke now on his way to the village. Later on, Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata decided to search for villagers without Amaru. Eventually, Sakura met up with Naruto, who was looking at ruins in the distance. They went together to explore them and found themselves in front of an evil monster calling itself the Zero Tails, which identified itself as a version of a tailed beast that fed on the darkness of human souls, and had somehow taken over Amaru. Sakura proved to be no match for the beast and fell unconscious. The creature sensed that Naruto had a huge dark power inside of him, so it taunted Naruto and coaxed him to use that power by saying that he cannot save anyone without it. This made Naruto remember his failure in saving Sasuke and became emotionally unstable, which caused him to enter his initial Jinchuriki form, his three-tailed state, and finally his four-tailed state. After fighting with the monster for a while, a seal on Naruto given by Jiraiya came off and reminded him of how the tailed beast chakra hurt his friends, causing him to immediately turn back into normal. Naruto pleaded with Amaru to ignore the darkness in her heart, which finally resulted in the beast being defeated. Sakura woke up in Naruto's arms and slapped him to fill the awkward moment. They decided to split up with Naruto continuing to search for villagers and Hinata and Sakura returning to Konoha to get help. Amaru, who was supposed to go with Sakura, stayed behind to help Naruto. They found some old ruins that Shino had mentioned earlier and entered them. Shino was inside unharmed and spoke of conquering the world with the power of darkness. Amaru, excited that her sensei was still alive, ran to hug him. Naruto noticed that something wasn't right and Shino laughed mockingly at Amaru for trusting him. Shino explained that he had been researching the power of darkness for about 15 years and that he had finally found it in Konoha. He claimed that all he needed now was a secret scroll with the reincarnation technique written on it. He then transformed into a muscular youthful form and Naruto charged towards him only to be outmatched again and again, with Naruto becoming more and more injured. Shino, in his body revival form, tried to convince Naruto to use his Ninetales chakra, with Amaru distraught and in tears while Shino and Naruto battled. Ever since she was small, she had had a strange illness and no one liked her, fearing that they would be infected. Only Shino had dared to care for her and managed to cure her. Naruto told her not to throw her feelings away, while the evil Shino jeered at her. She finally admitted her love and feelings to her sensei, to which Shino merely laughed. Naruto attacked him and managed to land a hit, although it didn't seem to affect Shino. Sasuke appeared suddenly, striking Shino with Chidori Senbon, which attacked his cells and forced him to revert back to his normal form. He then explained that Orochimaru needed help with a reincarnation technique to Shino, who gave Sasuke a scroll, saying that it would be enough help. Shino then fled the scene with Sasuke pursuing him. Naruto told Amaru to go find the villagers while he went after Sasuke. He found Sasuke in a room and asked him what he was doing there, which Sasuke ignored. In the same room was a cocoon absorbing dark chakra. Shino had fused with the cocoon and attacked Naruto and Sasuke. All of their counterattacks proved useless as any chakra they used was absorbed by the cocoon and rendered harmless. Using tentacles as his arms, Shino grabbed hold of both of them and began draining their chakra. Sasuke activated the first level of his cursed seal, releasing its evil chakra, and Naruto, who had understood Sasuke's plan, turned into his initial Jinchuriki form and sent a large amount of chakra into the Zero Tails, and managed to break free with his shadow clones before using Tornado Rasengan. After escaping himself, Sasuke ascended to the second level of the Cursed Seal, before using Chidori Katana to cut the beast's power. The creature began rampaging after regaining control of itself, having now completely absorbed Shino. Amaru found Hinata and the villagers in a cell and managed to free them all before finding a flying lifeboat for them to escape in. Naruto rushed out of the ruins and ordered Amaru to go. She refused, but Sasuke then threw her into the boat by force. 
Naruto also forced Sasuke onto the lifeboat using a Rasengan, mouthing a few words to Sasuke as he fell before flying away using the wings from his cursed seal form. Remembering how Jiraiya had once said that Naruto had the willpower to never give up, he created a large amount of shadow clones and began destroying the ruins using the Guts Rasengan. Soon, the whole ruin had been destroyed with the Rasengan, leaving Naruto to fall down to the sea. Amaru saw Naruto from the boat, and grabbing a pair of Sora Nin wings, flew to catch him. Upon reaching him, she removed the wings to grab him and they fell together. Jiraiya suddenly appeared with Gamabunta and caught the two, saving them. Later on, Naruto woke up in Amaru's arms. Sasuke returned to Orochimaru and gave him the scroll who then asked if something good had happened. Sasuke ignored the question, going off to train while remembering Naruto's parting whisper of, I'll definitely bring you back to Konoha. Akatsuki's Suppression Mission Once Kakashi is done recuperating in the hospital, he assembles Naruto, Sakura, and Sai to discuss their failed mission to retrieve Sasuke. Kakashi believes that the best way to match Sasuke is for Naruto to create a new jutsu. As the training began, Naruto discovers that his nature is wind and learns to use the wind nature. Ordinarily, such training would take months or years, but Kakashi advises that Naruto, by training alongside hundreds of shadow clones, can do the same training in a mere fraction of the time. After some struggling, Naruto approaches Asuma, who is also a wind type, for advice. With Kakashi's instructions and the training grounds created by Yamato, Naruto quickly masters how to use the wind nature. The next step is more difficult for him, combining that nature with the Rasengan. Like Kakashi and Minato Namikaze before him, Naruto fails several times in trying to combine his nature with the Rasengan. His frustration evokes the Ninetales Chakra at times, which Yamato suppresses. With further advice from Kakashi, Naruto finds his solution using two Shadow Clones. One helps him form the Rasengan, and the other adds his Wind nature. When they receive news that Asuma died in battle with members of the Akatsuki, they take a break to attend Asuma's funeral. Kakashi leaves Team Yamato in charge of overseeing Naruto's training so he could help Team Ten avenge Asuma. Having finished his jutsu, Naruto and Team Yamato went to provide assistance, arriving in time to save Kakashi and Team Ten from Kakuzu. Naruto engages Kakuzu alone with his newly created wind release Rasen Shuriken, though it dissipates on its first use and Naruto is rescued by Kakashi and Yamato. The technique succeeds on the second time, destroying two of Kakuzu's hearts and putting the last one on the brink of failure. Kakashi finishes off Kakuzu and they return to Konoha. The Rasen Shuriken injures Naruto's arms after use, and he's forbidden to use the technique ever again. When they visit Ichiraku Ramen, Naruto has a hard time eating while his arm mends, so Sakura opts to help before the responsibility falls to Sai, then to Kakashi. As they leave afterwards, they are met by Konohamaru, who demonstrates his sexy girl-on-girl -girl technique. Naruto approves, but Sakura is disgusted and violently reprimands him. Three Tails Appearance Orochimaru instructed Kabuto Yakushi along with Team Guren to take a young boy named Yukimaru to a lake. Tsunade finds the location of Orochimaru's hideout and sends Kakashi as temporary leader of Team 8 to locate it. Then Tsunade sends Yamato, Sai, and Sakura to help them along with Naruto who meets them along the way. Team Kakashi and Kuranai follow Guren and discover that the thing they were after was the Three Tails. The guarding group is Yamato, Tenten, Kiba, and Lee, while the fighting group is Naruto, Kakashi, Sai, and Shino. Just when the ceiling was almost complete, Yukimaru, angered by the apparent death of Guren, empowered the beast to break free of its restraints. The Three Tails went on a rampage, attacking everyone nearby and crushing Nurari, Kigiri, and Kiho. Its attempts to attack Yukimaru, however, had no effect. It was only through the use of the Wind Release Toad Oil Flame Bullet that the beast was driven away. The ceiling attempt was left to Anbu members, and the remaining Konoha ninja returned home. Toby and Deidara confronted the beast, it was later sealed in the ceiling statue. Naruto Shippuden the Movie, The Will of Fire The film concerns the potential outbreak of a fourth shinobi world war, when ninja with Kekai Genkai abilities begin to disappear from Kumagakure, Iwagakure, Kirigakure, and Tsunagakure. Team Kakashi is sent on a mission to follow the tracks of the missing Kekai Genkai wielding ninja, which leads them to Mount Shumisen, located between the land of Earth and Kusagakure. Sai, who is flying on his ink bird, is attacked by a bird which attacks with explosive tag-like feathers. Naruto, disobeying Kakashi's orders to continue with the mission, runs towards where Sai fell, saying he will not abandon Sai. There, chimera-like creatures attack them, which they defeat quickly, though Naruto is injured in the process. Back at Konoha, Kakashi gives a report on the mission to Tsunade, while worrying that the next ninja targeted will be him. Tsunade seems to not care so much, telling Kakashi to relax. At the hospital, Kakashi gives Naruto his bells, which they use for their first drill together, and tells him to fix them because he crushed them. Konoha Anbu are sent to Mount Shumisen by Tsunade to search the area for tracks of the missing Kekai Genkai ninja. There, a mysterious ninja along with his followers absorb their chakra with his mysterious technique using their earth nature affinity against them. That night, the same mysterious ninja, the mastermind and antagonist of the film known as Hiruko, projects his image over the skies of the five great ninja villages, introducing himself as a shinobi of Konohagakure. 
He states that he has taken the Kekai Genkai of the four missing ninja using the Chimera technique, and that he plans to gain the fifth and final Kekai Genkai which will make him immortal. By doing so, he declares the fourth Shinobi World War. Konoha Kakure is believed to be behind the incident, as by the way Hiroko introduced himself, it seems that Konoha is using or working with Hiroko. Rumors circulate that they're preparing a rebellion. With the other nations amassing troops at the land of fire's border, threatening invasion, the fire daimyo orders Tsunade to apprehend those who are responsible and prove Konoha's innocence. In the event of failure, the land of fire will be forced to destroy the village in order to preserve world peace. Tsunade is awaiting Gara at a secret meeting place to discuss what shall be done. However, on the way there, Gara and his Sunogakure ninja are attacked by a bird-like creature which traps them in an avalanche. Meanwhile, Hiroko states that the Chimera technique alone can only absorb a maximum of 4 Kekai Genkai, and that certain conditions, most importantly the light of an annular eclipse, which is two days away, is required for the absorption of the fifth and final Kekai Genkai, which will make him immortal. That night, Hiroko appears before Kakashi in a dream, activating a puppet curse he had placed on him 10 years ago, planning to steal Kakashi's Sharingan. Kakashi asks Tsunade to allow him to go for the sake of the village. Before he leaves, Kakashi asks Tsunade to place a special seal on him, which will automatically activate Kamui when Hiroko attempts to absorb him. The same night, Shikamaru is visiting Asuma's grave while Kakashi is visiting Obito's. Kakashi asks Shikamaru to tell Naruto that he's leaving the village and not to follow him. As Kakashi lets Hiroko take over his body, Naruto sees him and chases him. Shikamaru stops him and tells him what Kakashi told him to say. At the Hokage's office, Tsunade orders the Konoha 11 to stay away from Kakashi, labeling him as a missing nin for the sake of the secret mission. After the others leave, Tsunade tells Shikamaru the truth, trusting that he will do what he needs to do as the leader. Meanwhile, Sakura comes back to rescue Naruto from the cell that Shikamaru put him in, and they leave the village to rescue Kakashi. The Konoha 11 are sent to retrieve them. The next day, Sunagakure is lining up troops and weapons at the border of the Land of Fire, thinking that Konoha attacked Gara, their Kazakage. When Naruto and Sakura follow Kakashi, the Konoha 11 meet with them and try to bring them back. Naruto reveals what Kakashi once told Team 7 during their bell test. It is true that in the world of ninja, those who break the rules and regulations are regarded as scum, but those who abandon their comrades are even worse than scum which changes the minds of some members. However, the scene is interrupted by Ichi, who is sent by Hiroko to stop and or delay them using his Chimera Snakes. Team Guy stays behind to allow the others to pass through the first gate. Ni and her Chimera Nindog stop them at the next gate, and Team 8 stays behind to delay her, while Naruto and Sakura and later Team Asuma pass. As Naruto, Sakura, and Team 10 reach the next gate, San appears riding the bird that fires exploding feathers. Team 10 is still following the original mission and tries to stop Naruto and Sakura. However, Sai appears on his ink bird, using a flash bomb to create a distraction, and takes Naruto and Sakura with him, leaving Team 10 behind to fight San. At this point, Rock Lee and Neji defeat Ichi using Front Lotus 8 Trigram's Palms Revolving Heaven while Ten Ten distracts him, and Team 8 defeats Ni using Secret Technique Insect Sphere inside a trap that Shino built while Kiba and Hinata delayed her. Team 10 gains an advantage over San, with Shikamaru binding him with his shadow and Ino using the Mind Body Switch Technique to take over his mind to tell him that they're after Naruto, not Kakashi. They also ask him where Kakashi is headed. However, San breaks out of the Mind Body Switch Technique. He then summons Ichi and Ni, uses the Chimera Technique on them and himself, and the three become a huge Chimera, which seems to be a combination of all their respective Chimera beasts, possessing all their abilities. Meanwhile, Gara is thinking of what Jiraiya said while aiding in the recovery of Gara and the Sunanin. He has told Gara that he believes Kakashi or even Naruto will defeat Hiroko, and it's up to Gara depending on whether he believes in Naruto's strength or not. As the war between Konoha and Suna is about to begin, with ground combat troops and heavy artillery from both sides facing each other, Jiraiya appears above Gamabunta and gives to Suna the proof that Gara is still alive. At that moment, Gara moves to where Naruto, Sakura, and Sai are headed and stops them. He says that Naruto's will is not what Kakashi wants, and Naruto begins to fight Gara. Gara states that Naruto is too idealistic and that he doesn't have the power to make his goals become true. However, Naruto strongly stays by the belief that as a fellow comrade, he cannot allow Kakashi to sacrifice himself. Naruto breaks through Gara's shield of sand and punches him. The rest of the members of the Konoha 11 arrive to aid Team 10, and they bind the Chimera Beast with the help of Ten Ten by sending their chakra to the chains that were holding the beast. They ask Shikamaru to go and stop Naruto, Sai, and Sakura. Shikamaru meets Gara, who tells him that he felt what Naruto feels in battle. Shikamaru continues on. Meanwhile, Naruto reaches the final gate and realizes that this is the place they came to on their past mission. Naruto goes to Kakashi and tries to stop him, but Kakashi walks on with no response. When Naruto grabs his arm, he sees the seal on his wrist, and Sai tells him what it is. Shikamaru, who has finally caught up to them, reveals that Tsunade placed the seal on him so that they may defeat Hiroko at the sacrifice of Kakashi. Kakashi passes through the final gate before the temple. As Naruto, Sakura, Sai, and Shikamaru approach the temple, Naruto hears Hiroko's voice and questions why he did this, and Hiroko answers by telling his story. He claims to have been a former friend of the Sanin, but he was not a skilled shinobi like they were. 
He was developing the Chimera Technique, a jutsu that would allow him to create a synthetic body by combining several separate ones. After the Third Shinobi World War, he was shocked when he saw Kakashi, not only because he had survived the battle, but because he had received the Sharingan, a Kekai Genkai from the original user, Obito Uchiha. This gave Hiroko the idea to steal Kekai Genkai to become more powerful like the Sanin. However, the Hokage found out about his research and Hiroko was forced to flee. As Kakashi reaches the temple, Hiroko appears from the shadows of the temple and welcomes Kakashi. Seeing it as the only way to save Kakashi, Naruto, Sakura, and Sai try to defeat Hiroko, although Shikamaru tries to stop them. Hiroko, using his four Kekai Genkai, Storm Release, Dark Release, Steel Release, and Swift Release, defeats them with little effort. He then steps into the temple with Kakashi. Naruto stands up, deciding that he cannot give up. Shikamaru tries to stop him, saying that he must protect the unborn children of Konoha, the king. Naruto states that he'll protect them too, and that he loves Konoha for its shinobi, who will sacrifice themselves to save one another. However, deciding who will be sacrificed from the start isn't what Naruto wants, and Naruto believes that there is no future for the children if Konoha becomes a place like this. As Naruto walks away, Shikamaru sees Asuma in him, and protects him from surrounding barrier tags with his shadow sewing technique. He states that Naruto has inherited the will of fire, trusting the future of Konoha to him. Naruto enters the temple where Hiroko begins the absorption at the beginning of the eclipse. Suddenly, Kakashi's Mangekyo Sharingan activates, and the space inside the slime created by the Chimera Technique begins to distort. Naruto, trying to save Kakashi, creates Shadow Clones and breaks into the slime with multiple Rasengans and pulls him out. Kakashi wakes up, asks Naruto why he's here with him, and then sighs that the plan failed. Hiroko is still alive, and he states that the eclipse hasn't ended yet, and releases a large amount of chakra, reducing the surrounding area to rubble. When Hiroko summons the Chimera Beast that the Konoha 11 were keeping restrained, Shikamaru, Sakura, and Sai fight the beast while Naruto and Kakashi face Hiroko. Shikamaru notes that Hiroko's weak spot is his chest, which is still hollow as it is the space that Hiroko wants to assimilate Kakashi into. As the Chimera Beast begins to gain an advantage over them, the other Konoha 11 arrive to help. Choji uses his multi-size technique to become a giant and attacks the beast, followed by Kiba and Akamaru's fang passing fang which destroys the beast's wings. Then from the sky, Hinata and Neji appear and attack the beast with 8 trigrams 64 palms. Lee kicks it into a mountain and Tenten finishes it off with their twin rising dragons, covering its body with a large number of kunai with explosive tags attached and detonating them. Meanwhile, Hiroko is gaining an advantage over Naruto and Kakashi, easily absorbing their techniques, the big ball Rasengan and lightning cutter. Hiroko gives Naruto a taste of his own attack, Rasengan, and returns Kakashi his lightning cutter. As a last resort, Naruto forms the wind release Rasen Shuriken and carries the impact into Hiroko's chest. Hiroko tries to absorb and copy it, but cannot combine the high level of shape manipulation with the high level of nature transformation. As the Rasen Shuriken's impact occurs, the Chimera dies as Tenten makes her explosive tags explode. In his final moments, Hiroko, in his original form, asks Kakashi what he did wrong. Kakashi tells him that he used others to overcome his weakness, and only tried to become perfect himself. Hiroko says that that's the way that strong ones think, and that he did not have any comrades. Suddenly, Hiroko sees his old friends, Tsunade, Jiraiya, Orochimaru, the third Hokage, and some others appear before his eyes, and they tell him that they were there for him. Kakashi tells him that if he had tried to bond with them, they would have helped him, and that he shouldn't have tried to do everything by himself. Hiroko then tells Kakashi that was what Kakashi had tried to do this time, abandoning his comrades. Kakashi said that he and Hiroko made the same mistake as they were both lost. Hiroko asks him if he has finally made a connection and dies. Kakashi looks over to see most of the gang cheering for Naruto. He then says that Naruto has long surpassed him. Gara appears before the Suninin army, and tells them everything has been solved and to withdraw. Tsunade and Jiraiya talk about how they've been saved, and that the kids are completely different than they were at their age. They end the conversation with the conclusion that they're getting old, and a decision to leave the future in the hands of a young generation in which they can freely put their faith into. The movie ends at Mount Shumisen with Kakashi talking about Obito. He smiles at Naruto after seeing the similarities between the two. Naruto takes the smile as something creepy and random. The Konoha 11 surround them on various parts of the rocky ledge, each giving their input on Kakashi's sexual orientation upon seeing this. Kakashi hurriedly denies their assumptions, but not before Naruto panics and flees from him. Kakashi then chases after the fleeing Naruto, trying to explain that it's a misunderstanding. Itachi Pursuit Mission News reaches Konoha that Sasuke has killed Orochimaru. Realizing that this is a good opportunity to try again to reunite with Sasuke, Kakashi combines Team 7 and 8 into an 8-man squad with the mission to either find Sasuke or his assumed target, Itachi. When they split up to search, Naruto, because he's a target of Akatsuki, is given a protective escort in the form of Hinata, Yamato, and Bull. Their group encounters Kabuto, who offers them intel on Akatsuki and its members, his thanks to Naruto inspiring him to overcome Orochimaru after absorbing his remains. Kabuto then escapes. Tale of Jiraiya the Gallant After regrouping and Kiba Inuzuka detects Sasuke's trail, Naruto creates shadow clones to search the area faster, one of which encounters Itachi. 
Itachi repels Naruto's attacks and insists he only wants to talk. He asks Naruto what Sasuke means to him and what he will do if Sasuke ever moves against Konoha. Naruto replies that he's Sasuke's brother, a better brother than Itachi is, and that if Sasuke ever attacks the village, he will defend it without killing Sasuke. Itachi is happy with this answer and gives Naruto some assistance for this purpose, a special crow that he stores within Naruto's body. Itachi left and Naruto continued his search, eventually finding Sasuke. As they near Sasuke's location, they're intercepted by Tobi of Akatsuki, who prevents them from progressing and who is invulnerable to their attacks. Faded battle between brothers. As the group continually tries to attack Tobi, he dodges the attacks with ease. Naruto tries several times to attack him with his Rasengan, but without success. Tobi attempts to use a hidden jutsu to attack the teams, but fails at it. Eventually, Zetsu comes to tell him about Sasuke and Itachi's fight. Tobi leaves when he receives the news that Sasuke has killed Itachi, and Team 7 and 8 try to reach Sasuke before he does. Unable to find where Tobi has taken Sasuke, they are forced to return to Konoha. Naruto Shippuden the movie, The Lost Tower. Yamato, Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno, and Sai are assigned on a mission to capture Mukade, a missing nin. They all have chakra blades which are used to attack. They set out for the once glorious historic ruins of Roran, a city with once thousands of towers, and is located in the middle of the desert. After bypassing his puppets, they corner the missing Nin. Mukata's goal is revealed to be to travel to the past and take over the five great shinobi countries with the power of the Ryumyaku, an ancient chakra flow hidden deep underground in Roran. He unleashes the power of the Ryumyaku, which is seen to have been sealed by Minato's flying thunder god Kunai. A light envelops Naruto and Yamato, who were trying to stop Mukade. Sakura attempts to follow them into the light, but Sai stops her from getting sucked into the Ryumyaku by catching her on his inkbird while she cries out Naruto's name. Minato Namikaze, 20 years prior to the present, is now seen at Konoha, and Jiraiya shows Minato that he has completed the Rasengan. Then the young Shizune, Mike Guy, Asuma Saratobi, and Kakashi Harake are seen waiting in a long line at the grand opening of Ramanichiraku. Hiruzen Saratobi has heard of Anrokuzan's evil plans and sends Minato Namikaze, Shibi Abarame, Chosa Akimichi, and upon Minato's request, Kakashi Harake to put an end to his plans. When Naruto awakens, he meets a mysterious young girl who immediately runs away upon seeing him. Naruto later comes in contact with a masked guy who rescues him from the puppet army. He tells Naruto that he too is a Konoha ninja, opening a part of his mask to show the Konoha sign in his head protector, and tells him to leave the city. Naruto agrees to do so. Nevertheless, when he's about to leave Rora, Naruto remembers what happened before he lost consciousness and decides to look for the others instead. Later, he realizes that there's a festival going on and spots the young girl he previously encountered, now realizing that she is the queen of Rora, Sara. When she greets the excited crowd who is calling for her joyously, someone pushes her back, causing her to fall. Naruto rescues her, and then they introduce themselves to each other after Sara mistakes him as a bad guy. Naruto asks whether there are people who are after her, the young queen immediately disagrees with it, saying that Naruto has seen for himself that the crowd was very happy to meet her. Later, Naruto meets Minato again in the queen's palace. Minato scolds him for not keeping his promise, but Naruto tells him that he has no choice, and tells him what had happened to him. Seeing the circumstances, Minato and his team reveal themselves, and that time Naruto remarks that Minato looks a lot like the fourth Hokage. Shibi tells Naruto that it's impossible, as for now, the ruling Hokage is still the third. But Choza disagrees, saying that as Naruto is from the future, it is possible that Minato really is the fourth. Minato simply replies that there's no point in making life less interesting by knowing things that they shouldn't. Minato then tells Naruto the condition at Roran, and tells him that he should be able to go back to his time after he defeats Mukade. After that, he gives Naruto his flying thunder god kunai, telling him that it's a specialized kunai that will allow him to transport to Naruto's place if he uses it. It's later revealed that Mukade traveled to the past six years before Naruto did, and that by this point he's changed his name to Anrokuzan and serves as the minister of Roran. Sara refused to believe that Anrokuzan is planning to overthrow her, but soon hesitates after Naruto points out the fact that there is indeed someone who is after her life. Sara, much annoyed, leaves the place. Minato tells Naruto to protect her as he continues on the mission. Naruto agrees. When Sara is walking alone along the palace corridor, someone strikes her from behind and takes her into a dark room filled with a large group of people. They insist Sara to return it, much to her confusion. Naruto enters the room to her aid, only to discover that the group is actually a group of women and children that they don't mean to hurt Sara in the first place. Walking along the city, suddenly a child from the group says that Sara is said to have been a puppet princess, only to be scolded by the leader of the group. Sara then asks her about the rumor, to which she says that it's quite true. She then tells Sara that most of the men in Roran were enlisted to work for the city by the Queen's order, to which Sara replies that she never gave such an order, and from her palace the people seem happy to see her. The leader then tells her that no one is actually happy. While staring at the crowd, who is calling for Sara, the group realizes that a puppet has taken over Sara's place and greets the crowd, much to her shock. Naruto notices that there's something wrong with the crowd, and reveals that the joyful crowd are all puppets that are controlled by Ryumyaku's chakra, with a puppet of Sara herself appearing on the balcony above. Sara then realizes her minister's evil doing. She then promises that she would rescue the people used by him. Naruto and Sara find the center of Anrokuzan's evil plan. They infiltrate the factory and find all the men who are chained and forced to work to produce puppets. Confronting Anrokuzan, Sara orders him to release the people there, to which he laughs and says that Sara is a puppet princess. He then confesses that he has killed Sara's mother, Samaru, the previous queen, because she had seen through his plan and refused to work with him. 
Now, as Sara is no use to him anymore, he's going to kill her and take over the world. Naruto tells Sara that he will protect her. The puppet Ninja Force, which is under Anrokuzan's control, can attack using Rimyaku's chakra and are able to throw kunai. Naruto is seen using his chakra knife to attack them. Later, Anrokuzan is seen to be a giant puppet, as he's able to use parts of the towers of Roran to repair himself from any attack, which is part of his regenerative technique with the power of the Rimyaku. Shibi and Choza are not able to defeat him as he keeps regenerating himself. Shibi then passes a message to Naruto and Minato who are guarding Sara and the citizens to go to the garden, which is the source of the Ryumyaku on account of Anrokuzan being unable to reach it because it's heavily defended. When battling Anrokuzan, Naruto uses Rasengan much to Minato's shock. Naruto is easily defeated by Anrokuzan and Minato comes to his rescue just before Anrokuzan deals the final blow. Minato then tells Naruto to follow the citizens while he is holding back Anrokuzan from reaching them. Naruto agrees but then asks himself why he always follows Minato's orders. Meanwhile, Minato is able to locate Anrokuzan's weakness, but only finds that he cannot match the speed of his regeneration. Anrokuzan is able to get past him and aims to kill Sara, who is planning to seal off the Ryumyaku for good. Minato then meets Naruto and tells him that he already figured out how to defeat Anrokuzan and he needs Naruto to perform a Sengan for him. When Naruto says he does not have enough chakra left, Minato tells him that he will lend him his chakra. Naruto says it's impossible, that the only people who are able to perform a Sengan are Jiraiya himself and the fourth Hokage. Minato smiles and tells Naruto that he is also able to perform Rasengan while effortlessly forming a Rasengan before Naruto. He then hands over his Rasengan to Naruto and forms another, forming a new Rasengan as he tells Naruto that similar chakra tend to synchronize with each other, enhancing their powers. Sara seals off most of the Ryumyaku in time, making Anrokuzan unable to use his regenerative technique. Minato goes off and tells Naruto that this is the time to attack him. Naruto succeeds in hitting him. Anrokuzan says that this won't be over. As the floor crumbles, he falls down into a pool of the Ryumyaku. Sara is still seen on the crumbling floor. Naruto manages to catch her, but falls in along with Minato. Yamato, who is now holding onto Kakashi, comes and uses his wood release to catch Naruto, Sara, and Minato. Minato asks Naruto to give his kunai back to completely seal out the Ryumyaku. A bright blue light shines as Minato seals the Ryumyaku. Naruto and Yamato's bodies begin to glow. Minato says since Anro Kuzan is dead, his spell wore off, which means that Naruto and Yamato will return to their time. When Yamato meets Minato, he bows to him and states that it's an honor to be able to meet him. Naruto is about to tell Yamato that Minato is the fourth Hokage, but is interrupted by Minato who says that it's time to say farewell. In order to prevent history from changing, Minato says that it's best to erase everyone's memories. When Naruto asks Minato whether he has something to tell him, Minato replies that they're out of time. Naruto then begs him to tell him now because they may not have another chance. Minato says that he is sure that one day they would meet again and at that time Naruto would know what he wants to say. Naruto begins to ask Minato if he can possibly be his father, but Minato interrupts him and tells him that if he ever had a son, he wishes that he would grow up into a ninja like Naruto. Sara then tells Naruto that she'll never forget what Naruto taught her. While Naruto and Yamato begin to fade, Sara smiles at Naruto and utters his name for the last time. In the present time, the Ryumyaku that was unleashed by Mukade fades away. Sakura is seen on Sai's ink bird crying out Naruto's name. When the light fades, Naruto and Yamato appear, but as Minato had said, they have no memory of what happened to them. Outside the ruins, the team is approached by a young girl who resembles Sara, who claims that she felt a disturbance in the Ryumyaku. The girl says that she's the daughter of the former Queen of Roran, which was destroyed during the war. The girl bears a Konoha Chakra Blade and tells them that her mother received it from a hero in a dream. Naruto then notices that his own Chakra Blade is missing. As the girl and her people leave the ruins, Naruto claims that he has a feeling he saw her in a good dream. Sakura then grabs and pulls on Naruto's ear and yells at it for being a pervert. Six Tails Unleashed Team Yamato are assigned by Tsunade to go and protect Hotaru on her way to Suchigumo Village. When the team finds the fort, they saw Tanbi, who had been viciously attacked by the four-man bandits. Sakura stays and heals Tanbi, while Naruto, Sai, and Yamato follow Utakata and Hotaru. Naruto catches up with Utakata and Hotaru, but Utakata attacks Naruto with some of his soap bubble ninjutsu. After Utakata learned they are not attackers, he entrusts the protection of Hotaru to them. When they reach the hidden village, Naruto leaves the village with a suspicious feeling because of the way that the villagers looked at Hotaru. Naruto and his team arrived and managed to loosen one of the water whips holding Utakata. Both parties began to fight, but the leader of the Kirigakure Anbu appeared and discussed the situation with Yamato. As the groups part ways, Hotaru begins hurting from an injury sustained during the earlier altercation. Utakata has Naruto collect medicinal herbs. When Naruto returns, he witnesses what was done to Hotaru's back, where her clan's kinjutsu was put. Utakata voices his absolute disdain for people who selfishly take advantage of people's loyalty, only to treat them as tools. When Tanbi insisted that no true master would do such horrific things without a way to undo them, Utakata wondered if the same was true for his master. Utakata resolved to find Surugi again to learn some answers about his late master. Hotaru initially refused the idea to destroy the Kenjutsu, feeling that it would make her grandfather's efforts for nothing, but Utakata made her see that she couldn't restore their clan with such a destructive technique. While willing to accept this decision as a final act, she offered one other possible solution. 
to search for a man named Shiranami. It was then decided that Naruto would attempt to find the man in two days while preparations for removing the Kinjutsu were made. When Naruto Uzumaki sought out Shiranami, the Magaki leader who believed the latter was an ally, the Magaki group ambushed Naruto and used the infinite embrace to drain his chakra. Angered at being deceived, Naruto unleashed the Ninetales chakra and broke out of the infinite embrace. Afterwards, Naruto tracks Shiranami back to Hotaru's village, where it's discovered that Shiranami took control of the villagers with this technique. The villagers attacked Utakata and Naruto, and they were also confronted by the Magaki group. Just before things got work, the rest of Team Yamato arrived while hunting for Hotaru. Yamato, Sai, and Sakura were fighting the villagers and the Magaki group, while Naruto and Utakata were trying to save Hotaru from Shiranami. In the end, Naruto and Utakata managed to save Hotaru, and Team Yamato parts ways with Hotaru and Utakata. Hotaru and Utakata decide to leave Hotaru's village and travel around while Utakata trained Hotaru to make her stronger. Before they begin, Utakata decides that he wants to confront the Kirigakure Anbu unit and tells Hotaru to stay behind. He attempts to make contact but is unable to do so. He soon discovers the mask of one of the Anbu units that was left behind. After discovering the mask, he reaches the conclusion that the Kiri Anbu were killed and Utakata is confronted by Akatsuki member Pain, who appears to be the one behind the attack. Pain tells him he's here to capture the Six Tails. Utakata puts up a fight, but in the end is captured by Akatsuki. Pain's Assault As Naruto contemplated his meeting with Itachi, he was called to the Hokage residence to hear some somber news. His master Jiraiya was killed by Pain, the leader of Akatsuki. Grief-stricken, Naruto blamed Tsunade and spent the day mourning his teacher's death, depressed that Jiraiya could not see him become Hokage. After being comforted by Iruka and Shikamaru, Naruto helped to decipher Jiraiya's dying message and eventually they succeed. Understanding that Jiraiya has bought him time for his own fight with pain, Naruto went to train with the Toads of Mount Myoboku to learn Senjutsu. Naruto trained to harmonize with nature, a process he sped up by using a limited number of shadow clones. He rapidly progressed through the training stages and attained a perfect sage mode, which Jiraiya was unable to do. News of Pain's assault on Konoha reached them, and they began to mobilize for battle. As Naruto, Fukasaku, Gamaken, Gamahiro, Gamabunta, and Gamakichi were summoned to the center of Konoha, the group was confronted by the Six Paths of Pain, who had just destroyed the village. After destroying the Asura Path before it could attack Tsunade, Naruto told her to make sure everyone left the battle to him. After a brief skirmish with Animal Path, Naruto and the Toads defeated the Animal, Preta, and Human Paths before running out of Senjutsu Chakra. Naruto revealed that he had two Shadow Clones waiting back at Mount Myoboku to revitalize him with natural energy. Naruto went back on the offensive, dispatching the healed Preta and Naraka Path before the Diva Path regained its full power. Pain killed Fukusaku and used the opportunity to capture Naruto, pinning him to the ground. With Naruto restrained, Pain opened up his reasons for Akatsuki, their plan for the Tailed Beasts, and the peaceful world he wanted to create. Though Naruto rejected his notion that using a weapon to force peace, he could offer no alternative. Before Pain could depart with Naruto, he was attacked by Hinata Hyuga. Declaring her love for Naruto and vowing to protect him, she continued to fight against Pain before she was subdued and critically wounded. Believing Hinata had been killed, an enraged Naruto erupted into his six-tailed form. Resisting the first Hokage's necklace's attempts to quell the transformation and destroying it, the Nine Tails attacked Pain, forcing him out of the village to get close enough to his actual body to use Chibaku Tensei, trapping Naruto within the small satellite. The technique was not enough to stop the Nine Tails, however, as it simply progressed to eight-tailed form to force its way out of the satellite. Meanwhile, within his subconscious, Naruto was tempted by the Ninetales to open its seal to save him from the pain of not having Pain's answer for peace. However, before Naruto could, Minato appeared, having left some chakra within the seal in case of an emergency to protect his son. Overjoyed at meeting his father, but angered that he would condemn him to a life as a Jinchuriki, Naruto listened to his father encouraging him, confident that he would find a way to break the cycle of hatred. After repairing the seal, Minato disappeared, and the newly inspired Naruto prepared to resume his battle with pain. Confidence restored, Naruto was greatly relieved to learn that not only had Hinata survived, but nobody was injured during his rampage. After clever use of shadow clones, Naruto destroyed the diva path with a Rasengan, defeating the last of Pain's six paths. Using one of Pain's black receivers, Naruto followed the chakra signal to Nagato and Konin's position. Confronting Nagato, Naruto listened to Nagato's story that turned him into pain, and came to understand why he made the actions he did. Despite not forgiving him, he told Nagato that he would not kill him, and he would instead try to create a better world that their teacher wished for. 
Moved by Naruto's determination to create a better world, Nagato decided to put his trust in Naruto and sacrifice his own life to revive all the people he had killed in Konoha. Naruto helped Konan retrieve Nagato and Yahiko's body for burial in Amagakure, and Konan left Naruto a bouquet of paper flowers, symbolizing their new alliance. Naruto then created a memorial for Jiraiya and left the flowers and a copy of the Tale of the Utterly Gutsy Shinobi by a rock with the kanji for teacher, she. While the exhausted Naruto walked back to the village, he was found by Kakashi who carried him the rest of the way. Upon arrival, Naruto was greeted as a hero by the villagers, his dream of acknowledgement being realized at last. 5 Kage Summit Sakura informs Naruto that Tsunade fell into a coma and there's nothing they can do to bring her out of it. While they talk, they are approached by Tezuna and Inari, who have come to help rebuild Konoha. They ask about Sasuke, which Naruto avoids going into detail about as so to spare them and Sakura a discussion about Sasuke's defection. After Tezuna and Inari leave, they receive news that Danzo Shimura has become the next Hokage and that he has ordered Sasuke to be killed as a traitor. Naruto and Sakura approach Sai to ask him how they can convince Danzo to change his mind, but Sai is unable to help. Omoi and Karui of Kumogakure overhear them talking about Sasuke and they ask for information about him, wishing to kill him for his role in Akatsuki's capture of Killer B. Naruto leads Omoi and Karui away to spare Sakura pain, but refuses to reveal anything about Sasuke. Instead, Naruto allows the Kumo Nin to vent their anger by beating him, to which Karui obliges until Sai stops her and the Kumo Nin retreat. Recovering later, Naruto asked Yamato and Kakashi to take him to the Land of Iron so that he could ask the fourth Raikage to pardon Sasuke. Upon arrival, the Raikage rejected Naruto's request even with Kakashi and Yamato's assistance and berated him for defending a criminal. Naruto went to a local inn to ponder his next course of action, but was soon confronted by Tobi, who wanted to understand Nagato's change of heart. Naruto ignored the question and demanded to know his plans about Sasuke. Tobi told him about the Sage of the Six Paths, the Uchiha clan, and the truth about the Uchiha clan downfall, all of which now drove Sasuke along a path of vengeance against Konoha and anyone else who would dare cross his path. Naruto insisted that he could still get through to Sasuke, but Tobi laughed and left, saying Naruto and Sasuke were fated to fight again. While Naruto was practicing his Sage Mode's sensory abilities to locate Sasuke, he was interrupted by the arrival of Sakura, Rock Lee, Kiba, and Sai. Sakura attempted to dissuade Naruto in his attempts to bring Sasuke back to Konoha by falsely telling him that she loved him. However, Naruto knew she was lying and he rejected her confession and her proposal to abandon Sasuke, stating it had nothing to do with his promise to her. After Sakura's party left, Sai's Ink clone revealed that the rest of the Konoha Eleven had decided to kill Sasuke themselves to prevent another war, while Sakura planned to kill Sasuke herself at Sai's unintended insistence. Gara, who attended the Five Kage Summit that Sasuke attacked, arrived and revealed Tobi's declaration of the Fourth Shinobi World War, telling Naruto how they would be fighting Sasuke to protect Naruto, but he did advise Naruto to consider for himself what was the right thing to do. After hearing that most of his friends have turned against Sasuke, who now wanted to unleash his vengeance on just about everyone, Naruto hyperventilated and passed out. When he awoke, he was told by Yamato that Kakashi went to stop Sakura from dealing with Sasuke. Using a Shadow Clone as a decoy, Naruto escaped from the inn and followed Kakashi, arriving just in time to save Sakura from being killed by Sasuke. He tried once more to reason with Sasuke, sympathizing with his pain and acknowledging Itachi's sacrifice. However, Sasuke was unmoved and declared his resolve to destroy Konoha and sever the Uchiha's connection to the shinobi world. Naruto then clashed his Rasengan with Sasuke's Chidori, realizing that everything in his life he could have easily gone down the same path as Sasuke. Despite his jealousy of him, he had come to like Sasuke and was glad to have met him. Undeterred, Sasuke gave Naruto two options, kill or be killed. Naruto chose neither. Tobi and Zetsu arrived and prepared to depart with Sasuke. Naruto resolved that if he and Sasuke were to battle again, they would kill each other but he was willing to accept it as he would shoulder Sasuke's hatred alone. Sasuke vowed to kill Naruto first and left with Tobi and Zetsu, while Naruto and his teammates returned to Konoha with the captive Karin. Naruto explained the situation to his friends and asked to fight Sasuke alone, determined to get stronger for their upcoming battle. Naruto the movie, Blood Prison. A discusses a box with Omoe, Karui, Samui, and Mabui, and suddenly gas covers the room, knocking everyone out. Then a hooded figure leaps out attacking the sleeping Raikage, only for the figure to stop right before killing A. When A is seen above the figure, the figure dodges and is able to fight equally with A. In the battle, A is able to destroy the hood, revealing the hooded figure as Naruto Uzumaki. Taking advantage of A's shock, Naruto escapes. As Team Samui and Mabui wake up, A tells them to summon Killer B. In Konohagakure, Tsunade states that Naruto is wanted for attempting to assassinate the leader of Kumogakure, the Raikage, and killing Jonin from Kumogakure and Iwagakure showing wanted posters of Naruto from Iwagakure and Kirigakure to Team Kakashi. 
Naruto and Sakura refuse the claims, but Tsunade states Naruto will be placed in the Hozuki Castle, a criminal containment facility also known as the Blood Prison in Kusagakure. Naruto attempts to escape, only for Yamato to encase him, and Tsunade takes away his forehead protector. When Naruto arrives at the Hozuki Castle, Mui, the head of the prison, quickly places the Fire Release Heavenly Prison on Naruto, sealing his chakra. Naruto learns this the hard way after using his shadow clones, Naruto quickly collapses from the pain caused by the seal. Naruto is later taken captive by Maroi, who is working for Mui. When Naruto is brought to a lab, Mui realizes that the Naruto taken was a clone. While the real Naruto was hiding, he used the chance to escape, but the pain from the seal made him pass out. After being caught, he was taken into solitary confinement. When in solitary confinement, he hears a mysterious voice saying that if he can defeat Mui, the seal will disappear. Naruto, then after being released, attacks Mui. But the seal causes Naruto to collapse and he's taken back into solitary confinement. During the fight, Mui questions Naruto's devotion to his home, wondering why he bothered being loyal. When Naruto's released, he is looked up to by the rest of the prisoners. Naruto later attempts to escape again by knocking out one of the guards and taking his clothes when his shadow clone fools everyone. As he's able to get to the edge of the island where Ryuzetsu tells him to stop, Naruto refuses to listen and he jumps into the whirlpool. He nearly drowns, but Ryuzetsu saves him. Naruto thought she was a boy, but later sees that she's a girl, and that it is her mission to kill Mui and stop the box of ultimate bliss. She reveals that Mui even sacrificed his son, Muku, to the box, and that Mui set Naruto up. She asks for Naruto's help to destroy the box. Naruto agreed. In the next day, Naruto challenges Mui again, but is defeated and taken to solitary confinement. When Naruto is confined, Ryuzetsu attempts to stab Mui, only to reveal that she attacked Maroi. Maroi forms an alliance with her, saying he's not really on Mui's side, and that he's just on the side that benefits him the most. When Naruto is asked to leave the punishment room, he uses a clone to gather some natural energy because he intends on using Sage Mode. Naruto and Ryuzetsu pretend to fight, engulfing the entire courtyard in the fight, while Maroi forces prisoners inside to fight as well, creating chaos. In the chaos, Maroi performs a technique in the sky while Naruto tries to find the box. Just before he's able to destroy the box, he is captured by Mui. Mui extracts some of Naruto's chakra, allowing the box to revive. Naruto is able to escape. Mui then reveals that his wish is to bring back his son. The box grants his wish, opening up and allowing a grown-up Muku to walk out. Muku then impaled Mui with his own hand and knocked out Kaza. Muku then transformed into Satori. When all chaos breaks out, Naruto enters Sage Mode and then tried to use the Big Ball Rasengan on the box of Ultimate Bliss to destroy it but fails. Naruto is then engaged in combat with Satori but fails because he's unable to touch Satori. He summons Gamabunta to combat Satori but they can't attack him due to their moves being predicted beforehand. Eventually, Naruto runs out of Senjutsu, allowing the Satori to attack Naruto. This forced Gamabunta to defend him, causing Gamabunta to be defeated. Satori then attacks Naruto again, but he is saved by Killer B. Naruto is amazed that Killer B and all his friends have gathered here. As Naruto wonders why this is happening, Tsunade reveals that it was Naruto's mission to destroy the box and that no one believed that Naruto really committed any of the crimes. It was also revealed that Marai was a friend of B's and he was the mysterious voice. Naruto decides to attain Sage Mode once more and tells Killer B and the others to distract Satori while he does this. Naruto is able to realize that Satori cannot read the minds of people, but he can read their fears, allowing Naruto to fight Satori evenly in Sage Mode. Naruto attempted to end the battle by creating a large Rasengan with two clones. However, Satori impales him with Ryuzetsu in the way. Naruto is able to wake Mui up, and he uses his shadow clones to hold Satori's wings, pushing Satori back and therefore allowing Mui to weaken it. Naruto uses this time to free himself and Ryuzetsu, and defeats Satori by firing a wind release Rasen Shuriken, returning Satori back to normal. Muku kills both his father and himself, and apologizes to Ryuzetsu for not keeping his promise. The prisoners attempt to escape, but are stopped by Naruto's friends. After capturing all the prisoners, Sakura tries to heal a dying Naruto, but has no success, until Ryuzetsu revives Naruto by using her Kekai Genkai with the cost of her life. In the aftermath, Mui and Ryuzetsu were shown to be buried next to each other. Naruto then ties Ryuzetsu's bandana around her gravestone, promising to cherish the life she returned to him, and re-quoting what she said about being a guiding light by protecting the things people cherish. Power The reborn Team Kakashi is sent out on a mission by Tsunade to a location known as The Hole to investigate an incident where Tonika Village's people had been killed. Elsewhere, Sakura and Naruto, who are at the hole's water spring, encounter Kabuto Yakushi, who uses tiny, specially created snakes to create a clone of Hidan using his DNA and the water in the hole, which possesses special properties. Kabuto then reveals that he has reincarnated several shinobi. A fight ensues between the two sides as Yamato and Sai rejoin their teammates. As Team Kakashi continues to battle Kabuto, Hidan, and the reincarnated shinobi, Naruto gets swallowed by a giant snake created by Kabuto, but manages to escape using shadow clones, accidentally ingesting Kabuto's clone snakes in the process. When Naruto resurfaces, Kabuto retreats, using the reincarnated Deidara as a diversion, while revealing a village guard's corpse in the mouth of a snake. After the attack, Naruto and Sakura join up with Shisaru, Yamato, and Sai in going with the rest of the guards. While Yamato and Sai investigate Kabuto's motive for destroying the village, Sakura and Naruto follow Shisaru to Doku's house. 
Plagued by vivid images all day, Mina approaches Naruto and begins repeatedly saying, get out. Later, Disonasu visits their home, and to everyone's surprise, the Tonika village head is with him. However, Mina alerts everyone to the fact that there had been something strange about her grandfather, and it's revealed that he had been reincarnated. As a fight subsequently breaks out when Kabuto makes an appearance, Naruto begins writhing in pain. Rushing towards him, Mina once again begins shouting, get out, eventually forcing the tiny snakes out of his body. The snakes then form a clone of Naruto in his four-tailed version 2 state. The nine-tailed Naruto clone tries to attack Doku and the orphans. When Might Guy and Rock Lee arrive to repel it, the rest of the Konoha 11 arrive. Team Asuma helps Sakura and Kakashi, and Team Kuranai helps Naruto. The beast grabs Naruto to absorb Chakra, which the Ninetales gladly shares. Hinata tries to defend Naruto, but is sent flying. After the beast absorbs Naruto's Chakra, it grows in size and starts to devastate the Hacho village, even firing a tailed beast ball in far away, missing Yamato, Sai, Deidara, and Hidan, who are fighting outside the village. Doku tries to save Naruto, who is still unconscious. While inside the underground hall in the Tonoka village, Naruto, unconscious and strangled by snakes, meets the Ninetales again in his subconscious. While the Ninetales tries to control Naruto, Doku calls him, but gets shouted instead. Doku asks Naruto what burden a powerful person carries and made Naruto choose the reason why he desires to be powerful, seeing flashbacks of his comrades of Konoha and also Sasuke, leading the seal inside Naruto to gain strength again. Doku gives Naruto his forehead protector, stating that he believes in him. While inside the hall, Kabuto, along with two reincarnated puppets, approaches with Disunasu, revealed to have engineered Tonika's destruction. Disunasu also praised Naruto about defeating Pain, the one who scarred him and left him powerless, before kicking the boy repeatedly. Disunasu prepares the summoning of the power by putting the remaining iron bars while Naruto enters Sage Mode. Naruto faces off with the clone, while Deidara uses explosive clay to create a diversion and chase Naruto. While Naruto relentlessly attacked the clone, he learned that there is more than power. As Yamato restrained Disunasu, he activated the Seizuri, opening the area where Naruto faces the clone, draining the lake as an obelisk rises and creates a storm. Naruto tried to stop Disunasu from ascending the tower, only to face his clone after he absorbed some of the tower's power and transformed into a hydra-tailed fox monster. Absorbing the power within the Ama no Hoko, the nine-tailed Naruto clone mutated into a hydra-tailed version of the nine tails whilst sending Disunasu to his death. Overpowered, Naruto almost gave in to the Ninetales' offer for power when Minato's voice urges the boy to control the tailed beast as Naruto is engulfed in a six-tailed chakra cloak in the Ninetales' image. Over time, as he starts to lose against the clone, the Ninetales starts to take over Naruto's body and assumes a seven-tailed Jinchuriki state while Yamato tries to restrain it. By that time, Mina is able to get through to Naruto, regaining control as he assumed a new form to save Shisuru after telling Doku to go forward and stop the Ama no Hoko. As Doku realizes Mina's melody could stop the Seizuri, he attempts to recall the tune Mina hummed to change the sounds in the Seizuri to deactivate the tower. Naruto uses his new power to destroy his clone as the Amano Hoko recedes into the ground. The children celebrate with Naruto. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown As Naruto was about to eat at Ichiraku, he was suddenly summoned back to Mount Myoboku by Fukasaku. He learned from the great Toad Sage's fortune that he would meet an octopus and would battle a young man with powerful eyes. When Gerotora was summoned to give Naruto the key to the 8 Trigram Seal, Naruto knew he would need the Ninetales' power for the battles to come and accepted the key. Naruto was sent back to Ichiraku where some of the villagers asked for his autograph. Naruto was unaware that the five Kage were planning to keep him from participating in the upcoming 4 Shinobi World War. For his safety, Tsunade gave Naruto an S-rank mission on a remote island in the Land of Lightning with Yamato, Might Guy, Aoba Yamashiro, and other Konoha Nin as security. Once on the island, Naruto met Killer B, the Jinchuriki of Eight Tails, and requested to train under him after marveling at B's mastery of his tailed beast. B refused as he was on vacation, despite Naruto's best efforts to impress him. However, when Motoi heard Naruto bumped fists with B, he took Naruto to the Falls of Truth, where B trained to control the Eight Tails. Following Motoi's instructions, Naruto sat on the platform in front of the waterfall and closed his eyes to see his true self, Dark Naruto, who berated Naruto on how quickly the Konoha villagers changed their opinions of him and exclaimed that the Nine Tails liked him better. Inside his mind, Naruto fought his dark self, but found that they were evenly matched. Breaking out of the meditation, Naruto questions Motoi about B's history in order to learn about how to conquer his inner darkness. Naruto reminisced about how B and Gara changed everyone's opinions about them and began to doubt if the Konoha villagers sincerely trusted him. After witnessing B save Motoi from a giant squid and resume their friendship, an inspired Naruto returned to the Falls of Truth and confronted Dark Naruto again. With Naruto now having faith in himself, Dark Naruto began to weaken as he asked for his reason for existing. Naruto answered by hugging him, accepted Dark Naruto as a part of him while thanking him for pushing him to become a better person. 
Dark Naruto finally relented and faded. B led Naruto and Yamato to a special room in the secret temple behind the waterfall, where Naruto was prepared to fight the Ninetales for its chakra. Within his subconscious, Naruto unlocked the seal and engaged the Ninetales in battle using Sage Mode. Though he appeared to have the upper hand in draining the Ninetales chakra, the fox instantly planted its own hatred within its absorbed chakra, consuming Naruto. Just before Naruto was completely consumed, the spirit of his mother, Kushino Uzumaki, appeared. Naruto believed that Kushino was the Ninetales in disguise, earning a hit on the head and an immediate apology from her, who hoped that he did not inherit her short temper. Realizing Kushino was his mother, he tearfully hugged her and the love-filled reunion purged the Ninetales' hatred within his drained chakra. With renewed confidence from hearing the story of his parents, Naruto battled the Ninetales once more. With his mother's assistance, Naruto successfully weakens the fox long enough to separate it from its chakra. Attaining the Ninetales' chakra mode, Naruto imprisons the emaciated and infuriated Ninetales within a new, stronger seal, apologizing to it as it faded into darkness. Afterwards, Naruto learned from Kushina about his heritage, the truth behind the Ninetales' attack on Konoha, and how his parents gave their lives to protect him. Naruto told his mother that he could finally understand what a parent's love felt like, and that he didn't blame them for what happened, instead feeling glad to be their son. As she fades away, Kushina tearfully hugged Naruto, thanking him for letting her and Minato be his parents. In the real world, Naruto demonstrated his Ninetales' chakra mode to be and Yamato, before sensing Kisame Hoshigaki of Akatsuki hidden inside his Samehara via his negative emotions. When Kisame attempted to escape, Naruto used his blinding speed to quickly smash him into the wall, though he gets his foot stuck. Yamato helps Naruto out while B pursues Kisame, and they regroup to see Kisame's defeat by Gai. Kisame is restrained for interrogation, though he breaks free of his confinement through sheer will and summons sharks inside a water prison to eat him alive. Shocked by Kisame's suicide, Naruto observes that even those in Akatsuki fight for their comrades. They examine the intel that Kisame was trying to send, which turns out to be booby-trapped. They are each caught in a water prison and are trapped alongside a shark. Another shark, meanwhile, is able to escape with Kisame's intel. After they escape, Naruto is tasked with evacuating the giant animals onto the island turtle's shell and logging the island's ecology as part of his official S-rank mission. He remains unaware that it's a ploy to keep him away from the war. Road to Ninja, Naruto the Movie The movie starts with a flashback to the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, which then flashes forward to the present timeline where the eight members of Akatsuki who are meant to be dead are actually alive and are battling the Konoha Shinobi, and this in turn unsettles Sakura. Shigamaru states that there's no point wondering why the dead are back alive and quickly comes up with a counter plan, but Naruto quickly attacks Akatsuki head on, forcing the rest of the Konoha 11 plus Sai, Kakashi, and Gai to attack. The battle continues until Naruto is caught by Kakazu. Sai frees Naruto by cutting part of Kakazu's arm off, causing the Akatsuki to retreat. Naruto and his friends return to the village where most of Naruto's peers are congratulated by their families, all of whom promise to write a recommendation letter for the promotion of becoming a Jonin, although Sakura has a little fight with her family who embarrass her in front of the others. As Naruto returns home, he passes many families making him reminisce about his mother and father, causing him to feel lonely. Later, while eating at Ichiraku Ramen, he meets with Iruka. He then asks Iruka for a letter of recommendation of his own, but Iruka refuses as Naruto is only a Genin and must become a Chunin and rise to the ranks just as Minato and all the other Jonin did. Naruto is saddened by his lonely lifestyle and so storms off saying that no one seems to understand him, and also that he doesn't like the extra menma on his ramen, which adds to his present state of mind and causes him to feel lonely. He meets Sakura, who had an argument with her family and also stormed out, grabbing Naruto's hand and telling him to go on a date with her. While Sakura complains about her family, Tobi appears in front of them and after a small scuffle, he then activates the limited Tsukiyomi. Naruto and Sakura are absorbed in a flash of light and later they find themselves still in the same park they were before with no signs of a fight or Tobi. They run into their friends, including Sasuke, which surprises both Sakura and Naruto, but with different personalities, and to add to their confusion, no one knows who Tobi is. They realize they're in another world, where Sakura's father was the fourth Hokage who saved the village instead of Minato, and in this world, Naruto is named Menma instead. As Naruto and Sakura return home, Sakura is happy for the new freedom she has, while Naruto hurries home to his apartment hoping to see his parents, only to find he doesn't live there. Meanwhile, in the present, Tobi reveals that the dead Akatsuki members in the beginning were only Zetsu clones. In the Genjutsu world, a man in a mask meets Tobi and they agree to work together. Elsewhere, as Sakura is looking through her dresser, she finds a fourth Hokage coat that Naruto's father once wore in the present, causing her to once again realize that in this world, it was her father who was the Hokage. She then meets Sasuke, who gives her a flower and flirts with her. Naruto and Sakura meet in the morning to try and gather more information of their current world, although Sakura enjoys this world as she has more freedom and is well loved by the village thanks to her father's actions. Naruto, on the other hand, wants to return home as fast as possible. Naruto and Sakura meet Tsunade and Shizune, who tell them that a masked man attacked Kumogakure and killed their Jinchuriki, which Naruto and Sakura believe to have been Tobi. They then meet Naruto's parents, who are alive in this world. Minato says that Jiraiya died finding the Red Moon Scroll that was said to help save the world. 
Sonata lets Naruto and Sakura join Minato and Kushina on their mission while Kakashi and Guy return. Sakura is shocked at finding out who Naruto's parents are, while Naruto is angry that Tobi would dare to make copies of his dead parents, and he swears to break the Genjutsu. While Sakura is still enjoying her life, she wonders how Naruto is doing. While Naruto attempts to ignore his parents, he sees an album showing him how his life would have been if his parents had been alive. In the morning, Sakura notices that this world's Kakashi and Gai have switched personalities, with Kakashi showing more excitement and displaying a positive attitude, and Gai complaining about having to do two missions back to back with a tired, uninterested attitude, while Naruto isolates himself from his parents at every turn. They soon locate where Jiraiya hid the scroll, but as the group stops to rest, Naruto charges ahead until he's confronted by the appearance of Gamabunta, Gamahiro, and Gamaken. They refuse to listen to Naruto and the group who explain their reason for being there and attack them with an army of frogs. Naruto attempts to enter Sage Mode, but while trying to gather enough energy, Kushina interferes and tries to protect him from Gamabunta, but a shot of acid burns her leg. As a result, Naruto gets distracted and is unable to enter Sage Mode. Minato then saves both of them quickly and is able to get the scroll, dispelling the summoning technique. As Sakura heals Kushina, Naruto still attempts to brush off his parents, causing Minato to say no matter what Naruto does, they will always try to save him as that's what they naturally tend to do as parents. Kushina then awakens and hugs Naruto, causing him to break down in tears and finally accept them as parents. They return to Konoha, where Tsunade locks the scroll in the village's safe until the night when a red moon will appear, when they can use the scroll to fulfill said prophecy. As Naruto and Sakura walk home together, Naruto quickly runs home saying that he has something to do, leaving Sakura alone. Sakura now finds her home too lonely and wonders if Naruto's always felt this way. As she walks downtown, she sees happy families, only making her more sad. She then realizes that this world's Sasuke is just a flirt as she sees him flirting with a group of girls and decides that Naruto was right on his decision to quickly break the Genjutsu. As she walks to Naruto's home to try to find a way to break the Genjutsu, she sees how happy Naruto is and wonders if they really should leave. Sakura later meets Naruto and asks him if he wants to stay. Although he denies it, he later thinks to himself that he truly does not want to leave. At that moment, an explosion occurs at the Hokage's office, where the masked man from earlier asks for the scroll they brought back. He overpowers Minato, Kushina, and Tsunade, and then Naruto and Sakura arrive. They realize that this was the man Tsunade was talking about, and that he knows Tobi. He overpowers Naruto and Sakura, and kidnaps Sakura in exchange for the scroll. He then uses Great Spiraling Ring, destroying a large part of Konoha, and then leaves. As Naruto decides to save Sakura, but Minato and Kushina try to prevent him in fear of him dying, showing that the two parents in this world are different from Naruto's real parents. He takes one of Minato's kunai and the scroll, leaving with Sakura's father's Hokage coat. Sakura is tied up and meets Tobi, who is a ghost, saying that they're in an old training ground that Minato and Jiraiya used. Naruto arrives, but is attacked by the other masked man, asking for the scroll. Naruto is unable to fight properly as his stomach acts up. The masked man then takes the time to summon the nine masked beasts, and is about to kill Naruto when the Akatsuki arrives and saves him. This Akatsuki was hired by Tsunade to help Naruto, and they deal with the masked beasts while Naruto attacks the masked man. Itachi saves Sakura, and Tobi decides to escape instead. The Akatsuki defeats the masked beasts that turn into nine fox kits, while Naruto chases the masked man into the training grounds. They then fight, Naruto uses Sage Mode, and uses the Wind Release Rasen Shuriken to counter the masked man's Great Spiraling Ring. It ends in a draw, but the attack destroys the masked man's mask, showing that he is Menma, this world's Naruto. Menma informs Naruto that the pulsating inside his stomach must be Kurama's reaction to the black nine tails within Menma. Menma then called back the defeated masked beasts and summoned Kurama's counterpart, the black nine tails. Naruto was unable to attack while the Akatsuki retreat, taking Sakura with them. Not wanting to be manipulated by the Sharingan again, Kurama takes a truce with Naruto to work together, allowing him to summon Kurama out of his body. In the battle, Naruto is barely able to win, but Tobi reveals that this was his plan, to have Naruto and Menma fight, as doing so would have the two foxes fight and weaken Kurama. As he possessed Menma, Kurama warned Naruto if he looked into Menma's Sharingan, it would be all over, for Tobi planned to extract Kurama out of Naruto the same way he extracted it from Kushina 16 years ago. As Menma overpowers Naruto, the latter tries to use the scroll when he notices the moon has turned red, but Menma cuts the scroll, causing Naruto to look into Menma's eyes. Naruto's memories are erased, but Sakura rescues him before Kurama is extracted from him. Naruto, in an amnesiac stupor, stares at the destroyed Red Moon Scroll, which brings back memories of his training to learn the Rasengan with Jiraiya, and how his father was the one who invented the technique. Naruto is able to break free of the Genjutsu just in time to save Sakura, and then defeats Tobi the same way his father did, breaking the limited Tsukiyomi. Tobi, using his ghost body, attacks again until Minato and Kushina arrive. Tobi decides to give up and exits the Genjutsu world just as Naruto and Sakura are enveloped in a bright light, preparing to return to their world as well. But beforehand, Naruto thanks Minato and Kushina, who quickly go to assist Menma, who is returning to his original state as their son. Naruto and Sakura return to their world, where Naruto's Hokage coat breaks down since it is only part of the Genjutsu world and not real. Naruto and Sakura tell Tsunade and Kakashi of what transpired, and they set out more guard patrols since Tobi was easily able to enter further in the village than they imagined. 
Shizune also brings up the topic of the letters of recommendation for the beginning of the movie, to which Tsunade replies that she has no intention of promoting any of Naruto's friends to Jonin. As they both return home, Naruto watches Sakura as she meets her parents, happily hugging them. He approaches her, asking her out on a date, but Sakura tells him that they just came back from the longest date ever, much to Naruto's shock. As Naruto goes home, he sees Iruka in his house, waiting to apologize to him. Afterwards, Naruto happily jumps roof to roof through the village while quoting that the road of the ninja is one who endures. After the credits, the sign in Ichiraku Ramen where it says Menma is changed. Fourth Shinobi World War, Confrontation. Naruto returned to the Falls of Truth with B to start practicing his Nine Tails Chakra Mode, specifically learning about how to use Tailed Beast Balls. Since the Tailed Beast Balls couldn't be made without Nine Tails cooperation, Naruto tried to create the Tailed Beast Rasengan as a workaround. While struggling to balance the Jutsu's composition, he sensed a distant source of the Nine Tails Chakra. Naruto left the Falls of Truth to investigate and was met by a contingent of Konoha Nin, amongst them Iruka Umino. Iruka tried to convince him to go back to his training, but Naruto bypassed them and, from entering Sage Mode, sensed the ongoing Fourth Shinobi World War. Naruto became angry that they would try to keep the war a secret from him, and they wouldn't let him help. Iruka apologized, yet still made an effort to restrain him. Naruto escaped and found a self-repairing barrier, preventing him from leaving by himself. B, at Iruka's request, decided to join him, and together they broke through the barrier. Shortly after, the Nine Tails pulled Naruto into his subconscious, berating him for squandering its chakra and calling him naive to think he could stop the war by himself. When the Nine Tails failed once again to tempt Naruto with power, the fox went off to claim that his attempt to put an end to hatred was futile, using his history with Sasuke as proof. Naruto responded by pinning the fox down, refuting that it was the only one who was being naive, and confidently exclaiming that he would find a way to deal with Sasuke and end the war. Before he leaves, Naruto also promises to resolve the Nine Tails' own hatred someday, unnerving the fox. On their way to the battlefield, Naruto and B were met by the fourth Raikage and Tsunade, both intent on stopping the Jinchuriki. B tried to convince the Raikage to let them go, and when that failed, Naruto tried to get around them, but the Raikage's lightning release chakra mode was too fast for that. The Raikage became increasingly aggressive in his determination to stop Naruto and B from joining the war effort, going so far as to threaten to kill Naruto if it would keep Akatsuki from capturing the Ninetales. First B and then Tsunade joined Naruto in arguing to allow them to fight, which the Raikage relented to once Naruto dodges his maximum speed. On Tsunade's orders, Shikaku Nara contacted Naruto and informed him about Akatsuki's White Zetsu army and the accompanying impure world reincarnations. Naruto and B soon afterwards encountered a squad of seeming allied forces, but with his Ninetales chakra mode ability, it allowed him to detect them as disguised Zetsu. He quickly defeated them and sent Shadow Clones to various other battlefields to lend assistance. Naruto and B soon ran into the reincarnated Itachi Uchiha and Nagato. They greeted Naruto and briefly caught up on what had happened since their deaths, but were quickly forced to attack by their summoner, Kabuto Yakushi. Nagato advised Naruto and B on how to counter this jutsu while Itachi, between his own attacks, recalled the crow that he planted in Naruto during their last meeting. Itachi activated the Koro Amatsukami of the Crow's Mangekyo Sharingan to release himself from Kabuto's influence. Itachi joined Naruto and B in fighting Nagato, first by neutralizing the Rinnegan summoning and then saving them from being killed by Nagato. Nagato, his personality now suppressed, tried capturing them with Chibaku Tensei, which the three combined efforts to destroy. While Nagato was distracted by their attack, Itachi sealed him with Susano. His personality restored, Nagato used his last moments to apologize and put his faith in Naruto. Afterwards, Itachi destroyed the crow, its Koro Amatsukami too valuable to let fall into the wrong hands. He left to find Kabuto so he could end the impure world reincarnation, but not before telling Naruto to let his friends support him and leaving Sasuke's reform to him. A Shadow Clone arrived at the site of the 4th Division's battle with various reincarnated Kage. Naruto was able to land a sneak attack on Mu, allowing the 3rd Suchikage to seal him before he could say anything. The Suchikage went to help Gara fight the 2nd Musikage, leaving Naruto and the 3rd Raikage along with the other members of the 4th Division. Like the 4th Raikage, the 3rd was very fast, easily dodging most attacks. The few attacks that did land had almost no effect, his body's natural defense was too high, and the Raikage's offenses allowed him to break through every attempt to contain him. When Naruto noticed that the Raikage had a scar from his fight with the Eight Tails years earlier, he contacted it via B to ask how the Raikage received the scar. Upon hearing the Eight Tails answer, Naruto surmises that the scar was self-inflicted, confirming it as he manipulates the Third into piercing his own body. The Third is sealed, and Naruto regroups with the Suchikage and Gara, who had already defeated the second Mizukage. As Naruto and B continued onwards, Naruto's Shadow Clone started arriving at various locations. Fourth Shinobi World War, Climax 
Shadow clones arrived at all the remaining battlefields, securing impure world reincarnations, weeding out the Zetsu that had infiltrated the Alliance's ranks, and defeating any other remaining Zetsu. Victory seemed near when the Sensor Division detected a new threat near the 4th Division, Mu, who split himself before his ceiling, and the reincarnated Madara Uchiha. Shocked by this revelation, they all wondered who the masked man Toby really was. Madara gave them little time to discuss it and attacked them immediately. He cut swaths through the 4th Division's ranks and used his Rinnegan to avoid the clones, the Tsuchikage's, and Gara's counterattack. Wishing to eliminate them all at once, Madara dropped a meteorite on them. While the survivors regrouped, Madara tried to summon the Ninetales. Although it failed, the fox sensed the attempt and offered some chakra to help fight Madara, preferring Naruto over the Uchiha. The Shadow Clone used the Ninetales chakra to counter Madara's nativity of a world of trees with big balls spiraling serial zone spheres. Though the extended fighting left the clone exhausted afterwards. Madara moved in to capture it, but was parried by the arrival of Tsunade, the 4th Raikage, and the 5th Mizukage. The 5 Kage vowed to deal with Madara themselves and asked that Naruto should instead focus on defeating Tobi. The clone dispersed just as the real Naruto converged on Tobi. Naruto and B clashed with Tobi's reincarnated Jinchuriki, styled like a Six Paths of Pain. During the fighting, Naruto referenced another Madara and asked who Tobi really was. Realizing his lie was exposed, Tobi refused to accept any particular identity, believing it to be irrelevant. Naruto was not satisfied with this answer and vowed to break Tobi's mask. B entered tailed beast mode to clear the surrounding forest that was giving him and Naruto a disadvantage against the reincarnated Jinchuriki. He then tried to seal the Jinchuriki, but Tobi had them enter version 2 forms to escape at the last second. The increased strength of the Jinchuriki caused difficulties for Naruto and B. Tobi, taking advantage of the situation, nearly captured Naruto, but was blocked by the arrival of Kakashi and Gai. Their arrival balanced out the two sides, so Tobi had the Four Tails and Six Tails enter tailed beast modes as well. The Four Tails captured Naruto in his mouth, allowing it to communicate with him. The Four Tails, introducing itself with the name of Son Goku, was angered to be controlled by Tobi, but it doubted Naruto would be any better since humans had always sought to control it and its fellow tailed beasts. Naruto insisted he was different, and Son Goku, touched by his desire to help it, told him how to release it from Tobi's control. Naruto managed to break out of its mouth, locate the black receiver, and remove it. Son Goku thanked Naruto for his help, but explained that it couldn't actually be saved, as it was still bound to the demonic statue of the Outer Path. Before it was pulled back into the demonic statue, Son Goku gave some of its chakra to Naruto and wished him luck. Tobi, having lost the use of one tailed beast, forced the others to enter tailed beast mode so the battle could be brought to an end. The Ninetales remarked that Naruto couldn't possibly win without its help. Naruto stated that he was not up for taking its chakra by force at the moment, and that he would figure something out. However, Naruto's earlier determination to help Son Goku moved the Ninetales, reminding it of the many selfless things Naruto had done during his life and the perseverance he always displayed. The Ninetales no longer wanted to oppose Naruto and instead offered to join him as a partner, asking only that Naruto call it by its name, Kurama. Naruto entered his own tailed beast mode and went to save Kakashi and Gai, deflecting the other five beasts' tailed beast balls. The Kurama avatar fought the beasts in close combat, forcing them to combine their tailed beast balls into one against it. Kurama countered theirs with a single one of its own tailed beast balls, and Naruto then used the avatar's tails to grab and remove the beasts' black receivers. From the contact, Naruto was able to interface with the other beasts, who introduced themselves and, like Son Goku, gave him portions of their chakra. Tobi recalled the beasts back into the demonic statue and, though irritated, remained confident in his eventual victory as he faced off with Naruto, B, Kakashi, and Gai. By the time night fell, however, Tobi was still unable to defeat them. A light eventually descended on the reincarnated Jinchuriki that B had kept restrained, allowing them to return to the afterlife and signaling that Itachi had finally defeated Kabuto. With his options running out, Tobi deposited the Benihisago and the Kohaku no Johei, which contained portions of Kurama's chakra, into the demonic statue which, combined with a fragment of the Eight Tails, Gyuki's chakra he had acquired previously, was enough to start the revival of the Ten Tails. Naruto, B, Kakashi, and Gai started focusing on destroying it, but were constantly stopped by Tobi and his peculiar teleportation and intangibility abilities. From the fighting, however, Kakashi noticed that Tobi's abilities were seemingly linked to his own Kamui. To take advantage of this, Kakashi had one of Naruto's shadow clones attack Tobi, and just as the clone was about to be destroyed by one of Tobi's attacks, Kakashi used Kamui on it without Tobi noticing. Naruto then attacked with a tailed beast ball, which Tobi escaped by retreating to Kamui's dimension. He found the clone waiting for him there, and it destroyed his mask with a Rasengan. When they saw his face, Gai and Kakashi recognized Tobi as their childhood friend, Obito Uchiha, whom they'd long thought dead. 
Obito declined to explain his actions to them and instead attacked, which attracted Madara, who escaped the release of the impure world reincarnation to their location. Seeing Madara, Naruto asked what happened to the Kage, to which the elder Uchiha replied that they were in bad condition when he left them. From that, and the conversation he overheard between Madara and Obito, particularly their manipulation of Nagato, Naruto attacked in a rage. Madara reflected him and then tried to capture him and B so that the Ten Tails could be revived in its complete form. Naruto split his attention, he and B fighting Madara's wood dragon with their tailed beast modes and one of his shadow clones trying to help Kakashi get over the revelation that Obito was alive. Obito tried to convince Naruto of the futility of resistance. Naruto insisted that protecting his comrades was always worthwhile, no matter how hopeless things may seem. His words brought Kakashi out of his slump, enabling him to start fighting Obito on his own, and energized Guy, who created an opening for Naruto and B to attack the demonic statue with a combined tailed beast ball. The attack came too late, however, and the Ten Tails was revived. Naruto, B, Kakashi, and Guy regrouped and coordinated an attack, but the Ten Tails was too powerful and Madara and Obito, once they linked themselves to it, were able to deploy its powers effectively. Just before they could kill Naruto and the others, the combined remaining allied shinobi forces arrived to help. Shikaku Nara, communicating to all of them from the Alliance's headquarters, staged an offensive to restrain the Ten Tails. Although it failed, it was effective enough that Madara and Obito had the Ten Tails destroy the distant headquarters, killing Shikaku and everyone else stationed there. The allies made individual attacks against the Ten Tails, but none had any effect. At the same time, the Ten Tails started raining wooden skewers all over the battlefield, killing many. When one was about to hit Naruto, Hinata shielded him with her body, and Neji shielded her with his own. Dying, Neji collapsed on Naruto's shoulder, asking him to be more careful in the future, since many lives, Hinata's particularly, now depend on his. With his last breath, he thanked Naruto for calling him a genius all those years ago. Naruto was deeply distraught by Neji's death, which Obito tried to use as an example of the needless death that the Resistance caused, and that could be solved in the new world he wanted to create. Hinata brought Naruto back to his senses by reminding him of all the people who had given their lives to protect him and whose memories he could be insulting if he had given up now. As Naruto thanked her, he took her hand and coated her with some of Kurama's chakra. Naruto shared Kurama's chakra throughout the allied forces, increasing their strength and protecting them from harm. They all maneuvered into a formation that Shikaku was able to communicate to them before he died, and then, taking the form of a bird in memory of Neji, successfully removed the Ten Tails from Obito and Madara's control. Forced to fend for themselves, Obito sought out Naruto, criticizing him for wasting his energy protecting others. Naruto replied that protecting them actually gave him strength, motivating everyone within earshot. They then sensed the Ten Tails was about to attack, which Kakashi tried to stop with Kamui. Obito intercepted him and they teleported away, leaving the others to endure the Ten Tails Tenpenchi. Kurama's chakra protected everyone, but it faded in the aftermath. Naruto was left quite beaten up, requiring Sakura to heal him. When the Ten Tails attacked with another tailed beast ball, the allies mustered what little defense they could. Before it could reach them, however, the tailed beast ball was suddenly teleported away and Naruto's reincarnated father, Minato Namikaze, appeared at Naruto's side. The first, second, and third Hokage arrived soon afterward, and along with Minato, erected a barrier around the Ten Tails to confine it. Sasuke arrived shortly after too, at whose request the previous Hokage were reincarnated by Orochimaru, and who now opposed Obito and Madara. Their fellow Rookie Nine had set aside their differences with Sasuke for the time being, and joined forces in launching an attack against the Ten Tails. On Sai's advice, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura all summoned their signature animals, Naruto calling on Gamakichi, in order to focus directly on the Ten Tails itself. Naruto and Sasuke successfully damaged the Ten Tails arm with a combined Scorch Release, Halo Hurricane Jet Black Arrow Style Zero, but it merely removed its arm to prevent the flames of Sasuke's Amaterasu from spreading. Before they could attack again, Obito returned, landing on top of the Ten Tails head and seemingly about to use the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to restore Madara to life. While everybody focused on stopping Obito, Naruto couldn't help but notice the hand sails he was using were different than what Nagato used. Minato tried to cut Obito down, but discovered that it was too late as he sealed the Ten Tails into his body, becoming its Jinchuriki. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki Obito used his new power to destroy the barrier, forcing the Hokage to put the energy they were using towards the barrier to the fight instead. Because they had immortal bodies, they launched the first attack so the others could learn what they could about Obito's new abilities, but they were quickly defeated. Naruto and Sasuke engaged him as well, but were nearly killed, saved only by Naruto using his chakra arms to link to Minato so he could teleport them to safety. 
Just as before, Naruto and Sasuke combined their attacks, having Minato and the second Hokage coordinate teleport so the attack could connect. Obito's truth-seeking balls dissipated much of the attack, and the damage he did incur was quickly regenerated. From the development and some of the previous exchanges, Minato concluded that Obito was able to neutralize ninjutsu. Gamakichi, wanting to make some final contribution to the fight before he was forced to return to Mount Myoboku, attacked with his starch syrup gun. Minato took this opportunity to try and reason with Obito, reminding him of his former dream to become Hokage. Obito berated the title and those who had held it, as he had surpassed them. Naruto was insulted not only because this was a slight against his father, but also because he hadn't abandoned his dream of being Hokage like Obito did. The second Hokage teleported him to Obito and he attacked with the Rasengan, which successfully damaged Obito. Naruto noticed that Gamakichi's attack wasn't neutralized and realized that he was vulnerable to Senjutsu. With a weakness discovered, Obito trapped the alliance in a barrier and began charging multiple tailed beast balls that he would use to wipe away everyone within its confines. Minato noted that he wouldn't be able to teleport them all the way in time, so Naruto came up with a different approach. He linked his chakra with Minato and remotely restored the alliance's chakra cloaks, networking everyone in with Minato's flying thunder god technique, allowing him to teleport everyone out of the barrier. Minato did so, and was afterwards very proud of his son, saying he wished they had more time to talk. Naruto replied that it was not necessary since he already met his mother and that she explained everything. Naruto and Minato each entered tailed beast modes, with Naruto merging his with sage mode in order to imbue their shared Rasengan with Senjutsu. The second teleported them to Obito and they attacked, but he blocked it with his truth-seeking balls. To move ahead with his plans, Obito created a replica of the God Tree, the first step in performing the infinite Tsukiyomi. The tree started absorbing chakra from those nearby until they die, a fate that Naruto nearly succumbed to until he was saved by the third Hokage. Obito pointed to the growing number of casualties as further evidence that Naruto should stop resisting, an argument that Naruto was increasingly having trouble ignoring. Sasuke, unmoved by Obito's words, used Susanoo to hack through the tree and then mocked Naruto for giving up. Naruto was reminded of his desire not to lose Sasuke or anyone else for that matter and, reinvigorated, joined Sasuke in the offensive. Although their Senjutsu enhanced Tailed Beast Mode and Susano could compete with Obito, they were individually unable to defeat him. Obito continued trying to convince Naruto to stop, but he ignored him. Sasuke then coded his Susano around Naruto's Tailed Beast Mode, granting the Kurama avatar a sword and armor. Sensing that it was the final exchange, Obito created a sword and shield out of his own truth-seeking balls. Naruto created a Rasengan in each of the Kurama avatar's tails, which his friends from Konoha guide in a coordinated assault to Obito's shield, destroying it. As soon as Naruto and Sasuke sliced through Obito with their sword, the tailed beasts then began to emerge from the Uchiha's body, giving Naruto and the combined allied shinobi forces the opportunity to pull them out. The tug of war for the tailed beasts linked Naruto's consciousness with Obito's. Naruto reminded Obito of his earlier claim that he was nobody and set out to prove to him that he was Obito Uchiha, specifically the Obito Uchiha that Kakashi used to know. Naruto pointed out their similarities, how both were orphans, and that because of that they wanted to be Hokage. Obito agreed that they were similar, but that was the reason that he was trying so hard to convince Naruto that he was right, and insisted that the world he wanted to create was a better one because his vision of the future was clear, whereas the future of the current world was ambiguous. Naruto argued that was the point, and that uncertainty, when faced with comrades, was worthwhile, and offered Obito his hand so they might see what happened together. The allies successfully removed the tailed beasts from Obito and he fell to the ground, defeated. Minato and Kakashi insisted that Obito be left to them, while Naruto and the rest of the Alliance should focus on Madara. They did so, joining forces with the first Hokage against him, but right before he could seal them, Madara put one final failsafe into effect. He had Black Zetsu force Obito to revive him. Madara quickly neutralized the first, fended off Naruto, Sasuke, and Sai, and then went after the free-tailed beasts. Naruto entered tailed beast mode and assisted them with fighting him off. They were initially successful, but when Madara reacquired one of his Rinnegan, he easily defeated them with Limbo, Border Jail, sealing them all back into the demonic statue, including Bees Gyuki and Naruto's Kurama. The removal of Kurama from his body caused Naruto to pass out and placed his life in immediate danger. His Uzumaki heritage prevented him from dying instantly, but he required constant medical attention from Sakura in order to keep him alive. On the advice of Kurama right before it was extracted, Gara took Naruto to Minato so that Minato's portion of Kurama's chakra could be sealed into him, saving him. Kakashi sent Naruto and Sakura to Kamui's dimension so that she could continue performing life support without interruption. Obito soon arrived to help her, having overcome both Black Zetsu and Madara in order to acquire Minato's half of Kurama and give it to Naruto as his form of penance. While on the border of life and death, Naruto was met by the Sage of Six Paths, Hagoromo Otsutsuki. 
He explained his past conflicts with his mother, Kageyo Tsutsuki, and the conflicts that emerged between his sons, Asura and Indra. His son's conflict had continued through the centuries, with their chakra reincarnated every generation in new individuals to fight anew. Naruto was the current reincarnation of Asura, while Sasuke was the reincarnation of Indra. Naruto was not greatly surprised, having sensed something like that when he met Sasuke during the Five Kage Summit. Because of Madara's aims for the world, Hagoromo asked if he and Sasuke could join forces to stop him, a task he was only encouraged by from the Tailed Beast's positive words concerning Naruto. He gave Naruto the Six Paths Yang power, half his chakra, and the Six Path Sage mode to help him in his goal. When Naruto woke up, he had Obito send him back to the real world. There, he stopped Madara from killing Might Guy and used Hagoromo's power to stabilize Guy's life force from using the Eight Gates released formation. Surprised by Naruto's sudden increase in power, Madara was hit by Naruto's Sage Art, Lava Release Rasen Shuriken, which was fueled by Son Goku's chakra and instantly cut down the giant tree Obito created earlier. When Sasuke arrived, Naruto entered Six Paths Sage Mode and they started overwhelming Madara. Realizing his window was closing, Madara went after Kakashi and took his Mangekyo Sharingan, using it to follow Obito. Sasuke appeared shortly afterwards, sent by Obito so Madara wouldn't kill her. She could do nothing about Kakashi's eye, so Naruto used Hagoromo's power to restore the one he lost years earlier. Madara soon returned, having both his Rinnegan and Black Zetsu in control of Obito's body. Naruto and Sasuke immediately resumed their attack, but Madara had an easier time with them. He rose into the sky, raining Chibaku Tensei on them to keep them busy while he projected the infinite Tsukiyomi on the world. While Naruto destroyed the remaining satellite-like constructs, Sasuke shielded him, Sakura, and Kakashi with Susano from the infinite Tsukiyomi's gaze. He let them out once the illusion was finished casting, and they emerged to find themselves alone, with the rest of the world being wrapped into Madara's god, nativity of a world of trees. As Madara confronted them and started explaining how he had saved the world, he was stabbed in the back by Black Zetsu. Black Zetsu then transferred to Madara's body from Obito's and forced him to absorb the world's chakra, converting him into a woman that Naruto and Sasuke recognized as Kaguya Otsutsuki. Kaguya Otsutsuki Strikes Kaguya detected that Naruto and Sasuke, as the reincarnations of Asura and Indra, and also that her son Hagoromo had given them the power to defeat her. Not wanting to further the damage to the world that their fighting would cause, she shifted them all to one of her dimensions, placing them above a sea of lava. Sasuke summoned his hawk, Garuda, to save himself and Naruto, but ignored Naruto's pleas to save Sakura, Kakashi, and Obito too, since only he and Naruto were vital to the fight. Kakashi was able to briefly stop their fall, but the heat burned up the scroll he used to save them, and it was only Naruto's sudden discovery that he was able to levitate that saved them from the lava. He left a shadow clone to hold onto them, and then engaged Kaguya, creating an opening for Sasuke to attack. Sasuke's attack failed, and Naruto must save him from the lava. With their attacks ineffective and the environment such a hazard, Naruto and Sasuke discussed what to do. Kaguya appeared behind them and paralyzed them, binding them with Black Zetsu while she started absorbing their chakra. Black Zetsu took the opportunity to expand on the history earlier given by Hagoromo, painting Kaguya as the victim of her sons, Hagoromo and Hamura. Black Zetsu had for centuries been manipulating others towards the outcome of reviving her, and only then had it finally succeeded. It encouraged them to bask in the embrace of their oblivion, but Naruto refused, breaking himself free with Sasuke. Needing to take drastic action, Naruto used his ultimate jutsu, sexy reverse harem technique. Kaguya was so distracted that she was nearly sealed, but she recomposed herself in time to shift dimensions again, freezing Naruto and Sasuke in place. Because Naruto and Sasuke were only a threat to her when together, Kaguya sent Sasuke to a different dimension while she focused on Naruto. While Kaguya manipulated the ice dimension against him, his shadow clone explained to Kakashi, Sakura, and the now-awake Obito that his and Sasuke's powers were both necessary to defeat her. Obito offered to use his Kamui to try and explore Kaguya's dimensions to find Sasuke. To give Obito an opening, Naruto used Naruto region combo to overwhelm Kaguya, forcing her to retreat to another dimension to get her bearings. When she did so, Obito infiltrated the dimension Kaguya went to with Sakura and the shadow clone. The shadow clone faced her so she wouldn't notice them while they looked for Sasuke. Kaguya returned to the ice dimension and resumed her fight with the army of Naruto's clones. This kept her preoccupied until Obito returned with Sasuke. Increasingly frustrated, Kaguya shifted them to another dimension with powerful gravity to immobilize Naruto and Sasuke while she attacked with her all-killing ash bones. Kakashi and Obito used themselves to shield the attack, with Obito then using Kamui to protect Kakashi, leaving Obito unable to defend himself. Naruto tried to heal the damage to his body, but even Hagoromo's power couldn't save him. While Sasuke fought Kaguya, Obito thanked Naruto for reminding him of who he was and made him promise to become Hokage for both their sakes. Naruto agreed, and Obito's body crumbled. 
Black Zetsu ridiculed Obito for living an insignificant life and dying an insignificant death. Enraged, Naruto severed Kaguya's arm, in the sleeve of which Black Zetsu had been hiding, and then pinned it to the ground with his truth-seeking balls. Naruto and his shadow clones attacked Kaguya with Sage Art, super-tailed beast Rasen Shuriken. On impact, the tailed beast's chakra within her began reacting and Kaguya started losing control of her form. She was able to reconfigure herself and prepared an expansive truth-seeking ball to destroy them. Kakashi interfered, using Susano, a last gift from Obito, to make an opening for Naruto and Sasuke. She tried to escape, but Sakura punched her to keep her in place, allowing Naruto and Sasuke to trigger six paths, Chibaku Tensei. The tailed beasts were removed from her, Madara was spat out, and she was entombed in her own dimension. Not wanting Black Zetsu to scheme for her release again, Naruto made a point to trap it with her, but not before telling it that a spoiled brat like it has no right to compare itself with the men and women who truly shaped shinobi history. Team 7 wondered how they would return to their world. Sensing their need, Hagoromo combined the efforts of the dead Kage to summon them, the tailed beasts, and Madara back. Hagoromo thanked them for saving the world, as did the tailed beasts for saving them. Naruto happily greeted his original Kurama, asking if it missed him, to which the flustered fox denied. After Madara died from his ordeal, Naruto met with Minato, who as day broke, wished him a happy 17th birthday. As Hagoromo returned Minato's and the souls of the other dead Kage to the Pure Land, Minato voiced his pride in Naruto and promised to tell Kushina everything about him. The other Kage also gave words of parting, which Naruto tearfully accepted. With all threats gone, Hagoromo explained that the infinite Tsukiyomi would be released if Naruto and Sasuke combined their chakra. Sasuke agreed to this, but first he wanted to kill the Kage and destroy the tailed beasts, believing both were inhibitive to world peace. When he was unwilling to back down from his threat, the tailed beasts moved in to stop Sasuke, but he captured each in their own Chibaku Tensei. Hagoromo recognized that as a continuation of Indra's feud with Asura, but lacked time and power to do anything about it. Sakura tried to reason with Sasuke, but he knocked her out and left. Naruto followed after him, promising to Hagoromo that he would bring him around finally and end the centuries-long feud. Naruto and Sasuke end up at the Valley of the End, where they fought years ago. Sasuke stated his willingness to bear the world's burdens by himself and live independently of the past, neither of which Naruto believed were possible, or at least wise. He tells Sasuke it's impossible to do everything alone like he plans to, pointing to the missteps Itachi made and their own successful teamwork against Kaguya. Sasuke replies that he only wants to remake a better world, one where he can, like Itachi before, be solely responsible for the difficult decisions that must be made so nobody else needs to. This is what he believes a true Hokage to be. Naruto insists he will be Hokage, not Sasuke, because Sasuke is still going against what Itachi wanted from him, and they start fighting. After a brief exchange of blows reminiscent of their fight years ago, Naruto and Sasuke started trading punches with their tailed beast mode and Susano respectively. Sasuke chastised Naruto for not attacking him with an intent to kill, but Naruto, like last time, was unwilling to do so, not wishing for either of them to go without the other. Naruto then clashed his tailed beast ball with Sasuke's Susano supported Chidori, producing a large explosion that does noticeable but not debilitating damage to their respective avatars. Each therefore powered up their avatars, Sasuke by channeling the captured tailed beasts into a Susano, and Naruto by merging his avatar with the avatars of two shadow clones. The two met attacks once again, creating a gigantic explosion that stripped away their avatars and left them with too little chakra to use practically. They instead resorted to taijutsu, kicking and punching each other into the night. As the two neared exhaustion, Kurama mustered enough chakra for Naruto to make one last attack, but Sasuke absorbed it. Having expected this, Naruto delivered a solid punch, finally irritating Sasuke over the endless repetition of their fight. Kurama gave the last of its chakra to Naruto, who used it to make a Rasengan to counter Sasuke's Chidori. Both woke up later to find that much of the Valley of the End had been destroyed, and that they had each lost an arm, and that neither could move. Sasuke reflected that Naruto had been a constant obstacle to his goals, but that he was also the only person who had never given up on him. Naruto's usual response that they were friends didn't convince Sasuke since it obviously went beyond, so Naruto elaborated that he experienced pain if he didn't have Sasuke. Sasuke was awed, knowing full well that Naruto had experienced various misfortunes in his life, smiled through all of them, and yet would suffer without Sasuke. When they woke up the next day, Sasuke admitted defeat for the first time in his life, as he came to accept that Naruto was just as vital to him as he was to Naruto. Kakashi and Sakura eventually tracked them down, and Sakura healed them, though she couldn't do anything about their missing arms. Once they were able to walk, they returned to where the allied shinobi forces were all trapped, dispelled the infinite Tsukiyomi according to Hagoromo's instructions, and Sasuke released the tailed beasts. 
With the war over, Naruto returns to the village, where he attends a mass funeral for participants of the war. In the anime, while recovering from his injuries, Gara and A approach Naruto and thank him for his effort during the war. Shikamaru later brings Naruto to the academy and meet with Iruka and Kakashi, who are considering on promoting Naruto as a Jonin. However, because he never got to retake the Chunin exams, Naruto has to complete two years worth of studies, much to his dismay. However, Naruto is cheered up as Iruka offers to help him. Blank period. Months after the war, Sasuke was pardoned for his crimes on the good word of Naruto and Kakashi, who had been selected to become the 6th Hokage. Just before Sasuke left Konoha to wander the world, he was met by Naruto, who returned to him his forehead protector. Kakashi Hiden, Lightning in the Icy Sky Nearly a year after the end of the 4th Shinobi World War, Naruto and Sai were sent to the Land of Waves to capture Garyo, leader of the Ryuha Armament Alliance. Once they located the Alliance's hideout, Naruto launched an assault with multiple Shadow Clones. Although he was still missing an arm, he had learned how to perform one-handed hand seals. He easily dealt with most of the Alliance's members, but was briefly stalled by the ice release of Garyo's bodyguard. Naruto distracted the bodyguard with a Shadow Clone for long enough to apprehend Garyo. At some point within the next two months, Naruto received a prosthetic arm to replace the one he lost during the war. While eating at Ramanichiraku one day, he saw Kakashi walking by and asked him when he would officially take on the responsibilities of Hokage. He tried to convince Kakashi by listing the many shortcomings of Tsunade, unaware that she was standing right behind him. She angrily knocked Naruto unconscious. Kakashi finally accepted the Hokage position shortly after the mission involving the Ryuha Armament Alliance and the Blood Prison. Shikamaru Hiden, a cloud drifting in silent darkness. Naruto ran into Shikamaru early one morning, and they discussed their heavy workloads for the Shinobi Union. Since Naruto's assignments were given to him by Shikamaru, he took the opportunity to complain. Shikamaru explained that Naruto, a prime candidate for an eventual Hokage position, needed to get used to it. Naruto later discussed what Shikamaru had said with Sakura, having sensed there was something Shikamaru was keeping from him. Sakura reminded Naruto of all the work Shikamaru did to prepare Naruto for becoming Hokage, and that it likely had something to do with that. Naruto was aware of all that Shikamaru did on his behalf, but wondered if it was worth Shikamaru's trouble. A few days later, Naruto was approached by Tamari, who was worried about Shikamaru's recent behavior, and now asked where he was. Naruto didn't know, and was troubled to find that neither did Choji or Ino. He finally asked Kakashi, who admitted under pressure, that Shikamaru was on a secret assignment to the Land of Silence. Naruto joined Tamari's team of Suna Ninja to go to the Land of Silence to provide assistance to Shikamaru. They interrogated the locals upon arrival and learned that Shikamaru had been captured by the Enlightened Ones. They attacked the prison where Shikamaru was being held and successfully freed him, enabling him to complete his mission by taking the country's leader, Gengo, into custody. Afterwards, Naruto demanded that Shikamaru never keep anything from him again, otherwise their future Hokage advisor relationship would be very problematic. Shikamaru agreed and apologized. While Shikamaru returned to Konoha, Naruto and several under Konoha and Suna Shinobi remain in the Land of Silence to help the country recover from Gengo's control. The last, Naruto the movie. The film starts off with the explanation of Kaguya Otsutsuki consuming the chakra fruit, the birth of the ten tails, the sage of six paths stopping the beast and creating the tailed beasts. It then moves over to the battles between Asura Otsutsuki and Indra Otsutsuki, Tamara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju, and the ending conflict between Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha. Before enrolling in the academy, a young Hinata Hyuga is seen being bullied by boys over her Byakugan, calling her a monster which causes her to cry. Naruto shows up and tells him to back off, proclaiming he'll be the future Hokage. However, the boys outnumber him and easily beat him up and tear his red scarf. Hinata thanks Naruto for his efforts, and Naruto lets her keep the scarf since it's ruined, unaware that this was when the young girl's affections began for him. Sometime later at the academy, Iruka Umino tells his students to write down the name of the person they would want to be with if the world was to end that day. Though Naruto tries to act tough towards Sakura Haruno, she ignores him for Sasuke. While Hinata is unsure whose name to write, she sees Naruto making a paper plane with his paper, which leads him to be scolded by Iruka. Naruto goes on to state that he has no friends or family, and that the world isn't going to end. Seeing this, Hinata happily writes Naruto's name on her paper. In the present time, two years after the fourth Shinobi World War, Hiyashi Hyuga accompanied by two subordinates met with Ponerio Tsutsuki outside Konohagakure. Asking for an answer to his earlier proposition, and stating the fate of the Hyuga clan depends on Hiyashi's answer, he declines Toneri's offer. Engaging in combat, Hizashi is overwhelmed by his puppet army and trapped in a cave. In Konoha, Naruto is invited to teach academy students taijutsu, much to the joy of the young boys. This lesson is interrupted by a crowd of young girls that greatly admire Naruto, much to his confusion. Ino, Choji, and Shikamaru spot this, noticing how popular he's gotten since the war. He has since then received various gifts from Konoha villagers and abroad from young women smitten with him as hero of the world. Later, Konohamara meets with Naruto and wishes to take him to his late grandfather's old storage shed, claiming that there's something for him. 
Elsewhere in Konoha, Hinata knits a red scarf in remembrance of the one Naruto used to wear back in the academy, so she can give it to Naruto at the Rinne Festival as a personal gift of love when she confesses her love for him. She is later found by Sakura, who encourages her to give him the gift and win his heart. Meanwhile, the five Kage, 6th Hokage Kakashi Harake, 5th Kazakage Gara, 5th Mizukage Meitarumi, 4th Raikage A, and 3rd Tsuchikage Onoki have an emergency meeting in regards to the threat of the moon, which is revealed to be falling out of orbit and onto the earth. They deduce that if nothing is done soon, the moon will break apart and crash into the earth and kill all life on the planet. At night, Hinata finishes her gift for Naruto and attempts to give it to him, but her shyness stops her from doing so. Hanabi Hyuga playfully encourages her to give it to him while warning her sister that there are various girls after him now as well. She meets Naruto, Sakura, Ino, and Shoji at Ramanichiraku. Just as she sits down to eat, three Kunoichi show up and start being affectionate towards Naruto. After seeing this, Hinata decides to leave, to which Sakura tells Naruto to walk her home. However, he doesn't understand why he has to, given her powerful abilities. Sakura catches up to Hinata, telling her that Naruto is very dense about love due to not having anyone in his life express it for him, and assures Hinata she'll be able to win him over if she's confident enough. Meanwhile, various puppets secretly invade Konoha and raid the Hyuga estate, kidnapping Hanabi in the process. On the outskirts of the village, Sai paints a portrait and spots one of Hanabi's captors flying overhead and follows behind. After a quick chase, Sai was taken down by a blast. Back in Konoha, in front of Naruto's home, Hinata practices her confession but is interrupted by Naruto's arrival. After noticing a scarf around Naruto's neck, Hinata's stomach growls. This notions Naruto to invite Hinata to eat ramen in his apartment, but runs off embarrassed much to his confusion. As Hinata sits on a park swing, she begins to cry, saying she's happy for him and thinking that she's lost her chance to be with him. Just then, Toneri appears before Hinata, claiming that he came for her. She is rendered unconscious by Toneri, who affirms the strength of her chakra of Hamura as Naruto shows up and gives chase. Naruto is able to save her from her kidnapper, but the scarf she knitted is ripped as a result of her chakra being distorted. Toneri leaves a message that the end of mankind is approaching and he will return for Hinata. As he leaves, Naruto and Hinata witness a meteor crash outside the village. With Hanabi captured by Toneri, Naruto, Hinata, Sakura, Sai, and Shikamaru are deployed by Kakashi to go and rescue her. To accommodate for the mission, Shikamaru is given a special clock only held by the five Kage, which apparently counts down the time till doomsday. As the group follow Toneri's trail, courtesy of Sai, Hinata finds Hanabi's kunai and puts it in her bag, where Naruto sees the ripped scarf. They eventually find a cave with a secret path towards Teneri's location. Hinata is unable to use her Byakugan due to the lake distorting her vision for an unknown reason. Naruto proceeds to make sure his scarf is not wet, proclaiming it to be special to him, leading Sakura to state that it can't be that important and Hinata feels upset. Sai realizes that the water is incapable of making them wet. They then dive into the lake, only to discover it's a genjutsu set by Toneri. They are all trapped in their own memories from the past, as Naruto recalls his fight with Kiba Inazuka in the Chunin exams. Hinata's scarf begins to wrap around Naruto and her memories flood into his, causing him to remember her fight with pain, her confession of love to him, her writing his name on her paper in the academy, and Hinata and Sakura's talk about giving him the scarf. Naruto is left utterly bewildered by how much she's loved him for so long. Before it can sink in, Sakura dispels the genjutsu placed on everyone. As they descend further, Hinata is found by Toneri, who calls her the Byakugan princess and announces his desire for them to be married. Hinata refuses, demanding the safe return of her sister. Toneri then reveals that he's taken her sister to Byakugan, and if Hinata agrees to his proposal, he will spare both Hinata and Hanabi's lives, and eventually return Hanabi's Byakugan. While Sakura, Sai, and Shikamaru fight against the gatekeeper of the spring, Naruto comes back to protect Hinata and fights Toneri only for the two to realize Toneri is a puppet. The Toneri puppet explains he will return in person to hear Hinata's answer. Now knowing Toneri is targeting Hinata, Naruto proclaims he will not let Hinata out of his sight now having realized his own romantic feelings for her as well. With this, Hinata notices Naruto isn't wearing his scarf anymore. The team arrives outside the cave, seeing an artificial sun inside the moon. They make their way to an abandoned shinobi village of the Otsutsuki clan. At some point, Tanari takes Hanabi's Byakugan, which he remarks is incredibly pure after he implants them in his own empty eye sockets, awakening the Tensaigon sealed by Hamada's descendants over the last millennium. He tells his guards he will go after Hinata, but not until his eyes are adjusted. As Naruto and Hinata spend more time with each other, she remains humorously oblivious to his love for her. As Hinata runs into a spider web, she screams having Naruto rush to her, and he picks the web out of her hair making her blush. Hinata asks why Naruto took off his scarf, to which Naruto states he feels fine without it. Naruto then falls down some stairs and hurts his back. With Naruto unable to reach his bruised spot, Hinata proceeds to rub ointment on his back, which leaves Naruto rather pleased. As they search the ruins, Shikamaru realizes Teneri's plan, and that he is the orchestrator of the falling moon. With Hinata's arrival, a monument of the clan awakens for her, revealing a puppet, which calls her the Byakugan princess, and shows her a version of Hamada. 
Hamada awakens her latent Hamada chakra, transfers his own, and orders her to stop Teneri as only she can destroy the Tensai God, as she is the Byakugan princess, and that Toneri, a member of the Otsotsuki's branch house, has misinterpreted his celestial decree. When Hinata awakens, she tells the others what she saw was nothing. Later that night, Naruto follows Hinata to a pond, seeing her knit away at the scarf. Naruto consoles her when Hinata thinks she's a horrible big sister since she just knits a scarf rather than spending more energy to find her sister. Naruto disagrees, recounting the amount of time and energy she's been putting into finding Hanabi. When Hinata thanks him for his reassuring kindness, a flustered Naruto accidentally reveals his newfound feelings for her, leaving her greatly shocked. However, the tender moment is interrupted by Taneri's arrival. This time Hinata freely goes with Taneri after giving the refurbished scarf to Naruto. Before having his chakra drained by Taneri, Naruto chased after him and Hinata, only to be shocked by Hinata not denying Taneri's statement that they would soon be married. The resulting explosion of Naruto's vast chakra destroys a massive part of the moon, and shreds Hinata's scarf yet again, leaving her heartbroken as Taneri's assault on Naruto, forcing him to put her into a slumber. Back on Earth, the various hidden villages defend themselves against the crashing meteorites as they protect civilians all over from Taneri's genocidal assault. As Rock Lee and others fail to completely destroy a huge meteor, Sasuke arrives and saves Konoha from certain doom, revealing he rescued Hiyashi. Sasuke then declares he'll defend Konoha since Naruto is away and gives the Konoha ninja a much needed break. Elsewhere, as Naruto is being healed by Sakura, she notes his injuries are quite serious. Naruto mutters Hinata's name and Sakura notes that he's finally realized his feelings for her. Back on the moon at Taneri's palace, Taneri marvels at Hinata's beauty as she sleeps. Wanting to know more about her, he reads her mind only to find that she's only thinking about Naruto, much to his confusion and jealousy. When she awakens, she finds her sister safe, but even while in her comatose state, Hanabi grabs Hinata silently begging for help. Taneri arrives and gives Hinata a vast army of puppet maids to do her bidding and gives her a tour of his palace. Here, Taneri tells her about his clan and how they would use the Ten Saigon against their enemies, this case being mankind who used Chakra as a weapon and thus intends to wipe them out as per Hamada's celestial decree. After showing Hinata the mausoleum of Hamada and having dinner, Taneri requests Hinata to make him a scarf like she made Naruto, and orders her to never question his plans to destroy Earth again. Later, upon seeing a floating island in front of his castle, Taneri explains that it's a temple of Hamada, and it comes nearby his castle once a year during the Rinne festival. He later takes her to the floating temple after Hinata asks that she personally pay homage, stating that Hamada must be happy for her offer. Hinata realizes that she couldn't find the Tensaigon somewhere in the moon, but finds a hidden location with her Byakugan. While Taneri rests from his inability to control the Tensaigon, Hinata attempts to destroy the Tensaigon altar as per Hamada's request, only to be stopped by Taneri. Angered by her lies and betrayals, Taneri destroys her scarf in a jealous rage, proclaiming he knew full well she made it for Naruto. He then brainwashes Hinata by placing his green chakra sphere within her body, so that she will still go through with getting married. Meanwhile, following a three-day recovery process, Naruto awakens and becomes depressed about Hinata's choice, leading Shikamaru and Sai to scold and make fun of him in hopes of reigniting his drive, only to fail. Shikamaru then takes Naruto to Sakura, revealing that she was severely weakened due to saving his life in hopes that she can restore his fighting spirit, something he admits Sai and himself are nowhere near capable of. Sakura talks with Naruto and helps him realize that Hinata truly loves him, stating she noted the feelings he had for herself were just another way to compete with Sasuke, but Naruto's feelings for Hinata are far more genuine and deeper than they were for herself and Hinata's love for Naruto is far more genuine. With newfound strength, Naruto leads the charge into Toneri's moon base. Naruto's team invades the palace and split up, Sai and Sakura are going to rescue Hanabi while Shikamaru and Naruto go after Hinata. As Shikamaru holds off Taneri's puppets, Naruto arrives just in time to stop Taneri from kissing Hinata, angering Taneri, who leads her to the Room of Rebirth. To humiliate Naruto, Taneri forces the brainwashed Hinata to attack him, but he manages to remove the orb in her body. After Taneri pulls Hinata towards himself, he tries to put another green orb in her body, but his latest Tensaigon pulsation allows Hinata to escape from Taneri, and after apologizing to him, she leads Naruto to the energy vessel. With their combined efforts, they are able to destroy the vessel, revealing numerous Byakugan sealed inside, which stops the moon from plummeting to the earth. After regrouping with everyone, Sakura presents Hinata with the remnants of her scarf, to which Naruto reveals he knows it was for him after seeing her memories. Despite being ruined, Naruto happily takes it, which leaves Hinata on the brink of tears of joy. Just then, Shikamaru notices the Doomsday Clock has begun again for some reason. Back on Earth, A and Killer B use a massive chakra cannon to destroy the meteors headed for Earth, and upon learning of the moon still approaching, intend to use the cannon to destroy the moon. Kakashi is then told by Hiyashi that he is certain that Taneri took his daughters to the moon. After observing Kurama battling on the moon, Hiyashi's theory is confirmed. 
Despite now being informed that Naruto and his team are on the moon, A wishes to destroy the moon regardless. The other Kage are against this, angry that A once again has a weapon of mass destruction secretly hidden away, and order him to wait an hour as they feel Naruto can stop the moon given his actions during the previous war. Meanwhile, at the destroyed energy vessel, a furious Toneri manages to unlock the Tensaigon, allowing him to continue his view of the Celestial Decree. Toneri then summons a giant golem that battles Kurama as he unlocks the Tensaigon Chakra Mode. He captures Hinata, throwing her in a cage so she can watch him kill Naruto, who he has grown to despise. As a huge duel then ensues, Toneri reveals his newfound power to slice the moon in half. Near the end of the fight, Naruto grasps the last remaining shred of the scarf Hinata had made for him and seemingly redirects and channels his chakra shroud into the scrap in his right fist and delivers a devastating punch, which is enough to depower Toneri and pin him against a wall. With his defeat, Kurama uses this chance to destroy the golem with a tailed beast ball and allows Hinata to retrieve Hanabi's Byakugan. Despite his defeat, Teneri refuses to give up and summons all the Byakugan eyes around him to grant him power to kill Naruto by draining his chakra, but Hinata stops him from absorbing his chakra anymore. With Teneri unable to maintain his form and being about to burn in the sun, Naruto saves him. With the hour up, A prepares to fire the cannon, but B refuses to kill Naruto and the others, much to A's frustration. Luckily, Kurama writes on the moon a mission complete symbol, much to the fox's annoyance as he admits his penmanship is terrible, signifying everyone is safe and the disaster was averted. A global declaration is made that Naruto, Hinata, Shikamaru, Sakura, and Sai have saved the planet from extinction. It's revealed that before returning to Earth and saving Toneri, that Hinata took Toneri to the site of Hamada's soul and the truth is revealed to him. Seeing this, Toneri apologizes for his actions and chooses to stay on the moon to atone for his sins and promises that the moon will never approach Earth again, despite Hinata and Naruto offering him a place on Earth. Later, Hinata asks Naruto about his scarf he was using earlier, to which he reveals it was knitted by his late mother for him before he was born, which is why he was so protective of it, leaving Hinata relieved and embarrassed by her actions. As they all head home on Hanabi's request, Naruto proclaims to Hinata he wants to spend the rest of his life with her, which moves her to tears. As they leave through the portal, a glimpse of their future lives together is shown, and is followed by them seeing past versions of themselves with Naruto's past selves wearing the red scarf she knitted all while running out of the cave hand in hand as the portal falls apart. Hinata falls but is caught by Naruto who tells her not to let go, to which she happily states she never wants to, and they then fly out of the cave, leaving the others behind at the exit. While floating in the sky with the moon behind them, they lean in and share their first kiss. The movie ends with a series of flash forwards of Naruto and Hinata's wedding. It further flash forwards to them having a peaceful morning with their two children, Boruto Uzumaki and Himawari Uzumaki, who playfully order their father to play with them, instigating the happy family into a snowball fight. Sakura Hiden, thoughts of love riding upon a spring breeze. When Naruto and Hinata were out on a date in Konoha, they ran into Sakura. Sensing that Sakura was overworking herself, they invited her to join them, but she declined. One day, while Naruto was teaching a class of academy students how to spar, he noticed Sakura, who was wandering around Konoha feeling distressed. Sensing that she needed a distraction, Naruto insisted that she help him, which took her mind off recent events. As thanks, Sakura informed Naruto of something she had avoided telling him. There were rumors that Sasuke was trying to destroy Konoha. She didn't believe the rumors were true, but nobody had been able to get in touch with Sasuke to confirm. Naruto pointed out that Sasuke must not be worried by these rumors, otherwise he would respond to the messages he'd been sent. Sakura thought this was a good point, and was put at ease. When Naruto and Hinata later learned that Sakura had been captured by Kido Sumiki, they joined with Kakashi in going to rescue her. On finding her, however, they discovered she had already defeated Kido. They congratulated her on her victory. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. Naruto and Hinata decided to get married and invited their friends and family. Because his parents were dead, Naruto asked Iruka to attend as his father, which Iruka happily agreed to. On the day of the wedding though, Naruto kept his real father in his thoughts, looking upon Minato's face on the Hokage rock with admiration as he and Hinata were about to walk down the aisle. New Era Shortly after their wedding, Naruto and Hinata had a son, and two years later they had a daughter. During the years, Naruto was constantly busy, leading to him never taking the Chunin exams. Despite being a genin, Naruto was selected to succeed Kakashi and become the 7th Hokage. On the day of his inauguration, Boruto accidentally destroyed Himawari's toy, leading to Naruto stepping in to defend his son from Himawari's gentle fist strike. But he ended up taking the blow instead, rendering him unconscious. He ended up missing his own inauguration, forcing Konohamaru to impersonate him during the ceremony. As Hokage, he hosted a Kage summit in Konoha in which Sasuke and Sakura attended alongside the four Kage and their bodyguards. During the meeting, Sasuke reported that a threat greater than Kaguya might exist somewhere, which Naruto and the other Kage decided to keep the information between themselves to avoid causing any panic. 
Academy Entrance Arc. In the anime, Naruto partakes in the entrance ceremony at the Academy, which leads him to being mortified after Boruto arrives and damages Hokage Rock. After the incident, Naruto learns from the Kaminariman Company president that Boruto is having a positive impact on his son, leading to Naruto smiling. Later, as a mysterious presence continues to cause people in the village to randomly attack the citizens, Naruto decides to begin an investigation, which uncovers that victims are having their chakras severely drained to the point of hospitalization. In the anime, as the mysterious attacks begin to happen more throughout the village, Naruto's efforts to uncover the truth begin to exhaust him, and being insisted by Shikamaru to go home and rest. Upon arriving, he learns that Boruto was acting very strange recently. Once confronting his son about his new attitude, Boruto insisted that he had finally manifested his Byakugan, leading them to talk to Hiyashi. Upon arriving at his household, Hiyashi, like Naruto, had doubts that Boruto had awakened the Byakugan. Deciding to test Boruto, Hanabi faces Boruto, which concluded that Boruto hadn't manifested the dojutsu. Afterwards, Naruto talked with Hiyashi about his grandchildren. After assigning Sai to investigate the attacks in the village, he returned home late and confided in Hinata about his ineptitude in interacting with his children, believing it to stem from his growing up without parents. Sometime later, Naruto saved civilians at the Konoha Purification Plant. As Boruto decided to check on his hospitalized friends, realizing that his son was conducting his own investigation on the attacks, Naruto dragged Boruto to the surgery room, showing his son what was becoming of the victims of prolonged rampages. While hoping to sway Boruto into staying out of this matter, it only strengthened Boruto's resolve. Shino then appeared, encouraging Naruto to have faith in his son as the teacher himself was recently saved by Boruto's efforts. While still weary, Naruto decided to trust Shino's judgment. While having dinner with his family in Mitsuki, Naruto abruptly departs to handle a matter involving strange chakra spreading across Konoha. Soon after, Sai discovered that the culprit behind these attacks was Sumire Kake. Naruto learned from Kakashi that Sumire's intention was to unleash the Gozu Tenno on the village. Later, when Sai found Sumire, she unleashed the Nue. Naruto soon joined the unit to fend off the creature, but Kakashi warned Naruto not to get too close. Having realized that the endgame of this creature was to amass enough chakra to produce a powerful enough explosion to destroy the village. While the barrier team worked to keep the creature at bay, it suddenly teleported away. As Naruto attempted to find the creature with Sage Mode, Kakashi deduced that the creature worked differently than normal summonings, existing naturally in its own separate dimension. Upon Sumirai turning herself in, Sai and Shikamaru notify him that it's due to Boruto appealing to her genuine love of her friends in the academy, making Naruto relieved that he decided to admit her in the first place. Later, he informs Boruto that while he must look to the welfare of the entire village and does not have absolute say, he promises to help Sumire. Ultimately, it was decided to pardon her and let her return to the academy. Later, Naruto sent a clone to meet up with Sasuke, giving him the research on the Gozu Tenno. Sasuke quickly deduced that this was an attempt from Danzo to recreate Kaguya's technique. Before Sasuke departs, he asks Naruto to apologize to Sakura for his continued absence, leading to Naruto feeling responsible for it. Sarada Uchiha Arc In the anime, when Himawari became sick due to a fever, Naruto hurried home worried about her, in which Boruto pointed out that his Hokage cloak is inside out. When Naruto and Boruto began fighting over what Himawari should eat, Hinata became angry and kicked them both out of the house due to them being noisy. Naruto then invited Boruto to eat with him at Ramen Ichiraku to try to bond with him, in which he accepted. As they ate, Naruto told his son all the precious memories he had in the shop, such as being acknowledged by Iruka, hanging out with Team 7, and going on his first date with Hinata. On the day of the Five Kage Summit in Konoha, Moegi and Uda notified Naruto that Boruto had vandalized the Hokage Rock. Before Boruto could do any more damage, Naruto catches and stops him. Afterwards, he gives his son a lecture about how the whole village is his family. The ordeal leads Naruto to arriving late to one Kage meeting, which he apologizes for. As Boruto's graduation exam from the academy was approaching, Naruto used a shadow clone to help him train. Meanwhile, the real Naruto received a report from Sasuke about a boy with a Sharingan. After he consulted with Kakashi about it, Naruto decided to accompany Sasuke to a meeting with Orochimaru, leaving behind a shadow clone to manage Konoha in his absence. He made a point to leave the village before Boruto could come see him off, though he asked Shikamaru to apologize to Boruto on his behalf. While on his way to the rendezvous point, Naruto sensed that he was being followed by Sarada Uchiha and Chocho Akimichi. He initially tried to ignore them, but eventually decided it would be better to confront them than to let them continue coming after him. When he arrived to speak with them, however, he found them being attacked by the same boy from Sasuke's report. 
Although he was pleased they were able to hold their own against their attacker, Naruto decided to get personally involved when he saw the boy had a Mangekyo Sharingan. The boy could do nothing against Naruto's Nine Tails Chakra mode, so he fled with a creature's space-time ninjutsu. Because the boy was apparently after Sarada, Naruto allowed them to come with him so he could keep them safe. While having lunch, Naruto told Sarada about what her father was like growing up, and informed both Sarada and Chocho in what ways they take after their parents. Sarada was not only interested to hear about Sasuke, but also found that she got along quite well with Naruto. As they got close to where they were supposed to meet up with Sasuke, Sarada used the bathroom as an excuse to sneak away from Naruto and Chocho so that she could see him first. Naruto followed, and on arrival was reprimanded by Sasuke for bringing children with him. Sarada explained that she came without permission as she wanted to know if Sakura was her real mother. Sasuke ignored the question, which only upset her and caused her to storm out. Naruto tried to comfort her, but his assurances that Sasuke meant well did not improve her mood. Before he could continue, he sensed the boy's return and defended Sarada as the boy and his father, Shin Uchiha, attack. Sasuke assisted in fighting off Shin and his son, but Shin was able to manipulate Sasuke's sword and used it to stab Naruto. Naruto continued attacking Shin despite his injury, though he tried to use being impaled by the sword to win sympathy. Kurama ridiculed Naruto for allowing himself to be stabbed at all, but assured him that it wouldn't kill him. Sakura suddenly arrived to lend assistance and landed a fatal blow on Shin, forcing Shin to escape and took Sakura with him. Unable to detect where Shin had taken Sakura, they continued to Orochimaru's lair. Orochimaru informed them that Shin was an old experiment of his that he had since lost control of. Naruto noticed Sarada sneaking off with Suigetsu during Orochimaru's explanation and followed them. Listening in as Suigetsu ran a DNA test that suggested Sarada's real mother was actually Karin. Not knowing what the truth was, Naruto was upset first with Sasuke for the secret he had seemingly been keeping, but also with Suigetsu for being involved. He approached Sarada to discuss it with her, but she lashed out at him, believing he had been a knowing participant in the lie that Sakura was her mother. When she tried to insist that having no blood relation to Sakura meant they weren't family, Naruto took a firm stance. He wasn't related to most of Konoha's villagers, yet he still considered them his family because they were important to him. In the same way, Sakura and Sarada were family because they were important to each other. Sarada realized how much she loved Sakura and decided she wanted to help rescue her. She reunited with the others and they head out for Shin's hideout. Using Sasuke's Rinnegan, they were able to reach where Shin took Sakura, only to find Sakura faring fine on her own fighting him. With the numbers growing against him, Shin called his sons, actually his clones, to assist, but they turned against him and killed him because he always mistreated them. The clones then turned their attention to Naruto and the others, which Naruto engaged with his own shadow clones. Because they were only children, he frightened them into surrendering by manifesting Kurama. After learning that Sakura indeed was her biological mother, Sarada reconciled with her parents, much to Naruto's happiness. Then they all returned to Konoha, with Shin's clones being delivered to the Konoha orphanage. School Trip Arc in the anime, to improve relationships with other villages and symbolically show the warring era was over, Naruto set up an official class trip for the academy to go to Kirigakure. Working out the details with Chojuro, he also got a tour guide for the class. Graduation Exams Arc In the anime, as academy classes began preparing for their graduation exams, the various students were interviewed about their future goals alongside a parent. Naruto, however, was unable to join his son as he was busy discussing matters with Orochimaru about his research on Danzo's old experiments. As Orochimaru delivered promising results to aid Sasuke in his own investigations while Shikamaru voiced his still limited trust in Orochimaru, Naruto was more relaxed about Orochimaru roaming the village. On Boruto's first day as a genin, Naruto managed to get some time to have breakfast with his family and see Boruto off to be assigned to his team. After Boruto left, Shikamaru went to Naruto's house to collect him and inform him of his various duties for the day. Later on, Naruto was in a field, testing a number of Shinobi's skills in barrier ninjutsu to better protect the village with Mirai Sarutobi as his escort for the day. When Boruto and his teammates came to him, he was thinking that they want to change teams, but was pleasantly surprised when they instead wanted their team denomination to be changed to Team 7. Genin Mission Arc in the anime, as the recently promoted Genin began to prepare for their first missions, Naruto prepared to present them as it was customary. While Boruto was bragging about how easy it will be, Naruto sternly warned him not to be so cocky. He presented Team 7 with a D-rank mission to aid the Green Bank's village who were being attacked by bandits for their crops. Naruto stressed that the team should show teamwork to complete the mission. Byakuya Gang Arc in the anime, when the Byakuya gang began conducting heists throughout Konoha, their act of distributing their stolen wealth to the poor began gaining much support from many of the villagers, leading to a protest breaking out after the group fooled the villagers into believing the Kaminariman company was corrupt. 
After Shinobi determined the leaders of the protest were being manipulated by Genjutsu and freed them, Naruto and his clones appeared before the crowds and began quelling them with his speech. Straight after, Naruto headed towards the Land of Fire's border where he apprehended Gekko, who had used the riots as a distraction to steal the magnum opus from the Ninjutsu Research Center. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day After announcing Parent and Child Day, Shikamaru took care of Naruto's paperwork, allowing him to spend time with Himawari. Despite being sleep deprived, Naruto accepted his daughter's wish and began searching for a Kurama doll with her. After being joined by Kiba during their unsuccessful search, he bought Himawari a Shukaku doll, to which she enjoyed. Later, with Himawari going to bed with Hinata, Naruto approached Boruto and apologized for not having spent any time during the holiday with his son. He gave Boruto a custom shuriken as a present, and the two decided to spend the remainder of the evening training together. Boruto, Naruto the Movie in the ruins of Kaguya Otsutsuki's palace, Sasuke Uchiha is battling a mysterious shinobi after recovering a scroll that Kaguya had hidden away many centuries ago. After Sasuke narrowly avoids a powerful attack using Ame no Chajikara, another shinobi with a similar appearance reveals himself, having watched the battle from afar, intrigued by Sasuke's possession of the Rinnegan. During a mission to capture a panda slash bear, Boruto Uzumaki shows off his newly mastered shadow clone technique and declares the animal as a panda, but Sarada Uchiha argues it is a bear. Because they're childhood friends and rivals, and that she is always watching him, Boruto feels the need to look good in front of Sarada. Boruto gets in Sarada's way as she moves to capture the panda slash bear, and he uses shadow clones to subdue the panda slash bear, and Sarada is angry at Boruto for getting in her way. Mitsuki tells her to leave everything to Boruto, because as the son of the 7th Hokage and the grandson of the 4th Hokage, Boruto might become the next Hokage, causing Sarada to angrily reply she will be Hokage. Konohamaru shows off his kote and captures the bear with the shadow imitation technique, and then shows it to the kids and creates a Rasengan, which leaves them in awe, but it veers off course and accidentally destroys a local farm. When they report to Naruto Uzumaki, who insists that Boruto address him as seventh rather than dad in his office, Boruto insists the mission was so easy he could have done it on his own, and Naruto lectures him on the importance of teamwork. This angers Boruto, who instead argues on how his father focuses more on Hokage duties than their family. Boruto warns Naruto to be at Himawari's birthday party or else he will never forgive him. Katasuke comes into the office to ask for Naruto's permission to use the kote in the Chunin exams, but Naruto refuses on the ground that the instrument defeats the purpose of the exams, which is nurturing new ninja. After the scientist leaves, Boruto tells Naruto this is not the lame era Naruto grew up in before storming out of the office. Boruto visits Katasuke to get new software for his video games, and the scientist asks him if he's planning on entering the Chunin exams, to which Boruto says no. However, Boruto is surprised when Katasuke tells him that the Hokage will be in attendance for the exams. Boruto later meets up with Shikadai Nara and Inojin Yamanaka to play video games before he is joined by Sarada and Mitsuki, who inform him that Konohamaru sent them to give him his application to the Chunin exams. Boruto says he doesn't plan to participate, and Mitsuki says they need a three-man team or else they can't apply. When Boruto replies he doesn't care, Sarada becomes angry and tells him that her dream is to become Hokage, and he is keeping her from getting closer to her dream. Boruto retorts that he doesn't plan to participate in the exams because he doesn't want to be Hokage, and tells Sarada that if she plans to be Hokage, she better be alone for the rest of her life or else it'll cause great problems to the people around her. Inojin asks Boruto to help him, and Shikadai beat the boss in their game, and Boruto gives him his data to make the game easier. But this only upsets them that Boruto is cheating and they leave, which confuses him. Realizing that Boruto is just upset at his father for spending less time with him, Sarada tries to cheer him up by suggesting that they enter the exams to show off their amazing skills and impress Naruto. Remembering that Naruto will be watching the exams, Boruto agrees. When asked by Boruto if her father will come watch her enter in the exams, Sarada says she doubts it. While talking about Sarada's father, Mitsuki comments that his parents told him only Sasuke can fight evenly against Naruto. Before they can ask Mitsuki about his parentage, Hinata and Himawari arrive to pick Boruto up to prepare for Himawari's birthday party. When Boruto learns that Naruto sent a shadow clone as a stand-in for Himawari's birthday party, Boruto lashes out at his mother as she tries to tell him that Naruto's job as Hokage is very difficult, but is important for the village. Boruto further retorts that Naruto must have been lucky to have experienced the joy of having no parents, which upsets Hinata, and she tells him that unlike Naruto, Boruto does have a father here. Boruto, however, replies that it's not about him, but Himawari before walking away. He goes to Naruto's study and finds his father's old tattered jacket, and after declaring it to be uncool, he throws it out of the window in a fit of rage. Thinking Naruto is at the front door, Boruto is ready to punch him before he sees that it's Sasuke instead, who has returned to Konoha to warn Naruto of the threat he encountered in another dimension. Hinata informs Sasuke that Naruto is still at the office and he turns to leave, while Boruto realizes that Sasuke is his father's rival and he starts to admire him. Sasuke finds Naruto's old jacket in the middle of the street after Boruto threw it out the window. 
Having taken the jacket with him, Sasuke meets with Naruto in his office, returning the jacket and discussing a scroll he obtained from Kaguya's abandoned castle, but needs help deciphering because not even his Rinnegan can help. Sasuke says he met Boruto and the boy has turned out to be just like Naruto, who insists that Boruto reminds him of how Sasuke was like when he was younger. However, Naruto retracts that by saying Boruto is not like either of them because he has never had to work hard as a ninja and the pristine condition of his clothes serve as an example. They then make a bet on whether the nature of a shinobi has changed in regards to Boruto, to which Sasuke says it hasn't and Naruto says it has. After leaving Naruto's office and on his way home to see his family, Sasuke is attacked by Boruto, whom he easily defeats by getting behind the boy and tripping him. Boruto asks Uncle Sasuke to take him as a student because there is someone he wants to defeat. Unimpressed, Sasuke asks Boruto if he can perform the Rasengan, to which Boruto says no, and Sasuke tells Boruto that he can't be a student if he doesn't know how to use the technique. Boruto then goes to Konohamaru in the middle of the night to ask him to teach him how to perform the Rasengan, and Konohamaru agrees due to his belief that it would be an honor. Boruto, however, is dismayed to start the training with a water balloon and then a rubber ball, but after Konohamaru tells him the hard work his grandfather went through to create and perfect the Rasengan, Boruto goes through several days of training, unaware that Sarada is watching him the whole time. Finally, Boruto is able to perform the Rasengan and shows it to Sasuke, who notes that his is much smaller compared to his many predecessors. Boruto interprets this as Sasuke being disappointed and in frustration throws the tiny Rasengan at a tree and it disappears halfway from impact, which Sasuke watches with interest before he runs off. Sarada, who had been watching from afar, approaches her father and tries to encourage him to accept Boruto. As Sarada speaks on Boruto's behalf, Sasuke says he never said Boruto failed and he was going to accept Boruto as a student, which makes Sarada very happy. Sasuke looks back at the tree and silently notes a divot in it that was caused by Boruto's Rasengan. Boruto goes to Katasuke, who comforts him, as Boruto explains that training didn't produce any results. Katasuke gives him a kote, which he says can create a Rasengan, and Boruto accepts it without hesitation and doesn't tell Naruto or Sasuke, knowing they'll disapprove. The next day, Boruto creates a standard-sized Rasengan and shows it to Sasuke, who notices the kote on Boruto's forearm. Knowing Boruto is using an instrument, Sasuke voiced his suspicions about Boruto being able to create a larger Rasengan in one day. Boruto replies his talent is nothing like Naruto's, and Sasuke says he was hoping that wasn't the case before he starts to walk away. This angered Boruto, and he reminded Sasuke of their deal of becoming a student if he learned the Rasengan, and Sasuke agreed to take him on as a student. As part of their training, Sasuke starts teaching Shuriken Jutsu to Boruto. While taking a break and sitting by a bonfire one night, Boruto asks Sasuke to tell him about Naruto. Sasuke described Naruto as a stubborn loser who went around ranting he would be Hokage, but Boruto says he wants to know about Naruto's weaknesses. Sasuke tells him that Naruto was full of weaknesses and a good for nothing, but he overcame them in order to become the Hokage he is now, and Boruto needs to know who Naruto was back then, rather than who he is now. On the first day of the Chunin exams, as Sarada prepares to meet with her team, she comments to her mother Sakura that she is in higher spirit since her father came home after so long. Sakura blushes and is embarrassed, and Sarada says she can see these things from her mother before taking off. Sakura then insists that Sarada is the happiest. Sarada meets with Boruto, who tells her that he plans to learn about Naruto's weaknesses through his training with Sasuke so he can defeat his father. Sarada scolds him that they need to become Chunin before they can face against Naruto, and they're joined by Mitsuki as they show off their applications for the exams. In Kumogakure, Momoshiki and Kinshiki extract Chakra from Gyuki and attack him with his own tailed beast ball before throwing Killer B into a ravine and leave him to die. Deciding that this was not enough chakra to satisfy their needs, Momoshiki and Kinchiki begin making their journey towards Konohakakure. After the two foes left, Killer B managed to swim to the surface with the aid of Gyuki. For the first test, the Genin teams are required to answer a true or false question, on the fifth volume of a novel series about ninja strategies. Knowing Sarada read the series, Boruto asks her if she knows the answer, but she says she was unaware of a fifth volume. Sarada asks Boruto what her father would likely pick, and when Boruto picks false, Sarada picks true because she wants to take a different path than her father. As they first proceed with the test, they are at first led to believe that they answered incorrectly when they find themselves falling down a pit with a lake of ink at the bottom. Sarada uses a wire attached to her kunai to keep her and Boruto from falling in the ink while Mitsuki grabs Sarada's hand. Boruto notices a second lake of ink in the false section, leading everyone to deduce that anyone who falls in the ink is disqualified, regardless of them getting the question right. They pass the first round. Upon hearing this, Naruto reacted calmly, but Shikamaru pressed him to reach out to Boruto. Boruto is unsure whether to use his kote because it is deemed a form of cheating and he doesn't want to disappoint everyone, but when he receives a congratulations from Naruto via email after winning the first round, Boruto gets agitated that Naruto didn't at least send a shadow clone. Back to his training with Sasuke, Boruto struggles with shuriken jutsu and complains to Sasuke that it's Sarada's specialty due to her being Sasuke's daughter and an Uchiha. Sasuke creates multiple shadow clones and explains it's Naruto's specialty, but hard work makes it possible for others to learn it. In the second round, Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki and the other competitors are to fight each other and compete for flags. Boruto and his team split up, with Boruto staying behind to protect their flag, and Sarada and Mitsuki going to steal other teams' flags. 
Boruto faces another Genin team who nearly overpower him with the multiple shadow clone technique and is seemingly about to get his flag. In desperation to win his father's recognition, Boruto uses his Kote to use water release and then lightning release, defeating his opponents. He radios for Sarada to finish it, and Sarada uses her Sharingan to see through a Genjutsu the team placed on their flag and was able to retrieve it, winning the second round. Sarada scolds Boruto about him not being happy, but then she gets in front of his face and comments his eyes are bluer than Naruto's, causing him to blush and get embarrassed when Mitsuki comes between them. Naruto, who had been nervous about the outcome of the second round, was overjoyed upon learning from Shikamaru that Boruto passed. Sasuke visits Naruto and asks if the scroll is deciphered, and Naruto says it won't be long. Naruto then says he heard from Konohamaru that Sasuke is training Boruto, and Naruto hints his sadness at not being able to train his own son, but says Sasuke was right about the nature of a shinobi never changing. Sasuke agrees and leaves. Later that day, after returning home, Boruto is surprised to see his father come into his room, but is then happy and touched when his father personally congratulates him and voices his pride in him. Naruto initiates a fist bump, but Boruto simply smiles to avoid his father seeing his kote, and after Naruto leaves, Boruto gets overly excited that his father is proud of him. In the third round, Boruto fights Yuroi, but defeats him with a shuriken and the aid of his kote. Sarada easily defeats her opponent and gets embarrassed when her mother proudly cheers for her from the audience. Naruto sits with his wife and daughter rather with the other Kage when his son is matched against Shigadai. Boruto seemingly wins after Shigadai surrenders due to being trapped by Boruto's multiple shadow clone technique, but Naruto senses something is wrong and after asking Hinata to use her Byakugan, he deduces that Boruto used a Kote to cheat. Meanwhile, the scroll is deciphered and Sasuke quickly goes to warn Naruto. Disappointed that his son has been cheating, Naruto confronts Boruto, deems Shikadai the winner, and disqualifies Boruto by taking away his forehead protector, and tells Boruto that he will lecture him when he gets home. Enraged, Boruto lashes out at Naruto, for when does he have time to lecture him, and Boruto blames Naruto for everything that's happened. Soon after, the two shinobi that Sasuke fought appear and proceed to attack the arena, which creates chaos. Naruto tries to get Boruto to safety, but is knocked out of the arena by Momoshiki. Sasuke saves Sarada from falling debris and is attacked by Kinshiki. Boruto tries to attack Momoshiki with his kote, but all of his attacks end up getting absorbed through Momoshiki's Rinnegan, leaving him scared and defenseless. Naruto grabs his son as Shikamaru tries to restrain the two enemies, but fails as Momoshiki absorbs his power. Naruto and Sasuke team up to protect their children, and Sasuke informs Naruto that they can't use their jutsu on the two, and Naruto realizes he is their target. After introducing themselves, Momoshiki and Kinshiki explain they intend to retrieve Kaguya's scattered chakra and cultivate it into a new Cinnabar Panacea, which will grant them eternal youth and supernatural phenomena. Sasuke deduces the scroll foretold the arrival of the two, and Kaguya was forming a new white Zetsu army to fight against them, revealing that they are a threat greater than Kaguya that Sasuke has been searching for. Momoshiki and Kinshiki also intend to capture Naruto with the intent of extracting Kurama and using his chakra for their own use. Momoshiki creates a tailed beast ball that is amplified by the jutsu he collected and is about to attack everyone with it. Sarada is fearful of Momoshiki's monstrous strength and falls to her knees, prompting Boruto to create a shadow clone to protect her. Naruto and Sasuke combine Susano and Kurama in order to shield themselves from the attack, but Naruto asks Sasuke to take care of Boruto and Sarada. Sasuke guards the children while Naruto tries to stop the attack. Although Naruto stops the attack, he is ultimately captured. Before he disappears, Naruto gives his son a warm smile and Boruto shouts out to his father before he falls unconscious. When Boruto wakes up in the hospital, he finds his mother being healed by Sakura after she tried to save his father. Feeling guilty for how badly he treated his father, Boruto goes into Naruto's office, finds his father's old jacket, and puts it on. Boruto calls himself uncool and Sasuke comes in agreeing. Sasuke tells him that everyone at the exam scorned him and that he got his headband taken away from him and he is no longer a ninja. He also comments that if it had not been for his sister who adores him and his mother who worries about him, Boruto would be in the same situation as Naruto has been in the past. Boruto asks how his father was able to do what he did and Sasuke tells him he can ask Naruto later because he can sense Naruto's chakra, meaning Naruto is still alive and Sasuke intends to rescue him. Boruto asks Sasuke why he would bother with someone like him and Sasuke replies Boruto is a strong shinobi with the potential to surpass Naruto, and further elaborates that Boruto is not only his best disciple, but a bigger loser than Naruto because Boruto hates to lose. Sensing that Naruto is in another dimension, Sasuke activates his Rinnegan to teleport himself to Naruto's location and rescue him. The four Kage ally with Sasuke in the mission to rescue Naruto, and Sasuke lets Boruto go with them. Hinata refused to let Boruto go out of fear for his safety, but when Boruto put on Sasuke's scratched forehead protector, she remembered how Naruto was like when he was younger, and she decides to trust him and ask him to take care of his father. Naruto is bound by the Otsutsuki pair who tried to extract Kurama's chakra from him, but Momoshiki complains that it's taking so long. Naruto replies that ninja don't like taking things easy, and they look up to see the other Kage charging at them. The four Kage engage in battle against Kinshiki and Momoshiki while Sasuke and Boruto rescue Naruto, who asks about Boruto and why he's wearing the jacket, and Sasuke says many things happen but Boruto has become a shinobi. 
Naruto apologized to Boruto for not being there for him, but Boruto says it was alright and he just wanted to hear stories about him. Knowing their ninjutsu would be absorbed by Momoshiki, everyone decides to fight him with taijutsu. Kurotsuchi and Chojuro initially captured Kinshiki with Sasuke's help, and then he fought Momoshiki with Gara and Darui. Seeing Sasuke fight Momoshiki, Kinshiki broke free and unleashed a destructive blast around him to throw everyone off, although it left him injured. To everyone's horror, Momoshiki turns Kinshiki into a chakra fruit and swallows him, which increases his strength and makes him undergo a drastic physical change. Sasuke and Naruto team up to fight against him and manage to overpower Momoshiki for a short time with Taijutsu before Naruto is briefly imprisoned by boulders and Sasuke is severely burned by Momoshiki's lava chakra. Naruto comes to Sasuke's aid with his tailed beast mode and becomes enraged at seeing his friend so badly hurt, but is relieved to find that he's okay and can still fight after being healed by Kurama's chakra. They manage to gain the upper hand when Naruto combines Kurama with Sasuke's Susano, which increases Kurama's chakra and they cut Momoshiki's magma creature in half. However, after Momoshiki is defeated, Katasuke uses his device on Momoshiki in an attempt to finish him off, but Momoshiki absorbs all of his attacks and restores his strength. Momoshiki captures the other Kage in a shadow jutsu and binds Naruto to attempt to extract Kurama once again, but intends to kill the other Kage. Sasuke protects Boruto from Momoshiki's attacks and tells Boruto to use the Vanishing Rasengan. Boruto doubts that it will actually work, but Sasuke encourages him to trust his master. Boruto launches his Rasengan at Momoshiki who is knocked down from the impact and frees Naruto and the Kage. In an effort to finish Momoshiki off once and for all, Naruto lends his chakra to Boruto while Sasuke distracts Momoshiki long enough for Boruto to create a giant Rasengan. Boruto uses a Shadow Clone to ambush Momoshiki and take out his Rinnegan before Boruto launches his attack on Momoshiki and destroys him, with his right arm severely burned as a result. After the battle, Naruto and Sasuke sit by each other and Sasuke declares he won their bet, to which Naruto agrees. From this experience, Boruto and Naruto reconcile their differences. After the battle, Boruto posed for a photograph with Naruto, Sasuke, and the four other Kage. One morning, Hinata is knitting Boruto's jacket, but Boruto tells her it looks fine the way it is and reminds Naruto they need to leave. After leaving home, Boruto and Naruto fist bumped and asked the other to do their best as they left for a mission and for work respectively. For his role in defeating Momoshiki, Boruto has become a hero and received lots of attention, although Sarada remained angry at him for cheating despite Boruto's many apologies to her. Boruto, Sarada, Mitsuki, and Konohamaru are sent on a mission to capture a bear that is running loose in the village. When asked by Sarada if he now wanted to be Hokage, Boruto tells her that he doesn't want to be Hokage and he will protect her if she becomes Hokage, causing her to blush deeply. Boruto further says he wants to be a shinobi like Sasuke and he will follow his own ninja way, as Sarada stares at him in amazement and blushing at him. Noticing from afar, Sasuke and Sakura both smiling watch the children. Konohamaru is chased by a wild bear and Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki jump from the Hokage monument and into the air as Boruto prepares to launch a Rasengan. After successfully defeating the wild bear, Boruto asks Mitsuki who his parents are. Mitsuki replies that he is the son of Orochimaru. Shocked, Sarada asks if Orochimaru is his mother or father, to which Mitsuki says it doesn't matter, and Boruto angrily demands to know who Orochimaru is, who is watching them from a building above. Chocho Arc in the anime, when the two lead actors of a popular TV drama received a death threat, Naruto assigned Team 7 and Team 10 to protect them. Mitsuki's Disappearance Arc In the anime, when two guards were attacked by unknown assailants, the village was put on lockdown. Naruto and his advisors then oversaw Ino Probe Uo's mind for answers, learning that Mitsuki had left willingly with the attackers. When Naruto revealed to the others Mitsuki was in fact Orochimaru's son, much outrage followed, prompting Naruto to give his rationale on why he accepted Mitsuki into Konoha. Later, Naruto was informed that Boruto and Sarada left the village to find Mitsuki, leading to him dispatching Team 10 to retrieve the pair. When Naruto learned that the attackers were en route to the land of Earth, he contacted Kurotsuchi, who promised to investigate the matter herself and return the Konoha Genin pursuing Mitsuki. While discussing Mitsuki's apparent betrayal, Konohamaru insisted he'd be the one to bring his student back, which Naruto reluctantly agreed to. Naruto later attempted to contact Kurotsuchi, but was told she wasn't available, leading to him becoming suspicious something was happening in Iwagakure. Later, Naruto's fears were proven correct when Shikadai contacted his father via phone, revealing that Iwagakure was taken over as part of a plan by Onoki. Knowing they couldn't act hastily, Naruto talks with the other officials and decides he would join Shikamaru in meeting with the other daimyo to get their support on engaging this personal matter. In getting approval, Naruto and an escort moved out and allowed his son's peers to come with him. Upon arriving at the village, Naruto applauded Konohamaru's work during Iwa's internal struggle. Naruto stayed in the village and attended Onoki's funeral, prompting him to say the Tsuchikage left behind a grand legacy and lesson about perseverance. After returning to the village, while personally applauding Boruto and Sarada for loyally supporting Mitsuki whose own efforts were revealed to have saved Iwa, 
he was still reluctantly forced to strip the Team 7 Genin of their shinobi status as punishment for deserting the village. Later, Kurotsuchi's gratitude and recommendation convinced Naruto to reinstate them. Konohamaru's Love Arc In the anime, due to Konohamaru spying on Asaki, a complaint was filed against him, prompting Naruto to place him under house arrest. One Tail Escort Arc in the anime, after Sai delivered a sealed shukaku in a tea kettle to Naruto as a result of Gara being unable to protect it in the Land of Wind from Urashiki Yotsutsuki, shukaku explained that it only made it to Konoha due to Boruto acting as a decoy against their pursuer. Informing Shikamaru that he was going to the scene, Sasuke approached the pair and told them that it wasn't necessary, as Sasuke had earlier protected Boruto and forced Urashiki to retreat. Three days later, Naruto and Gara discussed the incident in his office. Afterwards, Naruto had a Shadow Clone see the Kazakage off at the Thunder Rail Station. Sometime later, Naruto brought Shukaku to his house, until an official safe house had been decided on. Later on that evening, Naruto had a telepathic meeting with some of the other tailed beasts to discuss how to handle being targeted. As a result of guarding Shukaku, Naruto got to spend time with his family before escorting Shukaku to its safe house. Time Slip Arc In the anime, Naruto was notified that Urashiki was on the move again being even more indiscriminate in his stealing of chakra. While pleased that all of the five great shinobi nations were on alert and willing to share all intel, Shikamaru voiced his concern about Mirai's sudden disappearance and also wondered what their enemy's true goal was for gathering chakra. Later, Naruto decided to have the Genin test new surveillance equipment designed to follow their location. During the test, Urashiki was spotted in the area. This prompted most of the Konoha Nin in the village to engage, while Shikamaru stayed in the Hokage office to help protect Naruto. Urashiki managed to get hold of a device that allowed him to travel into the past, prompting Sasuke and Boruto to be sent back alongside him to the time period shortly after Sasuke's defection. A teenage Naruto and Jiraiya encounter the pair, who were disguising their identities and their occupations as traveling performers. As they were foreigners, Tsunade has Naruto and Jiraiya look over them. Spending time with Boruto, Naruto was intrigued by the things he was told and allowed him to sleep at his apartment. The day after cleaning up a bathhouse together, Urashiki targeted Naruto. Failing at extracting Kurama's chakra, Urashiki instead captured him and trapped Boruto, Sasuke, and Jiraiya in a rock prison before retreating. Using a cave as a hideout, Urashiki forced Naruto's seal to emerge and used his chakra in an attempt to forcibly extract Kurama's chakra from within Naruto. Urashiki's actions caused Kurama's chakra to leak out, forcing Naruto to undergo his version 1 transformation. Arriving to rescue Naruto, Boruto attempted to reason with his father, but Naruto had since completely lost his common sense and attacked Boruto. Jiraiya managed to subdue the Ninetales chakra with a seal, and Sasuke forced Urashiki to retreat. Afterwards, Jiraiya offered to train Naruto and Boruto to prepare them for Urashiki. The following day, Naruto began working with Boruto to synchronize their chakra to create a new cooperation jutsu under Jiraiya's guidance. After Boruto left to clear his head, Sasuke approached Naruto with food from Jiraiya and told Naruto about how a friend struggled for years to help him after he lost his way, but he never gave up until finally succeeding, which renewed Naruto's conviction. Continuing his training the next day, the pair was approached by Sakura, who had found Sasuke's note from the future and questioned why Sasuke's name was on it before shortly leaving with an answer. Naruto and Boruto resumed their training, which ultimately left them exhausted. They were approached again by Urashiki, who subdued the pair. Jiraiya and Sasuke joined the fight. Deciding the foe's newest technique was too dangerous, Sasuke tackled himself and Urashiki over the ledge and into a river to let his allies escape. While tending to Jiraiya's wounds, the group tried to figure out how to deal with Urashiki. Boruto realized that in the fight, the blood splattered on Urashiki was drying much faster than Boruto's. After engaging the foe again to test a theory, they concluded that Urashiki's technique lets him warp into the past by several seconds, giving him a pseudo-clairvoyance from his experiences. Urashiki attacked the Konoha Nin again, where Jiraiya contained everyone in his summoning Toad Mouthbind, during which Naruto unleashed a continuous barrage of clones on Urashiki. While he easily countered the assault with his technique, Urashiki inadvertently poisoned himself from the acidic vapors of the Great Toad's belly far sooner than the Konoha Nin due to his repeated time warp. Once Jiraiya released the summoning, Naruto and Boruto then proceeded to knock out Urashiki with a Rasengan assault. Enraged, Urashiki awoke and consumed all his accumulated chakra and his eyes, leading to him undergoing a transformation that strengthened him. Jiraiya and the two Genin were quickly overwhelmed by Urashiki's continued assaults, even with the aid of the returning Sasuke. Urashiki deliberately held back on Naruto, hoping to anger him enough to unleash the Ninetales chakra. His efforts ultimately succeed when Jiraiya took a hit that was intended for Naruto, triggering the transformation. 
Boruto, however, managed to reach Naruto and together they were able to perfect their new collaboration technique. With the combined effort of Jiraiya and Sasuke, the two kids were able to plow through Urashiki's final attack and obliterate him. After the battle, both Naruto and Boruto lose consciousness due to their exhaustion. Days after Naruto and Boruto recovered at the Konoha hospital, he was upset to hear that Boruto and Sasuke would be leaving now that their mission was complete. Before they left, Naruto gave Boruto a gift. Sasuke used his Sharingan to erase everyone's memories of the events to preserve the timeline. On seeing the Sharingan, Naruto had what appeared to be a brief moment of recognizing Sasuke before losing consciousness. Upon their return, Naruto was approached by Sasuke who explained the recent situation he and Boruto had. Naruto was amazed at such a tale. Later, while visiting Jiraiya's grave to pay his respects, he was approached by Boruto, who decided to share with Naruto the gift of a special ramen given to him by his past self. Sometime later, Sumire was officially transferred to the scientific ninja weapons team. Naruto reached out to the Land of Iron and requested an exchange student to take Sumire's spot on Team 15. Shikamaru was concerned about his experimental move of mixing shinobi with samurai, but Naruto insisted it would help close the gap between the two. Later, Naruto attended his father-in-law's birthday, impressed by Boruto getting past his aversion to mushy feelings to suggest a regular family photo. Mujina Bandit's Arc in the anime, Naruto set up a mission for Team 7 to infiltrate Hozuki Castle to verify the information about the Mujina bandits offered by Kokuri in exchange for protection. After losing contact with Mujo, the prison warden who is working with Konohagakure, Naruto sent Sai and a team to investigate. Ultimately, they succeeded in returning Kokuri to the village to question him about the Mujina bandits before letting the man go free. At the Hokage building, Naruto hosted a Kage summit during which the Kage bickered about topics concerning Konoha leading to Kurotsuchi demanding Konoha disclose all of its confidential information as village's proof to peace by the next summit, and said Iwagakure would leave the Five Great Shinobi Country Alliance if they didn't. Afterwards, the summit ended. Naruto was then told by Shikamaru that the reason why Kurotsuchi was acting the way she was, was because she was being pressured by the Earth Daimyo to invade the Land of Flowers for the crops they had to offer, and expressed sadness that Kurotsuchi didn't tell them as he believed that the Shinobi Union would have definitely aided her when it came to food scarcity and other issues and the potential of another war, remembering the casualties of the last war and not wanting to use and introduce the next generation to the horrors of war. Naruto found hope, however, when Shikamaru said they could negotiate with her so the invasion wouldn't happen. Unfortunately, in the next Kage summit, Naruto's revelation of Kurotsuchi's true intentions only caused Darui to angrily threaten to kill Kurotsuchi and to make things worse, Naruto and Sasuke's strength were being used as a boon for Kurotsuchi's cause. As they had the power to take over the continent and the imbalance in strength between Konoha and the other villages was thus immense. Despite Naruto's attempts to ensure Konoha would not try to take over the world, Shikamaru responded by paralyzing and threatening to crush Kurotsuchi's neck, much to Naruto's horror and fury. Quickly, Naruto used his chakra to break free of Shikamaru's shadow and angrily put Shikamaru in place before attempting to plea for peace, but he could not sway Kurotsuchi or Darui, who made it clear they would go to war if the invasion were to occur. Furious about the outcome, Naruto angrily confronted Shikamaru when they walked home and was rebuffed by his friend who told him to think with his head and start responding harshly enough. Several months after the Hozuki Castle mission, Naruto discussed Katasuke being under mind control with Sai and Ibiki and had them continue their investigation while Shikamaru handled Katasuke. Afterwards, Mirai Sarutobi informed Naruto and Team Konohamaru successfully captured the Mujina bandits, much to his joy. As Shoujoji was discussed, Naruto told everyone they had to hurry up and handle the missing nin. Shikamaru then informed Naruto of his upcoming meeting with the Fire Daimyo, Ikyu Maruka, which Naruto had forgotten was later during the day, during which he discussed financial matters with Ikyu. Kara Actuation Arc Later in the anime, Team 25 and Sasuke were sent to investigate the information extracted from the captured Shoujoji about Kara's existence in Amegakure. Upon their return, they learned that Kara had long ago abandoned their facility there and were performing biological experiments. They also learned that they were, in fact, civilians who sympathized with Kara and its goals. Naruto was concerned to learn that Amegakure was in shambles as it had yet had to make any recovery since the Fourth Shinobi World War. He was determined to help out the village. Naruto learned that Victor, the president of the Land of Valley's premier medical and research company, was a member of Kara who somehow obtained a sample of the first Hokage's cells. Naruto was greatly concerned that Team 7 was defeated by two inners. Upon seeing Boruto in treatment, he was certain that Boruto would be fine. Afterwards, Naruto discussed with his advisors on the next move. 
Shikamaru offered to use his connections in the Land of Valleys to get permission to investigate Victor's company. Three days later, it was approved for Naruto to send Mugino and Konohamaru to stealthily investigate. Later, Naruto sent Team 10 on a joint mission with Team Shinki to retrieve Urashiki's puppet. He later listened to Shikadai's report on the mission, which greatly concerned and disturbed him. After Boruto recovered from his new training, Naruto gave his son permission to return to the Land of Valleys to return the wedding ring of their recent client's husband to her. Following the defeat of Victor and his amoral experiments, Naruto received a report on the events. Upon Konohamaru and Mugino's return, Konoha leadership discussed how to handle Kara. Having learned influential figures like Victor were associated with the organization and finding evidence in their investigation that Kara had spies all around. While many considered closing off the gates to Konohagakure to stop the flow of information, Naruto was torn on this, valuing the new peace between the village and the rest of the world. After talking to various officials in the village and witnessing Boruto and his friends work on an experiment to improve wireless communications, Naruto decided not to close the gates as it would deter cooperation with the outside world, instead deciding to reinforce security. Sasuke Retsuden, the Uchiha Descendants and the Heavenly Stardust At some point, Naruto started suffering from an illness as a result of being Jinchuriki and was suffering damage to his chakra pathway system that would eventually strip him of his ability to use chakra altogether. To prevent this, Sasuke took on a mission to the land of Ridaku to find the polar particles that the Sage of Six Paths once used to cure himself of the very same illness. Naruto himself doesn't make a direct appearance, but it is hinted the condition has impaired Naruto's ability to perform his duties, as Shikamaru was exhausted from having taken on Naruto's workload. Naruto has expressed his wish that the children do not know about his condition. Ao Arc In the anime, Naruto attends the memorial service for the fallen people of the 4th Shinobi World War. Later, Naruto joins his son in a sparring match at the training hall to test out Katasuke's new invention that was fitted on his arm. During the match, Naruto defends himself from Boruto and uses the invention to absorb his son's techniques before defeating him with a single kick. Afterwards, at the Hokage's office, Naruto informs Boruto of the technology he used against him, which angered Boruto. Before Naruto could explain himself, Sasuke arrives and interrupts their conversation, calming Boruto down by pointing out the need for them with the coming danger of enemies like the Otsutsuki clan. Naruto also admitted to knowing about Boruto's mark on his right palm, which was another reason Naruto approved of the development of this advanced weaponry. While Boruto still insisted that they should rely solely on ninjutsu like in the Chunin exams, Naruto noted that the Chunin exams were to test one's growth as a ninja, where now they are in a battle for survival. Katasuke then arrived to retrieve his prototype, to which Naruto assigned Team Konohamaru a C-rank mission to escort the lead scientist back to the lab in Ryuben City. While Boruto stormed off in a huff, Naruto asked his Genin teammates to watch over him should anything happen with his mark. As Konohamaru failed to report from his mission, Naruto contacted Boruto's team at the Scientific Ninja Weapon Team's lab, who were nearest to Konohamaru's last reported location. He instructed them to search the area, but be careful and not recklessly engage any foes. While Shikamaru reminded him that Team Konohamaru were all very capable for their age, Naruto insisted that he was more concerned about the possibility of them running into the organization Kara, as Konohamaru's mission was to investigate a mysterious airship. Kawaki Arc when Konohamaru and Mugino went missing while on a mission to investigate a state-of-the-art crashed blimp, Naruto assigned Boruto and his team to find them as they were closest to their last known location. When Team Konohamaru returned to Konoha with Kawaki, Naruto decided he was most suitable to monitor Kawaki, and held a Kage summit to discuss the situation. Following the Kage agreeing with Naruto, he took the boy to his house, during which he foiled Kawaki's attempts at fleeing. There, Kawaki attempting to escape, but Naruto intimidated him into submission. His escape attempt resulted in Himawari's vase being destroyed. Naruto intervened when Boruto and Kawaki began fighting, and later overheard Kawaki speaking of his hardship as a result of his kama. Afterwards, Naruto took Kawaki to Yamanaka Flowers to pick a new vase, where he hugged Kawaki after he had a panic attack. Sometime later, Naruto and Boruto sparred. He defeated his son, even while Boruto used his kama. Naruto offered for Kawaki to try sparring with Boruto next time, but Kawaki declined as he couldn't use chakra prompting Naruto to insist that all can learn to do so and that having strong rivals will help one in accomplishing great things. Later, Boruto decided to take Kawaki's offer of learning what he knows about their kama. Deciding to do so through sparring, the two children quickly activated their respective marks. While Boruto kept up in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Kawaki's usage of his method put Boruto on the defensive. 
Kawaki then launched a blast at Naruto with the intent of him absorbing it like previously, only for Boruto to instead damage his hand. Naruto called off the match and told the two to perform the Seal of Reconciliation. The event made their marks react and caused Boruto's hand to instantly heal. Before pushing the subject, Naruto was alerted of an intruder. Naruto told his son to take Himawari away while he stayed with Kawaki, certain that the intruder was after him. His assumption proved correct as they were quickly met by Delta. She demanded Naruto hand over Kawaki to her, and Kawaki confirmed her identity as an inner from Kara. Naruto instructed Boruto to protect Himawari and Kawaki to protect himself. Fighting her, Naruto initially outperformed her with Taijutsu, but she began making use of her shinobi wear to launch sneak attacks and absorb his Rasengan. Naruto entered his six path sage mode, but Delta was eventually able to stab him and pin him down. He tried to discern her motives for wanting Kawaki, but she saw through his deception and noticed he was already healing, considering Naruto to be a monster as well. While Naruto was continually forced to hold back in fear of the spectator's safety, he continued to gradually wear down his foe, leading Delta to use her eye beams against Naruto to combat his regenerative ability. Eventually, Delta targets Himawari, leading Naruto to blocking the attack with his body, but is uninjured as Kawaki sacrificed his right arm to block the attack. Enraged at her tactics and unable to get information about who Jigen was from her, the two resume their fight. Naruto deduces that there was a limit to how much chakra her eyes can absorb, prompting him to overpower and defeat Delta with his super ultra big ball Rasengan. Defeated, Delta's body self-destructed, forcing Naruto to flee the vicinity with the children. Later, when bringing Kawaki to Katasuke to repair Kawaki's arm, the scientist informed him that the technology in Kawaki's body was too advanced for him to handle. Finding an alternative solution, Naruto gave Kawaki one of his prosthetic arms and channeled some of his chakra into Kawaki to make it work. Shocked at how sincere Naruto was at being nice, Kawaki asked to learn ninjutsu, which Naruto agreed to and began training him. Quite a while after Delta's defeat, while Naruto and Kawaki were at his house, he notices Kawaki in distress, resulting in his kama creating a portal which Jigen emerged from. Wanting to take his son back, Naruto attempted to attack, but was repelled away and impaled by chakra draining rods. Activating his chakra mode, Naruto kicks Jigen away from Kawaki. Jigen then proceeded to activate his kama. Fearing for the Hokage's safety, with Jigen's power entirely above Delta's and capable of either killing or severely injuring Naruto, Kawaki stepped in and submitted, agreeing to go back willingly with Jigen if he spared Naruto. While Jigen agreed to the terms, Naruto refused to comply. Jigen responded by teleporting himself and Naruto to another dimension. As Jigen attempted to strand Naruto there, he was attacked and stopped by Sasuke. Being away from Konoha and free to fight with all their power, the pair engaged in battle with Jigen, leading Sasuke to deducing their opponent's fighting style involved shrinking himself and his rods. Pressuring Jigen, the Kara member tapped into his Kama and grew a horn. Upon seeing Jigen's development, Sasuke revealed how he resembled an unknown Otsutsuki member and that Jigen had ties with a juvenile Tentails. As Sasuke also revealed that Jigen's goal was to drain the entire planet of all its chakra, the two shinobi decided to fight with their full power. Despite their strong avatar forms and teamwork, Jigen plowed through their defenses. As he swiftly wore down and pummeled his foes, he restrained the pair with rods and decided to keep Naruto alive because of Kurama in him while killing Sasuke due to his Rinnegan space-time ninjutsu. Accepting the truth, Naruto had his clones hold off Jigen while he convinced Sasuke to escape despite his friend's protests. Jigen revealed he was after Boruto Uzumaki for his Kama and sealed Naruto into a giant pot, which he shrunk, leaving Naruto trapped within the foreign dimension. Afterwards, Boro stood guard over the pot, during which Boruto and Kawaki used their Kama to transport Naruto's unconscious body out before killing the Kara member. Returning to Konoha, they were all taken to the hospital for treatment. As Naruto made a quick recovery, he was impressed to hear of the Genin's work, and joked that rebellious Genin seemed to still be a thing. The group was informed by Ino of Shikadai being taken hostage by Amado. Though he wished to speak to Shikamaru, he was glad to learn of Naruto's rescue and revealed he wished to defect to Konoha, offering intel on Kara, Jigen, their ten tails, and the Otsutsuki. After Naruto gave his word as Hokage not to go back on the deal, provided his intel was good, Amado began explaining all he knew. He revealed how the Otsutsuki have since before recorded history been traveling from planet to planet, harvesting each his chakra for the sake of evolving itself while destroying the planet in the process, using the ten tails to do so. He revealed that Jigen himself was turned into an Otsutsuki from being branded by his Kama of Ishiki. Amato also revealed to have sabotaged the blimp to free Kawaki and likewise ensured that Sasuke would get the intel of Ishiki. Amato's glasses begin beeping. His glasses were taken off, revealing a holographic projection of Jigen talking with his accomplice. 
Koji Kashin, who intended to kill Jigen. As Naruto was intrigued by Koji's techniques and battle tactics, Amato insisted that Naruto accept his request to officially join Konohagakure with full amnesty and protection in order to hear more of his secrets, to which Naruto agreed. Amato carried on his explanation, sharing what he knew of Jigen, the Otsutsuki, and Kama. He stressed how a full rebirth of the Otsutsuki must be avoided, and claimed he'd teach them how to kill an Otsutsuki. When Jigen's death triggered Ishiki's resurrection in his body, Amato explained this also erased Kawaki's kama to avoid duplicates, leading Shikamaru to realize that without any remaining kama, Ishiki was vulnerable to a permanent death. After Amato was officially made a citizen of Konohagakure, made aware of his rights and limitations, he warned them of Ishiki's immediate focus on rebranding Kawaki. He advised Naruto against taking the fight to Ishiki and stressed that he had to protect Kawaki against being rebranded. Naruto took his advice and ordered a civilian evacuation, as Ishiki would seek Kawaki in Konoha. Naruto was against Boruto staying to fight him, but were interrupted by alert of Ishiki's arrival. Naruto ordered Boruto to join the evacuation as he went to confront Ishiki. Ishiki was surprised to see Naruto had escaped, but demanded Kawaki. When Naruto refused, Ishiki began shrinking various targets in the village to destroy it. Naruto activated his six path sage mode, but Ishiki easily overpowered him. Sasuke soon joined the fight, leveling the battlefield. He then launched his sword at Ishiki. As Ishiki attempted to shrink it, it was revealed to be Boruto transformed. As Naruto was horrified by his son's arrival, Boruto activated his Kama, transporting himself and Ishiki to another dimension. Naruto and Sasuke followed through the latter's Rinnegan. As the Konoha Nin faced down Ishiki, he decided the best way to get Kawaki was to present Sasuke and Naruto's corpses to the village. The fight quickly resumed, with Naruto and Sasuke's teamwork managing to push Ishiki on the defense as he began shrinking all their attacks. However, Ishiki demonstrated a new technique, manifesting and manipulating massive black cubes that separated the duo. Realizing he was running out of options, Kurama asked Naruto if he was really willing to sacrifice himself to stop Ishiki. Naruto confirmed it, and Kurama offered a last-ditch strategy that would have a high risk in Naruto's death. Accepting his duties as Hokage, Naruto faced Ishiki and took on a new form of Baryon mode. Kurama explained to Naruto that the form is like nuclear fusion, consuming all their respective energy, and that he must be careful not to make any unnecessary movements or thoughts. The new form baffled everyone with its sheer power. Naruto quickly began overwhelming Ishiki, constantly countering and dodging the foe's various assaults. Soon after, the strain of Baryon mode began catching up as Naruto began to tire. Kurama noted this form gradually drains away all life forces, including Naruto's. However, it would also drain Ishiki's with each contact, meaning they would just have to keep pressuring Ishiki until his already diminished lifespan ran out. As Ishiki began getting desperate, he took advantage of Naruto's chakra connection to Kawaki through the latter's prosthetic arm. From this, he teleported Kawaki to them with the goal of rebranding Kawaki before his time ran out. As Kawaki tried to escape Ishiki, he opted to use Kawaki's love for Naruto against him, assaulting the downed Hokage. Despite Naruto's insistence that Kawaki forget about him, Kawaki ultimately showed himself and attacked using the ninjutsu Naruto taught him. Ishiki easily negated it and branded Kawaki again, only for it to be revealed as a shadow clone. Finally, Ishiki's time ran out and he crumbled to dust. Sasuke then asked Naruto about his new power, but before he could answer, Boruto, being controlled by Momoshiki, suddenly stabbed Sasuke's left eye. Naruto attempted to help fighting Momoshiki, but collapsed, feeling heavy as lead, and passed out. Inside his subconscious, Naruto had a final conversation with Kurama. He told the Kitsune that he had no ill will to Kurama despite the loss of his parents. As Naruto was prepared to die and voice his concerns for the village, Kurama revealed that Naruto would awake soon and be fine, as it was Kurama's life that was gambled from using Baryon mode. Kurama assured Naruto that it never actually lied to Naruto, but knew the Hokage wouldn't risk Kurama's own life, so he hid the truth. As Kurama's life began to fade, it warned Naruto that he would lose all access to Kurama's chakra and abilities, meaning he would have to be more careful from now on. Naruto desperately reached out for Kurama before waking up to see Boruto, Sasuke, and Kawaki standing over him. With Sasuke's Rinnegan and Kawaki's Kama gone, it was up to Boruto to use his mark to bring everyone back with aid from Kawaki. Upon returning to the village, Naruto was relieved. In the anime, shortly after returning, Naruto was examined by Sakura and Katasuke for any remaining traces of Kurama's essence and capacities. The tests found nothing, confirming that Kurama's death would considerably drop Naruto's abilities and fighting potential. Naruto admitted that Kurama's power had felt like cheating, and despite the void left behind, he chose not to wallow on it, believing that Kurama would make fun of him over it. In the anime, Naruto received confirmation that Boruto's Kama was accelerating, and decided to inform Boruto himself. 
He vowed to do everything in his power to save Boruto. When Kawaki returned his prosthetic hand, Naruto offered to make him a Genin. Chunin Re-Examination Arc In the anime following Ishiki's attack, Naruto requested Shikamaru to reorganize the Chunin exam that Momoshiki interrupted. In an interview, he explained that it was intended to boost morale and promote more capable Chunin. The night after the first exam, Naruto visited Boruto, who was struggling as he embarrassed himself during the last exam. Naruto expressed confidence in his abilities and told him to do as he normally did. He acted as a proctor during the second portion of the exams, evaluating the Genin's abilities. At the end of it, he explained that those who advanced to the final round would participate in one-on-one -on -one fights. Code Arc Later, Naruto and Shikamaru decided to indefinitely take Boruto off active duty while deciding on how to deal with this comma, helping him pass time with various interviews from the media about his victory over Ishiki. After Amato finished restoring Kawaki's arm, he talked to Naruto about the remaining Kara threats. Amato explained that once all the active inners are gone, the various outers will cease to function. He also noted that the Ten Tails Seed of Kara must be dealt with quickly to protect the planet, and has likely been moved since Ishiki's defeat. But fortunately, there are methods for space-time traveling besides ninjutsu. Finally, Amato explained the looming danger of the last inner, Code. Despite proving incompatible with the Kama as a vessel, he survived the process to be imbued with its power. Also, despite his modifications granting him might that far exceeded Jigen's, Code's fanatical devotion to Ishiki let him avoid being disposed of, even agreeing to limiters being placed on him by Amato. As such, Code would inevitably seek out and kill all who were responsible for Ishiki's death. Hearing such a threat, Naruto requested Shikamaru to set up a Kage summit. Naruto participated in a video conference with the other Kage, reviewing the intel they had on Code, his goals, and how to prevent them. He confessed to not fully trusting Amato, but was willing to continue collaborating with him on account of his contributions so far. The issue of Ishiki taking over Boruto was brought up, and Naruto swore to handle it as Hokage should the need arise. He later approached Amato to deal with Boruto's Kama. Amato sympathized with him, having been a father himself years ago, and provided him with pills he developed as a means to defeat Jigen. As the Byakugan originates with the Otsutsuki, he theorized that weakening it might interfere with the Kama's progress. Amato also warned him that this would be a stopgap measure, and warned him not to let his wife and daughter near it. As Boruto was given the pills and explained the nature of them, Naruto was horrified at how recklessly Boruto decided to take them. Boruto insisted that he already came to terms with how his life was at risk, so he was willing to take any help available. Flash forward. In the wake of Konoha's destruction, four years after the Otsutsuki attack on the village, Kawaki tells Boruto he will send him to where he sent the 7th Hokage. Sasuke Uchiha Sasuke Uchiha is one of the last surviving members of Konohagakure's Uchiha clan. After his older brother Itachi slaughtered their clan, Sasuke made it his mission in life to avenge them by killing Itachi. He is added to Team 7 upon becoming a ninja, and through competition with his rival and best friend Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke starts developing his skills. Dissatisfied with his progress, he defects from Konoha so that he can acquire the strength needed to exact his revenge. His years of seeking vengeance and his actions that followed become increasingly demanding, irrational, and isolates him from others, leading him to be branded as an international criminal. After learning the truth of his brother's sacrifice, later proving instrumental in ending the Fourth Shinobi World War, and being happily redeemed by Naruto, Sasuke decides to return to Konoha and dedicate his life to help protect the village and its inhabitants, becoming referred to as the Supporting Kage. Early Life Sasuke is the second and youngest son of Mikoto and Fugaku Uchiha. They named him after Sasuke Sarutobi in the hopes that he would someday be just as strong as Shinobi. Sasuke grew up in the shadow of his older brother Itachi, a natural prodigy who many in the Uchiha clan and the village would constantly compare Sasuke and any of his accomplishments to. Sasuke himself adored Itachi, never passing up an opportunity to spend time with him. Although Itachi welcomed his company, letting Sasuke watch him train and taking him on adventures into the forests, Itachi in return rarely helped Sasuke himself become a better shinobi. When asked, he would often instead poke Sasuke's forehead and promise to do it some other time. Sasuke found this annoying, but didn't allow it to blemish his high opinion of his brother. On entering the Konoha Ninja Academy, Sasuke proved to be the standout of his class, consistently getting top grades. However, he could never meet the same milestones Itachi had set, resulting in their father paying Sasuke little attention. Aware of this neglect, Itachi, despite being increasingly busy, tried to stand in for their father by giving Sasuke the recognition he craved, at times even blackmailing Fugaku to spend time with Sasuke. As time went on, Itachi started becoming distant and cold towards their family, culminating in a falling out with much of the Uchiha clan on their suspicion that he'd killed his best friend, Shisui Uchiha. Sasuke did not understand the reason for this, but he didn't mind the side effect. 
His father began taking an interest in his development. Fugaku taught Sasuke how to perform the Great Fireball technique, which he mastered in a week. Fugaku stated his pride in Sasuke for this accomplishment, but at the same time encouraged him not to follow in Itachi's footsteps. After a long day of training, Sasuke returned home one night to find the streets littered with the bodies of the Uchiha. He rushed home to notify his family of this Uchiha clan massacre, only to find Itachi standing over the bodies of their parents. Sasuke tried to solicit help and comfort from Itachi, who responded by using Tsukiyomi on him to torment him with visions of him murdering their family. Horrified by what Itachi had done, Sasuke pleaded for an explanation, to which Itachi replied that it was to test his own power. Fearful that he would be next, Sasuke tried to run. Itachi cornered him and explained that Sasuke, as he then was, would not be worth killing. Only by becoming stronger, such as by acquiring his own Mangekyo Sharingan, could he prove a worthwhile challenge to Itachi's abilities. Before leaving, Itachi encouraged Sasuke to hate him, to desire revenge, and to gain power from that. Sasuke immediately followed through, pursuing Itachi and using his newly awakened Sharingan to attack him. The attack failed and Sasuke passed out, but not before glimpsing Itachi crying. Sasuke would forget this had happened for many years. Sasuke, now one of the last surviving Uchiha, was alone. He spent his first few days after the massacre wandering his family's compound, reflecting on the people who were now gone, killed by Itachi. Sasuke decided to do what Itachi had instructed and dedicated his life to vengeance, having no other interest than bringing about Itachi's death. He threw himself into his studies at the academy, making no efforts to form friendships and ignoring all the girls' attempts to gain his affection. One of his classmates, Naruto, disliked Sasuke's cool personality and the attention he received, and developed a one-sided rivalry in his pursuit to prove himself as good as, if not better than, Sasuke. For his part, Sasuke thought little of Naruto and was usually annoyed by his outbursts, but would at times secretly smile at how Naruto worked because of him. Ironically, for all the attention he received, Naruto was the only person among his peers who understood Sasuke due to the painful experiences he had. Prologue, Land of Waves. Upon graduating from the academy, Sasuke is added to Team 7 under the leadership of Kakashi Hadake. Sasuke makes clear during their first meeting how little interest in the team he has, his only goal in life being to kill Itachi. One of his teammates, Sakura Harano, tries to bond with him by sharing her envy of their other teammate, Naruto Uzumaki's lack of parents, but this only offends Sasuke. To test their qualifications, Kakashi gives the three a bell test, stating that whichever of the three takes one of the two bells on his person will officially become a genin. Of the three, Sasuke comes closest to taking a bell, his skills being great enough to force Kakashi to stop reading his copy of Icha Icha. He ultimately fails, just like Naruto and Sakura. Kakashi explains that the goal of the test was to use teamwork, to do together what none of them could do by themselves. He's persuaded to allow them to try again after lunch, but instructs Sasuke and Sakura not to feed Naruto. They feed him anyway, needing him in top form if they're to work together. Kakashi sees this, and because they care more about the team than listening to his instructions, allows them all to pass. After a series of uneventful D-rank missions, Naruto is able to secure a C-rank mission for Team 7, escorting Tezuna to the Land of Waves. Soon after leaving Konoha, they are attacked by the Demon Brothers. Naruto is paralyzed with fear, forcing Sasuke to step in to disarm them and protect Tezuna until Kakashi can capture them. Tezuna confesses that assassins have been hired to kill him, but that he couldn't afford the bodyguard detail he needs. Although the mission is now A rank in nature, far beyond the skill of Genin, Team 7 decides to continue with it. For his earlier indecision, Sasuke declares Naruto a scaredy cat, also known as a bibiri-kun. When they arrive in the Land of Waves, however, they are confronted by Zabuza Momochi. Sasuke experiences a crisis of his own, overwhelmed by the battle between Kakashi and Zabuza. He quickly regains his composure, and when Kakashi is caught in a water prison, he teams up with Naruto to break him out. In the end, Zabuza is seemingly killed by Haku, allowing Team 7 to escort Tazuna back to his house. Kakashi finds Zabuza's death suspicious and decides to train the team in case he returns. He has them perform the tree climbing practice to improve their chakra control, which will help them against Zabuza. Although Sasuke's control is initially much better than Naruto's, Naruto improves rapidly using advice from Sakura, who herself mastered it from the start. Sasuke asks Naruto to share Sakura's advice with him, and from competition between them, they each climb to the top of their trees. Naruto is exhausted from the training, so Team 7 leaves him behind the next morning as they resume their escort duties. They're met by Zabuza and Haku, the latter of whom Sasuke faces in battle. Because of Sasuke's speed and refined chakra control, Haku imprisons him with his demonic mirroring ice crystals. Naruto joins to help, but unaware of how Haku's mirrors work, joins Sasuke within the prison. 
Sasuke is unable to melt the mirrors with his fire, and Naruto is unable to break free with his shadow clones, leaving them at the mercy of Haku's Senbon. As time passes, however, Sasuke becomes increasingly able to dodge Haku's attacks, a benefit of his awakening Sharingan. Seeing this, Haku decides to finish off Naruto so he can focus on Sasuke. Sasuke shields Naruto from Haku's attack with his own body, when Naruto asks him why, Sasuke claims his body acted on its own. Sasuke seemingly dies from his injuries. In truth, Haku only struck Sasuke's vital points to put him in a temporary death-like state, so he wakes up a short time later. By the time he does, both Haku and Zabuza are dead, so their bodyguard services are no longer required. When their injuries heal, they return home via the newly constructed Great Naruto Bridge. Chunin Exams Team 7 resumes its series of unremarkable missions. For their performance in the Land of Waves, however, Kakashi decides to enter them in the Chunin exams taking place in Konoha. Because they've only recently graduated from the academy, the three feel they must give strong showings to prove themselves. When they arrive at the exam hall, Sasuke first uses his Sharingan to dispel a genjutsu intended to discourage unqualified genin, and then agrees to spar with Rock Lee. Lee's speed and taijutsu skills impress Sasuke enough to use his Sharingan in their fight. Although he's able to see Lee's movements better, Sasuke can't physically keep up and Lee nearly performs the front lotus on him. Lee is stopped by his teacher, Might Guy, whose emotional method of punishing Lee disturbs Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura. During the exam's first stage, the participating Genin are given a written test. Sasuke is unable to answer any of the questions, causing him to realize that the purpose of the first stage is to cheat without getting caught. He therefore uses his Sharingan to mimic the pencil movements of other examinees. Team 7 continues to the second stage in the Forest of Death, where to pass they must obtain a pair of scrolls, one of which they're given at the start, the other of which they must take from another team. Soon after entering, Sasuke discovers that what appears to be Naruto is an Ame-nin, Oboro in disguise. He drives Oboro off and locates the real Naruto. To prevent this from happening again, Sasuke comes up with a complicated password that they'll share to confirm their identities in case they get separated. They're immediately attacked, and when they regroup, Naruto correctly recites the answer. Knowing Naruto could have never remembered the password, Sasuke attacks the imposter. The imposter, Orochimaru, is far too strong for them to contend with and may very well kill them. Sasuke tries to forfeit their scroll in exchange for their lives, but Naruto, upon locating them, stops him. Believing Sasuke may also be an enemy ninja in disguise because the Sasuke he knows would never surrender. Naruto engages Orochimaru in combat, defeats his snake, and calls Sasuke a scaredy cat before Orochimaru finally renders him unconscious. Amazed by Naruto's performance and encouraged by Sakura, Sasuke picks up where he left off by pinning Orochimaru down and attacking him with the dragon fire technique. Orochimaru is impressed by Sasuke and brands him with a cursed seal of heaven to reward him before leaving. The pain of the cursed seal overwhelms Sasuke and he passes out. When Sasuke regains consciousness, he finds Sakura badly injured, Rock Lee defeated in battle, and Team 10 defending them from Team Dosu, an Oto team. Sasuke questions Sakura on the identity of who hurt her, which Zaku Abumi takes credit for. Under the cursed seal's influence, Sasuke attacks Zaku and breaks both of his arms. He prepares to do the same to Zaku's teammates, but Sakura's pleas for him to stop bring him back to his senses and the cursed seal recedes. The Genin teams go their separate ways, and Team 7 spends several days recuperating from their ordeals. On the last day of the second stage, they go looking for the second scroll that they still need. They're found by Team Oboro, which Naruto distracts while the rest of Team 7 sneaks behind and knocks out. With two scrolls, Team 7 is able to advance to the preliminary round. Sasuke is paired against Yoroi Akado for the first match. Before the fight starts, Kakashi warns Sasuke that use of the Cursed Seal will disqualify him. Because he can't use Chakra without the Cursed Seal activating, Sasuke is forced to only use Taijutsu, something that proves difficult when Yoroi absorbs his Chakra whenever he gets close. Sasuke ends up mimicking the portion of Rock Lee's front lotus he saw a few days earlier, inventing the Lion combo to defeat him. Afterwards, Kakashi takes Sasuke aside and uses the evil sealing method on his Cursed Seal so that it won't flare up as often. Sasuke loses consciousness from the application, and by the time he wakes up, the preliminaries are already over. For the final matches taking place in a month, Sasuke was to face Gara of Tsunagakure in the first round. In order to prepare him for this fight and to give him an alternative to the Cursed Seal's power, Kakashi teaches him how to use Chidori and helps him further emulate Lee's speed and fighting style. Their training runs long and Sasuke in fact arrives late for his match, but he finds that they waited for him because the audience has anticipated the fight so much. Sasuke uses his speed to attack Gara from multiple angles in a short time, leaving his shield of sand unable to block anything. Gara surrounds himself with his sand so that Sasuke won't bother him while he prepares for the fight. Unable to get through the shield with physical attacks, Sasuke pierces it with Chidori. 
Gara's arm is wounded and his shield dissolves, but not before Sasuke briefly senses Shukaku within him. Before the fight can continue, however, a genjutsu descends on the stadium. Konoha Crush The invasion of Konoha begins, forcing the cancellation of the Chunin exams. As Konoha Nin in the stadium start engaging the invading Suna and Oto forces, the exam proctor Genma Shiranui sends Sasuke after the escaping Gara. Konkuro attempts to delay Sasuke, but Shino Aburame appears to fight Konkuro in Sasuke's place. By the time Sasuke catches up with him, Gara is already in the process of transforming into Shukaku. Gara attacks with increased speed and strength, which Sasuke is only narrowly able to avoid. He counters with Chidori and succeeds in injuring Gara yet again, but Gara is still able to continue fighting. Sasuke, who has already reached his limit of using Chidori twice a day, is low on options. He's able to use a third Chidori by using his cursed seal, but is left paralyzed afterwards and at Gara's mercy. Sasuke is saved by the timely arrival of Naruto and Sakura, sent by Kakashi to provide assistance. Sakura is quickly captured and Naruto initially struggles against Gara. Sasuke volunteers to use what little strength he has to distract Gara while Naruto escapes with Sakura, but Naruto is unwilling to do so. Instead, Naruto taps into a mysterious chakra source, creates a thousand shadow clones, and soon after summons Gamabunta, each of which amazes Sasuke. Naruto ultimately defeats Gara, but he's not able to move. Sasuke collects him and takes him back to Konoha with Sakura. A few days later, Team 7 attends the third Hokage's funeral. Search for Tsunade Sasuke arrives at a dango shop to meet Kakashi for lunch. Not only does he find that Kakashi has arrived uncharacteristically early, but Kakashi abruptly cancels soon afterwards. When Sasuke stops by Kakashi's home later that day, he finds Kakashi is comatose. The assembled Jonin avoid divulging what happened to him until Alba Yamashiro unwittingly reveals that Itachi has returned to Konoha in search of Naruto. Sasuke immediately starts tracking Naruto down so that he can, in turn, fight Itachi. He stops by Ramanichiraku and is informed that Naruto has gone to Shukuba town with Jiraiya. Sasuke locates the inn where Naruto is staying shortly after Itachi does the same. Itachi allows Sasuke an opportunity to demonstrate how much stronger he's become, which he does by attacking with Chidori. Itachi easily blocks the attack and breaks Sasuke's arm, but he is stopped from going any further by the arrival of Jiraiya. When Jiraiya states his intention to defeat both Itachi and his partner Kisame Hoshigaki, Sasuke demands that Itachi be left for him. Uninterested, Itachi kicks Sasuke away and uses Tsukiyomi to force him to experience their parents' murders over and over again. Before Sasuke passes out, Itachi informs him that he is still weak. Sasuke is hospitalized, comatose like Kakashi before him. It isn't until Naruto brings Tsunade to Konoha that the trauma to their minds is healed. Land of Tea Escort Mission In the anime, Team 7 is sent to the Land of Tea to protect Idate Morino. During the mission, they are brought into conflict with Aoi Rokusho. Although Sasuke is able to help break Aoi's sword of the Thunder God with his Chidori, he is injured during the fight and must be hospitalized when they get back to Konoha. Sasuke Recovery Mission while recuperating, Sasuke reflects on his encounter with Itachi, along with Aoi's mocking in the anime, and is upset that after all this time, Itachi is still so much stronger than he is. He is also jealous of Naruto, who, despite being the worst student in their academy class, has seemingly surpassed Sasuke, evidenced by his defeat of Gara. Determined to prove himself superior, Sasuke challenges Naruto to a fight when he comes to visit him in the hospital. At first, Naruto refuses because Sasuke is still in no condition to fight, but Sasuke persists and Naruto agrees. The fight escalates quickly, culminating with Sasuke using Chidori and Naruto using Rasengan. Kakashi arrives and deflects their attacks into opposing water towers before they can clash. Sasuke initially believes his Chidori was at least stronger based on the damage to their respective water towers, but upon closer examination finds that Naruto's water tower is destroyed. Sasuke leaves, jealous of Naruto's development. Kakashi tracks Sasuke down afterwards and lectures him. The Chidori is supposed to be used to protect friends, not attack them. Kakashi reminds Sasuke that no matter how painful the losses of the past are, it would be worse to lose the friends he still has. Kakashi leaves him to think over what he said, and Sasuke becomes conflicted between his desire for revenge and his friendship with Naruto and Sakura. Before he can take Kakashi's words to heart, Sasuke is confronted by the Sound Four. Sent by Orochimaru, the Sound 4 fight with Sasuke to test his abilities and quickly defeat him. He tries using his Cursed Seal to gain the upper hand, but discovers that they each have Cursed Seals too. The Sound 4 offer to take him to Orochimaru so he can gain strength like theirs, which he'll never achieve if he remains in Konoha. Desperate to become stronger than Itachi, Sasuke decides to take the Sound 4 up on the offer and leaves during the night. As he approaches the village's exit, he is met by Sakura, who tries to persuade him to stay so as to not break up Team 7. 
When this doesn't work, Sakura confesses her love for him and asks to be allowed to accompany him at the very least. Sasuke refuses again, so she threatens to call for help. He stops her by knocking her out, but thanks her before he does. He meets the Sound 4 outside the village and they start guiding him to Orochimaru. Once they're far enough away from Konoha, the Sound 4 gives Sasuke some medication that will mature his curse seal to a second, stronger state. He's left unconscious while his body adjusts to the drug, but when he finally wakes up many hours later, his body is much stronger. Ecstatic, Sasuke continues on to Orochimaru by himself, paying little attention to the Sound 4's ongoing battle with the Sasuke recovery team. Sasuke is stopped at the Valley of the End by Naruto. Sasuke ignores his pleas to return to Konoha and is unmoved by Naruto's warnings that Orochimaru will take his body, believing that such a sacrifice is worthwhile if it will lead to Itachi's death. Naruto starts attacking him, ready to take him back to Konoha by force if necessary. Sasuke returns the attacks as a way of resuming the fight that Kakashi interrupted earlier. He also decides to kill Naruto, remembering Itachi's explanation that killing one's closest friend will awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan. With his cursed seal, Sasuke is able to land a number of serious blows. Although Naruto didn't want to believe that Sasuke would really kill him, his mounting injuries convince him otherwise and force him to call on the powers of the Nine Tails within him. Sasuke is surprised by the insidious chakra he senses, the sudden healing of Naruto's wounds, and the increases to his strength and speed. Sasuke becomes angry and asks Naruto why he would go so far for him, to which Naruto responds that Sasuke is like a brother to him and he simply can't let him go. Sasuke acknowledges their bond and promises to sever it, but does at least put on the forehead protector that until now he refused to, to do Naruto the courtesy of wearing. He boasts that Naruto will not even be able to scratch the forehead protector. They continue trading blows, with Naruto eventually manifesting a fox-shaped cloak, and Sasuke entering his cursed seal's second level. Sasuke clashes his Chidori with Naruto's Rasengan, and within the dome of resulting energy, they finally trade blows. Sasuke punches Naruto, and Naruto scratches Sasuke's forehead protector, proving his earlier boast wrong in the process. When the energy dissipates, Sasuke stands over an unconscious Naruto, wounded and with no energy left to finish him. He decides not to kill him since that's what Itachi would want him to do, and he refuses to let Itachi decide his actions. He leaves his forehead protector behind with Naruto and continues on to Orochimaru by himself. When he finally reaches Orochimaru's lair, he discovers that Orochimaru has already found a new body. Sasuke is unconcerned, only wanting whatever power Orochimaru can give him. In Naruto's footsteps, the friend's paths. In the anime, approximately two years into his training with Orochimaru, Sasuke volunteers to deliver some research material to one of Orochimaru's hideouts. While there, Sasuke releases one of Orochimaru's test subjects, Suigetsu Hozuki, from his confinements, and then helps Karin capture Suigetsu yet again. Pleased with what he witnesses of their abilities, Sasuke resolves to win them both over so he can have them as allies in the future. Tenshi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission Two and a half years after leaving Konoha, Sasuke waits impatiently at one of Orochimaru's hideouts in Kusagakure. When Orochimaru finally returns, Sasuke demands that he resume their training. Before complying, Orochimaru introduces him to Sai, his replacement in Team 7, but Sasuke isn't interested. Sai tries to engage Sasuke by discussing Naruto, prompting Sasuke to knock him over with killing intent. Sai persists, telling Sasuke that Naruto thinks of him as a brother. Sasuke replies that he only has one brother whom he will kill. Sai tracks him down later as he rests. Sasuke demands an explanation for the disturbance, and Sai reveals that he wishes to reunite Sasuke with Naruto so as to re-establish the brotherly bond they had. Annoyed, Sasuke attacks him. Naruto, Sakura, and Yamato, Kakashi's replacement, are attacked at the site of Sasuke's attack. Sai is unharmed and is prepared to help them bring him back to Konoha. Sasuke reacts with indifference to Sakura and Naruto, chastising the latter for still pursuing him after all these years. Sasuke also goes on to tell Naruto that he couldn't simply break their bond by killing him, and that he only spared Naruto's life from their first fight on a whim, but intends to kill him for real this time. To demonstrate that they mean nothing to him, Sasuke quickly neutralizes them all, his growth under Orochimaru being far greater than any of them expected. Naruto, frustrated by this, struggles to avoid the temptation of using Ninetales. Seeing this, Sasuke enters Naruto's subconscious using his Sharingan and suppresses the Ninetales, but not before the beast noted Sasuke's similarity to Madara Uchiha in terms of visual prowess and chakra. He escapes Yamato's attempt to capture him and prepares to kill them all, but is stopped by Orochimaru. Orochimaru points to their recent successes against Akatsuki, the organization that Itachi belongs to, and explains that letting them live may further weaken Akatsuki, thereby making it easier to kill Itachi. Sasuke accepts this reasoning, and they leave Team 7 behind. Three Tails Appearance In the anime, Sasuke meets one of Orochimaru's test subjects, Yukimaru, who is picking white camellias. Itachi Pursuit Mission 
After defeating hundreds of Otogakure forces in a training match without receiving a scratch and without killing his opponents, Sasuke decides there's nothing else he can learn from Orochimaru. He decides to kill Orochimaru before he goes, finding Orochimaru's pursuit of power for power's sake distastefully similar to Itachi. Because his current host body is in the process of rejecting him anyway, Orochimaru vacates it and attempts to take Sasuke's. Sasuke repels the attack and cuts up his body, but the exposure to fluids on Orochimaru's body paralyzes Sasuke, allowing Orochimaru to initiate the living corpse reincarnation. Orochimaru starts imprisoning Sasuke within his own subconscious, but Sasuke reverses the process with demonic illusion shackling stakes technique, imprisoning Orochimaru in Sasuke's subconscious instead. Before leaving the base, Sasuke releases Suigetsu Hozuki from the tank he was kept stored in and invites him to join a team he's forming. When Sasuke explains that he's dealt with Orochimaru, Suigetsu tests his abilities to make sure his victory wasn't a fluke, and satisfied, agrees to join him. They travel to another hideout to recruit Karin, and release the prisoners kept there so that she wouldn't have other commitments. Karin refuses to join their team, but claims that she happens to be going in the same direction as they are. They visit another hideout to recruit Jugo, the origin of Orochimaru's cursed seals. As they approach, they are confronted by a horde of escaped cursed seal recipients, but easily deal with them all. Although they locate Jugo easily enough in his cell, he's unwilling to go with them, afraid that he'll kill them in a violent rage. When Sasuke demonstrates that they can keep Jugo's rage under control, he agrees to go with them. Sasuke takes the others to Soraku to stock up on supplies, after which he explains that their team, called Hebi, has been assembled for the sole reason of finding and killing Itachi. They then split up to search for leads. While trying to pick up Itachi's trail, Sasuke is confronted by Tobi of Akatsuki, who distracts him while Daedra attacks above with his explosive clay. Sasuke summons a snake to shield the blast and then immediately retaliates, seemingly cutting Tobi down, although he gets up unfazed. Daedra attacks with a volley of additional explosives, which Sasuke is able to deflect with his Chidori Senbon. Daedra takes to the air with a C2 dragon, and Tobi plants explosive mines underground, cutting off Sasuke's escape. Sasuke enters the second stage of his cursed seal, and by sacrificing his transformation's left wing, he is able to propel Daedra's dragon onto the minefield. Frustrated that Sasuke keeps defeating his explosives, Daedra uses C4 to cover the area in microscopic bombs that destroy anyone who inhales them from the inside out. Able to see the bombs with a Sharingan, Sasuke uses a Genjutsu to fake his death while he sneaks up behind Daedra. This is a trap as Daedra has trained himself to be immune to Genjutsu, and Sasuke is trapped in a sphere of C4 explosives. Having earlier noticed that the explosives can be diffused with Lightning Chakra, Sasuke escapes with Chidori and quarters Daedra. He starts asking for Itachi's whereabouts, deactivating his Sharingan since he thinks the battle is over. This insults Daedara, who uses his last result, C0. Daedara dies in the explosion, and Sasuke only narrowly avoids the same fate by summoning Manda and placing it under his control so Manda can jump to the Ryuchi Cave, thereby escaping the explosion. However, before Manda was de-summoned back to the Ryuchi Cave, they were hit by the explosion, which ultimately killed Manda. Manda uses his dying breath to curse Sasuke. Sasuke regroups with the rest of Hebi, and they locate a place to rest. After a few hours, Karin reports that Konoha Ninja are approaching their location. Assuming it's Naruto and the others, Sasuke takes Hebi to one of the nearby Akatsuki bases that Jugo learned about. Sasuke goes in by himself and finds Itachi waiting for him. Sasuke attacks and defeats Itachi with his Chidori Sharp Spear, impressing him enough to divulge where the real Itachi is before it, a crow clone, disperses. Sasuke leads Hebi towards Itachi's location. Fated Battle Between Brothers as they approach the Uchiha hideout where Itachi's waiting, Kisame Hoshigaki meets them and allows only Sasuke to proceed. Sasuke instructs Hebi to wait for him and goes on alone. When they finally are face to face, Sasuke and Itachi start by trading Genjutsu, within which they trade Taijutsu attacks. During a temporary lull, Sasuke questions Itachi about a suspicion he's long had, that someone had helped Itachi kill the Uchiha clan. Itachi confirms that he was helped by Madara Uchiha, one of Konoha's founders, but Sasuke doesn't believe him. While explaining Madara's history, Itachi also reveals that the use of the Mangekyo Sharingan eventually causes blindness, which can only be cured by taking the eyes of a sibling. Intending to take Sasuke's eyes for just this reason, Itachi uses Tsukiyomi on him, which Sasuke is able to break out of to Itachi's surprise. Sasuke and Itachi abandon Genjutsu and switch to Ninjutsu, the volley of attacks quickly spill outside where Sasuke and Itachi compare their great fireballs. When Sasuke starts to pull ahead, Itachi uses Amaterasu, igniting Sasuke and seemingly killing him. As Itachi approaches to take his eyes, Sasuke, having shed his skin to escape Amaterasu, attacks with multiple great dragon fire techniques. Itachi avoids them, but Sasuke informs him that Itachi wasn't his target. Storm clouds gather and lightning brews, allowing Sasuke to kill Itachi with Kirin. 
The hideout is destroyed, and Sasuke briefly believes he's won, only for Itachi to reveal that he has survived thanks to his Susano. Angry that Itachi could endure his strongest attack and having exhausted his own chakra reserve, Sasuke activates level 2 of his cursed seal. Orochimaru, sensing Sasuke's desperation, calls out to him from within his subconscious, promising to help him if Sasuke lets him out. Having exhausted all of his chakra reserves and having none left to suppress Orochimaru, he emerges from Sasuke's body, attacking Itachi with his eight branches technique. Itachi uses Susano to behead Orochimaru's jutsu, but he isn't concerned, having decided to take Sasuke's body while he's weak. Itachi stops him by stabbing him with the sword of Tatsuka, sealing him away and removing the cursed seal from Sasuke's body. Itachi approaches Sasuke, repeating his intention to take Sasuke's eyes, and Sasuke makes futile attempts to keep him away. Susano continues to protect Itachi, but it degrades as he labors near and Itachi starts coughing up blood. When he finally reaches Sasuke, Itachi appears to grab for his eyes, but instead only pokes his forehead. Itachi smiles, apologizes to Sasuke, and says this is the end before falling dead. Sasuke is confused about what has happened, but smiles for finally avenging his family before passing out. When Sasuke wakes up, he finds his injuries being treated by Tobi, who reintroduces himself as Madara Uchiha. When he sees Tobi's Sharingan, Sasuke's eyes suddenly use Amaterasu on him. Tobi escapes the flames and marvels at the lengths Itachi would go through to protect Sasuke. Sasuke doesn't understand this and accuses Tobi of lying to him, but Tobi insists that everything he says is true that Itachi killed the Uchiha clan on orders of Konoha's leadership in order to protect Sasuke. Sasuke is unable to process this and passes out again. When he wakes up, Tobi starts over, explaining the Uchiha's history, Konoha's history, and Itachi's history from the beginning. Sasuke tries pointing out how hard Itachi tried to kill him, to which Tobi replies that it was only to draw out Orochimaru so as to stop him from manipulating Sasuke any further. Sasuke starts recalling memories he blocked out, things Itachi said, and occurrences that make more sense with Tobi's version of events. Realizing how much Itachi loved him, Sasuke is overcome with grief. Naruto Jin Raiden, The Day the Wolf Howled In this novel, Sasuke starts experiencing eye irritation in the days after Itachi's death. Tobi gives him a bottle of Kotaro, a medicine that Itachi used to use. It helps, but very little of it remains. Hoping to get more and to verify parts of the story that Tobi told him, Sasuke goes to the Howling Wolf Village. There, he meets Kina and Reishi Kodan, two brothers whose relationship is very similar to the one Sasuke used to have with Itachi when they were younger. They recognize Sasuke before he even introduces himself, having heard so much about him from Itachi that they feel as though they already know him. They explain that Itachi would visit them for a couple times every year to get another prescription of Kotaro, and that while waiting for it to be prepared, he would tell them warmly about his beloved little brother. Itachi also explained to them that if Sasuke ever stopped by, it would be because he had died. So they share their condolences. Sasuke is saddened by his confirmation that Itachi was a good person. Wishing to be alone, he places an order for more Kotaro before going off to rest in the same shack Itachi used to stay in. During the week it'll take the Kotaro to be made, Kina convinces Sasuke to help him investigate a series of murders that have been taking place in the area, hoping it will redeem their Kodan clan. During the course of the investigation, Sasuke discovers that Kina is behind the murders, killing villagers who pick on him by inadvertently releasing Rowan, a monster sealed within him. Every time this happens, Reishi wipes his memories so that he won't be traumatized by what he did. With the village starting to suspect that one of the brothers is responsible, Reishi asks Sasuke to help convince them that he is the murderer in order to spare Kina. Sasuke, again reminded of the relationship between Itachi and himself, agrees. Kina, however, doesn't want anything to happen to Reishi, and once again inadvertently releases Rowan and starts attacking the Howling Wolf village. Because of the nature of the seal containing Rowan, they now only have 10 minutes to perform another seal or Kina will die. Sasuke suggests a new seal concocted by Itachi before he died. Sasuke keeps Rowan busy with his Mangekyo Sharingan, it having finally awakened on coming to terms with Itachi's death. Reishi performs the seal, trapping Rowan in a nearby shrine at the cost of his life. Kina is saved and is given sole credit for stopping Reishi and saving the village, Sasuke having altered the villagers' memories with Genjutsu. Kina, unable to remember anything, doubts this story is true unwilling to believe Reishi was a murderer. Sasuke offers to take Kina with him and train him to be a ninja, but Kina refuses, wishing to stay in the Howling Wolf village to help people like Reishi did. As in the manga and anime, Sasuke gathers the members of Heavy with Tobi watching from nearby. Having finally accepted that Itachi was a good person who was wronged by Konoha, he decides that the new mission for their team, now renamed Taka, will be to destroy Konoha. Pain's Assault Tobi offers to help Taka destroy Konoha, but in exchange, first asks that they help Akatsuki by going to Kumogakure to capture the Eight Tails. Sasuke agrees, but makes it clear he plans to kill only the elders involved in the massacre, and the rest of the villagers will be spared. 
They track the Eight Tails Jinchuriki, Killer B, to the Valley of Clouds and Lightning and confront him. Sasuke and Suigetsu attack him with their sword, but he proves to be a better swordsman than they are and stabs Sasuke with several of his Super Vibrato Lightning Release Swords. After Kareen heals his injuries, Sasuke attacks B with Chidori, but it has little effect. B enters a version 1 form and attacks. Sasuke, recognizing it from his fight with Naruto, tries halting B with Genjutsu. B pretends to be paralyzed by it, causing Sasuke to lower his guard and allowing B to attack him with Lariat. Sasuke is left badly injured and it falls to Jugo to heal him. B enters Tailed Beast mode and attacks Taka with a Tailed Beast Ball, which Suigetsu uses his body to block. He survives, but is knocked unconscious. Unwilling to lose his teammates, Sasuke uses his Mangekyo Sharingan to perform Amaterasu on B. As B writhes in pain, he nearly crushes Kareen with a tentacle, prompting Sasuke to sever it to protect her. B's transformation recedes, Taka collects his body, and they deliver it to Tobi. It's revealed that in an earlier secret conversation with Tobi, Sasuke admitted that he not only wants to kill the elders, but all the residents of Konoha. Sasuke explains that the grief of losing Itachi and everyone being ignorant of how Itachi sacrificed his life for peace made it impossible for him to follow in Itachi's footsteps, and he felt that the villagers are just as guilty, even going as far as to threaten to kill the loved ones of anyone who dared to oppose him. As they recuperate, they discover that they've been followed by Kumonin. They escape before they can be drawn into battle and set out for Konoha. Past Arc, the Locus of Konoha. In the anime, on their way to Konoha, Taka passes a construction site that reminds Sasuke of Team 7's mission to rescue Naho, Five Kage Summit. Tobi intercepts Taka on their way to Konoha, explaining that the bee was a fake, the real bee having escaped when Sasuke severed the tentacle. While trying to decide if and how they will compromise, Zetsu appears and announces that Konoha has been destroyed already and that Danzo Shimura has been appointed the next Hokage. Because Danzo was the main conspirator in the Uchiha clan's assassination, Tobi comes up with an alternative for capturing the Eight Tails. Taka must go to the Five Kage Summit being held within a few days to kill Danzo. Sasuke accepts these terms and is led to the Land of Iron by White Zetsu. On arrival, White Zetsu points Danzo out to them and Taka finds a place where they can ambush him. Taka's presence is discovered, exposed by White Zetsu on Tobi's orders, and the country's samurai mobilize to capture them. Sasuke kills dozens of samurai, attracting the fourth Raikage to their location. Taka engages the Raikage and his bodyguards. While Sasuke neutralizes C, Jugo fights and is defeated by the Raikage. Sasuke and the Raikage turn their attentions to each other, but Sasuke is unable to pierce the Raikage's lightning release chakra mode. The Raikage's lightning augmented physical attacks prove similarly formidable, and it is only by manifesting an underdeveloped Susano that Sasuke survives the Raikage's Liger Bomb. Sasuke tries to discourage further contact from the Raikage by coating Susano with Amaterasu's flames, but the Raikage attacks regardless willfully forfeiting his left arm in order to avenge Killer B, his younger brother. Sasuke and the Raikage prepare to attack each other yet again, but are stopped by Gara, now the Kazakage. Gara asks for a chance to speak with Sasuke, which the Raikage agrees to so he can have his arm healed. Gara shares his own experience with loneliness and vengeance and how he came to decide that they were not worthwhile pursuits. He discourages Sasuke from making the same mistakes as he did, but Sasuke refuses to listen because all he can see is darkness. Unable to get through to him, Gara and his bodyguards attack. Sasuke escapes by caving the room in with his Susano and locates Karin. While telling her to leave, Suigetsu and Jugo behind to have her guide him to Danzo. Danzo flees as soon as they arrive and Sasuke's attempt to pursue is blocked by the 5th Mizukage. With this chakra running low, Sasuke nearly succumbs to her boil release, only to be saved by White Zetsu's spore technique. He escapes from the Mizukage but is met by the 3rd Suchikage, who seemingly vaporizes him with dust release, detachment of the primitive world technique. Sasuke is saved at the last moment by Tobi, who sends him to Kamui's dimension to keep him safe. He also sends Kareen with him to revitalize him. Tobi releases both of them later once he's tracked down Danzo, making good on his promise to help Sasuke avenge the Uchiha clan by killing him. Before they start fighting, Sasuke asks for Danzo to confirm that Itachi really was ordered to kill the Uchiha by Konoha's leadership. Danzo, assuming Sasuke heard this from Itachi, criticizes Itachi for revealing the secret and concludes that Itachi, in doing so, is a traitor to Konoha. Taking this as confirmation, Sasuke uses Susano to crush Danzo in anger. Danzo, however, appears unharmed and starts attacking Sasuke. Sasuke counters a number of times, even evolving a Susano to a completed form, but each time Danzo is seemingly fatally wounded, he emerges a short distance away unharmed. From observing Danzo during their fight, Sasuke notices that he has many Sharingan embedded on his arm, and that they close at regular intervals. 
He concludes that this is the key to Danzo's survival and that when all eyes close, he won't be able to avoid injury anymore. Danzo confirms this as Izanagi. Their battle continues on until Danzo is left with only one Sharingan remaining, at which point he and Sasuke clash, stabbing each other. Danzo waits for Izanagi to undo the damage, only to realize that what he thought was a remaining Sharingan was Sasuke's Genjutsu and that his injury is irreversible. Desperate to escape, Danzo takes Karin hostage, threatening to kill her if Sasuke comes near. Sasuke doesn't hesitate to stab through her with his Chidori sharp spear in order to fatally wound Danzo. Dying, Danzo staggers closely to Sasuke and Tobi and activates his reverse force symbol ceiling in order to kill them both, but they escape. Satisfied with his revenge on Danzo, Sasuke states his intentions to continue on to Konoha. Tobi advises that he rest, as he's already starting to experience blindness from overusing the Mangekyo Sharingan. He also suggests that Sasuke finish off Karin and then leaves with Danzo's body. Sasuke approaches Karin and bids her farewell as he prepares a Chidori, but he is stopped by the arrival of Sakura. She tells them that she's defected from Konoha and is prepared to help him in his goals, even if that means destroying the village. Suspicious, Sasuke tells her to kill Karin to prove her loyalty, but as she nears Karin, Karin warns her that Sasuke is attacking her from behind. His attack is blocked by Kakashi, who is furious at Sasuke for trying to kill Sakura. Kakashi explains that he's aware that Sakura came to kill Sasuke and doesn't want her to need to go through with that because of his own failings as their teacher. Kakashi tries to discourage Sasuke from the path of vengeance he's on, which Sasuke laughs at, having grown tired of people trying to change his mind, and then shouts that he will only stop if his clan is brought back to him. Realizing Sasuke is serious about his threats to kill everyone, Kakashi sends Sakura away to heal Karin. As they start fighting, Sasuke once again refuses to listen to Kakashi about giving up on his revenge and says that he wants to hear their screams and anguish for laughing at Itachi's sacrifice, and also states that Kakashi's Sharingan is yet another example of Konoha profiting off the Uchiha's downfall. The rage of this realization brings his Susanoo to evolve yet again, but it dissipates immediately afterwards, his eyes on the verge of blindness. Sakura then tries to kill him from behind, but she ultimately can't bring herself to do so. Sensing her, Sasuke grabs her by the throat, takes her kunai, and tries to kill her, but she's rescued by Naruto, who is intent on stopping the fighting. When asked by Naruto why he would attack Sakura, Sasuke announces his plan to destroy the village and kill all the residents to avenge Itachi, as well as admitting to murdering Danzo and his desire to do the same to them. Sasuke and Naruto clash with Chidori and Rasengan respectively, but their mental states connect. Sasuke offers Naruto two choices, kill him or get killed, but Naruto rejects both. The impact of their attacks send them flying and Sasuke is saved by Tobi. As Tobi tries convincing Sasuke to retreat, Naruto tells Sasuke that they have become equals and they will both die the next time they fight. Although angry at Naruto for refusing to give up on him, Sasuke accepts this and vows to kill Naruto first. He finally agrees to leave with Tobi, and when they get back to the mountain's graveyard, he asks for Itachi's eyes, needing to restore his sight if he's to become stronger than Naruto and kill him. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown. After transplanting Itachi's eyes into Sasuke, Tobi advises that he rest until he gets used to them. Sasuke claims that he's already more powerful because he can feel Itachi. Fourth Shinobi World War, Confrontation. Sasuke asks Zetsu if he can take off the bandages over his eyes. Zetsu tells him to be patient. By the next day, Sasuke is tired of waiting and removes the bandages anyways, killing White Zetsu with his Susano in order to test his new powers. Fourth Shinobi World War, Climax. Sasuke leaves the mountain's graveyard and wanders through two towns, but finds both strangely empty. When members of the White Zetsu army come after him, Sasuke asks what's currently happening in the world. The Zetsus avoid answering and try to capture him. He destroys most of them with a the Matarasu and interrogates one with a Genjutsu. Zetsu reveals that Tobi has initiated the Fourth Shinobi World War in order to capture Killer B and Naruto. Sasuke decapitates this last Zetsu and then goes looking for Naruto himself, intending to make good on his promise to kill him. Immediately upon entering a nearby forest, Sasuke sees Itachi going in the opposite direction. Sasuke gives chase, desperately wanting to speak to Itachi. Because he has business elsewhere, Itachi doesn't stop to talk, but he does field some of Sasuke's questions. Itachi has been brought back with the impure world reincarnation. He spared Sasuke all those years ago because Sasuke was only a child, innocent of the rest of the Uchiha's conspiracies against Konoha. He pushed Sasuke onto a path of vengeance because he regretted killing their family and wanted Sasuke to hold him accountable for his actions. The criminal activities Sasuke has been involved in since his death are not what Itachi wanted, as he wished for Sasuke to be regarded as a hero for killing him. This only angers Sasuke, who says Itachi had no right to decide his fate. As he approaches his destination, Itachi tells Sasuke to remain outside. Sasuke ignores him and follows him into the cave where the user of the impure world reincarnation is hiding. Sasuke initially believes the user is Orochimaru, but on closer inspection recognizes him as Kabuto Yakushi. Confused with the situation, Sasuke demands answers and Kabuto gives him the goal behind the war, 
by capturing Naruto and B and using all nine-tailed beasts, Tobi plans to resurrect the Ten Tails, become his Jinchuriki, and cast infinite Tsukiyomi on the world. Sasuke also learns that he had been promised as a compensation for Kabuto by Tobi in exchange for his cooperation. Disapproving of Tobi and Kabuto's war against the nations, Sasuke is angry for being used and manipulated all along. Because Itachi's mission is to stop Kabuto, so as to end the impure world reincarnation, Sasuke tries to end things quickly by simply killing him. Itachi blocks this attack, explaining that the impure world reincarnation will not be ended if Kabuto dies, and their only option is to trap him in a genjutsu. Aware of this, Kabuto avoids making eye contact with either of them, instead sending out his snakes to attack them. They counter with their Susano, but Sasuke notices that the snakes, as well as Kabuto himself, display abilities similar to Suigetsu and Karin. Kabuto explains that he's altered his body using Orochimaru's research on both of them, and he's done the same for Jugo, which has enabled him to enter Sage Mode. In Sage Mode, Kabuto shields his eyes so he's immune to Genjutsu. Needing to coordinate, Itachi reminds Sasuke of a mission they went on as children to hunt a boar, which they reenact with their Susano against Kabuto. Kabuto avoids them and commandeers Sasuke's sword, which he uses to attack Itachi. Itachi takes the sword back from him and uses it to cut the tip off of one of Kabuto's horns. Kabuto tries to turn Sasuke against Itachi, pointing out that Itachi has been lying to him for most of his life. Itachi admits to having made many mistakes in how he's handled Sasuke, but he promises to tell Sasuke something after they've stopped Kabuto, for which purpose he's already started using Izanami. Kabuto resumes his attack using a variety of jutsu available to him through Sage Mode and his research of others, namely the Sound 5 and even Orochimaru. Because his body is immortal, Itachi focuses on protecting Sasuke from harm while waiting for an opportunity to complete the Izanami. When the opportunity presents itself, Itachi allows Kabuto to take Sasuke's sword again, which Itachi once again takes back and uses to cut the tip off of the same horn. This creates a loop of sensation that is independent of vision, trapping Kabuto in a genjutsu and ending the battle. Itachi then instructs Kabuto to end the impure world reincarnation. As Kabuto does the hand seals, Sasuke tells Itachi that he can't do as Itachi wished and forgive Konoha for taking his clan and brother. Itachi apologizes for ever expecting him to, remarking that the clan's destruction might have been avoided if he had been honest with Sasuke from the start. As Itachi begins to disappear, Sasuke says he intends to destroy Konoha no matter what Itachi says, and Itachi recognizes that he cannot change Sasuke's mind. Rather than poke Sasuke's head as he always did, Itachi rests his forehead on Sasuke's and tells Sasuke that he will love him no matter what choice he makes. His soul then departs to the Pure Land. With Itachi's parting words, Sasuke starts to question the meaning of a shinobi, a village, and a clan, and doesn't know what he should do now. When he's found by Suigetsu and Jugo, they inform him that Madara Uchiha, unrelated to Tobi, escaped the release of the Impure World Reincarnation, leaving Itachi's last mission unfinished. Before deciding how he feels about this, Sasuke decides he wants to find Orochimaru. To that end, Jugo locates Anko Midarashi, who has a cursed seal. Sasuke then uses the evil releasing method on her to revive Orochimaru from her cursed seal. Although insisting he still desired revenge, Sasuke explains to Orochimaru that he wants to understand the world better so that he can, in turn, understand Itachi and decide which side of the conflict he should pick. Curious about this change that has come over Sasuke, Orochimaru leads him, Suigetsu, and Jugo to the Naka Shrine in Konoha. There, Orochimaru releases the souls of the first four Hokage from the stomach of the Shinigami, and then uses the white Zetsu spores that Sasuke was secretly planted with as sacrifices to reincarnate the Hokage. Sasuke briefly summarizes the current events of the Fourth Shinobi World War. Before he chooses which side to take in the conflict, he wants to know more about what Konoha is and also what it was intended to be, which may in turn help him understand the sacrifices Itachi made when he was alive. Each of the Hokage gives their own thoughts on Konoha and the Uchiha and what they did while they were in office to reconcile the two, at times, opposing forces. From listening to them, particularly the first Hokage, Sasuke decides that Konoha is worth protecting, as its destruction would only nullify everything that Itachi did in his life. He heads towards the battlefield and allows the Hokage to accompany. As they leave, Karin tracks them down and vents her anger at Sasuke, who immediately forgives Sasuke's earlier attempt on her life after he simply apologizes to her. The Hokage reach the battlefield before he does, but he's no less willing to help the allied shinobi forces defeat the Ten Tails. With the exception of Naruto, all of Sasuke's former comrades are confused and suspicious of his sudden arrival and demand an explanation. Sasuke replies he has decided to protect the village, and he wants to be Hokage to change the current ninja system. When they retort that's impossible and remind him of his past actions, Sasuke says he doesn't care about that. Nevertheless, he joins forces with Naruto and Sakura along with the original Rookie 9. The now reunited Team 7 charges into battle, cutting through the Ten Tails army of clones. Because the clones' numbers are too great, Team 7 decides to perform their own summons so that they can focus on the Ten Tails itself. Sasuke summons Aoda. 
Once close enough, Sasuke and Naruto combine efforts into the Scorch release, Halo Hurricane Jet Black Arrow Style Zero, successfully damaging the Tentail's arm. Naruto wants to free the captured beasts, but Sasuke prefers to let them burn. Tobi, who is revealed to actually be Obito Uchiha, appears above the Ten Tails shortly afterwards and starts performing a jutsu. Sasuke and the rest of the allied shinobi forces try and stop him, but fail and Obito becomes the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki Sasuke allows the Hokage to attack Obito first, taking advantage of their immortal bodies to test Obito's new abilities. When the first three Hokage are quickly defeated, Sasuke prepares to join in with the Susano, but Obito's truth-seeking balls quickly pierce through it and Obito grabs both him and Naruto. The fourth Hokage rescues them and tries fighting Obito on his own, but he suffers a defeat just like the other Hokage did. After regrouping, Sasuke and Naruto, with assistance from the fourth and second Hokage, use another attack on Obito and smile when they succeed in landing a direct hit. Although this attack actually succeeds in hitting Obito, they discover that his new body is impervious to most conventional forms of attack. From testing with different jutsu, Naruto notices that Obito is vulnerable to Senjutsu. He and the fourth exploit this weakness by entering Sage mode and attacking. Seeing how strong Naruto has become, Sasuke grows jealous and angry. After he recovers, Obito recreates the God Tree in order to carry out the Eye of the Moon plan, as well as to decimate the allied shinobi forces. As some allied shinobi, including Naruto, start fearing that the battle is lost, Sasuke uses his Susanoo to cut through one of the tree's roots and berates Naruto for nearly giving up, which inspires Naruto to continue fighting. Sasuke then has Jugo imbue his Susanoo with Senjutsu Chakra, allowing him to assist Naruto in Ninetales mode in attacking Obito. Despite working together, Naruto and Sasuke attack separately, which Obito proves consistently able to avoid or block. Deciding to combine efforts, Sasuke coats his Susanoo around Naruto's tailed beast mode, increasing its offensive and defensive capabilities. With further assistance from the rest of the Konoha 11, they succeed in cutting Obito down and ultimately removing the tailed beasts from his body. Obito is unable to move after his defeat, and Sasuke prepares to finish him off. Kakashi stops him and offers to deal with Obito himself, sending Sasuke to help Naruto deal with Madara, who was fighting the first Hokage. By the time he arrives there, however, Madara has been restored to life and has neutralized the first. Sasuke was quick to notice that Madara had been restored into living flesh and tries to burn him with a Matarasu. When this failed because Madara absorbed the flame, Sasuke resorts to physical attacks with his sword, but Madara dodges and asks that Sasuke join forces with him, impressed by his abilities. When Sasuke refuses, Madara advises that he stay out of his way or else he will die. Madara goes on to recapture the tailed beasts, including those sealed within Killer B and Naruto. As he prepares to revive the Ten Tails and become its Jinchuriki like Obito before him, Sasuke attacks him but is caught in mid-air by Madara. Having already warned Sasuke once, Madara stabs him in the chest with his own sword. Sasuke tries to get up, determined not to let Madara win, and in turn let Itachi's memory be sullied, but he passes out as the life fades from him. On the edge of death, Sasuke is met by Hagoromo Otsotsuki, the famed Sage of Six Paths. Hagoromo warns Sasuke about the infinite Tsukiyomi that Madara is planning to use. Because Sasuke is the reincarnation of Indra, Hagoroma's oldest son, Hagoroma can give him half of his power that, in combination with the heavy gifts of Naruto, the reincarnation of Hagoroma's other son, Asura, will enable them to stop the infinite Tsukiyomi. Sasuke agrees and receives the Six Paths Yin power. He regains consciousness and finds that the damage to his body has been healed by Kabuto, who escaped the Izanami and now feels indebted to Itachi. Sasuke's left eye, meanwhile, has become a Rinnegan. Sasuke releases Tobirama from Madara's restraints and has him teleport to Naruto's location. Arriving as Naruto is facing Madara, Sasuke uses his Rinnegan to see Madara's invisible doppelganger. When Madara tries to steal Sasuke's left eye, Sasuke switch places with his sword, causing Madara to impale himself. While Madara recovers from the injury, Naruto and Sasuke attack from opposing sides in an effort to activate the seal given to them by Hagoromo. Madara escapes at the last moment and goes after Kakashi, taking his Sharingan. Sasuke catches up to Madara and bisects him, but he uses Kamui on his upper half to swap dimensions. Sasuke is later surprised to see Sakura appear after Obito used Kamui to save her from Madara. Regrouping with Team 7 and unsure when he'll return, Sasuke warns the others to be on guard. While they wait, Kakashi remembers when his team first introduced themselves years ago and wonders what Sasuke's intents are now that Itachi's gone. When asked this, Sasuke doesn't reply and Kakashi doesn't push it because they have more things to worry about. Sensing Madara coming, Kakashi reminds him of Team 7's first lesson, the importance of teamwork. 
Madara eventually returns with his other Rinnegan. Sakura launches the first attack and Sasuke follows close behind her. When she's stabbed by Madara's rod, Sasuke uses Chidori's sharp spear to cut off the rod and allow Naruto to get her away. Sasuke sees four more Madaras and has Naruto fight them while White Madara moves into position to use the infinite Tsukiyomi. Madara rains numerous Chibaku Tensei down on Team 7. Sasuke cuts through several with his complete body, Susano, but isn't able to reach Madara in time to stop the infinite Tsukiyomi from being cast. Kaguya Otsotsuki strikes. Sasuke hurries back to Naruto and uses Susano to shield him, Sakura, and Kakashi from the infinite Tsukiyomi's effects. Naruto tries to go and check on the others, but Sasuke tells him to be patient. Sakura asks what's happening, but Sasuke tells her and then Kakashi they don't need to know because there's nothing they can do and assumes leadership of Team 7 because he believes that only he can stop the infinite Tsukiyomi with his Rinnegan. When they emerge, they find Madara has bound the world's population with God, nativity of a world of trees, and trapped them all within perpetual dreams. Madara confronts them and insists that he has ended all conflicts and that only Team 7 as the only remaining opposition, would seek to renew the cycle of death that plagued the world for centuries, which Sasuke retorts that Madara is disillusioned. As he's talking, Madara is stabbed from behind by Black Zetsu, and his body is converted into Kage Otsutsuki, which leaves Team 7 shocked. Sasuke and Naruto recognize Kaguya from their meeting Hagoromo as the origin of Chakra. Although she now has access to the chakra of those trapped within the infinite Tsukiyomi, she wants Team 7's too, specifically Naruto's and Sasuke's. She transports them to one of Kaguya's dimensions, a sea of lava. Sasuke summons Garuda to save himself and Naruto, ignoring Kakashi, Sakura, and an unconscious Obito Uchiha. Sasuke reminds Naruto that only they can stop Kaguya, and therefore what happens to the others doesn't matter. Naruto understands, but he can't actually help but save them anyway, reminding Sasuke of when he saved him in the Land of Waves. Naruto engages Kaguya while Sasuke attacks from above with his Susano. Kaguya repels him and he nearly falls into the lava. He drops his sword and loses it to that fate, but he's able to teleport to safety with Emeno Tejikata. When they try to come up with a way to place Hagoromo's seal on her, Kaguya sneaks up behind Naruto and Sasuke, paralyzes them with Black Zetsu, and starts absorbing their chakra. Black Zetsu reveals its role in manipulating the Uchiha clan as part of its plan of resurrecting Kaguya, which angers Sasuke. Naruto breaks them free and distracts her with his sexy reverse harem technique, which nearly allows them to initiate the seal. She shifts dimensions before they connect, encasing them in ice. Sasuke shatters the ice with the blaze release Kagatsuchi, only for Kaguya to then grab him and send him off by himself to a dimension of sand dunes. Sasuke wanders the dunes, finding the spot where Naruto's chakra signature is strongest. There, he is shortly afterwards found by Obito and Sakura, who with considerable effort are able to briefly open a portal between dimensions. Sasuke uses Ame no Tejikara to teleport to Sakura's side by switching places with her flak jacket, catches Sakura as she's about to collapse from exhaustion, thanks her and Obito, and is then reunited with Naruto. Frustrated that her attempt to separate them failed, Kaguya shifts to a dimension with powerful gravity immobilizing them while she kills them with her all-killing ash bones. Kakashi shields Sasuke from her attack, while Obito shields Naruto while using Kamui to warp the bone that was meant to hit and kill Kakashi. Only Obito dies. Sasuke forces himself up and nearly hits Kaguya with a Chidori, forcing her to shift dimensions to somewhere with normal gravity. As Naruto stays with a dying Obito, Sasuke goes after Kaguya on his own. Sasuke uses Susanoo to fight her by himself until Naruto, done grieving for Obito, comes to join him. Naruto's super tailed beast Rasen Shuriken destabilizes the tailed beast's chakra within her, prompting her to create an expansive truth seeking ball to destroy them all. With the end near, Team 7 mobilizes for its final assault. Kakashi, using chakra received from Obito, pierces through her. Naruto, with additional help from Kakashi, uses shadow clones to exhaust her countermeasures. Sasuke teleports closer to her in order to initiate the seal and prepares his left eye to fire Amaterasu in the event that she tried to teleport to the ice world again. Sakura punches her when she tries to escape. When both Naruto and Sasuke make contact with her, the tailed beasts are removed from Kaguya's body and she, as well as Black Zetsu, is entombed within the six paths Chibaku Tensei. Having been waiting for this, Hagoromo then summons them all back to the real world with the help of the dead Kage and congratulates them for their victory. Madara has also been returned, so Sasuke prepares to kill him, but Hagoromo stops him, explaining that Madara is dying anyway. After Madara shares his dying words with the first Okage, Hagoromo returns the Kage's souls to the Pure Land. Hagoromo also informs Naruto and Sasuke that they can release the world from the infinite Tsukiyomi by simply joining hands. However, Sasuke has other things he'd like to do first. He starts by placing the tailed beasts under his control with a genjutsu, traps them with Chibaku Tensei, and promises to release the infinite Tsukiyomi only after he's killed the current Kage. 
Sasuke explains that the tailed beasts have too often been a source of conflict and that the Kage have consistently failed to keep the peace. The world would be better off without any of them. Because Naruto is the only one who can challenge him at this point, Sasuke states his intention to kill him. Sakura dissuades him by telling him that she still loves him and pleading for him to return home if he ever loved her. However, Sasuke uses his Sharingan Genjutsu to make Sakura fall asleep. Condemned by Kakashi for this, Sasuke tells Kakashi that there is no reason for him and Sakura to love each other, and her love is a remnant of a failed past. Sasuke then travels to the Valley of the End, the same place where he and Naruto first fought and waits for Naruto to come to him. When Naruto arrives, he tells Sasuke it's impossible to do everything alone like he plans to, pointing to the missteps Itachi made and their own successful teamwork against Kaguya. Sasuke replies that he only wants to remake a better world, one where he can, like Itachi before, be solely responsible for the difficult decisions that must be made so nobody else needs to. This is what he believes a true Hokage to be. To do this, Sasuke says he intends to erase the past by severing all his bonds and killing Naruto. Enraged, Naruto insists that he will be Hokage, not Sasuke, because Sasuke is still going against what Itachi wanted for him, and they start fighting. After a brief exchange of blows reminiscent of their fight years ago, Naruto and Sasuke start trading punches with their tailed beast mode in Susano. Sasuke chastises Naruto for not attacking with an intent to kill, but Naruto, like last time, is unwilling to do that, not wishing for either of them to go without the other. Sasuke uses his Susano to perform Chidori, and Naruto uses Tailed Beast mode to make a Tailed Beast Ball, which they clash with. The collision of the two attacks creates a large explosion, doing noticeable but not debilitating damage to their respective avatars. As they mentally connect, Naruto says there's no guarantee his plan will work, and Sasuke replies that it doesn't matter, because thanks to his Six Paths power, he has options for immortality to allow him to watch over the world for eternity. Each therefore powers up the avatars, Sasuke by channeling the captured tailed beasts into his Susanoo, and Naruto by merging his avatar with the avatars of two shadow clones. The two meet attacks once again, this time creating a giant explosion that strips away their avatars and leaves them with too little chakra to use it practically. They instead resort to taijutsu, kicking and punching each other into the night. As they near exhaustion, Naruto musters what little chakra he can, which Sasuke immediately absorbs. However, as the chakra was not molded to fit Sasuke's chakra signature, he wasn't able to utilize it. Having expected this, Naruto delivers a solid punch, finally irritating Sasuke over the endless repetition of their fight. Sasuke uses Chidori and Naruto, taking the last remaining chakra that Ninetales can give him, counters with the Rasengan. With Naruto waking up earlier to find that much of the Valley of the End had been destroyed, that they each had lost an arm, and that neither could move. Sasuke wakes up afterwards and asks Naruto why he continues to try to stop him, and never gives up on him. Naruto's usual response that they're friends doesn't convince Sasuke since it obviously goes beyond that. So Naruto elaborates that he experiences pain whenever Sasuke is going through a tough time. Sasuke is shocked, knowing full well that Naruto has experienced various misfortunes in his life, smiled through all of them, yet would suffer without him. Sasuke thinks about their childhood of being orphans, and how Sasuke came to see Naruto as a friend because they shared the same pain. Both went to sleep again because of exhaustion. Sasuke dreams of his brother and recaps all the obstacles Naruto went through to get stronger. Sasuke has an epiphany. After years of trying to push the bonds with his friends away, Sasuke realizes his desire to return to them and feels guilty for having rejected them for his selfish goals. When they wake up the next day, Sasuke is surprised that they're still alive and laughs when Naruto is angry and still wants to beat him as he's too weak to fight him in this condition. Sasuke finally admits defeat, as he's come to accept that Naruto is just as vital to him as he is to Naruto. He asks Naruto to give his Rinnegan to Kakashi in order to undo the infinite Tsukiyomi, but he wants to end his own life in order to atone for his sins. But Naruto refuses and vows to be there for his friend no matter what, which moves Sasuke to tears. Sakura and Kakashi arrive, and Sakura begins healing them. Guilt-ridden for the pain he put Sakura through, Sasuke tries to speak to her, but she tells him not to because she needs to concentrate on healing them. Sasuke then apologizes to Sakura for everything he's done, which she tearfully accepts, and Sasuke smiles at her. All the while, as Kakashi looks on with joy as Team 7 reunites for good. Sasuke and Naruto do a rat hand seal to undo the infinite Tsukiyomi and free everyone and the tailed beasts. As they do so, Sasuke talks about how he and Naruto have come to understand each other's feelings and pain, and he finally understands why Naruto never gave up on him. In the anime, following the war, Sasuke is kept in the custody of the Konoha Torture and Interrogation Force until his fate is decided. Blank period. Several months later, Sasuke is pardoned for his crimes based on his service in helping undo the infinite Tsukiyomi, along with the good word of Naruto and Kakashi's influence as a world hero and the new Hokage, respectively. While offered to be giving a fully maneuverable prosthetic arm made of Hashirama Senju's cells to replace his lost one, Sasuke declined the offer as it would take months. 
Instead, he decided to immediately leave Konoha to wander the world, curious how different it will appear to him now that his outlook has changed. Sakura offers to come with him, but he declines, explaining that his journey is also one of atonement and that she has no part in that. He then pokes her forehead, promises to her that he will see her when he returns, and thanks her. As he leaves the village, he's met by Naruto, who returns to him his forehead protector. Sasuke accepts the headband and credits Naruto for teaching him the true meaning of a shinobi. While on his travels, Sasuke would often help the Great Five Nations wherever something tried to disrupt the peace. Although he often did this without being seen, he often left subtle hints that he was responsible. The last, Naruto the movie. Two years after the war, Sasuke crosses paths with Hiyashi Hyuga, who falls unconscious in front of him. He returns Hiyashi to Konoha, and while there, discovers a series of meteorites from the moon bombarding the village. When one particularly large meteor makes it through the village's defenses, Sasuke quickly destroys it. Sasuke vanishes afterwards, lingering only long enough to note to Kakashi that Sasuke himself is the only one who can protect the village when Naruto is away. In the end credits, in correspondence to Naruto and Hinata's wedding, Sasuke continues his journey through the desert. Sakura Hiden, thoughts of love riding upon a spring breeze. Rumors start to spread that someone fitting Sasuke's description is conspiring to destroy Konoha. Konoha sends repeated messages to Sasuke to try and confirm or deny the rumors, but he doesn't respond to any. Naruto's hypothesis that he finds the rumors too ludicrous to give them any attention. However, when one of the messages mentions Sakura has been captured, he immediately returns to the village. Sakura is able to deal with most of her captors herself, but Sasuke finishes off the few remaining. He then leaves without even saying hello to his friends. At the end of the novel, it's hinted that Sasuke returns to the village to be with Sakura when he states, I'm home, Sakura. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. On Naruto and Hinata Hyuga's wedding day, Sasuke sends a congratulation message by Hawk to their wedding reception, which Sakura collects. Akatsuki Hiden, evil flowers in full bloom. During his journey, Sasuke meets two boys that tell him stories about Akatsuki. After he leaves them, he meets another boy who confuses him for Itachi, who the boy had met many years earlier. He tells Sasuke that Itachi was a very good person, which Sasuke agrees with before departing once more. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise As Sasuke starts investigating Kaguya Otsutsuki during his journey of redemption, he is forced to examine his former role as an Avenger and how his past will influence his future. During his traveling, he receives a message from Kakashi regarding the disappearances of Konoha, Kumo, and Kiri Shinobi, and Sasuke agrees to investigate. On his way to the Land of Lightning, Sasuke arrives at a bamboo village in the Land of Hot Water, and learns from the villagers of a rogue ninja group called the Dark Thunder Group whose leader, Karyu, admires Sasuke yet wants to kill him in order to surpass him. At the village, he meets two wandering shinobi, Chino and Nawaki. Sasuke finds the group attacking the village and defeats them, saving all the villagers from harm. Karyu admits he has admired Sasuke since the latter attacked the Kage summit, much to Sasuke's dismay that Karyu is tarnishing his name. Before he can turn Karyu over to Konoha, Karyu is killed by the father of one of his victims. When the Genjutsu fails to dispel after Karyu's death, Sasuke suspects the real culprit is on the loose. Sasuke later meets with Orochimaru and his former team Taka comrades to investigate the matter further. Sasuke maintains contact with Sai when Konoha is attacked and discovers the origins of the Dark Thunder group. He finds most of the missing Kiri and Kumo shinobi on an isolated island and through luck discovers that Chino and Nawaki are in fact responsible for the disappearances. As they flee, Sasuke delivers the shinobi to their villages and thanks to advice from the Raikage, goes to Yukakure, where he finds and battles Chino. She reveals that she is seeking revenge due to that she is from a clan that was eliminated due to her village fearing its Ketsuryugan, and she holds the Uchiha clan partially responsible. Because Sasuke understands her pain and hatred, he defeats them without seriously injuring them and convinces them to accept the feat. Sasuke drops them off at the village's prison, but he leaves a good word for them to be forgiven. After resuming his journey, Sasuke receives a letter from Naruto that mentions Sakura comparing his efforts to protect the village to that of his childhood dream of joining the Konoha military police force. Sasuke decides his home is with Sakura and makes the decision to return to Konoha, where he's greeted by Sakura. Welcome back, Sasuke, and he replies, I'm home, Sakura. New Era Two years after saving Konoha from a meteorite, Sasuke traveled alongside his now pregnant wife Sakura, who refused to leave his side. On the journey, Karin helped deliver the child, Sarada Uchiha, at one of Orochimaru's hideouts. Afterwards, Sasuke raised his daughter for some time, but he left Konoha early in her childhood, leaving Sarada with few memories of him. Years later, at the time Naruto became Hokage, Sasuke was investigating Kaguya within her sand dimension. During his investigation, Sasuke comes to suspect that she created the White Zetsu army in order to face some greater threat. He returns to Konoha, where he tells his hypothesis to his wife and the five Kage at the summit being held. 
Not wishing to cause a panic, the Kage agree to keep this to themselves for the time being. Wanting to safeguard the future of his daughter and the new generation, Sasuke continues his wanderings as he tries to find more information, using his Rinnegan to inspect other dimensions. Academy Entrance Arc In the anime, after a remnant of Root failed to destroy the village, Naruto brought the research of Gozu Tenno to Sasuke. Realizing the true nature behind it, Sasuke was amazed at how close Danzo came to replicating Kaguya's technique. After noting that it would help in his investigation, Naruto suggested that Sasuke return to the village for a while. Sasuke, however, simply asked Naruto to apologize to Sakura for his continued absence before leaving. Sarada Uchiha Arc Searching through Kaguya's dimensions, Sasuke returns to the earth through his portal. Upon arriving in a forest, both of his dojutsu weaken from overuse. Immediately after, Sasuke is attacked by a hooded figure. Fending him off, Sasuke discovers the assailant to be a young boy with a Sharingan whose clothes bear the Uchiha crest. As he questions who the boy is, the child retreats, which prompts Sasuke to send a message by Hawk to Naruto to inform him of the encounter, and to ask for a meeting with him at Ridge Tower. After waiting for a while, he's found by Sarada, who left Konoha to find her father. Seeing her with the Sharingan and having the Uchiha crest on her back, Sasuke suspects she's connected to the boy and almost attacks her until she calls out to him as Dad, and he realizes she is his own daughter. When Naruto arrives shortly afterwards, Sasuke reprimands him for bringing children like Sarada and Chocho Akimichi along. Sarada defends Naruto, insisting that she came against his wishes because she wanted to meet Sasuke, wanted to know where he'd been all these years, wanted to know if Sakura was her real mother, and who Karin in the photo with Team Taka is. He ignores her questions and says his actions have nothing to do with her, causing her to storm out, crying. When Sasuke senses Naruto and Sarada being attacked by Shin Uchiha, the father of the boy from before, Sasuke rushes out to lend assistance. He swats away Shin's projectiles, and when Shin takes his sword, he blasts him with a great fireball and takes the sword back. However, this brief contact allows Shin to control the sword remotely with his Mangekyo Sharingan, which he uses when he has an opening to stab Naruto. Shin turns his attention to Sarada and Sasuke, and rushes to protect Sarada from Shin's follow-up attack and has all the blades land at him. Sakura then appears and incapacitates Shin with a punch. Sakura apologizes to Sasuke for not making things clear to Sarada about his mission, but Sasuke insists he's at fault, before one of Shin's creatures teleports him and Sakura away. Unable to locate their whereabouts, Sasuke believes Orochimaru knows where Shin is, and learning Shin is targeting Sarada, he decides to take her with him to ensure her safety. When they arrive, Sasuke promises retaliation against Orochimaru if he in any way is involved in the attack on his daughter, or the kidnapping of his wife. Orochimaru denies responsibility, confessing that Shin is an old experiment he has long before lost control of, and says that Shin's sons are actually his genetic clones. To help them deal with Shin, Orochimaru offers some suggestions about where they might find him. When Orochimaru suggests Sakura is already dead, Sasuke denies this as a possibility due to her not being a weak woman, stating that she likely will have already finished Shin off by the time they find her. When his Rinnegan recharges from his earlier dimensional travels, Sasuke manifests his Susano and transports Naruto, Sarada, and Chocho to Shin's hideout. As Sasuke guessed, Sakura is already in the middle of combat when they arrive, and Sasuke uses his Susano to punch the largest clone as he grabs Sakura. He pulls all the scalpels out of her arm and burns them with a Matarasu before asking if she can heal herself now. Sasuke and the others proceed to fight Shin, who is stabbed by the clones who then turn on Sasuke and Naruto. When the spying creature tries to teleport Shin once again, Sasuke calls out to Sarada to warn her about that, and then she kills the creature before activating her Sharingan and using her chakra-enhanced strength to defeat some of the clones, making Sasuke smirk with pride. When the battle's over, Sasuke comments how soft Naruto is for offering to do no harm to the clones if they surrender, but agrees to drop them off at the Konoha Orphanage. When Sarada learns that Sakura really is her biological mother, she asks her father if he feels truly connected to Sakura. He says yes, because Sarada, as their daughter, is proof of their bond, moving Sarada to tears. Sasuke spends some time with Sarada and Sakura in Konoha, even posing for their first family photo. After some time, Sasuke is about to leave again and hugs his daughter as she sadly asks him when he will come back. Sasuke tells Sarada not to make such a face and pokes her on the forehead, promising to come home soon, which makes her very happy and prompts her to smile at Sakura. Sakura then gives him a bagged lunch and hopes for a kiss in return, but he leaves without further comment, only smirking in amusement as he walks away. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day as Sasuke finished business with a village near Konohagakure, he decided to return home to visit his family. There he learned from Boruto of the new village holiday, Parent and Child Day. Told where Sarada was, Sasuke decided to spend the day with his daughter. While Sarada was overjoyed at the idea, the normally poised man struggled to connect with his daughter, simply trying to get inspiration wherever he could, instead simply embarrassing Sarada. Finally having enough, Sarada stormed off. Sasuke was then approached by Sakura. He discussed with her his problem in connecting with Sarada. 
Sakura noticed that, having spent much of Sarada's life away and only hearing stories about Sasuke and his various exploits, Sarada probably became disillusioned at who Sasuke was as a person and his attempts at being a doting father seemed lame. Ultimately, Sakura suggested that he should approach Sarada more like Sasuke's relationship was with his father and brother back in the day, just enjoying the time they have together and talk about their goals. Later, while working on her shuriken skills, Sasuke approached her again, applauding her on her goal of becoming Hokage. He insisted that she would make a better Hokage than he ever could and would support her through her struggles, much to her delight. As the day ended, she and Sasuke returned home where the entire Uchiha family enjoyed a hearty meal together. Versus Momoshiki Arc as Sasuke continued his investigation, he found the remains of a stronger crop of white zetsu in the mountain's graveyard, which he proceeded to destroy with a Matarasu. Upon arriving at Kaguya's ice dimension, Sasuke locates a scroll in Kaguya's palace. There, he's attacked by Kinshiki and Momoshiki Yotsotsuki. While capable of fighting the former on equal terms, he realizes he can't take them both on at once. By using his Rinnegan's abilities, he is ultimately able to escape. Unable to read the scroll with his Rinnegan, Sasuke takes it back to Konoha to have it deciphered. He stops at Naruto's house to deliver it to him, but is attacked by Naruto's son, Boruto Uzumaki, who mistook Sasuke for his father. Sasuke easily blocks the attack and asks for Naruto's whereabouts. Hinata, Naruto's wife, tells him Naruto is still at the Hokage's office. On finding Naruto, Sasuke remarks that Boruto is quite similar to him. Naruto disagrees, thinking he has more in common with Sasuke, but retracts and says Boruto isn't like him either. Naruto thinks they are behind the new generation, which Sasuke disagrees with because the nature of Shinobi never changes, and they make a bet over this. As Sasuke leaves to go home to his family, Boruto launches a sneak attack. Sasuke once again avoids it effortlessly and pushes Boruto over. Impressed, Boruto asks Sasuke to train him, having heard that Sasuke is Naruto's only equal and thus best qualified to help him become stronger than his father. Sasuke tells Boruto to ask him again after he's learned to use the Rasengan. Boruto does just that and demonstrates it after he becomes able to form it. On seeing it, Sasuke remarks that Boruto's Rasengan is quite small, which Boruto wrongly believes is to mean he's been rejected, causing him to subsequently run off. Sarada then reveals herself to her father and tries to convince him that he's being too hard on Boruto, and he usually didn't apply that kind of dedication to anything. Sasuke tells his daughter that Boruto jumped to the wrong conclusion and that he was going to agree to make him his student. In truth, Sasuke was quite satisfied, further impressed by the lightning nature Boruto applies to his Rasengan. The next day, Boruto demonstrates a normal-sized Rasengan, which Sasuke recognizes to be a result of using the Kote. Boruto tries to cover this up by boasting about his exceptional skill being the reason for the remarkable progress of his Rasengan. Sasuke cryptically references the fact that Boruto was willing to cheat to attain his goals by saying Boruto was quite different from Naruto and hoped it wasn't the case. Nonetheless, he agrees to train Boruto since he had already met his requirement. He later spoke to Boruto's Jonin sensei, Konohamaru Sarutobi, who agreed to let Sasuke take over his actual training. After his day training with Sasuke, the two sit by a fire and talk. Boruto starts asking about his father's weaknesses. Sasuke explains that Naruto has many weaknesses, but nonetheless managed to pull himself up and become Hokage. Believing Boruto's approach to be incorrect, Sasuke explained that Naruto is better understood by the hardships he overcame in his life than the flaws that he may have. This doesn't satisfy Boruto, so he throws himself into training for the upcoming Chunin exams, Shuriken Jutsu figuring prominently in Sasuke's lessons. While training, Boruto struggles with bending his throws, complaining that Shuriken Jutsu is Sarada's specialty because she is Sasuke's daughter. Sasuke retorts this assertion by applying the same reasoning to Boruto regarding the Shadow Clone technique, of which Boruto can only create two as opposed to his father who can create thousands. Sasuke keeps tabs on how deciphering the scroll is going, but it isn't until the day of the Chunin exam's finals that it is finally finished. Reading what it says, Sasuke finds his suspicions about the threat Kaguya was preparing for confirmed and rushes to inform Naruto. When he arrives at the stadium where the finals are being held, Kinshiki and Momoshiki are already attacking. Sasuke rescues Sarada from falling debris, but is confronted by Kinshiki when he tries to get her to safety. Shikamaru Nara briefly restrains Kinshiki and Momoshiki, allowing Sasuke to tell Naruto that the scroll says that Kinshiki and Momoshiki harvest planet's chakra in order to prolong their lives, and that Kaguya was building a white zetsu army to prepare for their inevitable invasion. As Momoshiki starts attacking, Naruto forms his tailed beast mode around Boruto and Sarada in order to protect them. Sasuke layers his Susanoo over this to provide additional protection. The shield is insufficient against Momoshiki, so Naruto instructs Sasuke to focus on protecting the children while he fights Momoshiki alone. Sasuke does so, staying with Boruto and Sarada, and, as a result, preventing them from stopping Naruto's capture. 
With his father gone, Boruto feels guilty about how he treated Naruto and reprimanded himself for being so uncool. Overhearing this, Sasuke affirmed Boruto's words and noted that if it weren't for his mother and sister, he would be in the same position Naruto would be in the past. After Boruto asks Sasuke how his father overcame his hardships, Sasuke suggests Boruto ask Naruto in person and also telling him Naruto is stronger than him up until now, and to that end invites Boruto to join him in rescuing him. When Boruto asks why he'd been invited, and why Sasuke agreed to train him in the first place, Sasuke explains that Boruto is an exceptionally gifted shinobi and has the potential to surpass Naruto because he hates to lose. The five Kage then reveal themselves and offer their assistance to rescue Naruto, revealing that they are on friendly terms with Sasuke. Before they leave, however, Sasuke lends his forehead protector to Boruto, who had his confiscated by Naruto for cheating in the exams. Sasuke uses his Rinnegan to open a portal to Momoshigi's planet. Before they leave, Hinata tries to stop Boruto from leaving, who then puts on Sasuke's headband and affirms confidently that he's going to go save his father, reminding Hinata of Naruto when he was young. Sasuke approves of this demeanor and notes that Boruto is finally starting to carry himself like a true shinobi. When they arrive on Momoshiki's planet, which has long since had its chakra harvested, the group frees Naruto from Momoshiki and Kinshiki, who had him bound to a tree resembling the god tree, and immediately engage them in battle. Sasuke assists the 6th Mizukage and 4th Suchikage with restraining Kinshiki, and then joins Naruto, the 5th Kazukage, and the 5th Raikage against Momoshiki. He warns them not to use ninjutsu since Momoshiki can absorb them. Kinshiki breaks free and drives them back, then allows Momoshiki to absorb him to become stronger. Naruto and Sasuke start fighting Momoshiki with taijutsu, during the course of which Sasuke is badly burned. Naruto catches him and heals his wounds with the Ninetales Chakra, allowing them to continue their tailed beast mode and Susano to strike him down. With Momoshiki down, the uninvited Katasuke tries to finish him off. This unwittingly revives Momoshiki, giving him a chance to paralyze Naruto and the Kage with Shadow Paralysis Jutsu while Sasuke elsewhere protects Boruto. Sasuke suggests that Boruto attack Momoshiki with his Rasengan, depending on its lightning nature to catch him off guard. This works and the Kage are freed, but an earlier injury prevents Naruto from fighting. He adds his chakra to Boruto's Rasengan, which Sasuke then helps him find an opening to use to destroy Momoshiki with. After the battle, Sasuke tells Naruto he won their bet when they returned to Konoha, and Sasuke posed for a photograph with Naruto, Boruto, and the other Kage. However, in the anime, before they departed from the other dimension, Sasuke managed to catch a glimpse of Boruto's conversation with Momoshiki's fading spirit thanks to his Rinnegan, as well as notice that some technique had been used to stop the flow of time so the conversation passed unseen for everyone else. After everything returns to normal, apart from concern about the third Otsutsuki foe who escaped, Sasuke meets with Boruto again. He reveals that he knows about his mark from Momoshiki, insisting that Boruto let him know if anything had happened from him. He also let Boruto keep his old forehead protector as a sign of being Sasuke's official pupil. Sasuke decided to take advantage of his research being analyzed to spend a few days with his family. Later, Sasuke and Sakura, both smiling, watched Sarada and her teammates leave for a mission. Soon afterwards, Sasuke returned to his investigation of the Otsutsuki. In the anime, Sasuke came back to the village to give Naruto information and told him not to promote Sarada to Chunin due to refusal to obey direct orders. One Tail Escort Arc in the anime, having notified Tsunagakure that the Otsutsuki were searching for Shukaku, Sasuke, alongside Gara, Kankuro, and a Tsuna Genin team assembled at the Tailed Beast's location. Sasuke sent a messenger hawk to inform Konoha of the location and that he might be on Urashiki Otsutsuki's tail. There, Sasuke and Gara fought Urashiki and his puppets. As the two sides battled evenly, Boruto suddenly appeared, prompting Sasuke to protect his student, leading him to become distracted and Urashiki taking some of his chakra. As Sasuke leapt towards his opponent, Urashiki teleported him to another dimension. He ultimately arrived in Kaguya's ice dimension. While unharmed, his battle exhausted him too much. Sasuke was forced to spend time to recover his chakra to return to Sunagakure, as his Rinnegan was too weak to maintain a portal. Once recovering enough chakra, he detected Urashiki's repeated dimension hopping and teleported in time to stop the foe from striking down Boruko and Shinki. Sasuke's return prompted Urashiki to retreat. Sasuke brought the Genin to Konohagakure for treatment and reported the events to Naruto. There, it was decided that Shukaku would remain in Naruto's protection until better precautions were made. Time Slip Arc In the anime, as Sasuke began enjoying some downtime in the village, he was approached by Boruto. The pupil asks Sasuke about the nature of Jiraiya's worth as a ninja and his relationship with Naruto. Sasuke admitted that Jiraiya was a remarkable man, whose influence and guidance strongly shaped Naruto into the remarkable man he is today, even noting that they ultimately shared a father-son relationship. When Boruto asked if Sasuke could get him an Icha Icha book to learn more about the man, Sasuke bluntly refused, knowing that Boruto was too young for such an adult book. 
Later, Sasuke learned from Naruto and Shikamaru that Urashiki was on the move again, being even more indiscriminate in his stealing of chakra. Later, when Boruto was annoyed that he was the only genin that was put off of the mission to hunt Urashiki due to the Otsutsuki's previous vendetta against him, Sasuke, however, offered him an alternate plan of making Boruto a two-man team with him while staying within the village, which Naruto agreed to. Later that night, Urashiki was discovered and most of the Konoha Nin in the village went after him. Sasuke, however, doubted that things were working so smoothly, especially after learning that Genjutsu specialist Mirai Sarutobi went missing knowing of Urashiki's ability to replicate people's techniques from their chakra. Boruto doubted Urashiki would go after his father as he was still well guarded. He then realized Urashiki's true motive was an artifact found by the Konohagakure archaeological research team. His hunch is proven true when he and Sasuke engage in combat with Urashiki. The artifact turned out to be a turtle belonging to the Otsutsuki named Karasuki that required enough chakra to operate. Urashiki activates it while Boruto and Sasuke followed him. They entered a void where they battled, knocking Urashiki off a ledge too soon for him. When Karasuki finished its operation, Boruto and Sasuke found themselves back in Konohagakure, but to their shock, they realized that they had been sent to the past. Realizing Urashiki's plan was to acquire Kurama's chakra from Naruto as a child, Sasuke asked Karasuki about the enemy. The turtle explained that due to Sasuke's interference, Urashiki would not arrive in this time period for a few days. It also warned Sasuke and Boruto to avoid as much interaction with the past as possible or risk severe changes to the timeline as they know it. Taking this to heart, Sasuke and Boruto disguised themselves and stressed their situation to Boruto as he discovered how different the village was. Soon afterwards, Boruto and Sasuke bumped into Naruto and Jiraiya, who were in trouble for peeping on the women's hot spring. Jiraiya handed Boruto his binoculars, trying to frame him for his peeping, but the issue was quickly resolved as Tsunade arrived and scolded both Naruto and Jiraiya for their actions. Tsunade asked about Boruto and Sasuke's arrival, and Sasuke claimed they were traveling performers who utilized ninjutsu during their performances. Still somewhat suspicious, Tsunade ordered Naruto and Jiraiya to guard Boruto and Sasuke, proclaiming that a recently defected Genin, as well as Konoha still recovering from an assault during the Chunin exams, they needed to remain on their guard at all times, and couldn't afford to let strangers walk into their village. However, as soon as Tsunade leaves, Jiraiya left Naruto to take care of Boruto and Sasuke, much to Naruto's annoyance. As they walk around the village, they come across Sakura, and while Naruto approaches her, Sasuke leaves the area, warning Boruto that since he and Sakura were close, she could recognize him and drastically alter the future, and informed Boruto to remain by Naruto's side at all times before leaving. Days later, Sasuke bumped into Sakura again, dropping an old smeared letter from Sarada in the process. Eventually, Boruto confronted Sasuke about his past, having deduced the truth about his past self's absence. Still ashamed of his past mistakes, Sasuke simply admitted that at the time he saw no other way to accomplish his goal of revenge. When Boruto suggested finding his younger self to reason with him, Sasuke bluntly said they can't make such a risk. The following day, Urashiki finally appeared, prompting Sasuke and Boruto to guard the future Hokage. Urashiki acted quickly and struck Naruto with his hook, shocked to see that it failed to gain any chakra. Deciding the best course was to capture Naruto, Urashiki subdued Naruto and trapped Boruto and Sasuke, along with Jiraiya who happened along inside a stone prison. Sasuke explained to Jiraiya that he and Boruto were actually ninja from a distant village with a mission to stop Urashiki from stealing the Ninetales chakra, and that Urashiki had ties to Akatsuki. While seeing that they were still hiding some truth, Jiraiya decided to work with the duo, breaking them free by summoning a giant toad. Soon, Sasuke locked onto Naruto's location from detecting the tailed beast chakra beginning to leak out. Along the way, having realized that the 8 trigram sealing style was stopping Urashiki from stealing the Ninetales chakra, Jiraiya placed powerful seals on Boruto and Sasuke to protect them as well. Upon finding Naruto, Urashiki's actions forced the boy into his version 1 state. While Sasuke engaged Urashiki, Jiraiya and Boruto went to subdue the rampaging Naruto. Boruto attempted to reason with his father, believing that talking would restore his sanity, but quickly became horrified as his efforts failed and Naruto ended up nearly killing him before Jiraiya subdued Naruto. After Urashiki retreats, Jiraiya tends to Boruto's wounds and talks about Naruto's lonely childhood and hatred suffered by the villagers, and suggests that Boruto train with him alongside Naruto, knowing the foe would return and believe that the two children's compatible nature, they would work and learn well together. The following day, Sasuke watched from afar as Jiraiya began instructing Naruto and Boruto on how to synchronize their chakra to create a new cooperation ninjutsu. As the day continued and the two children struggled to complete the task, Boruto, still reeling from being attacked by Naruto's berserker attack while influenced by Kurama's chakra, decided to distance himself from the increasingly angry Naruto. Jiraiya then approached Sasuke, asking him to deliver Naruto some food while he dealt with something. 
Sasuke reluctantly agreed. Upon confronting his best friend's past self, Sasuke was amazed to learn how even back then how committed Naruto was to save Sasuke from his dark path. Ashamed to see how much pain he put Naruto through, Sasuke told Naruto about how a friend struggled for years to help him after he lost his way, but never gave up until finally succeeding. After renewing Naruto's conviction, Sasuke left. He was then approached by Jiraiya again, shocking Sasuke by deducing who he really was. As Jiraiya dryly laughed off his accusation, he remained firm on his suspicion that he was connected to the rogue Genin. Jiraiya could tell that Sasuke and Boruto's desire to protect Naruto was genuine and that they had their reason for keeping secrets. He made a deal with Sasuke not to delve deeper into their true identities, provided that Sasuke reveal all he knows about Urashiki. Sasuke then explained all he knew about the alien's abilities. After hearing all this, Jiraiya deemed that the best course of action would be to seal away Urashiki. Before they could formulate a proper plan, Sasuke detected Urashiki's return, speeding off with Jiraiya to help Boruto and Naruto. With Sasuke still drained from Urashiki's theft of his chakra, Sasuke struggled to keep up with the foe, even with the Sanin's aid. As Urashiki repeatedly evaded his foe's attacks, he smugly told them that he can see the future. Finding Urashiki's newest technique too dangerous, Sasuke tackled Urashiki and himself into the river to give his allies a chance to escape. While Urashiki escaped from the river unharmed and furious at Sasuke's constant interference, an unconscious Sasuke was fished out of the river by Sakura, who hid him and began treating him with their medical ninjutsu. Soon, Sasuke awoke, accidentally thanking Sakura by her given name. While not fully recovered, Sasuke decided to go help his friends. Sakura began asking him questions, but her efforts at healing him exhausted her and she fainted. Sasuke gently lay her down before heading off. He arrived to see his allies facing a transformed Urashiki. Their combined efforts barely were able to compete with the foe. Ultimately, seeing his friends get hurt made Naruto unleash his version 1 cloak again and went on a rampage. Boruto, however, managed to reach Naruto and together they were able to perfect their new collaboration technique. With the combined effort of Jiraiya and Sasuke, the two kids were able to plow through Urashiki's final attack and obliterate him. Days later, after everyone recovered from battle, Sasuke and Boruto decided to leave soon as their mission was complete. They were approached by Sakura, who demanded for Sasuke to reveal how he knew her and what the contents of his letter were about. While Sasuke struggled to answer, Jiraiya gave a convincing alibi that Sasuke and Boruto were in fact such avid fans of his, they studied up on his entire life and wished to train under him, which Boruto and Sasuke awkwardly agreed to. The following day, after Sasuke used his Sharingan to erase the memories of everyone in the past they had made contact with to protect the timeline, the master and student used Karasuki to return to their time. Also, knowing that it was too dangerous for anyone else to wield the turtle's power, Sasuke and Boruto convinced it to go on a journey of self-discovery to find its own path. Once arriving in their present, Sasuke informed Naruto about the recent adventure and of Urashiki's demise. While Naruto was glad that the peace had been restored to the world, Sasuke insisted that there were still hidden sites of Kaguya that he would have to investigate, but noted that he would make sure to visit his family much more regularly. Mujina Bandit's Arc Boruto later tells Sasuke of his encounter with Momoshiki and informs him of the mark on his palm, leading to Sasuke telling Boruto that it wasn't normal and also to be on guard. After Shojoji was apprehended, Sai and Sasuke come in to interrogate him. As he questions Shojoji about the mark on Boruto's palm, Shojoji reveals that it's associated with the organization known as Kara, and the mark's nature is vaguely similar to Orochimaru's Juinjutsu. Kara Actuation Arc in the anime, after Sasuke finished probing Shoichi's mind, he learned that Kara was allegedly last seen in Amegakure. Sasuke was aided by Team 25 to investigate this new shadow organization. There, he learned that the village had decayed greatly since the last Great War. After Sai's team mapped out a series of underground tunnels, Sasuke and Sai went in alone. As they entered the area, they were assaulted by Garashi Tono, an orphaned citizen of Amegakure. He insisted that they were enemies who killed his friends. He was quickly subdued, and they explained their situation. Calming down, Garashi explained how a group of people were conducting an experiment underground. Garashi agreed to take them through the tunnels. This, however, turned out to be a trap as Garashi ensnared the Konoha Nin and gassed them, revealing himself to be a supporter of Kara after the struggles he had to endure since the Fourth Shinobi World War. Sasuke saw through this deception after recognizing the look of shameless anger about him, using shadow clones to bait him. Before they could get information from him, Garashi was also tricked by Kara, as his gas mask was tampered with and he succumbed to the poison gas. As the tunnels began to collapse from another trap, they learned that Kara had been stationed there and was performing biological experiments. Sai and Sasuke reported their findings to Konohagakure. 
Afterwards, with the growing threat of Kara, Sasuke feared for his disciple's safety and loaned Boruto his other glove, instructing him to keep his Kama hidden at all costs. Sasuke learned that Victor, president of the Land of Valley's premier medical and research company, was in fact a member of Kara and somehow acquired a sample of the first Hokage's cells. After Team 7 was defeated by two inners of Kara, Boruto and Sarada both approached Sasuke for help in growing stronger. He agreed to train Sarada, but upon learning of Boruto's desire to improve his Rasengan, Sasuke directed him to Kakashi, as Boruto didn't want to detract from his father's work, and Kakashi was the only other Rasengan user in the village. As Sarada began her training under Sasuke, she asked him to teach her his Chidori for superior penetrating power. Sasuke noted Chidori is a dangerous technique that draws its strength from a fierce linear path, and as such, only a superior perception can offset the normally reduced field of vision, something that Sarada's lesser Sharingan couldn't handle, as its natural range of vision was still too limited. Deciding to help Sarada master and improve her Sharingan, Sasuke focused her training on dodging a barrage of ball bearings similar to her previous enemy's technique. He would drill her on not overly relying on the Sharingan's natural insight, but rather focus on the entire area and let the Sharingan fill in the blanks. As Sarada began improving in her movements against barrage attacks, Sasuke noted that she was still very limited on how long she could maintain her Sharingan. When he suggested improving her stamina, Sarada asked about the Mangekyo Sharingan. Concerned about such a dangerous power, Sasuke insisted it was for another day. Soon, they were approached by Sakura. She was concerned Sarada was pushing herself too hard after just recovering, and even more horrified to hear her talk about the Mangekyo Sharingan. While Sakura insisted that she couldn't push herself so recklessly, Sarada was furious to hear her mother coddle her so, refusing to see why she wanted to get stronger, and stormed off. Along with his wife, Sasuke admitted to worrying about the path Sarada was potentially walking, but insisted she is as strong as they were back then. The following day, as Sarada continued struggling to evade all of Sasuke's barrages, Sakura approached again. She insisted that just blindly facing the challenge wouldn't yield any results. She forced Sarada into a sparring match with her, which Sasuke agreed to as Sakura's insight could determine things he couldn't. After Sakura quickly overwhelmed Sarada, she noticed that Sarada's biggest problems were her still underdeveloped chakra control and fear of defeat, which were inhibiting her development. Determined to break past her limits, Sarada faced down Sakura again, using her Sharingan to mimic the movements and general timing of Sakura's attacks to mimic Sakura's chakra-enhanced strength and reach a standstill. Sasuke was impressed by his daughter, and Sakura was now determined to help Sarada overcome her limits by joining in her training. Owl Arc during Naruto's fight against Boruto at the training hall, Sasuke watches the match from the sidelines. Afterwards, Sasuke arrives at the Hokage's office, where he tells Boruto of the value of scientific ninja weapons and that the danger of the world has yet to be driven out. He explains of a coming danger of enemies like the Otsutsuki clan. Naruto also admitted to knowing about Boruto's mark on his right palm, which was another reason Naruto approved the development of his advanced weaponry. While Boruto still insisted that they would rely solely on ninjutsu like in the Chunin exams, Naruto noted that the Chunin exams were to test one's growth as a ninja, whereas they are now in a battle for survival. Katasuke then arrived to retrieve his prototype, to which Naruto assigned Team Konohamaru a C-rank mission to escort the lead scientist back to the lab in Ryuben City. While Boruto stormed off in a huff, Sasuke is certain Boruto will calm down soon enough. Kawaki Arc Sasuke was sent to investigate coordinates discovered in intel recovered by Konohamaru, a location accessible only through space-time ninjutsu. He discovered an Otsutsuki-related site, which contained records on some of their members, specifically those who had been to their world, which also led him to believe Kaguya came to this world with a partner. There, he also discovered another Ten Tails imprisoned. Sasuke managed to hide when Jigen arrived, but was left terrified when the leader of Kara absorbed some of the Tentil's chakra for himself, briefly taking the form of Kaguya's supposed partner. As Jigen left to retrieve Kawaki, Sasuke determined the situation to be direr than he expected and felt the need to inform Naruto at once. Jigen later attacked Konohagakure and sent Naruto to an unknown dimension. Just as he was about to leave Naruto stranded, Sasuke, having detected Naruto's chakra and followed him there, appeared and kicked Jigen away to stop him from leaving before proceeding to team up with Naruto to fight Jigen, free to fight at full power, but even then Jigen successfully pressured them with his ability to seemingly conjure black rods from nowhere to stab them. However, Sasuke eventually deduced that Jigen's ability allowed him to shrink matter to microscopic levels and return it to its original size instantaneously, but told Naruto that wasn't his only secret uneasily. Recognizing Sasuke's impressive analytical skills and prowess with his dojutsu, Jigen noted that he must eliminate Sasuke first. Naruto and Sasuke continued to engage Jigen, eventually pushing him into a corner, at which point Jigen responded by progressing his karma to the next stage, worrying Sasuke who saw it firsthand. 
Sasuke informed Naruto that Jigen's appearance was similar to an unknown Otsutsuki he had witnessed earlier, as well as that he was aware of the existence of another Ten Tails. Deducing that Jigen is planning on draining the world of Chakra, Sasuke activated his Susanoo while Naruto entered Tailed Beast mode. Jigen effortlessly overpowered the two, and despite their collaborative efforts, Jigen managed to impale Sasuke and Naruto with his black rods. Jigen resolved to seal Naruto and moved to kill Sasuke, though was hindered by Naruto's shadow clones. Despite Sasuke's protests, Naruto convinced him to return to Konoha so he can live to fight another day. As Jigen was about to land a finishing blow, a heavily injured Sasuke teleported to Sakura's side, praying that Naruto would survive his entrapment before he passed out. Sasuke, still unconscious, was taken to a hospital where Sakura proceeded to heal him and managed to pull him out of critical condition. After Sasuke recovered, he learned that Kawaki used Boruto and Kawaki's Kama to go to the separate dimension and managed to save Naruto. When they returned and were treated in the hospital, Sasuke questioned his daughter about the events. Sarada explained to her parents how during their battle against Boro, it was only thanks to a strange new evolution of Boruto's Kama that they were able to defeat him. She noted that Boruto not only sprouted a horn and manifested a Byakugan in his right eye with his massive increase in power, but was even acting differently. This concerned Sasuke, but Sakura told her daughter to rest, which the father agreed. Afterwards, Mitsuki decided to talk with Sasuke privately. He noted that Kara had taken a special interest in Boruto, calling him Momoshiki's vessel. Sasuke concluded that Momoshiki used Boruto as a means to preserve himself and potentially resurrect himself in Boruto's body. He also concluded that Kawaki is facing the same ordeal with Ishiki Otsutsuki. Shortly thereafter, Amado, the head of Kara's research and development division, arrived at Konoha and negotiated the terms of his defection. Sasuke was present during Amado's interrogation, where he learned that the scientist was responsible for providing Konoha with the coordinates to Jigen's dimension. After learning additional information about the Otsutsuki clan's history and practices, Sasuke deduced that the enigmatic clan leader is ultimately the one who gave Jigen his karma. Amato's glasses then began beeping, revealing a holographic projection of Jigen talking with Koji Kashin. They learned that Koji and Amato were working together so that Koji could kill Jigen. As they watched the fight, Amato continued divulging intel on Jigen, the Otsutsuki, and Kama. Sasuke noticed an inconsistency in Amato's explanation over the mechanics of Kama, noticing that Jigen still bore his despite having been taken over by Ishiki already. Acknowledging his point, Amato explained the unorthodox manner of Ishiki's parasitic takeover of Jigen. Sasuke listened on as Amato claimed that despite being able to transcend death with Kama, he could teach them how to kill Otsutsuki. Upon witnessing Koji's flames engulfing Jigen's body, Naruto wondered if Ishiki's end was near, though Sasuke pointed out that Ishiki still had two vessels marked with Kama, indicating that he could reincarnate twice. Sasuke voices concern that killing Jigen would make Kawaki Ishiki's sole remaining vessel, prompting Shikamaru to wonder if the entire thing was a setup from the start. Kawaki entered the interrogation room and attacked Amato, but was blocked by Sasuke's sword. Amato assured everyone that it was a misunderstanding and to turn their attention back to the battle. When Jigen's death triggered Ishiki's resurrection in his body, Amato explained this also erased Kawaki's Kama to avoid duplicates, leading Sasuke to realize that without any remaining Kama, Ishiki was vulnerable to permanent death. After Amato was officially made a citizen of Konohagakure, he explained that Ishiki's resurrection was unstable and would seek out Kawaki again to rebrand him. He also insisted that the village be evacuated and Kawaki be with Sasuke and Naruto at all times. As Boruto insisted to fight alongside his father and mentor against him, Sasuke made it clear to his student that fighting such a foe would likely result in death. Before they could settle the argument, they were alerted that Ishiki had arrived in the village. As Naruto ordered Boruto to join the evacuation, Sasuke stayed behind to talk with him. He revealed his knowledge of Boruto recently being taken over by Momoshiki's Kama. Boruto admitted he was less afraid of dying than hurting people should Momoshiki take control of him. But Sasuke swore as his teacher to stop Boruto by any means necessary. He then gave Boruto his precious old Genin forehead protector, making Boruto swear to return it in the end. Arriving to the battlefield and saving Naruto from Ishiki's attack, Sasuke began indiscriminately launching shuriken at Ishiki, who proceeded to shrink them all. When Sasuke launched his sword at Ishiki, he was deceived as it was revealed to be Boruto, who activated Kama and teleported Ishiki and himself to a separate dimension. Sasuke and Naruto soon joined to help Boruto via his space-time ninjutsu. As the Konoha Nin faced down Ishiki, he grabbed Boruto, openly impressed with how far his Kama had progressed in such a short period. Sasuke suddenly swapped places with Boruto for a sneak attack, only for Ishiki to easily rebuff him. Ishiki decided the best way to get Kawaki was to present Sasuke and Naruto's corpses to the village. The fight resumed, with Naruto and Sasuke's teamwork managing to push Ishiki on the defense as they began shrinking all their attacks. However, Ishiki demonstrated a new technique, 
manifesting and manipulating massive black cubes that separated the duo. From there, Ishiki pinned down Sasuke and moved to kill him with his own sword, only for Boruto to jump in the way, causing him to hesitate. Boruto deduced Ishiki couldn't kill him. Boruto explained that previously, Boro noted that Boruto's wielding of Akama would aid tremendously in Kara's plans, meaning that Boruto's life was invaluable to Ishiki. Sasuke told Boruto to run away as their best bet was to wait out Ishiki's remaining lifespan, only for Ishiki to knock Sasuke out with a hard kick. Upon awakening, Sasuke found a battered Boruto being defended by Naruto, who released another form with Kurama to take down Ishiki. Sasuke observed as Naruto pressured Ishiki and was surprised he could keep track of his shrunken rods, something even his Sharingan had trouble doing. He took Boruto to safer distance from the battle and noticed that Naruto's chakra eventually began to weaken. Ishiki then took advantage of Naruto's chakra connection to Kawaki through the latter's prosthetic arm. From this, he teleported Kawaki to them to rebrand the boy, much to Sasuke's concern. As Kawaki tried to escape Ishiki's rebranding, Sasuke attempted to give a diversion via Ame no Tejigara and a scientifically enhanced smokescreen. After, Kawaki deceived Ishiki with a shadow clone, resulting in the Otsutsuki's death. Sasuke asked Naruto about the drawbacks of his Baryon mode, during which Boruto suddenly stabbed his Rinnegan. Controlled by Momoshiki, he revealed that he planned to feed Kawaki to Ishiki's ten tails, due to the large percentage of Otsutsuki DNA that lingered in the vessel's body. Sasuke assisted Kawaki in fighting Momoshiki and resolved to kill Boruto if necessary. He noticed that Momoshiki had avoided absorbing any chakra-based ninjutsu with the Kaba, and deduced that since he emerged when Boruto passed out from chakra exhaustion, replenishing Boruto's chakra could make his personality resurface. While strategizing with Kawaki, Sasuke was hit by Momoshiki's vanishing Rasengan. After Kawaki forced Momoshiki to absorb a self-sacrificial technique, Boruto was able to awaken and resist Momoshiki's control. After the exhausting confrontation, Sasuke, Boruto, and Kawaki learned that Naruto was spared at the sacrifice of Kurama's life force. With Sasuke's Rinnegan destroyed and Kawaki's Kama extinguished, Boruto was the group's only hope to escape the foreign dimension. With Kawaki's help, Boruto was able to conjure a portal, which Sasuke pulled a weakened Naruto through. Upon returning, Sasuke and his comrades were relieved to return home victorious. Code Arc Sasuke investigated a set of Code's claw marks, placed around the village, and found it unlikely to be the place he'd emerged from, based on where he'd placed them. Sakura Haruno Sakura Uchiha is a Kunoichi of Konohagakure. When assigned to Team 7, Sakura quickly finds herself ill-prepared for the duties of a shinobi. However, after training under the Sanin Tsunade, she overcomes this and becomes recognized as one of the greatest medical nin in the world. Background Sakura is the only child of Mebuki and Kizashi Haruno. She had an ordinary childhood, raised by her parents without any serious tragedy or complications, unlike her team members. When she entered Konoha's academy, a few of the girls in her class started picking on her because of her broad forehead. Sakura tried to combat their teasing by hiding her forehead with her bangs, but this proved to the other girls that it bothered her and caused them to tease her even more. Ino Yamanaka, one of her classmates, saw this and defended Sakura from her bullies and encouraged her to embrace her forehead rather than hide it. Over the following years, Ino's guidance and friendship helped Sakura become more comfortable with herself and develop into her own person. Though she felt indebted to Ino for helping her, Sakura began to feel that she was living in Ino's shadow when she, instead, wanted to be Ino's equal. At some point after she entered the academy, Sakura met Sasuke Uchiha and she developed a crush on him. When she told her friends, she was surprised to learn how popular Sasuke was with the girls. Sakura heard a rumor of Sasuke being attracted to girls with long hair and she began letting her hair grow to get his attention. A couple of years later, when she learned Ino had a crush on Sasuke, Sakura ended their friendship so they could compete for Sasuke's love, thus beginning a bitter rivalry between them. After they were placed in their teams, Sakura approached Ino, telling her of her liking towards Sasuke. Ino revealed that she too had feelings towards him. Sakura took it to end their friendship, starting their dislike towards each other in the beginning of the series. Prologue, Land of Waves Upon graduating from the academy and being assigned to Team 7, Sakura is initially devastated when she learns that Naruto Uzumaki is to be one of her teammates. She is then immediately afterwards ecstatic to learn that Sasuke Uchiha is to be her other teammate. She tries to bond with Sasuke by stating her envy of Naruto's lack of parents, but this only offends Sasuke, who tells her that she's annoying. Sakura is hurt, and on realizing that she says similar things to Naruto, decides to try to be nicer to him. Team 7's leader, Kakashi Harake, tests their qualifications with a bell test, stating that whichever of the three of them takes one of the two bells on his person will officially become Genin. While Naruto busies himself attacking Kakashi, Sakura seeks out Sasuke to see if she can help him. Kakashi finds her during her search and defeats her with an illusion of Sasuke dying. Likewise, Naruto and Sasuke are also defeated. 
Kakashi explains afterwards that the goal of the test was to use teamwork, to do together what none of them could do by themselves. He's persuaded to allow them to try again after lunch, but instructs Sasuke and Sakura not to feed Naruto. Sasuke feeds him anyway, needing him in top form if they're to work together, and Sakura does the same. Kakashi sees this, and because they care more about the team than listening to his instructions, allows them all to pass. After a series of uneventful D-rank missions, Naruto is able to secure a C-rank mission for Team 7, escorting Tezuna to the Land of Waves. Soon after leaving Konoha, they are attacked by the Demon Brothers who go after Tezuna. Sakura immediately places herself in front of Tezuna to protect him and stands her ground until Kakashi captures the brothers. Tezuna confesses that the assassins have been hired to kill him, but that he couldn't afford the bodyguard detail he needs. Although the mission is now A rank in nature, far beyond the skill of a Genin, Team 7 decides to continue with it. When they reach the Land of Waves and are attacked by Zabuza Momochi, Sakura once again protects Tezuna while Kakashi and later Naruto and Sasuke fight Zabuza. Zabuza is ultimately seemingly killed by Haku, allowing Team 7 to escort Tezuna back to his house. Kakashi finds Zabuza's death suspicious and decides to train the team in case he returns. He has them perform the tree climbing practice in order to improve their chakra control, which will help them against Zabuza. Sakura masters the exercise on her first try, thus leaving her in charge of protecting Tezuna while Naruto and Sasuke train and Kakashi recovers from his fight with Zabuza. After a week, the rest of the team joins her, but when they reach the bridge that Tezuna's been working on, they find Zabuza and Haku waiting for them. Sasuke and later Naruto fight Haku while Kakashi fights Zabuza, once again leaving Sakura in charge of protecting Tezuna. The thick mist prevents her from seeing how the fight against Haku is going, so she's surprised when Haku suddenly interferes in Kakashi's fight with Zabuza and is killed. When Naruto comes looking for Haku, Sakura asks him where Sasuke is. When Naruto refuses to respond, Sakura becomes worried, but stays put because she cannot leave Tezuna's side. When Tezuna offers to come over with her, she quickly leads him to where Sasuke is and finds him seemingly dead. Overcome with emotion, Sakura knowingly violates the shinobi rules and cries for him. When Sasuke later wakes up, Sakura embraces him, explains that Haku had been killed, and shares the news of Sasuke's survival with Naruto. Zabuza also dies, allowing Team 7 to return to Konoha when their injuries heal via Tezuna's newly constructed Great Naruto Bridge. Chunin Exams Team 7 resumes its series of unremarkable missions. After returning from one mission, Sakura tries to spend some time with Sasuke, who rejects her. This places Sakura in a bad mood, causing her to lash out first at Naruto when he suggests to Konohamaru Saratobi that he and Sakura are dating, and then at Konohamaru when he insults her for harming Naruto. This all attracts the attention of Tsunagakure's three sand siblings who have come to Konoha to take part in the Chunin exams. Sasuke returns and drives these sand siblings off, and later Kakashi meets with them to enter them in the Chunin exams as well. He neglects to mention that they must enter as a team, worried that Sakura might only participate because of Sasuke, and so is glad when she independently decides to participate. Before the Chunin exams begin, Sakura is met by Rock Lee, who asks her to go out with him and offers to protect her with his life. Sakura flatly refuses, being bothered by his eyelashes, hairstyle, and thick eyebrows. For the Chunin exam's first stage, the participating Genin are given a written test with 10 questions. From looking over the questions, Sakura realizes that the questions are too complicated for most Genin, especially Naruto, to be able to answer without cheating. Sakura herself is able to answer the first 9 questions on her own. Before being given the 10th question, Genin are warned that if they answer it incorrectly, they will never be allowed to take the Chunin exams again. Sakura becomes worried that Naruto is too proud to not try to answer the question, and that when he inevitably gives the wrong answer, his disqualification will ruin his dreams of becoming Hokage. She prepares to forfeit on his behalf, but Naruto insists on answering the 10th question no matter what, causing her to change her mind. For their willingness to face the 10th question despite the potential consequences, Team 7 and the remaining Genin pass to the second stage. For the second stage, teams enter the Forest of Death for a 5-day survival challenge. Shortly after the second stage begins, Team 7 is attacked by Orochimaru, who Sasuke and Sakura, sensing his killing intent, realize is far too strong for them to fight. Sasuke tries to surrender in exchange for their lives, but Naruto insists on fighting Orochimaru anyway. Both Sasuke and Sakura are surprised by how well Naruto does, although he is ultimately defeated and knocked unconscious. Sakura pins him to a tree with a kunai to stop him from falling, and observes to Sasuke that Naruto, despite all his shortcomings, isn't a coward. This convinces Sasuke to fight Orochimaru as well. Orochimaru becomes impressed by Sasuke, and before he leaves, he brands Sasuke with a cursed seal of heaven, rendering him unconscious as well. Sakura moves Naruto and Sasuke to a secluded area where she watches over them through the night. In the morning, they're tracked down by Team Dosu, Orochimaru's underlings who have instructions to kill Sasuke. 
They bypass the booby traps she laid earlier and move in on her, but she's saved by Rock Lee. Lee fights Team Dosu by himself, planning to make good on his earlier promise to protect her, but is eventually defeated. Sakura begins attacking Team Dosu herself, but she is restrained by Kintsuchi, who grabs her by the hair and berates her for how much time she clearly spends on it. Determined to not keep needing the help of others, and motivated by Naruto and Sasuke, Sakura cuts her hair to free herself and starts attacking, persevering despite Zaku Abumi's many counter-attacks. Sakura's courage convinces the observing Ino Yamanaka and the rest of Team 10 to come to her defense. Team 10 fights Team Dosu until they're interrupted by Sasuke, imbued with the power of his cursed seal. When he sees Sakura's injuries, Sasuke breaks Zaku's arms in punishment and threatens to do the same to the rest of them. Sakura is horrified by his actions and embraces him, begging him to stop. Sasuke's cursed seal recedes and he complies. Team Dosu retreats and Team 7, 10, and Lee's Team Guy regroup. When Naruto wakes up, he makes fun of Lee's eyebrows, prompting Sakura to strike him. Before they go their separate ways, Lee vows to Sakura that he will become stronger. Team 7 spends several days recuperating from their ordeal, but they are able to reach the center of the forest in time to advance to the Chunin exam's preliminaries, a series of one-on-one -on -one qualifying matches. Sakura tries to convince Sasuke not to participate because of his cursed seal, but he ignores her, insisting that it's his business and not hers. For her match, Sakura is paired against Ino. They start by trading insults and then punches, surprising Ino because Sakura proves her equal in both categories. Frustrated, Ino follows Sakura's earlier example by cutting her hair, a ruse that allows her to immobilize Sakura while she uses her mind-body switch technique. In control of Sakura's body, Ino tries to make her forfeit the match, but she's stopped and exercised by inner Sakura, due to both having used up all their chakra, but exchange one final blow, knocking both out. When Sakura wakes up, Ino informs her that their match was ruled a tie, and that therefore neither of them will continue to the final rounds. Despite this, they decide to rekindle their friendship, though can't help but continue to bicker about Sasuke. Sakura watches the remaining matches, including Lee's match with Gara, during which Lee loses and is badly injured. A few days later, Sakura visits the hospital to see Sasuke, but discovers he's already been taken away by Kakashi. While she's there, she sees Lee training despite his injuries, causing him to fall unconscious as a consequence. She leaves the flower she bought for Sasuke with him instead. Sakura worries about Sasuke over the following month, especially when he's missing for his match with Gara during the finals. He finally does show up, late, and Sakura watches with interest. Konoha Crush Sasuke's match is interrupted by an invasion of Konoha, and a genjutsu descends upon the stadium where the finals are being held, putting most of the audience to sleep. Sakura is able to dispel the genjutsu, attracting the attention of the invading Otogakure forces. She's saved by Kakashi, who instructs her to wake up Naruto and Shikamaru Nara. She does so, though Shikamaru was only pretending to be asleep, and when they're assembled, Kakashi sends them in Pakun after Sasuke, who's pursuing Gara. Oto and Nin start following them, so Shikamaru falls behind to delay them. Naruto and Sakura catch up with Sasuke in time to save him from one of Gara's attacks. When Gara sees Sakura's determination to defend Sasuke, he knocks her unconscious and binds her to a tree. Her bindings dissolve when Gara is defeated which Sakura assumes she has Sasuke to thank for. Sasuke corrects her when they get back to Konoha, explaining that it was Naruto who saved her. A few days later, Team 7 attends the 3rd Hokage's funeral. Land of Tea Escort Mission In the anime, Team 7 is sent to the Land of Tea to protect Idate Marino as he runs a race. When Team Oboro and later Aoi Rokusho try to stop Idate, Naruto and Sasuke fight them while Sakura remains alert for opportunities for Idate to run to safety. Sasuke is eventually knocked out by Aoi, and Sakura looks after him until Aoi is defeated by Naruto. After Idate wins the race, Team 7 returns to Konoha. Naruto the Movie, Ninja Clash in the Land of Snow Team 7 is sent on a mission to protect the actress, Yuki Fujikaze, as she travels to the Land of Snow. During the course of the mission, Sakura encounters Mizure Fuyukama several times. She eventually uses the Sakura Blizzard technique to distract him while Sasuke hurls Fubuki Kakuyoku into Mizore, causing their chakra armors to explode. When the Land of Snow is converted into the Land of Spring, Sakura and Sasuke watch it together. Sasuke Recovery Mission Sakura visits Sasuke every day while he's in the hospital, tearfully hugging him once he finally regains consciousness. She continues looking after him until he recovers, but he repels her kindness, angered by his earlier defeat by his brother, Itachi Uchiha. When Naruto comes to see him, Sasuke challenges him to a fight, which Naruto agrees to over Sakura's protests. 
She watches as they exchange attacks on the hospital roof, but decides she can't let things continue when Sasuke prepares a Chidori and Naruto prepares a Rasengan. She runs between them to stop them, but neither is able to pull away in time. Kakashi appears and flings them apart, saving Sakura. Sasuke storms off and Kakashi, before he follows, promises Sakura that he'll set things right. Sakura takes Naruto aside afterwards and tells him about the cursed seal Sasuke received from Orochimaru, which she'd until now kept from him at Sasuke's request. She shares her concerns that Orochimaru is trying to tempt Sasuke to defect from Konoha, but Naruto assures her that Sasuke would never do that. This comforts her at the time, but she continues to worry and, at night, waits at the village's exit. Sasuke eventually approaches with his belongings, confirming her fears. Sasuke tells her to go home, but Sakura refuses, instead asking why he always pushes her away and reminding him of all the good times Team 7 has had. She tries to persuade him to stay so she won't be alone, but when that doesn't work, argues that his revenge against Itachi isn't worth it. When Sasuke remains determined to go, Sakura tells him she loves him and offers to go with him. Sasuke tells her that she's annoying, just as he did after Team 7's formation. Sakura threatens to scream for help, so he knocks her out. However, before he does it, he thanks her. Sakura is found on a bench the next morning, and when she wakes up, she sends word to Tsunade, the new Hokage, that Sasuke has defected. The Sasuke recovery team is formed to go after him, which Sakura approaches as they prepare to set up from Konoha. Sakura begs Naruto to bring Sasuke back to Konoha, believing that he is the only person who can get through to him at this point. Naruto vows to do so, even if it takes his entire life, and Sakura cries at his dedication to her. Despite his promise, Naruto is unable to bring Sasuke back. Sakura visits him in the hospital, and after trying to avoid the subject, tells him that she won't hold him to his word. Naruto, however, refuses to go back on what he said. Touched, Sakura apologizes to Naruto for what he's gone through, and promises to help him personally bring back Sasuke next time. Land of Rice Fields Investigation Mission in the anime, Sakura accompanies Naruto and Jiraiya to the land of rice fields to investigate one of Orochimaru's lairs and potentially retrieve Sasuke. The mission ends in failure. When they get back to Konoha, Sakura, as in the manga, asks to become Tsunade's apprentice so she can better meet the challenges she'll face in the future. Tsunade accepts. Mizuki Tracking Mission In the anime, Sakura focuses on her training, preventing her from helping Naruto with many of the missions he goes away on. When he returns from one such mission, she informs him that she's succeeded in healing a fish. Mix it, stretch it, boil it up, burn, copper pot, burn. In the anime, Sakura helps Naruto and Choji Akamichi rescue Ayame. To save her from the cooking nin, they must prepare the perfect ramen. Sakura contributes by pounding the dough of the noodles into shape. Konoha plans recapture mission. In the anime, Sakura and Ino examine a corpse believed to be that of Geno. They conclude that it's not actually him. Yakumo Kurama Rescue Mission In the anime, Sakura helps Naruto protect Yakumo Kurama from the Kurama clan. When Kurenai Yuhi is injured during the fight, Sakura heals her wounds. Gontetsu Escort Mission In the anime, Sakura, Naruto, and Lee guard Gontetsu as he's transferred to prison. Sunagakure Support Mission In the anime, Sakura and the rest of the Konoha 11 are sent to Sunagakure to help the Sand siblings in their fight with the four celestial symbols men. Sakura heals Gara during his fight with Suiko. Ino, jealous of Sakura's newfound healing abilities, asks to train with Sakura to be a medical nin. Sakura agrees, but Ino is dismayed when Sakura reminds her that she will be her junior during the course of their training. Naruto the Movie Legend of the Stone of Gelel. Naruto, Sakura, and Shikamaru are sent to deliver Nerugui to its rightful owners. When they arrive at the village where the owners live, they're attacked by Temujin's warriors, who wield the power of the Stone of Galel. Sakura is eventually forced to fight the wolf-like Fugai. She uses metal pillars to reflect Fugai's ear-splitting howl, thus causing the pillars to collapse on her and kill her. Naruto the Movie Guardians of the Crescent Moon Kingdom Naruto, Sakura, and Rock Lee are assigned to protect the land of the moon's prince during his world trip. During the mission, she makes several uses of the medical ninjutsu and increased physical strength she gained from training with Tsunade, the latter particularly in her fights with Karimbana. Sakura struggles against Karimbana during their first encounter because of her ability to turn invisible. During their second meeting, Sakura notices how much perfume she wears, helping her to defend herself. Later in the fight, she breaks a chandelier, scattering glass across the floor that allows her to find Karimbana and knock her out. In Naruto's Footsteps, The Friend's Paths In the anime, about two years after Naruto leaves Konoha to train, another Chunin exam is held. 
Because the participants must enter as part of three-man teams, Ino invites Sakura to be Shikamaru's replacement on Team 10, since Shikamaru is already a Chunin. During the first exam, Sakura, Ino, and Shoji are seated in different rooms and are tasked with getting a combined score of exactly 100 points on their written test despite their separation. Ino telepathically contacts Sakura and Shoji in order to assign them which questions to answer. After the initial testing period is over, they're given a bonus question. Each team must unanimously select one of their members to disqualify from the rest of the exams. Team 10 selects nobody, which is the correct answer, and which qualifies them for the next phase. Those who pass the first exam must reach the Demon Desert within three days in order to participate in the second exam. Team 10 successfully does so, and they're given the same objective as they had in the exam several years ago obtain a scroll from another team. They wander through the desert for three days, losing their provisions to an Ame team. While recuperating at an oasis, they're attacked by Team Ameno. Ino once again telepathically links with Sakura and Shoji to coordinate their attacks and help them locate their attackers, resulting in the other team's defeat. Once Sakura and Ino heal their injuries, the other team offers them their scroll. However, theirs is the same scroll that Team 10 already has, so they're allowed to keep it. They go their separate ways, agreeing to meet again in the third exam. Team 10 is later attacked by Team Saya. Saya possesses Ino's mind and forces her to attack Sakura. When Choji, meanwhile, begins overwhelming Saya's teammates, Saya possesses his mind instead and she forces him to attack Sakura using his super multi-size technique. Ino is able to release Choji, forcing Team Saya to retreat. Team 10 is afterwards trapped in a sandstorm, during which Ino and Choji are poisoned by a cloaked Mamashi. Sakura escapes the sandstorm, defeats Saya, and then returns to heal Ino and Choji. Team 10 is eventually found by one of the exam's proctors, who brings them to where all the other Genin are being assembled. They're informed that the Chunin exams have been cancelled. Reports on the participants' performances will be sent back to their villages, leaving their promotion up to their superiors. When they get back to Konoha, Tsunade promotes Sakura, Ino, and Shoji to Chunin. Kazakage Rescue Mission Tsunade informs Sakura of Naruto's return after two and a half years of training. She goes to greet him and is initially glad that he's back, but is quickly disappointed when he gets back into a competition of sexy techniques with Konohamaru Saratobi. Kakashi reforms Team 7 with them and gives them another bell test. Unlike last time, taking the bells from him is the real objective. Kakashi vanishes shortly after the test begins, and Sakura, after determining that he's nowhere above ground, concludes that he's below ground. To force him out, she shatters the earth with Cherry Blossom Impact, surprising both Kakashi and Naruto. Despite their improved abilities, neither Sakura nor Naruto are able to get a bell through conventional means, and it is only by Naruto's threat to spoil the latest Icha Icha book that they're able to lower Kakashi's guard long enough to take his bells. While Team 7 tries without success to find a mission to go on that Naruto won't complain about, word reaches Konoha that Akatsuki has kidnapped Gara, the Kasakage. Team 7 is sent to Sunagakure to lend assistance in rescuing Gara. On their way to Suna, Naruto explains that Gara was kidnapped because he is the Jinjuriki of the One Tail, just as Naruto is the Jinjuriki of the Nine Tails. When they reach Suna, they're informed that Konkuro was poisoned by a Katsuki member Sasori in his failed attempt to rescue Gara, and that none of the village's medics can heal him. Sakura is able to remove the poison from his body, from which she prepares some antidotes, impressing Chiyo. Chiyo, Sasori's grandmother, ultimately decides to accompany Team 7 as they leave to find Gara, helping them navigate the local country. On their way to the Akatsuki lair where Gara has been taken, they're met by Itachi Uchiha, the brother who Sasuke defected from Konoha in order to kill. Although eager to face him, Sakura must leave most of the fighting to Kakashi due to his Sharingan. When Naruto is trapped in Itachi's Genjutsu, Sakura and Chiyo release him. The Itachi is eventually discovered to be an imposter, so they continue to the Akatsuki lair. They beat Team Guy there, who takes down the barrier over the entrance so that Team 7 can get in. Deidara flies off with Gara's body as soon as they enter, and Naruto and Kakashi pursue him, leaving Sasori to Sakura and Chiyo. Chiyo informs Sakura that what appears to be Sasori is actually one of his puppets, Hiruko. She also warns that all of Hiruko's weapons are likely coated with poison. With this in mind, Chiyo guides Sakura to Hiruko unharmed, allowing her to destroy it. With Hiruko gone, Sasori starts using his human puppet of the third Kazakage. Although it initially appears no different from a standard puppet, such that Chiyo is able to fight it with her mother and father puppets, the puppet is discovered to have access to the third's Iron Sand, which has also been imbued with poison. The Iron Sand neutralizes the mother and father puppets and then forms into blocks, with Sakura, with Chiyo's guidance again, is able to punch away. Sasori's Iron Sand world method provides more difficult to avoid and Sakura receives several scratches, causing her to collapse from the poison. She is able to administer the antidote, however, allowing her to destroy the third when it moves in to finish her off. Angered by this, Sasori reveals that his own body is a puppet now, and he goes after Chiyo. 
Sakura intercepts him and destroys the body, but he's able to reassemble it. Sasori brings out his 100 puppet army, and Shio brings out her 10 puppet collection of Chikamatsu. While the two sides battle, Sakura moves closer to Sasori and places a seal on him. Sasori is able to transfer his living core into another puppet before the seal connects, sneaks up on Shio and attacks. Sakura shields the attack with her body and is both fatally wounded and poisoned. When Shio gives her the final antidote, Sasori attacks Shio again, only to fall into her trap and have his core stabbed by the mother and father puppets. Shio then heals Sakura's wound. Having guessed that Sakura was able to create an antidote for his poison, something he thought was impossible, Sasori decides to reward her before he dies. He tells her of a spy within Orochimaru's ranks who he had planned to meet in Kusagakure in 10 days. Chio collapses once he's dead, but refuses Sakura's offer to take her back to Suna to make another antidote. At Chio's request, Sakura carries her to Naruto and Kakashi who have managed to retrieve Gara. Sakura attempts to retrieve Gara, but the removal of the One Tail has caused him to die. Chio uses the One's Own Life reincarnation on him, bringing him back to life at the cost of her own. As the jutsu nears completion, Chio warns Sakura not to risk her life to protect someone as old as she is again, believing Sakura is too valuable. Gara is successfully resurrected, and a few days later, Team 7 and Guy attend Chio's funeral in Sunagakure before returning home. Naruto Shippuden, the movie. Naruto, Sakura, and Lee are led on a mission by Neji Hyuga to escort Shion, the head priestess of the Land of Demons. When they arrive at the tomb of Morio, they are forced to fight the gang of four, but eventually they drive them off. Sakura later tries to carry Shion to safety, but they're followed by Kasuna, and Sakura is injected with secret anesthesia. Once she recovers, she helps her team defeat Kasuna and his men. Tenshi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission With the intel gained from Sasori, Team 7 begins planning to meet the spy in the hopes that it'll help them reunite with Sasuke. Kakashi is left bedridden from his fight with Deidara, requiring Yamato to lead Team 7 as his replacement. The Konoha Council also requires that Sai be a time to Team 7 as Sasuke's replacement. Naruto immediately dislikes Sai, declaring him an inferior version of Sasuke. Sai is happy for this distinction, and proceeds to degrade Sasuke for defecting from Konoha. This angers Sakura and she hits him, forcing Yamato to use wood release to break up their fight. Despite this incident, Sakura has difficulty holding a grudge against Sai due to his lack of emotion or interpersonal connections. She therefore tries to mediate between Naruto and Sai, explaining to Sai the brotherly bond that Naruto feels to Sasuke. When this fails to make an impression, Sakura gives up on Sai and puts up with him only because they need his help to find Sasuke. Yamato disguises himself as Sasori and goes to the Tenchi Bridge to meet the spy while Naruto, Sakura, and Sai hide nearby. The spy, Kabuto Yakushi, begins telling Yamato about Orochimaru's organization, but they're interrupted by the appearance of Orochimaru, who teams up with Kabuto to fight Yamato, having intended to kill Sasori. Team 7 comes to his aid, and Orochimaru, recognizing them, taunts Naruto about Sasuke. Naruto is enraged and strikes him, using the Ninetales' power to make his attacks more devastating. The Tenchi Bridge starts to collapse from the stress of his chakra, and Sakura is knocked unconscious in the process. She's saved and revived by Yamato, and is then horrified by the damage that Naruto is causing to the surroundings. Orochimaru is eventually able to force Naruto away from himself and closer to Sakura and Yamato. Seeing the lengths he's going to in order to retrieve Sasuke from Orochimaru, Sakura tries to reason with him, but his version 2 form leaves him unable to tell friend from foe and he attacks her. When Yamato restrains Naruto with his wood release, Kabuto heals Sakura's wound, his thanks to Team 7 for killing Sasori. Yamato is able to suppress the Ninetales' influence, but its chakra leaves his body badly damaged. Sakura heals him, but is upset that it's the only thing she can do to help him. When Naruto wakes up, he can't remember what happened and assumes Sakura's tears are because of something Sai said, which she doesn't correct. After taking a break when Sakura's wound starts hurting, she tells Naruto her wound was caused by Orochimaru. While Sakura works on healing herself, Yamato tells Naruto the truth. When they realize that Sai is missing, Yamato reports that he's joined with Orochimaru and Kabuto. Having placed a trace on Sai, Yamato is able to lead Naruto and Sakura to him, and by extension, Orochimaru's lair. They infiltrate it, locate Sai, and restrain him so they can go looking for Sasuke. Kabuto finds him and releases Sai to help him fight them, but Sai restrains him instead. Curious about the bond that Naruto keeps saying he has with Sasuke, Sai goes searching through Orochimaru's lair in search of Sasuke on Naruto's behalf. When he's gone, Yamato goes through his belongings and finds evidence that Sai has been assigned to assassinate Sasuke. They go after him in order to stop him. When they find him, he explains that he truly does want to help retrieve Sasuke, and in fact has already found him. Sakura and Naruto are speechless to see Sasuke again, but Sasuke reacts with indifference to them. To demonstrate that they all mean nothing to him, Sasuke quickly neutralizes them all, except Sakura who prepares to attack him. Sasuke is about to counter her attack before Yamato saves her. 
He then prepares to kill them, but is persuaded not to by Orochimaru, and leaves without further comment. Defeated, a tearful Sakura tells a devastated Naruto they need to get stronger, and Team 7 returns to Konoha. Naruto Shippuden the movie, Bonds. During the Land of the Skies attack on Konoha, Sakura heals the injured who are brought to the hospital. Afterwards, Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata Hyuga are assigned to escort Amaru and Shino back to their village. During their journey, Amaru's body is possessed by the Zero Tails. Despite trying to fight it, Sakura is defeated. Naruto leaves Sakura behind as he goes after Amaru. 12 Guardian Ninja In the anime, Yamato leads Team 7 on a mission to the Fire Temple to investigate a series of grave robberies. During the course of the investigation, Team 7 is separated by an earthen maze. Sakura is attacked within the maze by a giant spider, but she's saved by Sai, whose arm breaks in the process. She tends to this injury while they reunite with Naruto and Yamato, but the grave robbers escape. Team 7 returns to Konoha, and when the grave robbers attack the village, Sakura is drawn into battle with Fuen. Sakura pretends to fall victim to Fuen's genjutsu, allowing her to a surprise attack her when she attacks a decoy of her, and end it by smashing her into the ground. Akatsuki Suppression Mission Kakashi assembles Naruto, Sakura, and Sai to discuss their failed mission to retrieve Sasuke. Sakura shares her suspicion that Sasuke's skills have been boosted with medication, as his growth rate is unnaturally high. Kakashi believes the best way to prepare them for another encounter with Sasuke is for Naruto to invent a new jutsu. Once he finally does, after many days of training, Team 7 is sent to help Team 10 in their battle with Akatsuki. Sakura and Sai are sent to provide backup for Shikamaru Nara during his fight with Hidan, while everyone else focuses on Kakuzu. When they locate Shikamaru, however, they discover he's already defeated Hidan. Naruto elsewhere defeats Kakuzu with his jutsu, after which they go back to Konoha. Naruto's new jutsu injures his arm after use, which Sakura treats in Konoha. Because he has difficulty using the arm while it mends, Sakura tries to help him eat when they visit Ramen Ichiraku but Sai insists on the responsibility. As they leave afterwards, they're met by Konohamaru, who demonstrates his sexy girl-on-girl -girl technique. In the manga, Konohamaru responds with sexy boy-on-boy -boy technique. Sakura approves, but Naruto is disgusted and violently reprimands him. Sakura tries to make an excuse when she realizes how she reacted, but Konohamaru's suspicions that Sakura is just as much of a pervert as he is are confirmed. However, in the anime, Naruto approves, and Sakura is disgusted and violently reprimands him. Three Tails Appearance in the anime, Team 7 is sent to help Team 8 in their fight with Team Guren. When they come across the Three Tails during the course of the mission, Sakura is assigned to a team responsible for sealing it due to her excellent chakra control. They're interrupted by Team Guren before they can complete the four corner sealing barrier, and Sakura tends to the wounded after the Three Tails goes on a rampage. When Team Guren is defeated, they are recalled to Konoha. Naruto Shippuden the movie, The Will of Fire. Sakura is part of a team sent to investigate the most recent in a series of kidnappings of people with Kekai Genkai. During the investigation, Naruto and Sai are injured by strange animals. Sakura heals them, and when they get back to Konoha, forces them to spend some time in the hospital. Hiroko later declares war on the ninja villages, and Sakura is assigned to secure Konoha's borders. When she learns that Kakashi has defected and that Naruto has been imprisoned to stop him from going after Kakashi, she helps him escape and accompanies him. When they, with help from Shikamaru and Sai, find Kakashi, who is under Hiroko's control, they fight Hiroko's chimeric animals, save Kakashi, and ultimately defeat the villain. Itachi Pursuit Mission News reaches Konoha that Sasuke has killed Orochimaru. Realizing this is a good opportunity to try once again to reunite with Sasuke, Kakashi combines Team 7 and 8 into an 8-man squad on the mission to either find Sasuke or his assumed target, Itachi. They split up to look for leads on either Uchiha, because she doesn't have any particular tracking skills, Kakashi pairs Sakura with two Ninken, Shiba and Bisuke. They briefly pick up on the trail of one of Sasuke's new teammates, Karin, but they don't realize this and lose the trail shortly afterwards. Faded Battle Between Brothers after they regroup, Kiba Inuzuka is able to detect Sasuke's scent and they start to follow it. Along the way, they're met by Tobi of Akatsuki, who prevents them from progressing and who is invulnerable to their attacks. Tobi leaves when he receives news that Sasuke has killed Itachi, and Team 7 and 8 try to reach Sasuke before he does. Unable to find where Tobi has taken Sasuke, they are forced to return to Konoha. Naruto shipped in the movie, The Lost Tower. Team 7 goes to the ruins of Roran to capture Mukade. When fighting Mukade, Naruto and Yamato vanish, only to reappear immediately afterwards with no memory of what they've just been through. When they leave Roran, they're approached by a girl whose mother met Naruto when he was sent to the past. Though he's unaware of this, Naruto claims he saw the girl in a good dream he had, causing Sakura to pull his ear and call him a pervert. Six Tales Unleashed 
In the anime, they are intercepted by a new assignment to help the Tsuchigumo clan protect its forbidden technique. Kakashi takes Team 8 back to Konoha, while Yamato leads Team 7 on the mission. During the mission, Sakura helps fight the Magaki group and the villagers who are under Shiranami's control. Once Shiranami is stopped, Team 7 returns to Konoha. Pain's Assault Sakura is present when Naruto is informed that Jiraiya died while investigating the leader of Akatsuki, Pain. She defends Tsunade while Naruto blames her for his death, and then again when Shikamaru tries to get out of helping decipher one of the clues that Jiraiya left behind, aware that Tsunade is grieving over Jiraiya. Sakura later then tries to help Shikamaru decipher the clue, but is interrupted by the invasion of Pain. Sakura heads for the Konoha hospital, along the way saving a group of civilians from Pain's giant centipede. She assists with healing the injured once she gets to the hospital, doing as much as she can despite there being more people in need of care than medics available. When Pain destroys Konoha, Sakura and the rest of the villagers are saved by Tsunade with the help of Katsuyu. Tsunade is exhausted by the effort, so Sakura looks after him while Naruto fights Pain. During the battle, Sakura senses Naruto entering another version 2 form as a result of Pain's attack on Hinata Hyuga. She has Katsuyu relay a message to the villagers to retreat to a safe distance while she treats Hinata. Naruto ultimately defeats Pain, and when he returns to the village, Sakura punches him for taking such a risk, and then embraces him as thanks. Past Arc, the Locus of Konoha Sakura and Shizune stay with Tsunade as the village starts to rebuild. In the anime, they give Tsunade's various visitors updates on her condition. Five Kage Summit Sakura informs Naruto that Tsunade is in a coma and that there's nothing that can be done to bring her out of it. While they talk, they are approached by Tazuna and Inari, who have come to help rebuild Konoha. They ask about Sasuke, who which Naruto avoids going into detail about so as to spare them and Sakura a discussion about Sasuke's defection. After Tizuna and Inari leave, they receive news that Danzo Shimura has become the next Hokage, and that he has ordered Sasuke to be killed as a traitor. Naruto and Sakura approach Sai to ask how they can convince Danzo to change his mind, but Sai is unable to help. Omoi and Karui of Kumogakure overhear them talking about Sasuke, and they ask for information about Sasuke, wishing to kill him for his role in Akatsuki's capture of Killer B. This news upsets Sakura greatly to the point of tears, so Naruto leads Omoi and Karui away to spare her from further distress. In the anime, while watching over a comatose Tsunade, Shizune confirms that she heard about Sasuke working with Akatsuki, which once again left Sakura on the verge of tears and hoping that Tsunade would awaken soon so the situation with Sasuke could be resolved. Sai later informs Sakura of the abuse Naruto suffered at the hands of Omoe and Karui, as he was unwilling to sell out Sasuke. He also informs her that Naruto has gone to meet with the fourth Raikage to try and get a pardon for Sasuke's actions against Kumo. Sakura cannot understand why Naruto would do all this, so Sai explains how he believes that it is because he has feelings for Sakura, and that he is still trying to fulfill the promise he made to her after Sasuke left the village years ago, which devastated her. Sai adds that his commitment to that promise and by extension Sakura caused Naruto as much pain as Sasuke does. Shikamaru joins their conversation to inform them of the rest of the Konoha 11's decision to personally eliminate Sasuke so he can't continue to implicate Konoha in his crimes nor present the risk of a war. Sakura tearfully agrees with this and insists to be the one to inform Naruto. She also made the others swear not to say anything to Naruto before she can, seeing it as her responsibility, while secretly she decides to handle the entire matter herself. Sakura forms a team with Sai, Kiba Inazuka, and Rock Lee and goes to the Land of Iron to search for Naruto. When they find him, Sakura attempts to tell him that she loves him and that because of this he no longer needs to fulfill his promise regarding Sasuke, who she claims that she no longer has feelings for. However, this enrages Naruto, who rejects Sakura by telling her that he hates people who lie to themselves. Sakura then insists rather angrily that it's true and that he should start worrying about himself rather than Sasuke. Naruto still doesn't believe her and informs her that he wants to save Sasuke for his own reasons, not for Sakura. Upset, Sakura departs, but when they're far enough away, she instructs her team to start looking for Sasuke. Her team tells her it would have been better to simply tell Naruto the truth about Konoha 11's decision, and that she's underestimating him by not doing so, but Sakura adamantly said she couldn't do it. When Kiba finally locates Sasuke, Sakura has him give her precise directions to where he is. She then attempts to knock out the team with sleeping gas, but is initially stopped by Sai, who has guessed that she plans to personally kill Sasuke. When he attempts to detain them on Kakashi's instructions, Kiba and Lee engage Sai, giving Sakura a chance to use her sleeping gas. She proceeds to where Sasuke is and announces her desire to join with him, even if that means helping destroy Konoha. To prove her loyalty, Sasuke instructs Sakura to kill the badly injured Karin. Sakura approaches her, contemplating how best to strike Sasuke, but is alerted by Karin that Sasuke is attacking her from behind with Chidori. Kakashi arrives in time to stop him, and, aware of what Sakura was planning, volunteers to be the one to kill Sasuke so that she won't need to, especially when he holds himself responsible for not preventing the situation as his teacher. 
Sakura heals Karin's injury and, in her unstable mental state, joins the battle. She starts attacking Sasuke from behind, but ultimately can't bring herself to harm him and cries at her own failure. Sensing her, Sasuke grabs her by the throat, takes her kunai, and prepares to kill her with it, but she's saved by Naruto. Sakura is shocked that she came close to being killed by Sasuke, and is further shocked as Sasuke confesses to killing Danzo, and plans to do the same to his former teammates and the village. After briefly fighting, Naruto and Sasuke talk and conclude that they're only suitable to fight each other, which they will do at some future date. Sakura is upset once again that her resolve isn't as strong as theirs, and decides to trust Naruto and Sasuke in fulfilling her dream of Team 7 having a happy ending. After Sasuke leaves with Tobi, Naruto passes out from the poison of her kunai, and a panicked Sakura gives him the antidote. Sakura then uses an antidote to wake Sai, Kiba, and Rock Lee up. After returning to the village, Naruto meets with the Konoha 11 as soon as they're back to tell him his decision, which Sakura defends when some of them accuse Naruto of being unrealistic, but is concerned about Naruto and Sasuke's promise to fight to the death. When Tsunade finally wakes from her coma, Sakura goes around the village sharing the good news. In the anime, Sakura is later informed of the upcoming war against Akatsuki from Tsunade, and Sakura, while uneasy at fighting against Sasuke, is given the task to keep a watchful eye on Naruto during the war. Naruto the Movie, Blood Prison, when Naruto is accused of trying to assassinate the fourth Raikage, Sakura is surprised and the only member of Team 7 to argue for his innocence. Despite this, he's imprisoned in the Blood Prison. Sakura is later part of a force sent to the Blood Prison to rescue Naruto, and while she's there helps capture the escaping prisoners. Naruto is badly injured during the ordeal and Sakura is unable to heal him, forcing Ryuzetsu to save him instead with her Dragon Life reincarnation. Sakura then tries and fails to revive Ryuzetsu. When they get back to Konoha, Sakura asks Naruto if her earlier surprise was convincing, as the entire thing was staged. Power In the anime, Team 7 is sent to investigate the attack on Tonika Village. They encounter Kabuto Yakushi and are forced to fight his reincarnated forces while he escapes. They fight Kabuto and his forces several more times, during one of which Sakura is knocked out by the Ninetales Naruto clone, but Kabuto is ultimately driven off. Road to Ninja, Naruto the Movie Sakura and the rest of the Konoha 11 successfully defend Konoha from an Akatsuki attack. When they return to the village, Sakura's parents, Mabuki and Kizashi Haruno, embarrass her with their concern for her safety. She meets with Naruto later to complain about her parents' protectiveness. As they talk, they're attacked by Tobi, who uses the limited Tsukiyomi to send them to a Genjutsu world, where their dreams come true. Naruto has his parents, and Sakura doesn't have hers. She enjoys it for a while, especially because her parents died saving the village, and thus Sakura gets special treatment from the villagers, but eventually she starts to experience the loneliness of not having parents that Naruto has known for his entire life. Sakura is eventually kidnapped by Menma on Tobi's instructions, and the Genjutsu world's Akatsuki is hired to rescue her. Sakura then saves Naruto from Menma, who in turn saves her from Tobi, thus breaking the limited Tsukiyomi. Back home again, Sakura rushes to her parents and hugs them, glad to be back. Paradise Life on a Boat In the anime, Tsunade sends Sakura, Ino, and Choji Akamichi to Benisu Island to pick medicinal herbs. Although the locals initially try interfering, Naruto is able to convince him to help instead. Fourth Shinobi World War, Confrontation when the 4th Shinobi World War begins, Sakura is added to the 3rd Division of the Allied Shinobi Forces. Before the army is mobilized for war with Akatsuki, Sakura heals Might Guy, whose exhaustion mystifies her. The 3rd Division is called to assist the Surprise Attack Division, and when they arrive, Sakura recognizes the reincarnated Haku and Zabuza Momochi amongst the Surprise Attack Division's attackers. When Zabuza asks her how Naruto is doing, Sakura replies that he's well. Zabuza and Haku are forced to attack the 3rd Division, so they take up defensive positions, having encountered them before. Sakura advises those near her to take a manji formation. When casualties start growing, Sakura heals the wounded. Sakura is eventually reassigned to the Logistical Support and Medical Division's compound to heal the wounded that are sent there. During the night, three medical nin are killed despite major precautions they took to secure the location, placing everyone on high alert. Sakura is approached by Morio during this time, who she recognizes as someone she healed earlier. He gives her a love letter, but she turns him down and explains that she's in love with someone else. He wishes her luck with her beloved and then leaves, but Sakura is saddened when she thinks about Sasuke. Neji Hyuga visits her after Morio leaves to discuss the suspected killer. When, during the conversation, Neji proves unaware that Tonton is a pig, Sakura recognizes him as the imposter and attacks him. The disguise disappears, revealing a white Zetsu. From the Zetsu's comments and previous reports she's read about its abilities, Sakura is able to determine how its substitute technique works and alerts the Allied HQ. 
She and Shizune later perform an autopsy on the Zetsu's body and discover its wood-release capabilities. In the anime, during the following day, the medical division is attacked by several reincarnated shinobi and a scroll of dead allied forces is stolen. Sakura joins a team to go after them, and most of the reincarnated shinobi are sealed, but Hayate Gekko escapes with the scroll. She goes after him and fights him until Yugao Uzuki arrives to finish him off. Later, security at the medical division remains high, with nobody having an effective way of identifying disguised Zetsu. Two Zetsu eventually bypass bodyguards assigned to Sakura, though she is saved by the arrival of Naruto, whose Nine Tails Chakra Mode allows him to find and eliminate all the Zetsu. Fourth Shinobi World War Climax With the Zetsu army defeated, the allied Shinobi forces are sent to assist Naruto in his fight with Tobi. Along the way, Sakura vows to be there to help Naruto. When they arrive, Sakura heals Kakashi and Might Guy and then joins in the allies' attack on the Ten Tails. The attack fails, and many die in the Ten Tails counterattack, including Neji, which shocks and hurts Sakura. However, Naruto is able to give protective version 1 like cloaks to most of his allies in time. When Naruto is injured, saving everyone from Tenpenshi, Sakura heals him and encourages the other allies not to give up hope, even in the face of the Ten Tails tailed Beast Ball. They're saved by the arrival of the reincarnated fourth Hokage. The fourth thanks Sakura for healing Naruto, his son, and asks if she's Naruto's girlfriend. When Naruto suggests this is true, Sakura headbutts him and tells him to focus on the situation. Naruto complains she just gave him more injuries, and she retorts she will heal him again. Sasuke arrives shortly after the fourth, intent on joining the allies so he can protect Konoha. Sakura is surprised by Sasuke's sudden arrival and asks him of his intentions, and is dumbfounded, as with the rest of the Konoha 11, by his declaration that he will be Hokage. Naruto and Sasuke prepare to fight the Ten Tails, and Sakura, as she says she's not weak and will assist them as a member of Team 7, joins them. The now reunited Team 7 charges into battle with the Ten Tails' army of clones. After charging her strength of 100 seals, Sakura is able to defeat many at a time and boasts that she's finally caught up with her teammates. Because there are too many Ten Tails clones, Team 7 each performs their own summons. Sakura summons Katsuyu and has it adhere to all the allies nearby so she can heal them remotely. While Naruto and Sasuke fight the Ten Tails itself, Sai asks Sakura if she trusts Sasuke. Sakura says she's happy he's back and she does trust him. Sai believes her words are truthful, but knows her smile is fake. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki When Tobi, real name Obito Uchiha, becomes the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, Sakura can only watch from a distance as Naruto, Sasuke, and the reincarnated Hokage fight him. Obito eventually recreates the God Tree, which absorbs the chakra of many of the allied shinobi forces. Sakura instructs Katsuyu to heal them, but Katsuyu explains that its division suffered the same fate as the shinobi they were attached to. To do what she can, Sakura runs over to Shikamaru and tries to start healing him. It is ultimately Naruto who saves Shikamaru and the others, remotely restoring the version 1 cloaks thought absorbed by the god tree. Tsunade then arrives, congratulates Sakura for the work she's done, and requests her help in summoning in an even larger segment of Katsuyu. Katsuyu dissolves across the battlefield, allowing Tsunade and Sakura to constantly rejuvenate everyone as they unite against Obito. Although Obito is defeated, Madara Uchiha and another Zetsu still remain. The prolonged fighting exhausts Tsunade and leaves Sakura and Shizune with little chakra to spare. When Gara brings Naruto to them, in need of emergency life support following the removal of the Nine Tails from his body, Sakura boards his desert suspension to lend whatever support she can. When her normal medical ninjutsu fails to do anything, Sakura makes an incision in Naruto's chest and manually pumps his heart to keep him alive, while pleading for him to live because he is so close to achieving his dream. Gara brings them to the fourth Hokage so he can seal his half of the Nine Tails chakra into Naruto, but the chakra is intercepted by Black Zetsu. When Madara, the Ten Tails new Jinchuriki arrives, Kakashi uses Kamui on Sakura and Naruto to get them to safety in Kamui's dimension. They are shortly afterwards joined by Obito, who has decided he wants to help Naruto. Though wary of Obito, Sakura allows him to seal the Nine Tails chakra he took from Black Zetsu into Naruto, thus saving his life. Naruto goes back to fight Madara when he regains consciousness, leaving Obito with Sakura. She calls Obito an enemy for killing many of her comrades, but she's willing to help him as thanks for saving Naruto. Obito asks Sakura to destroy his Rinnegan, explaining it's the only way to guarantee Madara doesn't use the infinite Tsukiyomi. Before she's able to do it, Madara arrives in Kamui's dimension and Obito sends Sakura away so Madara can't kill her. She explains what happened when she regroups with Team 7 and tries healing Kakashi after Madara stole his eye, but Naruto instead gives him a new one. As they wait for Madara's inevitable return, Sakura questions Sasuke about what he meant when he said he would become Okage, but receives no answer because they have a war to worry about. Sensing Madara coming, Kakashi reminds them of their first lesson as Team 7, the importance of teamwork. When Madara is brought back by Black Zetsu using Obito's body, Sakura launches the first attack. 
She is stabbed with a truth-seeking ball and is saved by Naruto, who grabs her, and Sasuke, who cuts the rod Madara stabbed her with. Sakura is saddened because she thinks Sasuke is not concerned about her. Madara, now in possession of two Rinnegan, ascends into the sky and despite Naruto and Sasuke's attempt to stop him, casts the infinite Tsukiyomi. Kaguya Otsutsuki strikes. When the world around them falls to the infinite Tsukiyomi, Sasuke uses his Susano to shield Naruto, Sakura, and Kakashi from its effects. Sakura asks what's happening, but is saddened when Sasuke tells her she doesn't need to know because she can't do anything about it. When they emerge, they find Madara has bound the world's population with God, nativity of a world in trees, and trapped them all within perpetual dreams. Madara confronts them and insists that he has ended all conflicts, and that only Team 7, as the only remaining opposition, would seek to renew the cycle of death that plagued the world for centuries. As he's talking, Madara is stabbed from behind by Black Zetsu, who transfers him from Obito's body to convert him into Kaguya Otsutsuki, Black Zetsu's true master. Kaguya, the origin of Chakra, now has access to the chakra supplies of everyone trapped in the infinite Tsukiyomi. She wants Team 7's chakra as well, so she transports them to one of Kaguya's dimensions, a sea of lava. Kakashi grabs Sakura, ties himself to an unconscious Obito with a scroll, and pins Obito to a wall in order to save them. Sakura is sad as Sasuke explains to Naruto that he only saved Sakura and Kakashi earlier because they happen to be near Naruto, and he's willing to sacrifice his comrades if it means ensuring that he and Naruto will survive to save the world. However, Naruto retorts Sasuke still saved them subconsciously, and Sakura is thankful to Naruto for this. The heat causes the scroll to burn up, but Naruto sends a shadow clone to catch them. Because only Naruto and Sasuke can defeat Kaguya, they are forced to watch from a distance. Sakura is mortified when Naruto uses his sexy reverse harem technique on Kaguya, and then mortified again when it works. Kaguya eventually relocates them to her ice dimension, and then banishes Sasuke to another, separating him from Naruto. When Obito regains consciousness and is caught up about what's been happening, he offers to help retrieve Sasuke and requests Sakura's help. Naruto's collaborative clone attack forces Kaguya to retreat to her desert dimension, where Obito secretly follows, taking Sakura and a Naruto clone along by sinking his Kamui to it. Kaguya, believing the clone to be the real one, and that he's alone, attacks it and manages to dispatch it before returning back to the ice dimension. The plan ends with Kaguya seeing an alive Naruto in the ice dimension. With Kaguya out of the way, Obito begins piercing through her various dimensions with Kamui, while Sakura heals the stress this causes to his body. They finally locate Sasuke, but Obito is unable to keep the portal long enough for Sasuke to run into it. Sakura collapses from exhaustion, but is caught by Sasuke, who explains he used Amino Tejikara to switch places with Sakura's flak jacket, before thanking them. Obito teleports them back to the dimension where Naruto is, and sacrifices himself to save Naruto from Kaguya. Despite his death, Obito's spirit is able to briefly return to allow Kakashi to use Susano, which he uses to save Sakura from one of Kaguya's attacks. When Kaguya creates an explosive truth-seeking ball to finally kill them all, Kakashi, realizing that this is their last opportunity, forms a plan of attack. Kakashi pierces through her. Naruto uses Shadow Clones to exhaust some of her countermeasures, and Kakashi uses Kamui on the rest. Sasuke moves closer to her in order to place a seal on her, and when Kaguya tries to escape, Sakura punches her. Kaguya is defeated, the tailed beast balls are removed from her body, and she is trapped alongside Black Zetsu with six paths, Shibaku Tensei. As Sakura and Naruto panic over how they're going to get back home, the Sage of Six Paths summons them all back from Kaguya's dimensions and congratulates them for their victory. The Sage of Six Paths explains how Naruto and Sasuke can end the infinite Tsukiyomi, but Sasuke has plans before that, starting a revolution by killing the tailed beasts and five Kage, which he believes will change the world for the better. Sad and angry, Sakura pleads with him, acknowledging that there's literally nothing that she can do to change his mind, but asks if there's some part of him that cares about her and is willing to return to her. He once again tells her that she's still annoying before knocking her out with a genjutsu. Kakashi scolds Sasuke for this by saying Sakura's love for him is only hurting her heart. When she finally wakes up later that night, Kakashi tells her that Naruto and Sasuke have gone to have their last fight. They locate Naruto and Sasuke the following day at the Valley of the End, both having lost an arm and unable to move. As she heals them, Sasuke tries to speak to her, but she tells him not to so she can concentrate on healing them. Guilt-ridden, Sasuke apologizes to Sakura for everything he's done, and after exclaiming him with criticism, she tearfully accepts his apology and Team 7 comes back together for good, smiling and laughing. Blank period. After the war, Sasuke is pardoned for his crimes based on the good word of Naruto and Kakashi, who has been selected to become the 6th Hokage. Sasuke leaves Konoha to wander the world on a journey of redemption, and Sakura asks him to wait until his prosthetic arm is finished, but Sasuke declines. Sakura then offers to come with him. He again declines, explaining that his journey is one of atonement and that she has no part in that, leaving Sakura disappointed and gloomy. 
He then pokes her head, promising to see her again, and thanks her, and Sakura blushes at the realization that he is returning her feelings. Kakashi Hiden, Lightning in the Icy Sky A year after the end of the war, Sakura is part of a Konoha platoon sent to the Blood Prison in anticipation of an attempted jailbreak by the Ryuha Armament Alliance. When they get there, Sakura helps collect passengers ejected from the approaching Tobishachimaru and then, after the Tobishachimaru crashes nearby, heals the survivors. Shikamaru Hiden, a cloud drifting in silent darkness. Two years after the end of the war, Naruto talks to Sakura about Shikamaru Nara's recent cold behavior. She reminds him that Shikamaru is working hard in preparation for Naruto someday becoming Hokage, causing Naruto to wonder if he's worth whatever trouble Shikamaru is going through. When Shikamaru later goes missing in the Land of Silence, Naruto and Sakura join a combined Konoha and Suna coalition sent to rescue him. By the time they arrive, Tamari is in combat with a brainwashed Sai. Sakura punches Sai away from Tamari and then heals Tamari's injury. After Shikamaru is saved and his mission is completed, Sakura is part of a force that stays behind to help the Land of Silence stabilize. The last, Naruto the movie. Two years after the end of the war, Sakura notices Hinata Hyuga working on a scarf to give Naruto for the Rinai Festival. Sakura encourages her but warns her that Naruto may not have a real grasp of the love Hinata has for him. To that end, Sakura orchestrates some opportunities for Hinata and Naruto to spend time together but due to Naruto's lack of understanding about love, none of them work. Shortly afterwards, Hinata's sister, Hanabi Hyuga, is kidnapped by Toneri Otsutsuki, and they're assigned to a team sent to rescue her. They follow Toneri's trail to a cave, and when they enter it, they are trapped by a genjutsu. In the movie's novelization, Sakura quickly identifies her dreams of Sasuke as just that, forces herself awake, and wakes up the rest of the team. At the end of the cave, they find the Gatekeeper, the creator of the genjutsu, which Sakura, Shikamaru, and Sai join forces to destroy. When they exit the cave, they find themselves in the middle of a vast landscape. What they later learn is the interior of the moon. While resting after a day of exploring the nearby ruins, Hinata voluntarily joins with Taneri and Naruto is badly injured by Taneri while trying to stop her. Sakura spends three days of around-the-clock care to heal him, during which time Naruto talks in his sleep indicates to Sakura that he now shares Hinata's feelings. When he wakes up, Naruto visits Sakura as she recovers from her exhaustion, thanks her, and expresses his fears that Hinata fell in love with Taneri. Sakura reassures him that Hinata's feelings for him are too strong to change so suddenly, and that she must have had some reason for going with Taneri. She further says she believes Naruto's crush on her was due to his desire to defeat Sasuke, whom she loves. When Sakura is ready, they storm Taneri's castle. Sai and Sakura go looking for Hanabi, while Naruto and Shikamaru go looking for Hinata. While rescuing Hanabi, Sakura finds the tattered remains of the scarf Hinata made for Naruto, which she gives him when they regroup. Taneri is defeated, Naruto and Hinata express their feelings for each other, and the team returns to Konoha. Sakura Hiden, thoughts of love riding upon a spring breeze. After the fourth Shinobi World War ended, Sakura assisted with healing those injured and displaced by the conflict. Although the adults recovered quickly and were put at peace by the end of hostilities, children struggled to recover from the stress of the war and the deaths of those they knew. In order to help them with this, Sakura and Ino Yamanaka opened a clinic within the Konoha Hospital that would assess and treat children's mental health. The program proves very successful, in part because Sakura works tirelessly to make it so, a dedication that worries her friends. Two years after the war ends, Sakura and Ino travel to Sunagakure to help the village lay the groundwork for its own mental health clinic. Along the way, Ino tells her about the romantic relationships that their peers, Ino included, are getting involved in, causing Sakura to wonder about her long-distance relationship with Sasuke. In Suna, Sakura and Ino are called before Gara, who informs them of a man matching Sasuke's appearance and chakra signature that is evidently planning to destroy Konoha. They insist it has to be someone disguised as Sasuke, but can come up with no practical explanation for the man having Sasuke's chakra signature. Hoping to keep Sasuke's apparent plans a secret, Gara asks Sakura to personally inform Kakashi of the plot against Konoha. Sakura and Ino do so as soon as they return to Konoha, and Kakashi shares their belief that it is an imposter. When, several days later, rumors of this imposter's actions start to spread, Kakashi sends a message to Sasuke to ask if he knows anything about it, though Sasuke doesn't reply. Sakura becomes concerned about this and confides in Naruto, who hypothesizes that Sasuke finds the rumors too ludicrous to give them any attention. Naruto's words put Sakura at ease. She meets with Tsunade to discuss possible ways of mimicking another person's chakra signature, and comes up with a theory of somebody extracting Sasuke's chakra from his skin and hair samples that have been gathered in large amounts. Sakura runs into Sai afterwards, and she tells him her theory, which, based on information he came across during his own unrelated investigation into Kido Sumiki, believes to be true. Because they are all evidently working on the same case, Kakashi makes a team. Ino dubs them Ino Sakusai. 
While returning from interviews regarding Kido and his personal Anbu, Sakura comes across what is apparently Sasuke being arrested. She realizes after she approaches that it's a genjutsu, but is injected with a drug that renders her unconscious before she can get away. Sakura wakes up to find herself bound and imprisoned. She tries to break out, but the drug she was injected with hinders her strength and chakra. Kido comes to visit her soon afterwards, explaining that he wants to draw Sasuke out with news of her kidnapping due to their romantic relationship. Once he's captured Sasuke, he'll kill Sakura to strengthen Sasuke's Sharingan, in turn making Kido's planned synthetic Sharingan more effective. Sakura keeps Kido engaged in the conversation while she gathers enough chakra to break free. Having finally seen the Sasuke imposter, she tells Kido of its many minor flaws that make it inferior to the original. When she's ready, Sakura breaks out of the basement, through the floors above, and finally onto the roof with a single cherry blossom impact. Outside, she meets Sai and Ino and teams up with them against Kido and his men. Sakura is drawn into a fight with the Sasuke imposter who chokes her using one of Kido's synthetic tailed beast cloaks. Sakura breaks free, and as she beats him unconscious, warns him to never impersonate Sasuke again. She regroups with her teammates and decides to find the rest of Kido's henchmen, but find them defeated by fire and genjutsu, and they realize that this is Sasuke's doing, and he had just disappeared. Although saddened he didn't at least say hello, Sakura is happy that Sasuke does care about her enough to rush back to the village to save her. After turning Kido over to Ibiki for interrogation, Sakura resumes her duties and decides to wait for Sasuke's return, which she believes is imminent so she can talk to him. The final page implies that Sasuke returned to the village to be with Sakura, as he says, I'm home, Sakura. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. While looking for a present to give Naruto and Hinata for their wedding, Sakura finds a picture frame she thinks would be perfect. Ino finds the exact same picture frame at the exact same moment, and their fight over who will buy it causes both of them to be expelled from the store, neither of them able to purchase the picture frame. Ino blames Sakura for what's happened, insisting Sakura's unnatural strength and large forehead make her uncouth and, more particularly, unlikely to ever be married. Sakura is deeply insulted by the accusation and challenges Ino to a cooking competition to prove that she would make a good wife. Sakura and Ino make their own soldier pills. Sakura puts pudding, Ino's favorite dessert, into hers so that Ino will have no choice but to approve of her recipe. When she meets Ino the next day, however, she finds that Ino wants to use Choji Akamichi as an impartial judge. Choji samples each of their soldier pills and finds them so delicious that he starts putting them into his mouth by the handful. He soon collapses to the ground with blood running from his nose. Both suspect that the other poisoned their soldier pills, so they sample them in order to identify the poison and thus save Choji. Neither can taste poison, but they do taste their favorite desserts. Ino loves the pudding in Sakura's, and Sakura loves the Anmitsu in Ino's. Choji gets up soon afterwards, having recovered from his blood sugar overload, and he praises both of their soldier pills. Sakura and Ino reflect on their like-mindedness and how their competitions always push each other to be better. They therefore decide to go shopping together, helping each other find a better gift than the picture frame. Sakura later attends Naruto and Hinata's wedding by herself, but thinks about Sasuke traveling elsewhere. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise Sakura is summoned into Kakashi's office, along with Naruto and Sai, about the disappearances of Kumo and Kiri Shinobi. Sakura informs Kakashi that she had been doing some research on her own, and she discovered several Konoha Shinobi have disappeared, including a family friend of Ino's. When Kakashi tells him that Sasuke is investigating the disappearances, Sakura reacts with anxiety at the mention of his name, due to her being frustrated towards their long-distance relationship. Konoha is attacked, and Sakura and the others discover the attackers are the missing Shinobi, who are under a genjutsu. The ringleader of the assault is Ino's family friend, Taidachi. Sakura helps Naruto, Sai, Hinata, Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji deduce that the shinobi will explode upon being injured, so they come up with a new strategy. Shikamaru uses his shadow imitation technique, and Hinata uses her gentle fist to render them motionless. Ino tries to use her mind-body switch technique on Taidachi, but falls under a genjutsu trap. Aoba saves her, but both pass out. Sakura heals them, as well as the rest of those injured in the attack. When Sakura learns Sasuke captured the ones responsible for the events and helped change their ways to repent, Sakura, although being tired of waiting for Sasuke to come home, is proud of him for how much he's accomplished to redeem himself. Sakura is mentioned in a letter written by Naruto and given to Sasuke while he's on his journey. In it, Sakura compares his current duties of protecting the village from the shadows to that of his childhood dream of joining the Konoha military police force. It is Sakura's words in the letter that compels Sasuke to decide to return to Konoha and be with her. The end of the novel strongly implies that they reunited sometime afterwards, as Sakura says, Welcome home, Sasuke. New Era When Sakura and Sasuke begin dating, they had their first date overlooking the ocean, though it only lasted for two and a half minutes. Four years after the war, Sakura, now pregnant, accompanied her husband Sasuke on his traveling, as she refused to leave his side. 
When she went into labor, Sasuke brought her to one of Orochimaru's hideouts and had Karin help with the delivery. Sakura gave birth to their daughter, Sarada, and returned to Konoha with her family. Afterwards, Sakura and Sasuke raised their daughter together for some time, but he left the village on a mission to investigate Kaguya, leaving their daughter with few memories of him. When Sarada asked about Sasuke, Sakura assured him that he loved Sarada. Promising that he'd come home after completing his mission, Sakura poked her forehead. Eventually, she became director of the medical clinic and its top healer. She also began giving separate lessons to Genin in medical ninjutsu. At the time Naruto became Hokage, Sakura watched his inauguration with Sarada. Later, Sakura attended a Five Kage summit with her husband, who informed the Kage about uncovering evidence of Kaguya forming a new White Zetsu army in order to face some greater threat. Agreeing to keep this information secret and wanting to safeguard the future for their daughter and the new generation, Sasuke continues his wanderings as he tries to find more information using his Rinnegan to inspect other dimensions. Academy Entrance Arc in the anime, as the village began getting constant attacks from an unknown culprit, Sakura treated a Konoha purification plant worker who had his chakra drained in the Konoha hospital. When the culprit behind the attacks was revealed to be Sumire Kake, a unit was deployed to apprehend her. The rogue student unleashed Nue onto the village. While Kakashi organized the unit to defend from its attack, Sakura worked with a unit to treat the injured. Sarada Uchiha Arc in the anime, Sakura is about to go on a trip with Ino, but as Sakura begins to leave, she realizes that a patient's teddy bear, which she brought home with her so she could sew it, has not been picked up yet. Sakura promised to return the bear that day, but Sarada promises that she will do it for her. Later, Sakura and Ino go to the seaside cliff where Sakura and Sasuke went on their first date. Ino asks Sakura if Sasuke contacted her. Sakura says no, wondering what Sasuke is doing at the moment. Later that night, Sakura arrives home and asks Sarada if she returned the teddy bear with Sarada commenting it was easy. Sarada asks Sakura how her trip was, and Sakura calls it wonderful. As Sarada's graduation from the academy approaches, Sarada starts asking Sakura about Sasuke with greater earnest. Sakura struggles to answer questions about Sasuke's childhood in order to hide his past from Sarada, leading Sarada to question if Sasuke and Sakura are even married. This upsets Sakura and she punches the ground, which then inadvertently destroys their house. Sakura faints from the realization of what she's done. She later wakes up to find herself in the care of Shizune, who informs her that Sarada has left the village to look for Sasuke, and also tells her about Sarada's doubts on her parentage. After chuckling at her daughter's recklessness, Sakura goes after her. Sakura arrives in time to save her family from Shin Uchiha, rupturing his organs in the process. Sakura apologizes to Sarada for not being more open with her, but Sasuke insists that he's to blame. A creature then teleports her and the two Shins to his hideout. There, Shin holds her hostage and asks her to transplant the organs from his injured son into him, which she refuses. While Shin is performing the surgery himself, Sakura is disgusted about his philosophy regarding his clones, and declares that he has no idea what it's like to be a real parent. When the surgery is completed, Sakura reveals that she was pretending to be a helpless hostage to get information on Shin for Sasuke, and she begins fighting him. When Sasuke arrives, he saves Sakura and pulls some scalpels out of her, and she thanks him. After the clones stab Shin, Sakura stands in front of Sarada as they prepare to attack, but Sarada launches herself towards them and subdues them with her strength. With the fighting done, Sakura hugs Sarada and expresses relief that she is alright, before confirming that they are biologically related. Sasuke accompanies them back to Konoha and spends some time with Sakura and Sarada, even posing for a family photo that their home had been missing. Sakura and Sarada see him off as he leaves Konoha again. When Sarada becomes sad, Sasuke hugs her and pokes her forehead, promising to return as Sakura looks on with a smile. Sakura then gives him a prepared lunch and hopes for a kiss in return, but he departs without further comment while smirking, depressing Sakura as she waves goodbye. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day During the new Konohagakure holiday, Parent and Child Day, Sakura had to spend much of her time at the hospital. Later that day, she found to her shock that Sasuke had returned to the village. He discussed with her his problem in connecting with Sarada. Sakura noted that having spent much of Sarada's life away and only hearing stories about Sasuke and his various exploits, Sarada had probably become disillusioned at who Sasuke was as a person and his attempts at being a doting father seemed lame. Ultimately, Sakura suggested that he should approach Sarada more like Sasuke's relationship was with his father and brother back in the day, just enjoying the time they have together and talk about their goals. Later that night, the Uchiha family enjoyed a hearty meal together. Graduation Exams Arc In the anime, Sakura noticed Sarada's lack of excitement over going camping, and her complaints about Boruto reminded her of her own complaints about Naruto during their academy days. When Sarada's class began preparing for the Genin exams, Sakura joined her daughter to discuss her progress and future goals with Shino. Versus Momoshiki Arc Several months later, when Sarada leaves to train for the upcoming Chunin exams, Sakura sees her off. 
Before she goes, Sarada notes that Sakura must be happy since Sasuke has come back to Konoha, to which Sakura replies that Sarada must be the happiest. Later, during the exam's final matches, Sakura watches with Tamari and Ino, cheering loudly when Sarada wins her first match. The finals are interrupted by an attack from Kinshiki and Momoshiki Yotsotsuki, who proceed to destroy the stadium. Sakura punches the falling debris above her, causing a shockwave strong enough to destroy it to protect herself and the other spectators. After Kinshiki and Momoshiki kidnap Naruto, Sakura heals Hinata, who is badly injured in her failed attempt to save him. When Boruto prepares to join Sasuke in rescuing Naruto, Sakura carries Hinata to him so she can reason with him. However, seeing Boruto reminds Hinata, like Sakura, of a young Naruto, so she allows him to go. Naruto is successfully rescued, and life returns to normal when he gets back to Konoha. As Sarada and her team leave for a mission, Sakura watches them with Sasuke. Mitsuki's Disappearance Arc In the anime, when Mitsuki seemingly betrayed the village by attacking two gate guards, the village was put on lockdown. Sakura was in charge of treating the injured men. As one of them began to recover and show signs of regaining consciousness, Sakura gave the report to Yurito to be delivered to the Hokage. Meanwhile, Boruto and Sarada left the village without authorization to find Mitsuki. When Hinata was worried about the consequences of their children's actions, Sakura insisted that they knew what their actions could lead to, but still had faith that it would be okay. Later, Sarada joined Boruto in retrieving Mitsuki, who had apparently betrayed the village. When the Genin returned, an angry but relieved Sakura hugged her daughter as a welcome. Time Slip Arc after Sasuke helped in delivering Shukaku safely back to the village, he was given some downtime. While Sakura was happy to have her husband back, she was dismayed by how little time he had spent at home. Regardless, she decided to make his favorite dinner to welcome him home. Meanwhile, Sasuke and Boruto were sent back in time to shortly after Sasuke's defection, past Sakura bumped into the two. Fearing changing the future from interacting with his future wife, Sasuke decided to keep his distance. Sakura noted how similar Naruto and Boruto were, which the two bluntly denied. Later, Sakura joined her friends in helping Boruto and Naruto clean up a bathhouse to make up for the commotion that Naruto and Jiraiya caused there. Days later, as Sakura was returning home for another grueling session of training with Tsunade, she bumped into adult Sasuke. He quickly apologized and rushed off, dropping a piece of paper in the process, a letter from Sarada. Sakura looked at the contents. While it was revealed to be a letter with the message smeared too much to read, Sakura made out Sasuke's name written on it. Suspecting that Boruto knew something about Sasuke, she decided to confront him about it. Boruto, nervous about being found out, simply said he knew a different Sasuke than the one she knew. While seeing that he was hiding something, Sakura decided to drop the subject with Boruto, instead finding the stranger's teacher to ask him directly. She later found the mysterious man battling an unknown assailant alongside Boruto and Jiraiya, who was after Naruto. When Sasuke's efforts proved futile thanks to his continued fatigue and the foe's strange abilities, he tackled the man into the river with him. While the man emerged unharmed but fuming at Sasuke's interference, Sakura fished Sasuke out of the river and hid him while using her new medical ninjutsu to treat him. Eventually, Sasuke awoke, accidentally addressing her by name. As she began to ask him questions, her efforts to heal Sasuke overtaxed her and she fainted. Sasuke gently laid her down before going to help his allies. Days later, after Urashiki was defeated and Sasuke and the others were discharged from the hospital, Sasuke and Boruto were ready to leave. Before they could, they were approached by Sakura again, still determined to learn the stranger's connection to Sasuke. As Sasuke fumbled to find an excuse, Jiraiya chimed in, giving an elaborate story about how they were avid fans of him and wanted to train under him, hence the injuries. Sakura ultimately accepted the story, finding the traveler strange. Before leaving, Sasuke used his Sharingan to erase Sakura's memories, along with everybody else in the past, of the recent events to protect their timeline. After Sasuke and Boruto returned to the present, Sasuke found his wife sleeping at the table waiting for him. After she awoke and greeted him, she decided to make him some food, to which Sasuke warmly thanked her. Kara Actuation Arc In the anime, when Team 7 was defeated by Deepa, the Genin were brought back to the village for emergency care. As Sakura worked on Boruto, Shizune worked on Sarada. After a successful operation on both Genin, Sakura voiced her complaints for the mental impact of the defeat on them. Three days later, Sarada and Boruto disappeared from their respective rooms in the hospital. Sakura, however, quickly deduced that the two would meet up with Konohamaru and Mugino, who were ready for a mission to investigate Kara. To her relief, however, the children merely wanted to voice their trust in the older ninja to handle the mission while they would stay behind and commit themselves to grow stronger with hard training. Later, as Sarada sought intense training from Sasuke, Sakura watched from afar with concern for her daughter. As she continued to observe the grueling conditions her daughter was going through, Sakura confronted her family. She voiced her concern that Sarada was pushing herself too hard after just recovering, and even more horrified to hear her talk about the Mangekyo Sharingan. While Sakura insisted that she couldn't push herself so recklessly, Sarada was furious to hear her mother baby her so, 
refusing to see why she wanted to get stronger, and stormed off. Alone with her husband, Sakura admitted that as a mother, she couldn't handle the thought of Sarada being injured again like she did. Likewise, she feared the path that Sarada could potentially walk if she were to acquire the Mangekyo Sharingan. Sasuke insisted that as parents, they have to prepare Sarada as much as possible for the world, and that she is as strong as they were back then. Unable to fully accept Sasuke's view, Sakura was left depressed. Later that night, Ino and Hinata decided to take Sakura out on a girls' night to talk but they insisted that as mothers themselves, they too feared for their children's well-being, but they have had to have faith that they were strong enough and could endure. Ino insisted that Sakura, as a child, had drive that pushed her forward, and Sarada inherited as much from Sakura as she did Sasuke. Ino's words managed to cheer up Sakura. The following day, Sakura decided to oversee Sarada's training personally. She insisted that just blindly facing the challenge wouldn't yield any results. She forced Sarada into a sparring match with her, quickly overwhelming her. She pointed out Sarada's biggest flaws. Sarada's chakra control was still underdeveloped, quickly burning through it in her various actions and unleashing it randomly when attacking. This affected both her combat performance and development of her Sharingan. Sarada's second problem was that her resolve was still too frail, fearing defeat. Determined to break past her limits, Sarada faced down Sakura again, using her Sharingan to mimic the movements and general timing of Sakura's attacks to reach a standstill. As Sakura criticized her recklessness, she was proud to see her inner strength was like Sakura's, deciding to put Sarada through the same grueling training Tsunade did to improve her chakra control. Kawaki Arc While buying flowers at Yamanaka Flowers for Sasuke's imminent return, Ino disapproved the idea of a husband who was almost never home, to which Sakura responded that she only wanted him to return to the village safely despite feeling lonely at times. When Sarada came to ask Sakura about her forehead seal, she explained it and revealed that it had existed since the age of the Sage of Six Paths. She also revealed Sasuke was returning home when Ino suddenly trembled upon sensing a sinister chakra near Naruto, much to Sakura's shock. Sarada left the shop, telling Sakura that she was going home. Later, when she was on her way back from the flower shop, Sakura found an injured Sasuke who teleported behind her on the road, again shocking her. She took him to the hospital and proceeded to heal him, saving him from his critical injuries. As Sasuke and Naruto made a full recovery, Sarada and her team were treated as well due to making a daring rescue of Naruto. Sarada explained to her parents how during their battle against Boro, it was only thanks to a strange new evolution of Boruto's Kama that they were able to defeat him. She noted that Boruto not only sprouted a horn and manifested a Byakugan in his right eye with his massive increase in power, but was even acting differently. This concerned Sasuke, but Sakura told her daughter to rest. Later in the anime, after Ishiki Otsutsuki was defeated at the cost of Sasuke's Rinnegan and Kurama, Sakura aided Katasuke in testing Naruto's body for any remaining traces of Kurama and its capacities, only to find none. While Sakura was dismayed to admit this, Naruto firmly chose not to wallow over it, feeling that Kurama would ridicule him for it. Chunin Re-Examination Arc In the anime, Konoha held another Chunin exam. Sarada was one of four Chunin promoted by the end of it, much to Sakura and Sasuke's joy. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.